I reborn as the lowest level scarecrow. I should have accepted being endlessly killed by players. The setting of unlimited respawn. But I held a sickle in my hand, calling for the crow. Crazily chasing after all the novice players. At the moment when all players are dominated by fear. That will be the moment when I crazily harvest. But I dare not take risks because in my days, there is a voice telling me. Once I am killed, I will die forever. But now I am still unusually calm. The area I am in now is very remote. Ordinary people wouldn't come here at all. But soon I became very anxious. Because there are two couple players about to kill to where I am. The two players raised the wooden swords in their hands. They wildly slashed at a scarecrow. Health reduced by one. Even with such low damage, I couldn't bear to watch. But when I came to my senses again, five or six scarecrow monsters had already been killed by the two. Wife, there are a lot of scarecrows here. Honey, take your time to kill the monsters, don't rush. Shameless, showing affection while killing monsters. I am very angry now, I won't look at you anymore. I cursed inwardly and quickly turned around. Prepare to leave this place of trouble. The scarecrow can move, but with limited speed. But if it attracts the attention of the two newbies, I'm afraid I will be caught soon. So, at this moment, I kept silently repeating can't see me in my mind. Can't see me. If you want to attack, start with my scarecrow brothers. As they say, good fortune comes to me first. If there's trouble, my brothers will handle it. Under the protection of many scarecrow brothers, my two thin legs made of straw moved slowly and quickly shifted five or six meters away. The two players were only focused on fighting monsters and showing affection. They didn't notice that I was moving at all. However, the public display of affection did not stop them from fighting monsters at their pace. Just a few minutes. Hundreds of scarecrows have already disappeared by more than half. Seeing the scarecrow numbers decreasing, I instinctively quickened my pace. Just then, a prompt sounded in my mind. The scarecrow monsters cannot leave the respawn point more than 10 meters away. Upon hearing this information, I almost started cursing. If fate doesn't let me escape, what else can I do? Do I have to wait to die in vain? At this moment, I suddenly felt a lightness in my body, as if the invisible shackles that had been holding me back had been broken. Activate player panel. Remove some of the restrictions on the monsters. What is the player panel? I was puzzled, knowing full well that I had crossed over as a monster. Yet, I still activated the player panel. Could this be the legendary cheat code? But there's no time to think about it now. The two newbies over there are like wolves and tigers. They've already left the last scarecrow brother heavily injured. If I don't run further away, I'll be the next cannon fodder. The movement restrictions on the monsters have been lifted. I hurriedly moved forward on my two slender legs. However, just at that moment, the female player among the two suddenly shouted, Honey, look, there's another scarecrow moving over there. Oh no, I've been discovered, I thought to myself, feeling uneasy. I quickened my pace. The male player smirked. That scarecrow is quite cunning, it even knows how to run away. It might be a mutated monster. Mutated my foot, I grumbled in my heart. I only regretted that my two legs were running too slowly. Honey, hurry, and chase. This kind of mutated monster has a certain chance of dropping top quality equipment. Are you kidding? Isn't your character supposed to be the silly, sweet, game idiot? You're acting so professional, how are you going to play the innocent one in the future? Let your husband level you up. But no matter how much I complain in my heart, it won't change the other person's intention to kill me. Although the other party is a novice player, a player is still a player. When running, their movement speed is much faster than my low-level scarecrow. With a bang, I only felt a sharp pain in my body. Already struck by the male player's wooden sword. This pain made me almost cry out uncontrollably. This kind of pain is really unbearable. In order to enhance realism, the game simulates a certain degree of pain when being attacked. But for the player, that kind of pain is reduced. Being slashed is no worse than a mosquito bite. But as a monster, this kind of pain is more than 10 times stronger. Being hit by a novice weapon already hurts so much. What if I'm continuously hit to death? I'm afraid I would have died from the pain first. After all, those who come to hit the scarecrow are all novices with very low damage, even if I don't fight back. They still have to hit many times. It's impossible to give myself a break, now the more crucial thing is my health. It has dropped to an extremely dangerous 9 points. If I get hit 9 more times, I'll have to bid farewell to this gaming world for good. The male player strikes again. I'm down to just 8 points now, just as I was suffocating in despair. But then, to my surprise, a large group of scarecrows appeared in front of me. The organization didn't give up on me, and they sent out a large army to rescue me. I grit my teeth, enduring the pain of being hit by the male player once again. 
I rushed into the scarecrow pile and then I casually swayed around in it. I perfectly concealed myself in the sea of the crowd, every scarecrow looked exactly the same. They were all identical, making it nearly impossible to find the original scarecrow in this situation. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. But at this moment, the female player respawned. Honey, quickly check the health bar of the one you hit. The health must be not full. I bet this girl is a pro, 100% guaranteed. Her thinking is clear, and her understanding of the game has probably reached an unparalleled level. She's a seasoned gamer through and through. I quickly glanced at this group of scarecrows, there were about a dozen of them. This place could be considered a strong monster spawn point. A dozen scarecrows could be a bit overwhelming for a level 1 newbie, but perhaps it's still not enough. Because the design of these low-level straw monsters is that as long as the player does not actively attack several monsters at the same time, even if it's the player, surrounded by a large pile of low-level monsters, you can still safely engage in one-on-one -on -one combat with one of the monsters, as long as the player does not initiate an attack on the other monsters. The other monsters will foolishly stand by and watch. With the reminder from the female player, the male player already has a direction. Holding a wooden sword, he directly rushes into the pile of straw monsters. He ignores the other straw monsters around him. He just wants to find the injured straw monster. He is completely focused. His eyes are scanning everywhere. Suddenly, a straw monster sways not far from him. He has already seen the health bar on the head of this straw monster, although it is still a healthy green bar but it is indeed not full. He is overjoyed, lifts his wooden sword and rushes forward. When the sword strikes, he even already envisions the beautiful scene of a ground full of high-quality equipment. However, this sword swipes past me and hits another straw monster. Interesting, these mutated straw monsters are indeed different. They know how to escape and dodge. The male player continues to charge out. Another sword strike comes down with a crisp sound. Another ordinary scarecrow acts as a shield. Several times in a row, the male player's attacks are all blocked by other scarecrows. After a continuous period of time circling around, the health I lost earlier has already been fully restored, causing the two players to completely lose their target. The male player wants to give up and leave the scarecrow pile, but at this point, he has no way back. Just now, when he pursued me, the scarecrows he attacked are now surrounding his slender arms. They grab at him, and although the scarecrow's attack power is low, several of them attack at the same time. The male player is also feeling uncomfortable, watching the male player handle the siege of four scarecrows with ease. Unconsciously, my brow furrowed. It's impossible to defeat the male player with just the siege of these four scarecrows, until the male player. If he manages to take care of these scarecrows, my own fate won't be good in the end. I must find a way to deal with this situation in order to save my life. Now, waiting is no longer the best choice, as what waiting brings might not be favorable. Just a slow death. I grit my teeth and quietly move my steps, launched an attack from behind the male player. Looking at the male player in front of me, I tried my best to resist the attack of the four scarecrows. I found the right moment and quickly grabbed the back of the male player, health reduced by one. This attack only caused a little damage, but it angered the male player, and he couldn't tell if this scarecrow is the original one. But daring to sneak attack from behind, I must give the other party a fierce. The male player quickly turned around and swiftly swung his wooden sword. I have to say that this attack was incredibly powerful. The power is quite extraordinary. But he didn't hit me, instead, he hit one of the scarecrows beside me. The resentful scarecrow brother. Naturally, this scarecrow also joined the team attacking him. At this moment, I also experienced the joy of shooting and changing places. Then I launched another sneak attack on the male player. After more than 10 minutes of guerrilla warfare attack, the male player's health finally reached the bottom. As I swung my weak arm again, the male player's health finally reached the bottom, and after a miserable cry, he turned into a soul light and appeared in the original place. At this moment, as a scarecrow, I heard this prompt in my heart, successfully killing a player, gaining 5 experience points, and leveling up to level 2. At this moment, I widened my eyes, my face filled with disbelief, killing a player with just a wild monster, and still gaining experience points and even directly leveling up to level 2, even becoming the same as other real players. Leveling up also comes with a bonus of free attribute points. Originally, I only had 10 health points, now it has increased to 30 points. Apart from health points, my other attributes such as attack and defense have also increased to a certain extent. All of this means that in front of new players, my chances of survival have greatly increased. I have become stronger and am no longer the player who was easily defeated by level 1 novices casually bullied by level 1 novices. 
With my current attributes, if I were to duel with a level 1 novice, as long as the opponent doesn't use potions, I might not necessarily lose. I looked at the female player still standing in front of me, and a certain malicious thought began to form in my mind. Since I can gain experience and level up by killing players, then this remaining female player will also become my experience. I slowly moved my steps, taking advantage of the female player's inattention, and approached her from behind. After reaching level 2, my movement speed has increased significantly. I now move at about 70-80% to 80 of a novice player's speed. And at this moment, the female player is still sitting on the ground, humming a tune leisurely, waiting for the male player to respawn and then sweep me. She never thought that I, this scarecrow monster, would actively ambush the player. Based on her understanding of the game rules, monsters in the newbie village do not attack proactively. But my existence is already an accident. I quietly arrived behind the female player. Two thin and weak straw arms reached towards the back of the female player, inflicting damage, reducing health by two. My attack power is already at three points, after deducting the one point defense of the level one newbie player. It still caused two points of damage. The female player yelped in pain and jumped up. The female player quickly turned around and saw that it was a scarecrow attacking her. For a moment, she couldn't understand. Stood still in place. When did scarecrows learn to attack proactively and even sneakily from behind? But the other scarecrows are still standing in place. Only this one attacks proactively. Isn't this the mutant scarecrow that I and the male player have been looking for all along? The female player no longer waits for the male player to respawn and attack. Instead, she directly grips the wooden sword and strikes directly at me. However, when he used his wooden sword to attack the scarecrow in front of him, he found that the scarecrow's health bar didn't budge at all. Did I miss? The female player muttered to herself. She then attacked again with her wooden sword. The damage minus one prompt appeared, confirming that the attack landed. And indeed, it did cause damage. As a scarecrow, even though I leveled up, my defense had also increased. However, in the game's mechanics, even a single point of damage was mandatory. Even the most powerful boss, as long as it was hit by a player, would still be forced to take one point of damage, even if the player couldn't break through its defense. Although I wasn't a powerful boss at the moment, just a level up noob in the beginner village, just a scarecrow, but my current health had already reached 30 points, equivalent to the female player who was currently only at level 1. The player's attack caused one point of damage to me while my attack against her could cause two points of damage. By this calculation, in a one-on-one -on -one fight between me, a scarecrow, and the female player, there was hope for victory. And so, the female player and I entered into a cycle of her hitting me, and me hitting her. But soon, as the female player's health decreased, her aggro level skyrocketed. I smirked in the dark, ready to continue deploying my skills. I stepped back, hiding behind a certain unlucky scarecrow. At this moment, the female player who ignited the fire didn't care at all. I directly swung the wooden sword over. With a muffled thud, this sword didn't make any impact at all, hitting one of the unlucky scarecrows. But the vengeful scarecrows were not limited to just one. As I ran around, I had already pulled five scarecrows to become my accomplices. But the female player was different from the previous male player, although she was momentarily carried away. But at this point, she already realized that something was wrong. Gradually calming down, she endured the discomfort of being attacked by scarecrows. She was about to flee backwards. But now that she realized, it was too late. I chuckled to myself. I directly blocked and stopped her leg. At this point, the female player was already surrounded by a total of six scarecrows. The female player wanted to retreat but had nowhere to go. According to the game settings, scarecrows and similar creatures are wild monsters. But they also have their collision volume and cannot be passed through directly. With the attack of six scarecrows, including myself, like raindrops, the player's health dropped rapidly until it hit zero and disappeared on the spot. Successfully killed a player, gained five experience points, still need five points to level up. Watching, another female player turned into a soul light spot. I couldn't help but feel a sense of regret in my heart. I didn't expect that I would need 10 experience points to level up to level 3. Killing the female player still didn't allow me to level up again. Now I have killed two players. I will soon attract the attention of other players, and I am very clear about this in my heart. Next, they will team up to kill me, and when they are ready, they will come. I am undoubtedly doomed, so I took advantage of the cover of other straw men to attack. Can only be used once. Both the male player and the female player have been fooled once. They definitely won't be fooled again next time. Thinking about this, I shook my head. 
Taking advantage of this opportunity, I walked away into the distance with the slender legs of the straw man. Since I can't win, I'll just escape. There are no players nearby keeping an eye on me. As long as I leave before my two enemies return, they will never be able to find me again. I kept moving my slender legs. I walked in the direction away from here. The world of the game is very vast. I walked carefully and stealthily. Avoiding one novice player after another, I finally reached the farthest distance I could walk out to. Walk a little further ahead. It's no longer the respawn area for scarecrows. My current situation is no longer bound by the monster rules. I should be able to completely leave the scarecrow respawn area. But I didn't choose to do that, because that would be really stupid. Although I am a mutant scarecrow, on the surface, there is not much difference between me and other scarecrows. A normal scarecrow thrown into a pile of scarecrows would not attract much attention. But if he walks out of the scarecrow respawn area, then he would be like a crow thrown into a flock of doves, immediately noticeable. At that time, I'm afraid every passing player would take a few stabs at me. So, I stood in a daze, hidden among a group of scarecrow monsters at the boundary of these two monster respawns. Just as I was enjoying this carefree life of being away from it all and fighting, suddenly a voice sounded, and then, a player rushed into this area with a wooden sword, full of murderous intent, charging towards my location. With the vision of a scarecrow, I saw that player arrive at my location, and upon seeing nearly a hundred scarecrows in front of him, he laughed triumphantly. What a respawn point, not worried at all about anyone stealing it. After I've eliminated them all, I'll definitely become the highest level boss in the game. Then he tilted his head and chugged a bottle of red potion. He picked up the wooden sword and became excited. He then launched an attack on the nearby scarecrow. But the next move by this player left me dumbfounded. His health bar was already red. There wasn't much health left. Although a small bottle of red potion didn't restore much health, it was enough for him to slay another scarecrow. But this guy was hitting back and forth, attracting more monsters frantically. The player now seemed like a gluttonous child, but you have to be good at being a glutton. If not, you will be the one to overdo it. I stood quietly on the side, watching the battle across from me. Surrounded by several scarecrows, the player's health bar was getting lower and lower. However, at that moment, I quietly sighed to myself on the side, feeling a bit restless. I admit I was tempted, at least at this stage, I didn't know how to rid myself of my monster identity, since I had to live on as a monster. Naturally, the longer I lived, the better. And to live longer? It's not just about passively surviving. Making myself as strong as possible should be the right choice. I glanced at the player's dangerously low health bar. I quietly snuck up behind him. I extended my thin, strawmade hands and launched a sneak attack, causing two points of damage. The player felt a sudden pain in his back, turned around with a puzzled look, and just as he looked bewildered, I raised my hands again, and his health decreased by two at the same time. The player's health bar was completely emptied, and he instantly fell to the ground, turning into a soul light spot. Even at this point, he still couldn't understand why he met an untimely death. Scarecrow, this type of beginner village monster will attack actively, successfully killing a player, gaining 5 experience points, and leveling up by 1. Current level 3 has been raised by 1 level. Almost made me want to jump for joy. This level up also elevated the level of my monsters, elevated to elite level straw, and also gained a tearing skill, after reaching level 3. My health had already reached an astonishing 60 points, but due to the elite level monster's doubled health, talent bonus, my health has now reached 120 points. Other defensive and offensive attributes have also correspondingly improved. I secretly breathed a sigh of relief in my heart. The tense nerves finally relaxed a bit. With my current 120 health points and an increase of 6 attack points, I'm not afraid of these ordinary new players anymore. I can say that from now on, as long as I don't mess around. These newcomers who have just come out of the newbie village to level up, basically cannot pose a threat to me. After leveling up to level 3 and evolving into an elite scarecrow, a bold idea suddenly came to my mind. I can now be considered a player who controls monsters. Killing players gives experience rewards, so killing monsters of the same species. I looked at the other silly scarecrows standing next to me. Brothers, suddenly reached out and grabbed one of the scarecrows, with my current 6 points of attack power. With a light scratch, I dealt a very high damage number. HP reduced by 5. With the damage prompt, this scarecrow's health bar instantly dropped by half. However, in the face of an attack from a member of its own kind like me, the scarecrow seemed to have no reaction, still standing foolishly without moving. Anyway, the other party is just a game spawned monster. I no longer held back and grabbed again. The health bar of this scarecrow in front of me instantly emptied.
turned into a bundle of rotten straw and fell to the ground. However, the expected amazing sound effect did not play. I, Yang Jiu, couldn't help but sigh in my heart. I reluctantly accepted this fact, even though I activated the player panel. I've broken free from the constraints of the monster, but strictly speaking, I'm still a member of the monster at the moment. It's only natural that I can't gain experience by killing monsters. It seems that as a monster, I can only rely on killing players to gain experience at the moment. After standing still for a long time, I made a decision in my heart. Since only killing players can gain experience, I can't just wait in vain. I'm very clear that my current self, although evolved into an elite scarecrow, is only elite among the lowest level monsters. Facing a level 1 player who just entered the game, I naturally have a huge advantage. But if I encounter a high level player, I'll only be killed in seconds. Although high level players probably won't come to the newbie village to kill monsters, but there might be exceptions. I've been lingering in the newbie village, which also doesn't guarantee my safety 100%. If I want to survive, I have to become stronger than all the players in the game. Strong enough that even the top game guilds can't defeat me in groups. Instead of being passively attacked, it's better to take the initiative. Now that I've made up my mind, I won't hesitate anymore. I left the starting point to find opportunities for leveling up. Whenever I encounter a leveling player on the road, I will quietly approach them. And then I will kill them. With my continuous ambushes, soon all the players on the road were wiped out. Meanwhile, the level of my wild monsters also reached level 4, and besides this, after leveling up, I also obtained a skill point, and I didn't hesitate to directly apply it to my only skill, tier, after all, strengthening my power is the priority. This also makes it easier for me to kill novice players later on. After leveling up the tier skill to level 2, although the attack power has increased slightly, it's not much stronger. It's just that the bleeding effect has been greatly enhanced. Don't underestimate this small improvement with my current attack power. Level 1 novice players. I don't even consider them at all. One tier, followed by a casual regular attack. Easily able to one-shot a level 1 player. In the original design of the game, elite level scarecrows were not meant for level 1 players. To challenge elite scarecrows, you need to level up to at least level 3. You also need to find several friends and crazily consume red potions to grind one down. But that's brainless, the elite scarecrow is different. I don't plan to get myself caught in the player's siege. I sneered inwardly and continued walking forward to search for and hunt down all the isolated players. However, I hadn't walked far before I heard a voice that was both familiar to me and extremely detestable. Honey, you're amazing. I leveled up. Darling, I'm about to level up too. Wait until I level up. I must exterminate that mutated scarecrow. The source of the voice is no one else but the couple of players I previously killed. I felt somewhat helpless, never thought I'd aimlessly circle back. Encountering these two familiar faces again, don't know if it's fate or a narrow escape. I watched from a distance as the two fought monsters, and when I saw both players were at level 2, I unconsciously furrowed my brow. If one of them reaches level 2, I could easily rush in and deal with it. But both of them have reached it, so it's not impossible to deal with. It just takes a bit longer. But if the nearby players are attracted during the fight, I will be completely at a disadvantage and might even be killed. In the end, when the benefits and risks are not proportional, I decided to sneak away from them. I'll be merciful and spare these two poor couple players for now. However, as I moved stealthily, I was still spotted by that sharp-eyed female player. Honey seems to be that mutated scarecrow. Hearing that annoying voice, I almost blacked out. I almost passed out completely. Our original plan was to sneak past and forget about the two enemies. But reality has other plans for us. Since it has to be this way, then I'll have to send you back to the respawn point again. A level 2 player already has 2 points of defense. With my current 9 points of attack, a single regular attack can cause 7 points of damage, which is quite good in terms of output. But there are 2 opponents, and the level 2 player's health has also reached 40 points. They won't be easily killed. Because players are different from monsters, they can use healing potions. I decided to set a trap, first getting both of them into my attack range. I leisurely carried out a regular attack. Then I used the tearing skill to get rid of one first. The two couple players quickly rushed towards me. After observing for a moment, the male player looked puzzled. Wife, this scarecrow is completely different from the one just now. The girl player nodded affirmatively and said, no, although his appearance has changed a bit. But those lewd actions are unmistakable. Could there be another strange scarecrow? A second one? The male player nodded with a hint of skepticism. Then he swung his wooden sword towards me. 
Even if the scarecrow in front of me is not the mutated one from before, it is still an elite monster. If killed, the experience gained would be very substantial. However, before his wooden sword could fall, I quickly used the tear skill, right into the male player's body. The male player, who had just been continuously leveling up by killing monsters, already had low health. His health instantly dropped to zero in front of my tier 2 tier, once again turning into a beam of light. As the male player was killed by my single blow, my level also rose to level 5. At the same time, my world chat function was also activated by the player system. I was stunned in place. I naturally knew that the game had a world channel function, but it was only for the exclusive use of players. I never expected it to be open to me as well, and I was instantly excited. The world system opens at level 5. Does this mean that as long as I keep leveling up, the game will unlock more player-exclusive system functions for me? In the end, will I be able to escape the identity of a monster? But now is not the time to consider that. The handsome player has been killed, but there is still a female player. I slowly turned my head. The female player at this moment has already been completely shocked by my damage. Honey, run quickly. This elite scarecrow has explosive output skills. The damage is very high, you need to leave quickly. This is based on the hint from the male player. The female player quickly threw away the wooden sword and was about to turn and flee from this place. But now that I have tasted the benefits of leveling up, how could I easily let go of my experience? The distance between me and the female player was already very close. Before she could take a step, I released the tearing skill again, perfectly catching her back. However, with just one hit, the female player's health dropped to zero. With two more follow-up attacks from me, the female player ultimately became my experience points. I was not worried at all that the female player could escape, because after leveling up to level 5, my movement speed has increased. I am already on par with beginner players. At the same time, my health points have reached a high of 200, and the increase in defense and attack power is more than double that of beginner players. How much longer? After the most important upgrade, I gained another point of free attribute. This time, I was able to save time and effort by taking down two level 2 players. It was all thanks to the level 2 struggle, and I didn't hesitate either. I conveniently upgraded the struggle skill to level 3. After reaching level 3 in struggle, I can launch an attack instantly, with a 70% chance of causing a bleeding effect with 3 attacks. Now, the damage from this skill is enough to kill all the new players. Of course, excluding players with financial power. After checking my own attribute panel, bored, I decided to browse the world chat channel to see where the new player experience is better, and then take them all down. But I didn't know until I looked. But what I saw made me covered in cold sweat. At this time, the world channel had already exploded. They were all discussing the scarecrows, and in the refreshed area, an elite mutated scarecrow appeared. Even those players I had already killed had already started to plan. To plan a siege against me, however, these vengeful players never expected. Their entire plan had been seen by that mutated elite scarecrow, seen entirely through its eyes. After a few minutes, the players who joined their siege plan had reached over 20. But at this moment, I wasn't panicking, nor did I plan to run. Instead, the corners of my mouth were already stretched to the back molars. Looking at this group of new players, I felt like I saw 20-odd experience points. I just stood there waiting waiting for the arrival of this group of experience points. After a few minutes, a player arrived in my area. After discovering me, this player was extremely excited and posted my location in the game chat channel. Then, he quickly rushed towards me with a wooden sword in hand. This guy was a cannon fodder for the ambush team, mainly responsible for holding on and waiting for the arrival of the other players. This was a level 2 player, cautiously approaching me. He raised the wooden sword in his hand and struck me with a snap. Although my defense had already reached 7 points, for an elite scarecrow like me, his pitiful attack power couldn't even break through my defense. He could only cause a compulsory sneak attack, and I smirked in my heart. I wanted to meet you as an ordinary scarecrow, but you are so eager to die. Then I will fulfill your wish. The health of a level 2 player is 40 points, and the defense is 2 points. Now my attack power is 12 points. Just need to attack first, then immediately use the tearing skill completely capable of killing him before he can react. I acted on my thought and grabbed the player, directly causing 10 points of damage. Then, before this player could react, I immediately used my upgraded level 3 tearing skill, a 100% accurate scratch, landing on the player's body. It instantly turned into a light spot and disappeared from the original location. At the same time, the system rewarded me with 10 experience points, and now, 
I only need 60 more experience points to level up. The player who was just killed chose to revive in the city, but I quickly walked away. I clearly saw that not very far away. Many players were already rushing over. From my current position, it's almost impossible to escape the encirclement of so many players before they converge. I gritted my teeth and almost wanted to fight these players, but after a moment, I calmed down. If it's just these level 2 players, I'm not very afraid yet. With my current attributes, even if there are many level 2 players, they may not be able to really surround and kill me. But who can guarantee that there are no level 3 players among them, or even players above level 3? Once facing those players, I won't be as composed as I am now. Players can revive indefinitely, but I only have one life. Players can fight recklessly, but I must plan before acting, steadily and securely. Looking at the many players appearing in my field of vision, I suddenly had an idea. I tried to enter information into the chat channel. Everyone, come quickly, I've spotted that elite level scarecrow. Then I quickly sent a false coordinate. The next moment, the large number of players charging towards me all changed direction, rushing towards the coordinates I provided. At the same time, not forgetting to express their gratitude to me in the world channel. Looking at the messages in the chat channel, I felt very shocked. I never thought that as a wild monster like myself, I could actually speak in the player's chat channel. This makes things interesting. Since I can't beat you, I'll join you and defeat you one by one. So when the players arrived at the coordinates I provided, I quickly gave the next coordinates, repeating this dozens of times. The players all cursed, saying the elite scarecrow speed was too fast. In order to find me more effectively the first time, this group of players decided to change their plan. In groups of three, they began a carpet-style search. If they find the elite scarecrow, they just need to draw aggro, then waiting for all the players to gather. Seeing the plan of this group of guys, the smile on my face grew even wider. Seems like sleepiness is coming, and the pillow is here. Even if three people form a group, they are three level three players. No, no, they are three level four players. I am not afraid at all. Then I quickly gave my current coordinates. Sure enough, the three players closest to here came rushing over with wooden swords in hand. As this team approached, they also sent a message in the chat channel. A cold smile appeared on my face as I directly made a move towards one of them. Causing damage, the health decreased. After 11 regular attacks, the player in the front immediately lost 10 health points. For a player with only 40 health points, this is already a terrifying attack power. The other two players immediately launched an attack on me. The injured player then stepped back slightly. However, contrary to what they expected, the elite scarecrow in front of them did not shift the attack target onto them. Instead, it continued to pursue and launched an attack on the previously injured player. It launched a fierce attack. Three sets of 10 damage points instantly appeared. The player didn't even grunt. They fell to the ground directly, turning into a soul. A single flash, I silently muttered in my heart immediately launched an attack on another player. These players think that by working together, they can take turns to draw aggro. I have to say, they are mistaken. This strategy would be correct if they were dealing with regular monsters, but I am not a regular monster. Before I transformed into a monster, I was also a player with human-like thinking. Their little schemes cannot affect me. I will only act according to my own thoughts. Concentrate your strength and pick them off one by one. After killing one player, I quickly turned around and started to attack the second player. I was also extremely nervous inside. At this time, the majority of the player group was desperately searching for me. Now, I realize that avoiding the problem is no longer a solution. If I want to survive, I can only move forward bravely and level up. I am still 30 experience points short of reaching level 6. Even if I were to kill the remaining two members of this group, I still wouldn't have enough experience points. I have already decided to make this location my final battleground. The two remaining members of the group in front of me are also in a dilemma at this point. They really didn't expect that. Their own group of three surrounded me. And yet, they still let this elite scarecrow kill them in an instant. Having high attack power as an elite scarecrow is one thing, but being able to instantly kill someone is a completely different situation. High attack power can still be sustained by taking medicine to recover health, but instantly killing someone is another matter. In that case, there is no way. They are in a dilemma, and another member of the group says, We're here. Where are you? The two of them are overjoyed, tightly gripping their long swords and shouting, Brothers, quick, surround him. With the addition of three newcomers, five players quickly surrounded me. At this point, the players' emotions gradually stabilized. At the same time, I, on the other hand, was equally happy. As an elite-level scarecrow, 
Being surrounded by five people seemed a bit stressful, but in fact, they had no way to pose a significant threat to me, because all five players were only at level 2, relying on their meager attack power at that level. They couldn't even break through my defense, only causing one point of mandatory damage. Also, considering their current attack speed, with all five of them combined, they could only cause a total of five points of damage to me in one second. With my current 200 health points, it would be enough for them to keep attacking for quite a while, and if they fought to the death without retreating, they would all be blocked here. Soon, five seconds passed. The cooldown for the ripping skill is complete. This means, I once again have the ability to instantly kill a player. I didn't bother to choose, and directly used the ripping skill on the current target. This player inevitably turned into a soul light point, and my experience points increased by another 10 points. At this point, it's getting closer to reaching level 6. I only have 20 experience points left. Now, there are only 4 players left attacking me. Hold on, brothers. Reinforcements are gradually arriving, but a few players are still not giving up and continue to use flanking tactics against me. In the next 5 seconds, I'll use the Ren skill again. Another player turned into white light. I'm only 10 experience points away from leveling up to level 6. However, at this moment, another small team arrived. They joined the battle group. At this point, my health bar also dropped a bit. A full 45 points of health were worn away. I have to say, a large group of players can indeed have some impact on me. Originally, there were 3 players left, plus the newly joined 3 players. There are a total of 6 players launching attacks on me. For seconds have passed, and even with my 200 health points, I've already lost almost half of my health bar. Fortunately, I only need to wait for one more second for the Ren's skill cooldown to end. Then I'll be able to kill another person and gain experience points. Level up to level 6. At that time, my health will be fully restored. And various attributes should also increase further. But just as I was about to use the Ren's skill on the current target, but I found that this target unexpectedly moved back in advance, leaving my attack range at the beginning. As the low health player leaves, the remaining players instantly swarm in. Faced with the aggressive encirclement of players, I can only watch that player helplessly. Drink a red potion to restore full health. At the same time, that player also started laughing, my friends. I've already figured out this guy's attack pattern. His burst skill has a cooldown time of 5 seconds. This skill is used. As long as we're not at full health, he can one-shot me. But as long as we time it right, anticipate and dodge, he won't stand a chance. Other players suddenly realized and became alert as well. I have to say, I have a newfound respect for that player, turns out he's a skilled player. In such a short time, he's already seen through some of my details, but people who know too many secrets, have a short lifespan. My eyes were filled with killing intent, but the next moment, I found myself stunned in place. At this point, I could see numerous figures rushing towards me from all directions. These are player squads, and as far as the eye can see, one player group after another is charging towards me. Each team has three players, but at this moment, there are at least a dozen players charging towards us. I couldn't help but feel anxious, and in the next moment, I looked at the few people attacking me. I sneered. This is outrageous, why are you still showing off your skills to me? I no longer hesitate, swiftly towards a player on the side. Activate the tearing skill. In an instant, three bloodred numbers indicating 10 points of damage floated up, and after these three damage numbers, that player still felt a slight pain on their body. Health reduced by 4, and another damage number floated up. Damn, this burst skill will continue to cause bleeding. The player was frightened by the bleeding effect of the tearing. Of course, as a basic skill of a player, he was still trembling. He poured a bottle of red potion for himself. If I hadn't followed closely, his actions would have been flawless, the key issue is. Because he was startled by the bleeding effect. His final speed was just a tiny bit slower, just that tiny bit. But it made the difference between life and death. My current movement speed is already not inferior to these new players. When the opponent's reaction was slightly slow, I had already caught up and launched another normal attack. Health reduced by 11 points. Ordinary damage numbers floated up, but the result was extraordinary. At this moment, enough to empty that player's health bar. As the player is killed, they turn into white light. A prompt sound rings in my heart as I successfully kill the player, gaining 10 experience points. Level up by 1, current level 6, this prompt really doesn't stop. Player elimination condition fulfilled. Congratulations on your promotion to leader level scarecrow. At the same time, I only feel a warm flow spreading throughout my body, causing my health points to increase fivefold. Automatic recovery power of life is enhanced and gain a passive skill death defying. 
can greatly increase the amount of healing in battle, can also summon 4 elite scarecrows and 20 ordinary scarecrows to join the battle, and my tearing skill has advanced to become a group of crows, which can be summoned to attack the target. After checking the information, I was so excited. I originally thought I had only leveled up to level 6. There would be some improvement. But I didn't expect that after leveling up to level 6, the improvement would be so significant, I even gained a special move directly. I actually met the conditions for advancing within my race. I directly advanced from elite scarecrow to leader level scarecrow. I am very clear that, although it's just a stage leap within the race, what it represents is not just a simple little stage leap. He understands very well, if elite monsters are considered the little cats in the monster population, then the leader level would be the final boss in this population. The game had only been open for two weeks, and I had already become a wild monster. I'm not sure what's behind the game, but at least at this stage, a boss level wild monster is not something these players rushing up now can easily deal with. They can't easily deal with it. Generally speaking, in order to conquer a boss level wild monster, an entire large guild must actively prepare and cooperate seamlessly. It's like this casually formed roadside wild team. Wanting to conquer the boss and wild monsters is basically a fool's dream. The difference in strength is just too great. Watching those players still a little distance away from the weekend, ignoring the five players attacking me, I coldly smiled in my heart. At this moment, the five players against me still can only cause a mandatory one point of damage. And these five players can only cause a total of five points of damage to me in one second. Under the boss level desperate bonus, they can't even keep up with my health recovery speed. These ants can't even bite this elephant. I didn't wait any longer and directly used the newly acquired skill, Swarm of Crows. The skill evolved from Ripping Crows is an area of effect skill that can deal 20% to 40% of total attack damage to nearby targets. As I released the skill, the once clear sky was instantly covered by a swarm of black crows. Countless black crows flew straight towards the five players and then a large number of damage figures appeared. The single attack damage coefficient of the crow attack is somewhat low, after deducting the player's defense. Each attack can only cause 6 points of damage, and the swarm of crows can cause a total of 20 attacks. Divided among the five players, each person suffered 4 attacks. That is 24 points in total. Compared to the previous tearing skill, this swarm of crows attack actually reduces the single target instant burst damage. Although the five players were scared by the large amount of damage numbers, they realized that only a little more than half of their health had been lost. They finally felt relieved. However, they relaxed too early, apart from this instant attack damage. Similar to the previous tearing skill, the swarm of crows can cause a bleeding effect, and what's different is that the bleeding effect caused by the crows can stack. Just now, each of them suffered 4 attacks, with a 50% bleeding chance. Almost all of them triggered the bleeding effect two or more times. Three out of the five players triggered the bleeding effect twice. Stacking up, they were losing health every second. But two of them were even worse off. The obvious lucky attribute made them trigger the bleeding effect three times. Stacking up, they were losing 15 points of health every second. The two players watched as their health bars suddenly dropped from 16 points to just one. They both frantically chugged two or three bottles of red health potions. However, the low-level health potions they used didn't provide instant recovery. They required a certain amount of time for gradual recovery, right in front of me. They helplessly watched as their health regeneration speed was no match for the three-stacked bleeding effect. In the next second, their health bars were directly emptied by the bleeding effect. Congratulations on killing 5 players, gaining 50 experience points. You are 120 points away from leveling up. At this moment, I sneered and quickly opened my character's attribute panel. I had just reached level 6, too preoccupied with dealing with the 5 players in front of me. I didn't even have time to check my own attributes. When I saw that I gained one more attribute point after leveling up, I cursed under my breath. I then immediately allocated the point to the murder of crows. After reaching level 2, the murder of crows seemed much stronger, doubling the chance of causing bleeding. It also directly doubled the improvement. However, while I was checking the rest of my attribute improvements, a large group of players had already surrounded me tightly. Their gaze fell upon me. Suddenly, they became somewhat puzzled. This wasn't just an elite level scarecrow, but a boss level one. And the players I previously killed are also frantically warning others in the chat channel. To be careful, this is a scarecrow that can evolve. It was elite level before, but after killing players, it leveled up to boss level, its attacks are terrifying. Several of us were instantly killed by it, watching the messages in the chat channel. I'm a bit helpless, brother, aren't you exaggerating? When have I ever instantly killed several of you? 
Clearly, it took quite an effort. However, my strength still did not prevent this group of players from surrounding and killing me, because they feel that since I am a mutated scarecrow and can kill players to level up, if they defeat me, they will definitely get top quality growth type equipment. Watching everyone in the chat channel discussing how to deal with me, I couldn't help but sigh. Their calculations are indeed shrewd. The premise is that I am indeed a native scarecrow monster. Unfortunately, I have a brain that is no less than theirs, and I can see their entire plan in the chat channel. How can I just foolishly wait to die? If they don't come provoke me, it'll be over. Do you know what it means to take the initiative? The player's surrounding strategy changes again, followed by a large group of level 2 players, scattered around the leader level scarecrow. Each of you find some ordinary scarecrows to level up. They have already discussed it. Take this opportunity to raise your own level first, up to level 3. Use all the skills and equipment from the novice gift pack, then deal with this boss level scarecrow. Watching the many players going about their business, I shook my head inwardly. These guys' thoughts are really unfortunate, I must say. But I can't let them practice swordsmanship peacefully, and of course, I can't stop everyone. But with so many level 2 players gathered together, if I don't take advantage of this opportunity, how can I justify their hard-earned gathering? I directly targeted a player closest to me, rushed up, and used my skills directly. Crowd of Crows, originally a small range attack skill, but when used against a single person, its power becomes extremely terrifying. What would be the result if the full effect of 20 instances of damage were applied to one person? Health reduced by 8. Almost overlapping, 20 instances of damage numbers sort out instantly, causing tons of damage to this player. Naturally, this player who couldn't withstand tons of damage was completely defenseless, directly turned into a soul light spot. I, who successfully killed this player, effortlessly gained 10 experience points, and my proactive behavior deeply intimidated the other players. They are more afraid of my leader level scarecrow. They won't be afraid of him, brothers. We can respawn, but he can't. There are more of us, let's see who can outlast whom. For us, we are all new village players anyway, there's no punishment for death. What's there to be afraid of? This kind of talk spread among the player community. But it does make some sense, so many players are no longer panicking. They started to focus on leveling up. And the situation suddenly became very strange. Players worked hard to fight ordinary scarecrows for leveling up. While I was killing players everywhere, it felt like I was in a strange race to level up. Soon, someone in the player group excitedly shouted, I'm at level 3. Ha, huh, I finally reached level 3, everyone move aside and let me through. Another player shouted and rushed towards me. The number of players reaching level 3 gradually increased. At this time, I had also killed quite a few players in the recent hunt, successfully leveling up to level 7 and gaining 20 points of experience. Looking at the several level 3 players charging towards me, I frowned inwardly. For me now, even 3rd level players aren't much. But seeing the continuous level ups to level 3, I feel a bit uneasy. Since they can collectively level up to level 3, they can naturally level up collectively to higher levels. I can still control the situation for now, but once the players reach higher levels, I will be in real danger. But it's no use thinking too much now. I carefully observe the players in front of me, open the player information, and check their permissions. While I was focusing, the game immediately granted him new permissions. The player's name is I am the strongest wave. Level 3, with 60 health points. Wearing a set of level 3 armor and weapons, it's no wonder these guys have become so arrogant. It seems they put on the newbie equipment given by the game and even learn some newbie skills, letting them become conceited. It's necessary to help them rediscover their original intentions. For level 3 players rushed up almost simultaneously. For triple stabs hit me. Triple stab can cause 36 damage, far exceeding the attack coefficient of my swarm. With their current equipment of a newbie iron sword, they have an attack power of 10, 4 points each. Leveling up by attacking regular scarecrows is already a piece of cake for them. But even with the newbie iron sword equipped, the attack power of these level 3 players, facing me as I am now, it's still somewhat insufficient. My current defense has already reached 14 points, yet a triple stab comes at me. It only caused me 6 points of damage, so the 4 players only caused me 24 points of damage. For now, with my health already at 1000 points, this 24 points of damage doesn't even qualify as a scratch. Four players look at their highly anticipated triple combo. Using the fourth skill, the opponent's health bar doesn't seem to have budged at all, achieving such unfathomable depth. They were stunned for a moment, while at this moment I have no intention of being polite with them. Without even thinking, I directly summoned a group of crows. 
At level 7, my attack power has reached a terrifying level of 26. Even though these players put on novice leather armor, their defense has improved somewhat, but under this level of attack, they still appear excessively vulnerable, losing 14 health points. Each player endured 5 consecutive pressing attacks, their health bars instantly plummeted, dropping from full health of 60 points to a critical 10 points. And that's not all, these 4 players have also been stacked with at least 2 instances of bleeding effect. Then, damage numbers popped up again, reducing their health by 14 points. Now, my group of crows attack has leveled up to LV3, dealing 7 points of defense ignoring, bleeding damage per second, stacked 2 layers, directly depleting the remaining health of these 4 players, completing the kill. Successfully killing a player adds 15 experience points. The 4 players provided me with 60 experience points. Looking at the 80 experience points I've now reached, I feel very satisfied. After that, my gaze falls on the rest of the players around. Cruel at heart, inefficiency is good, now the hunting is about to begin. More and more players have reached level 3, yet until this time, they only realized that they have been thinking things too simple. Even when they reach level 3, the newbie equipment on their gear learned the newbie skills. They still couldn't possibly be a match for the leader level scarecrow, and this leader level scarecrow is too cunning. Don't even go to crowded places. Specifically target the solo or 2 to 3 players in a team. Everyone also understood, this leader level scarecrow of mine, has a small area burst attack skill, capable of instantly killing level 3 players, and the players I've found, basically had no chance to escape. Later on, as soon as they saw the crows flying in the air, many players' scalps tingled. Although level 3 players could cause some damage to the same level scarecrow, as long as they didn't form a siege, then the significance would not be great. I roamed around, the urge to kill at one point, was already getting hard to control, gathering low-level players like this for me to hunt. This kind of opportunity doesn't come often. In just a short time, I hunted enough experience points, leveled up again, reached level 8. And at this time, my attributes increased again. Dealing with these level 3 players is a piece of cake. There are more than 100 players gathered here, but under my hunting, they are completely powerless. The player's original idea was to grind me, a strawman, to death. But they never even had the chance to cooperate in a group attack. Even now, many of these new players have finally realized the truth. They know that relying solely on themselves, they cannot take down that high-level strawman. On the game's chat channel, someone has started seeking help from high-level players. Being able to see the player's chat channel feels like a bucket of cold water being poured over me. The enthusiasm for hunting players suddenly faded. Now, my experience is still far from reaching level 9. It's unlikely that I'll level up again before those high-level players arrive. Because in my sight, there is already a figure standing out from the crowd, walking towards me, not far away. I quickly open the player information function. This is a level 7 mage. The variety of attributes is dazzling to me. My heart skipped a beat, wanting to quickly escape the battlefield, but the magician just grinned. Immediately after, he held a 30 centimeter long magic wand in his hand, drawing a mysterious trajectory lightly. As I was chanting, a huge fireball the size of a sandbag came hurtling towards me. The fireball spell travels at an extremely fast speed, at least much faster than my current movement speed. There was no way for me to dodge this fireball spell. I was definitely going to get hit. With a puff, the fireball hit me squarely. I felt a burning pain and my health bar uncommonly dropped a segment, causing damage. The damage number jumped to 67. 1. But fortunately, after becoming the leader, my fire resistance had significantly improved. I wasn't directly hit by the fireball and although it immediately extinguished, I was still startled. This was the first time since becoming a scarecrow that I had seen such a powerful attack. The fireball spell is the first magic skill that new players can learn after changing to the magician class. It's the first magic skill that can be learned. A level 1 fireball spell can cause 40 points of magic damage, combined with the magic attack of a level 7 mage player, as well as the additional magic attack from equipment. It just dealt me 67 points of damage directly. This also indicated that, as a scarecrow, even though I had reached the same level, my magic defense was still zero. After all, as the lowest level monster in the novice village, the game didn't make the scarecrow too powerful. For me now, this is not good. I ignore the fact that I am already injured. Rush directly towards the opponent. The cooldown time for fireball is 3 seconds, shorter than my own skill's cooldown time. If I don't quickly deal with that guy, I will definitely be at a disadvantage. Although I, at level 8, have 1,250 health points, I can't withstand being bombarded with fireball by others. 
and there is more than one job-changing player who has rushed over now. Sure enough, I have attracted his hatred, that magician player named Elegant Man. He smiles smugly. He runs directly to the side, as a magician. But he runs very quickly, not losing to anyone else. I'm very unhappy. It seems that this guy, as a magician, also has skilled kiting techniques. However, a level 1 fireball is not used to kite high-level monsters. Fireball has a full second of chanting time. Maybe it won't be a weak point to fight some small monsters. But for me, as a high-level monster, it's a bit of a stretch. When he stops to cast the second fireball, I am already 4 to 5 meters in front of him. Dealing 67 damage, another damage number floats up. I ignore the burning pain. Quickening my pace, I continue to chase after the opponent. Help me carry it. The DPS mage player shouted. Relying solely on basic kiting skills, I can't handle this elite monster on my own. He also immediately turned to the many new player characters present. He challenged the new players to use their bodies to block the elite scarecrow's attacks. Isn't this the reason for their existence? However, his words were spoken. But the responders were few. Only two or three players hesitated and rushed forward, raising their novice iron swords, trying to test the waters by slashing at me. But at this moment, I had no mood to pay attention to them, letting their iron swords cut across my body. I directly passed by these few people, rushed to the front of that mage player. My damage is too high. Your attacks can't pull back the aggro at all, the mage shouted in panic, watching the elite scarecrow in front of me, reaching out to grab me, but I couldn't run away in time. The next fireball still has a cooldown time of 1 second. As a mage, he is extremely resistant to being attacked at close range by monsters. He is extremely resistant to it. Although he has reached level 7, the magician's health and defense are famously weak. I see the mage can't escape my attack. He keeps praying in his heart, but the attack of this scarecrow is quite powerful. I don't care about his prayers. Finally caught up with this mage player. I have no intention of letting him go easily. A flock of crows is flying in the air, the flock of crows has been summoned. The overwhelming flock of crows continuously attacks the mage's body. This time, there is no one else by my side. 20 attacks from the flock of crows. Mages must endure it alone. After being attacked 20 times by the level 3 flock of crows, the level 7 mage player finally turned into a soul light spot, becoming my experience points. I let you kite me. Feeling cold now? Although you can kite me, and your damage to me is high but I can withstand many fireballs. But once I catch you, you only have one chance. Just as I was feeling pleased, suddenly a sharp pain struck my heart from behind. My vision is a bit blurry, and a terrifying damage number appeared. Critical hit triggered successfully, causing 240 points of damage. After a piercing pain, I turned around. Even the excitement of just killing that mage player and gaining 35 experience points cannot conceal this intense pain. Suddenly, the air in front of me fluctuated. A figure appeared in the empty space where no one was present. The short blade in hand gleamed with a dark and eerie light. With just one look, I could tell that he was a thief. I already knew the details of the person in front of me. What a level 8 thief player, just with that one hit. It was the thief's basic skill, front strike. After a successful strike, the thief player quickly retreated, creating a safe distance. I scanned my line of sight to check the player's information. Among the numerous information, I found the skill section. Sure enough, this guy's front strike skill has already reached level 2. No wonder it hurt so much. Level 2 ambush can immediately grant the thief player 40 points of attack power. And it can also increase their critical hit rate by 20% and the ability to ignore defense. As an 8th level leader level scarecrow, my physical defense is a full 18 points. A single blow can cut down 240 points of my health. I can only say this guy is lucky, just one front strike directly triggered the ability to ignore defense and critical hit. The first time being ambushed after resurrection, I was really not happy. Just as I was about to retaliate, the thief had already retreated far away. Although thieves have much stronger attack and speed than magicians. But one thing remains the same, they are both squishy. I feel helpless, I want to pursue but I just can't catch up. This thief player is really sneaky, ever since the successful backstab earlier. He hasn't looked back, not even attempting a single empty attack towards me. Facing a player who is determined to escape, I have no way to catch up at this moment. I just hate that I don't have long-range attack skills. And at this time, more high-level players have already arrived. A player who looked at me like this, didn't even consider it. Directly raised the shield and charged up, still shouting Demacia in his mouth. Looking at the player charging up, a small round shield in one hand, a large chopping sword in the other, I immediately understood. 
This is a warrior player. Warrior players have always been known for their ability to withstand damage, especially if they choose the night path for their second job change. It will make it even more difficult for people to deal with. Facing the warrior player charging straight at me, I feel helpless, but I can only give up on the plan to pursue the thief player. The warrior player slashed at me, causing 10. 1 points of damage. The damage number floated up. Although much stronger than those novice players, but as a player who has already changed jobs, his damage is indeed quite eye-catching. My current physical defense is at 18 points. So this level 7 warrior player, including the attack power from the equipment, is only 28 points. I also reached out my hand towards the warrior player in front of me, and launched a normal attack. The damage was reduced, looking at the damage caused, I instantly felt a sense of frustration. Because I found that the damage I caused was equally pitiful, it seems I don't have the qualification to mock others. My attack power is 32 points, which means, the warrior player in front of me, has a defense power that reached 22, even higher than my leadership level monster. This is unbelievable, how can a leadership level scarecrow be so tough? I feel that in a short time, I can't deal with this warrior player at all. At the same time, an arrow flew through the air and hit me directly, causing 32 points of damage. This kind of damage is not excessively painful. Following the source of the damage, I saw a player, already pulling back the bowstring in their hand for another attack. It's an archer player. At least for a moment, I thought about turning and running away. Mages, thieves, warriors, and archers. Players of several professions have already set their sights on me, as the lowest level monster in the newbie village. Facing numerous class-changing players, the situation is probably going to be very grim. Even if I am the leader of the lowest level monsters, it won't be easy. But after a short period of thought, I dismissed the idea. The opponent has archers, and they have a magician. There's also a thief who can enter stealth mode. Even if I wanted to escape, I'm afraid I can't, so there's only one way left. Looking at the warrior player holding up a shield in front of me, I made a decision in my heart. The opponent's shield defense is about to end, so I'm dealing with it using regular attacks, while secretly preparing. As for that thief player, at this point, I don't know where he has gone. Perhaps he's hiding nearby. I currently have no way to deal with it, but only a few seconds left. Under the combined attack of the warrior player and the archer, combined with the previous injuries, my health bar has dropped to two-thirds. I silently recited three times in my mind. Then, regardless, I suddenly turned around. A swarm of crows attacked towards the small area behind me. Amidst the flying, there was a wave of air in front of me. A figure was forced to emerge from stealth mode. I didn't make a mistake. Monsters can still predict. An unbelievable sound rings out as my murder of crows descends. A figure suddenly emerges amidst the encirclement of crows. This person is the level 8 thief player from before. After ambushing me with the front strike skill earlier, he had distanced himself from the flock. And when the 15 second cooldown of the front strike skill was over, he stealthily approached again, attempting to stab me once more. With my current health, if this thief player were to ambush me again, my health would already be quite low. It would definitely be adding insult to injury. So I took a gamble, betting that the thief player wouldn't give up this perfect ambush opportunity. The result was indeed satisfying. For a brief moment, this thief player felt as if his intelligence was being crushed, just like a wild monster crushing him. But regardless, at this moment the thief player could only face the attack of the murder of crows. Level 3 crows relentlessly pecking at the thief player's body, withstanding all 20 attacks without missing a single one. But the thief player's defense ultimately surpassed before. A level 7 magician, combined with the thief's leather armor, resulting in a physical defense of 16 points. The crows pecking at him. Each hit only causes 3 points of damage. After a total of 20 attacks, only 60 points of damage were dealt. For low-level novice players, this can still result in a 1-hit kill. But even though the thief player is also fragile, at level 8, they already have 240 points of health. 240 points of health were reduced by 60 points, which is a bit scary, but it's not a complete disaster. I feel helpless looking at the damage caused by the mobs. I am well aware. As the most basic monster in the game, facing these advanced players, it's hard to have overwhelming advantages. However, the direct attack damage from the mobs, although it doesn't pose a strong threat to the thief player, the additional bleeding effect is a pleasant surprise. The level 3 mobs have a whopping 70% bleeding chance. Out of 20 attacks, the bleeding effect triggered successfully 14 times, not too good or too bad, just a normal level of success. The stacked bleeding effect of 14 layers is interesting, with each layer causing 7 points of damage. 
after stacking, it directly caused 98 points of bleeding. This time, the bleeding is more terrifying than the direct damage, the thief player's health has dropped from 240 points to 82 points. At this moment, his face turned dark. He used to level up in the novice village. I've never had the chance to encounter a commander-level scarecrow, so I have no idea how terrifying they can be. Seeing his health drop below half, he quickly drank a medium red potion. He stepped back. The medium red potion can restore 40 health points, but the recovery is slow. Using it during regular leveling is no problem, but this is a boss fight. He underestimated it. The rogue player stepped back. The warrior player in front of me promptly stopped me. The archer player over there also applied pressure, helping to cover the retreat of the rogue player. These clash-changing players are quite organized when they cooperate. I watched the scene. I sneered inwardly. No matter how good the cooperation is, or how far you run, do you really think the bleeding effect won't catch up to you? The next second, on the shadow of the retreating rogue player, another 98-point damage number jumped up. At this time, after the recovery of the medium red potion, his health barely recovered a bit, leaving 8 points. Seeing the rogue player's flashing health bar, I sneered inwardly. You're as good as dead, and at the same time, the rogue player had already escaped 6 or 7 meters away. His face was ashen, but in the next moment, a white light flashed. The third second of bleeding damage, jumping up and clearing his health bar, turning him directly into a soul light spot, successfully killing the player, gaining 40 experience points, I couldn't help but shake my head while feeling joy in my heart. Only a level 8 professional player can provide 40 experience points. This is too little. At this rate, when will I ever level up again? But it seems like something special just happened. His gaze fell on the thief player, where the soul light spot disappeared. In addition, some light began to shine. Killing the opponent, dropped the thief's dagger, priority pickup protection for one minute, pickup permission activated. I never thought that killing a level 8 professional player. The system unexpectedly granted me the permission to pick up equipment, this unexpected joy instantly excited me. I quickly headed towards where the thief's dagger had dropped. Some novice players, upon seeing the dropped equipment, couldn't resist their greed for a moment, and rushed over at lightning speed. The thief's dagger is a good equipment for novice players. However, when they reached the location where the equipment had dropped, they found that they couldn't pick it up at all. The equipment lying in front of them. The game system gave them a heartbreaking prompt. Equipment dropped, protection lost, cannot be picked up, protect time for one minute. And at this moment, I had already walked to where the equipment dropped. Three new players wanting to pick up the equipment stood by, foolishly looking at my towering figure. Players may act foolish, but I am not, and at this moment, the cooldown time for the murder of crows is up. I didn't need to think too much, I just directly used a murder of crows to peck at the machine. What level are you at to deserve picking up the equipment I killed for? With a murder of crows attacking, I gained 15 experience points. However, my appetite and vision have now improved. I don't really care about these 10 or 5 experience points, what I'm more concerned about now is this dropped equipment. At this time, the archer in the distance is still attacking. That warrior player is also in hot pursuit. But I bear the unpleasantness of losing health. In the end, I picked up the dropped equipment. At the moment of picking up the equipment, I couldn't help but think, in what form will this equipment appear in my hands, or, will I become the first scarecrow to wield a weapon? In the end, I overthought it, at the moment of picking up the equipment. The equipment instantly disappeared from my hands, and the system prompt sounded. Equipment picked up successfully, equipment attributes extracted for the first time, current extraction rate 50%. Rogue's dagger totals 10 points, Current extraction rate 50%. Attack power increased by 6 points. It was only when I reacted that I realized my attack power on the attribute panel had changed from 32 to 38. This was a pleasant surprise, at this moment. I turned around and looked at that warrior player. And the archer player in the distance. My eyes suddenly lit up. Before becoming a scarecrow, I used to be a player, and I was very clear that after a player changed jobs, the newbie protection would disappear. Since then, if killed, it was possible to drop equipment, or anything in the backpack. If these two job-changing players in front of me were killed, would they also drop the corresponding equipment? Of course, I knew that the probability of equipment dropping was very low, but there was still a chance in the wild team. I rushed towards that archer player. Even though the warrior player has been pestering me, I'm not very interested in the thick-skinned and tough warrior player. The newly changed warrior player lost because he didn't have taunting skills and helplessly watched me abandon him, but he had no way to stop me. The archer player was comfortably dealing damage. 
But when I targeted him, he could no longer leisurely focus on dealing damage. He put away his bow and arrows, turn around and run. I step by step pursued you, and behind me, the warrior player also steps and moves like stringing candied haws. Finally, the archer player made a difficult decision, he no longer runs away. Instead, he stopped and aimed his bow and arrow directly at my head. He realized that if he kept running, he wouldn't have a chance to attack, and the warrior player behind him also wouldn't be able to catch up to that leader level straw man. If it continued for a long time, the blood that was difficult to take from the straw man would probably slowly recover. He felt that he was a bit weaker than the wizard player. Through a skill of this leader level straw man was not a problem. By that time, the warrior player should also catch up. He could then calmly escape, his plan was not bad. This one sword strike. My health dropped suddenly to less than half, but the archer player did not expect that the leader in the straw man, as well as a group guarding passive skill, would summon a straw man when I was hit below half health. The warrior player behind me did catch up, but when he wanted to break free, only to find that I had no place to settle down, then countless summoning pillars lit up around, followed by four elite scarecrows, and ten ordinary scarecrows appeared out of thin air surrounding the archer player in the middle. This is my passive skill, group protection. It activates directly when the health is below 50%. Elite scarecrows and ordinary scarecrows, of course, cannot pose a threat to these professional players, but using them to block for a while is already enough. When the archer player struggles to clear the path of the ordinary scarecrows and eliminate the elite scarecrows, five seconds have passed and my next crow strike has already cooled down. Watching the archer player still trapped and unable to break free, I secretly sneer in my heart. The last crow strike, he and the warrior player did manage to endure together. But what about the next one? Can he still hold on? The archer profession and the thief profession, although their attack methods are different, but there is not much difference in their squishiness. Among all professions, they are only slightly tougher than mages. This archer player has already reached level 9. Among the several job-changing players present, he has the highest level. And indeed, among the job-changing players, he has caused the highest damage to me. The health bar I dropped is at least half his doing. And at this moment, he is surrounded by the scarecrow I summoned and is heavily surrounded. Earlier, he was hit by my flock of crows. But due to the support of the warrior player, coupled with the triggered bleeding effect, only caused him to drop more than half of his health. The level 9 archer player still has 165 points of health remaining at this moment. And with his equipped physical defense, he has a full 16 points. I first launched a normal attack to test my attack power after equipping the thief's dagger. A damage number of 22 jumped up, which pleased me greatly. My original attack power was only 32 points, but after equipping the thief's dagger, it increased by 6 points to 38 points. Then, the next moment, of course, came the terrifying flock of crows. This one flock of crows directly caused 120 points of damage to the archer player. 120 points of damage, of course, is still not enough to instantly kill the archer player with the remaining large portion of health, but it was enough to leave the archer player with low health. This time, my luck was not too good. 20 attacks only triggered the bleeding effect successfully 10 times. The 10 layers of bleeding effects added up, causing a direct 70 points of damage per second. The archer player directly turned into white light, becoming a soul light, providing me with 45 experience points. Now I am only 315 points away from leveling up an experience. However, at this time, I am more concerned about the archer player being killed. Whether there is any dropped equipment, the opponents drop after being killed, the archer has priority to pick up for one minute. I have to say, my luck is actually not bad. At this time, nearby new players no longer foolishly come forward to pick up. They have already understood that there is a pickup protection time for dropped equipment. It's impossible to lose within one minute after they kill the drop. And to last one minute in my hands, neither the leader nor the scarecrow would even dare to think about it. At this moment, I'm naturally too lazy to pay attention to them. Now, my mind is already focused on the newly dropped equipment. Successfully picked up the archer's leather armor. With the system's attribute extraction, my physical defense instantly increased by 2 points, from 18 to 20. Although it's just an increase of 2 points, every little bit helps. I have no complaints. I am facing the only remaining warrior player. I feel even less pressure now. Although he now has only about half of his health left, the warrior player's attack power is not strong. He can definitely hold on. The next moment, the warrior player strikes me with a sword, causing only 8 points of damage. 
While my ordinary attack hits the warrior player, reducing his health by 16 points, it's a tit for tat in terms of damage output during the battle. I have completely overwhelmed the opponent. If no one else intervenes, I could even rely on regular attacks to wear down the warrior player until he perishes. Furthermore, I have the crow swarm burst skill. To kill the warrior player, I may only need to wait for two more skill cooldowns. The warrior player is also feeling the pressure, shouting loudly for friends in the newbie village to come help. Hurry up and come help me out. My friends will arrive soon. Don't let this scarecrow player disengage. If he disengages and regains full health, our previous efforts will be in vain. But the player is not wrong. Boss level monsters like this are different from regular ones. They are different from regular monsters. There is a special setting, which is that once the boss level monster loses its target, it will exit the battle after a certain time, and instantly recover to full health and mana. However, I have seen through and directly killed the attacking method of the job-changing player. These new village players are not willing to step forward. Come on, senior, we believe in you. You can do it, we are here to support you. A new player said this, seeing that those new players cannot be persuaded. The warrior player felt depressed, but he had no choice, he tilted his head and drank a bottle of red potion. He raised the small round shield again, silently praying in his heart, praying that he could hold on until the reinforcements arrived. I looked at the warrior player who raised the small round shield again, and felt a bit hesitant in my heart. If I persist, as long as no one comes to help the warrior player, it shouldn't be difficult for me to kill him, but that would take quite a long time, and what I lack the most now is time. My health bar has already dropped below half. If I continue to be deadlocked with the warrior player for too long, and if a new job-changing player joins the battle, I will be very passive. In a moment of thought, I suddenly turned around, rushed towards those new players who are watching from the sidelines. At this moment, I have decided not to entangle with those warrior players anymore. Instead, I will directly launch an attack on those new players, who can also provide me with experience points. Killing these new players is much easier than dealing with those transitioning warrior players. And at this moment, for some reason, I watched the leader and the scarecrow rushing towards those new players. The warrior player's reaction was obviously a beat slow as well. Unable to stop, I rushed in front of many new players. But the warrior player himself followed behind, neither fast nor slow. Always within the aggro range of me, the leader, and the scarecrow, preventing me from accidentally leaving the battle. At this moment, I completely ignored the warrior player following behind me. I just launched an attack on the group of new players. Launched an attack. Crowd of crows, directly attacking, my crowd of crows for the transitioning players. As long as they are attacked separately, the threat is not significant. But for these low health, low defense new players, it's a different story. Most of these new players are only at level 3 in terms of their defense. Even with beginner equipment, it's only 6 points of defense. I now have an attack power of up to 38 points, and the skill crowd of crows is unleashed. Each time the jet lands, it can cause 16 points of damage. With my AoE jet landing, there are exactly 5 new players within the range. Each player has been hit 4 times. They were instantly killed. The game's alert sound kept ringing, and I instantly earned 75 experience points. The experience reward gave me full motivation, and my straw palms were like a sickle, continuously reaping in the new player group. Until the experience points reached 480, my level also saw another increase. Meeting the conditions for advancement within this race, I was promoted to the level of Straw Monarch. Unique Talent Royal Decree advanced to Imperial Decree, increasing life points tenfold and enhancing automatic life recovery. Unique Talent Clan Protection, when advanced, life points decreased to 50%. The number of summoned straw men doubled. Awakening the Monarch Sickle increased the attack range by 3 squares. Monarch Sickle Passive Skill Energy Storage, completing the Monarch Sickle can activate a consecutive kill. Special Effect, increases attack speed by 100% and movement speed by 20%. Duration, 20 seconds. After receiving the game alert sound, I felt excited but also somewhat dissatisfied. My usual skill AoE jet landing unexpectedly did not evolve. But this is just a minor flaw. Looking at my current attributes, even I have to admit. It seems like I've become even more powerful in a twisted way. With my current stats, I can really take on players. Can anyone in the newbie village defeat me? As I looked at the few players who had come to me, a sly smile crept onto my face. Come on, you scrubs. My lord's sight is already eager. Looking at the approaching players who had changed jobs, I held the lord's chain in my hand, my confidence at an all-time high. In that moment just now, I had already opened my stat panel and seen my current stat strength. 
My previously meager health, after advancing, skyrocketed to 3,000 points. My attack power had also reached over 68 points. At the same time, the Lord's Scythe I obtained after advancing also provided me with an additional three squares of attack range. The properties of the equipment I picked up will be carried by the Lord's Scythe. After reaching a certain level of additional properties, the quality of the Lord's Scythe will improve. After reviewing the information, I suppressed the wild joy in my heart. I casually allocated the skill point I obtained from leveling up to the Crow Swarm skill, raising it to level 4. Then I looked up again, looking at the several players who had changed jobs in front of me. These few job-changing players have quite a complete class setup. There are warriors, archers, and mages among them. There's even a medic who can heal and restore health for teammates. And adding to that, the players who were previously killed by me. I have quite a few professional players to deal with. But I'm not afraid, I charged directly with the king's scythe in hand. I've killed so many new players before. But due to the game's protection of newbies, these players didn't even drop a single piece of equipment. Although, I don't really care for their newbie equipment. But now that I have the king's scythe, I can't be picky. Looking at the scarecrow in front of me, wielding a large black scythe, I charged. The new professional players were all taken aback. Is this the leader level scarecrow? Why does it have a weapon? This is clearly a king level scarecrow, not a leader level scarecrow. Open your eyes and speak. Since when did monsters have the king level rank? How come I've never heard of this? Guan, you're causing trouble. Wasn't it said to be a leader level scarecrow? How did a king level one suddenly appear? The one called Guang is the same person who has been confronting me all along. The warrior player shook his head at this point, saying that previously, it was indeed a leader level one. Just killed a lot of new players. Just leveled up to become a monarch. No way, will he level up again? What if he levels up again? Becoming some terrifying thing. While a few people were chatting, they were already taking action. Then brother Guang and the new warrior player together, consciously moved to the front. While the mage and archer players sensibly moved back, the only mage player was just between the warrior players and two ranged attackers. Although the physician can't resist as well as a warrior, they are still much better than the archer and mage. Normally, casting a few attacks is not a big problem, but at this moment, I couldn't be bothered and just charged at the two warrior players in front of me. Went around directly to charge at the physician player at the back. My plan was very clear in my mind. The opponent has a physician who can heal. It's not meaningful to just fight with the two warriors. It's better to just take out the physician, then slowly deal with the others. My plan is not wrong. However, facing these two warrior players, it's not very easy to bypass them. Two warrior players raised their small round shields, using their bodies to block my path. Meanwhile, in the distance, the magician had already used their first skill. Surprisingly, it wasn't the novice magician's commonly used fireball. I felt the ground beneath my feet becoming soft, sinking more than 20 centimeters in an instant. My body lost its balance a bit. My movement speed suddenly dropped, this was the line kill technique. This was also a newly transferred magician. One of the beginner spells that can be chosen. Line kill technique is different from fireball spell. As an entry level spell for magicians, line kill technique does not have any attack power, it can only be used as a support. And if the magician has just transferred, they cannot learn a second spell before reaching level 10. You, as a line killer without any attack power, trying to level up to 10 by killing monsters alone is extremely difficult. Unless there is a team that can take him along to level up together. At this point, I instantly understood that this time I encountered a small but perfectly formed group, and things seemed not as simple as I had imagined. But when I thought about my promotion to the Lord level and had not yet tested my current strength, Let's try it out with these two annoying warrior players in front of us. Crow, I silently recite in my heart, and the scythe of the monarch swings. I have already used the crow skill at level 4. Facing two warrior players holding small round shields, equipped with shield defense skills. My crow still inflicts 26 damage each time. Each of the two warrior players has borne 10 attacks. Instantly lost 260 health points. These two warrior players are only at level 7. They only have 360 health points. With this attack, their health bars have been reduced by more than half. Seeing only 100 health points left, the faces of the two warrior players turned pale. And it's not over yet, the pecking blood rate of the level 4 crow has reached 80%. After 10 packs, each person has accumulated 8 instances of bleeding. Now, the crow's pecking causes 8. 8 layers of bleeding with each instance. This directly caused each of them to lose another 64 health points, 
And now, each of the two warrior players only has 36 health points left. The next bleeding effect will be enough to take them away, at this point, even if they chug red potions. It's probably too late for them to turn the tide, but I can't be bothered to wait for the next second of bleeding. He raised the Lord's sickle and swung it down directly. Two prominent 47 damage numbers popped up, followed by two flashes of white light. Originally, the two warrior players intended to resist to the end of time. They instantly collapsed to the ground. Although the situation was already difficult enough, they still did not expect that the Lord's sickle in my hand is actually a weapon capable of area attacks. The originally well-coordinated team turned into a complete explosion of the players on the spot. They had just set up their formation, and it was all over. The medic player also widened his eyes, as he had just been about to heal two teammates. In the blink of an eye, the two teammates became soul light spots. There was simply no time to heal. On the chat channel, the player who had become a soul light spot desperately shouted, Retreat, retreat. We can't deal with this thing right now. Let's go back and discuss it first. Don't die in vain. I was actually scared by my own terrifying power, but looking at the information on the chat channel, I sneered inwardly. I raised the Lord's sickle and headed towards the medic, since I'm already here. Then, none of you should leave. After killing two warrior players, Zhou Chen, I, has gained 70 experience points. However, for him now, experience points are still secondary. The main thing is to deal with all these transfer players. The remaining two long-range attackers hesitated for a moment. They are still far away, and it would be quite easy for them to escape. No matter how strong the Scarecrow at the Monarch level is, they have to catch up with them first. At this distance, they should be able to retreat safely. But for the physician player who is closer, if the two of them don't help delay, he is likely to follow the fate of the two warrior players. Anyway, in the game, players can respawn after death, so the two long-range attackers don't find it too difficult to make a decision. The magician, watching Zhou Chen approach the physician, already had a plan in mind. His quicksand art skill cooldown was almost up, so as soon as he used it again, he could slow down the movement speed of the monarch-level scarecrow, allowing the physician player to escape successfully. However, he was too optimistic and didn't realize that Zhou Chen's monarch scythe had already completed its charge after killing the two warrior players with Crow Peck just now. The conditions for completing the charge of the monarch scythe, which was still at the ordinary level, were not difficult, requiring only 20 attacks on players. One Crow Peck was enough for the monarch scythe to complete its charge. Without waiting any longer, Zhou Chen immediately activated the monarch scythe's inherent scythe kill skill. In an instant, a faint black mist spread over the huge black scythe, then slowly flowed around Zhou Chen's body, enveloping him in a thin black mist. With scythe kill activated, Zhou Chen's attack speed instantly increased by 100%, and his movement speed also increased by 20%. While 20% movement speed may not seem like much, it was enough to be the last straw that broke the camel's back. In the blink of an eye, Zhou Chen was in front of the physician player, while the second quicksand art from the magician player in the distance still hadn't finished cooling down. As for the arrow shot by the archer player, the damage was like a mirage to him, and he couldn't be bothered. With his current defense, each arrow from the archer player could only cause minus 14 damage, which was truly just a scratch for him compared to his 3000 health points. At this moment, Zhou Chen had already raised the monarch scythe and swung it at the physician. After advancing to the monarch level, his attack speed had already reached the point of one attack per second, and now, with the boost from the scythe kill skill, his attack speed had become two attacks per second. Minus 50 minus 52 damage numbers appeared in succession. The physician player's defense, including equipment, had reached 19 points, only slightly lower than the warrior player, but under Zhou Chen's high attack power of 69 points, he still suffered of minus 50 damage. With his current attack speed, he could deal 100 points of damage in just one second. And this physician player only had 280 health points. Even without using the crow peck skill, it would only take him 3 seconds to kill the physician. Of course, that was assuming the opponent didn't heal. But as a physician, how could the opponent not heal? As Zhou Chen's scythe fell, the physician player instinctively used the physician's basic skill healing art on himself. Plus 80 this one healing art actually restored more health than Zhou Chen's single swing. However, unlike Zhou Chen's attacks, healing art had a 1.5 second cooldown. Under normal circumstances, this healing speed could indeed withstand Zhou Chen's normal attacks. The problem was that Zhou Chen was not in a normal attack state, but had activated the scythe kill skill. The physician player could heal 80 health points in 1.5 seconds, but in that same time, Zhou Chen in scythe kill mode could strike 3 times, causing 150 points of damage. Therefore, even a physician player with a healing skill like healing art could not withstand Zhou Chen's attacks. 
But at this moment, the distant magician player's skill had already cooled down, and a sand trap fell at Zhou Chen's feet. Zhou Chen instantly felt his steps becoming difficult, even with the Reaper's kill skill activated, increasing his movement speed by 20%, he probably couldn't run fast. Lao Mai, run, the magician shouted. Zhou Chen was helpless, he had wanted to try to kill the opponent solely with the Reaper's kill skill. But now, he had no choice, he couldn't just watch the opponent escape. Fortunately, the Crow Peck skill had cooled down, and ultimately he had to use this conventional skill to send off the opponent. As the Dark Crows flew, the physician player was instantly covered by the flock of crows. Even the two warrior players were left bitter under the Crow Peck, the physician player alone couldn't escape. As the physician player turned into a soul light, Zhou Chen noticed something faintly shimmering next to the soul light. With his experience, Zhou Chen was delighted, understanding that there was loot dropping again. Successfully killed player resurgence, dropped the skill book for healing. Zhou Chen was slightly stunned, the drop was actually not the equipment he had imagined, but a skill book? As a monster, what use did he have for a player's skill book? But at this point, he didn't think too much, he stepped forward and picked up the skill book. Successfully picked up the healing skill book, skill book attribute extraction, first time obtaining the skill, current extraction rate 50%. What the heck, skill books can also be extracted? Zhou Chen felt a bit dizzy in his head. Successful extraction of healing skill book attributes, current extraction rate 50%, healing amount plus 40. Reaper's Scythe additional skill healing, consumes 10 mana, healing amount plus 40, cooldown time 3 seconds. Looking at the additional skill on the Reaper's Scythe, Zhou Chen shook his head, not knowing how to feel for a moment. Honestly, compared to this healing skill book, he still hoped to get some equipment. After all, with his health of 3000 points, this time he could only recover 40 points of health, and it was still a skill with a cooldown time of 3 seconds, it was simply useless. However, something was better than nothing, Zhou Chen knew he couldn't be too dissatisfied. The effect of Sand Trap gradually disappeared, and watching the two long-range output players who had already escaped far away, Zhou Chen shook his head and gave up the idea of continuing the pursuit. He turned and rushed towards the new players who were still foolishly watching the battle. There were still about 10 seconds left for the Reaper's kill state, he couldn't waste it. After all, this was a skill with a cooldown time of 2 full minutes, and every activation had to be maximized. The new players who were foolishly watching the battle on the side, never thought that trouble could come from just watching. Seeing the lord level scarecrow carrying a black scythe walking towards them, they only woke up as if from a dream and scattered in a panic. However, it was too late to think about escaping at this point. Zhou Chen was still in the reaper's kill state, with a 20% movement speed bonus, how could these new players outrun him? In the blink of an eye, he caught up with a few players, raised the Lord's Scythe in his hand, and with a gentle swing, these players turned into soul lights. The experience gains were natural, but unfortunately, these were all new players, with the protection of the novice period, they wouldn't drop anything. Zhou Chen didn't expect anything from them, he just closely followed the large group of new players, continuously attacking with the Lord's Scythe in his hand. With his current high attack power of 69 points, Facing these new players with generally only 60 points of health and only a few points of defense, a single normal attack could take them down. And his Lord's Scythe could increase the range of attack by 3 squares, often clearing out a half circle of players with a single normal attack. At this moment, Zhou Chen felt like he was effortlessly mowing down enemies in the game, feeling extremely refreshed. In return, he gained a large amount of experience points. Although the new players were running fast, Zhou Chen successfully harvested over 20 players. Successfully killed player triple X, gained 15 experience points. Successfully killed player triple X, gained 15 experience points. The experience points gained information flooded the screen, and Zhou Chen didn't have the mind to count them at that moment. When all the players within his line of sight had fled, and he couldn't find any more players, Zhou Chen stopped and opened the panel to observe the experience points he had gained. At this moment, the reaping skill had already expired, and he had exited the reaping state. After the recent round of attacks, his scythe as a monarch had already recharged, but the two-minute cooldown time had not yet passed, so he couldn't reactivate it. Of course, even if there were targets, Zhou Chen wouldn't use it now. He counted and found that he had gained a total of 420 experience points just now, so easily harvesting them had earned him more than battling those job-changing players. Mowing down enemies was indeed the best way to earn experience and level up. Unfortunately, the new players had all fled, making it difficult to find more. However, Zhou Chen didn't intend to give up and continued to patrol to the west, hoping to find more players to kill and gain experience points. However, news of a monarch-level scarecrow appearing in the scarecrow area had been broadcasted in the chat channel. At this moment, all the players in the 12th newbie village, 
whether they wanted to level up or not, dared not enter the scarecrow area. Although new players had newbie protection and wouldn't suffer any losses from dying, who would like to die for nothing? The news spread wider and wider, gradually extending beyond the chat channel of the 12th newbie village to the entire game's chat channel. After spreading in the game's chat channel, this news also reached the official forum of the Stardust game. Perhaps many players were not online at the moment, but they often paid attention to the game's official forum. Once this news reached the forum, it would quickly be known by many players. The post about the Monarch-level Scarecrow gradually became the hottest post on the game forum. Whether in the game or outside the game, more and more players were paying attention to and discussing this matter. After learning about the hot post in the game's chat channel, Zhou Chen was shocked and thought to himself that something was not right. He realized that he had been too reckless before. It was indeed satisfying to chase and kill players and gain experience points, but it would make him too hated and attract the attention of those with ill intentions. As the saying goes, people fear fame as pigs fear fattening. At this moment, Zhou Chen felt like a fat pig worried about being slaughtered. In order to facilitate players, the game allowed players to log into the forum directly in the game. With a sense of crisis, Zhou Chen was eager to try and see if he could log into the forum at this moment. He was very anxious to see what the trend was on the forum. Game forum permission activated, player can use the game forum. The prompt sounded, and the forum permission was indeed open to Zhou Chen. He eagerly logged into the forum from the game, and without needing to search, a hot post was already at the top. Newbie village shocked by the appearance of a monarch-level scarecrow, massive players hunted, is it a game bug or an official easter egg? Seeing such a headline, Zhou Chen felt a pang of regret and quickly entered the post. Some prosperity is like a dream, I believe everyone knows that the boss-level monsters, this is the first time they have been discovered. I personally think this is a bug caused by the game's lack of rigor and must be banned. Zero scattered splendor, plus one overbearing and awe-inspiring, plus one can't afford to play, he, if you can't beat it, just ban it. You really know how to play. Zero scattered splendor, what's the point of showing off here? Can you beat it? Overbearing and awe-inspiring, exactly, anyone can talk tough. If you're so capable, go kill that boss-level scarecrow. Which friend is here to claim the name, personally, I think the key is not here, but that scarecrow will level up and evolve. I remember, at first it was just an elite scarecrow, and now it has evolved into a leader-level scarecrow, and then into a boss-level scarecrow. Who knows what it will become next? It's really not me, yes, the friend upstairs is right. If every scarecrow or even other monsters can level up and evolve like this, what levels are we players training? We're just being used to level up by others. Brother admired by thousands of people square root, yes, I can testify, my wife and I were probably the first to discover that scarecrow. At first, it was just a normal scarecrow, not even an elite. Sister doted on by everyone square root, yes, my husband is right. Everything is futile, it's useless to say more. Let's submit feedback first and see how the official handles it. At this moment, Zhou Chen, who was reading the posts, furrowed his brow, if he had one. The fact that it caused such a sensation was beyond his expectations. Would the game company discover the fact that he had crossed over into a scarecrow? Would they use the excuse of fixing the bug to eliminate the scarecrow? Or would they discover that he had an accident while using the game equipment and help him return to normal life? Thinking of this, Zhou Chen no longer cared about anything else and began searching for related information such as game equipment accidents on the forum. After a long time, Zhou Chen stopped searching the forum and furrowed his brow. He did not find any posts related to game equipment accidents. Unfortunately, as a wild monster, he was only allowed to use the official game forum and could not access the broader internet world. The incident of the game equipment accident was his own experience, and with the popularity of Stardust, he did not believe that such a thing would go unnoticed. There was only one reasonable explanation, that the game's official had used unconventional means to block this news. Zhou Chen had enough reason to believe that the game's official would make such a choice, after all, the incident of the game equipment accident was too unfavorable for the game's official. Since there was no way to find information about the game accident, the highest priority now was to escape the danger and not let the game's official fix him. He vaguely felt that the way he evolved after becoming a scarecrow was extremely unusual. Perhaps, in the eyes of the game's official, he was also an unknown bug and they would try to fix him. What he did not know was that at this moment, in a certain part of the game company's headquarters, there was a heated discussion taking place, what are you doing? Such a big thing, didn't you find it during the previous tests? Directorly, it's not our fault. Honestly, the authority we inherited to modify the main program of the game is limited, and you never reveal where the main program comes from. When the game undergoes some unpredictable minor changes, we have no way to deal with it. Don't argue with me about this. I'm asking you, can you and your subordinates solve it? 
If not, there's no need for us to cooperate. Okay, at this point, we can only release the update of the new version in advance, which is one of the rare permissions our team has. Then let's go handle it. Mr. Lee, where does Stardust come from? Just focus on your work, don't ask what you shouldn't ask. Unable to find any useful information on the official game forum, Zhou Chen returned to the game once again. He had thought about posting for help on the forum to see if there was a way to get someone to understand the real situation, but considering that the official forum was definitely under the control of the game company, he dismissed the idea. Just as he returned to the game, he found that someone had entered the scarecrow area. Which player was so fearless? Zhou Chen approached with curiosity. A series of words burst out from the player in front of him. Hey, brothers and sisters, as you can see, Roland has now entered the scarecrow area of the 12th newbie village. Next, I'm going to introduce you to the scarecrow lord if it doesn't refuse. Ha, huh, is Roland not afraid to encounter the lord level scarecrow in the scarecrow area? To be honest, Roland is really scared, but in order to give you all a live broadcast, Roland can only go all out. Watching the popularity of the live broadcast room soar, Roland felt very proud. As a game anchor, she had been ridiculed as a decorative anchor because of her poor skills. If she only wanted to rely on her looks, the word decorative would actually be a compliment to her. The newly released game Stardust captured the hearts of countless players as soon as it appeared, becoming the most popular game and squeezing out the existence of other previous games. Roland saw the potential of the Stardust game and actively immersed herself in it. Unfortunately, as the woman known as the decorative anchor, she had been in the game for so long and still couldn't even leave the newbie village. She had already planned to give up, but unexpectedly, fate gave her a chance. Suddenly, there was a burst of news about a lord-level scarecrow on the official game forum, causing a sensation. And this lord-level scarecrow happened to come from the 12th newbie village where she was. This was a perfect opportunity tailored for her by fate. Each person could only have one game account, and none of the other anchors were still stuck in the newbie village like her. Even if they wanted to broadcast the news about this lord-level scarecrow, they couldn't. After learning the news, she didn't care about anything else and immediately opened the live broadcast room, entered the game, and headed to the scarecrow area in the newbie village. What she wanted to do was not complicated at all, and could even be said to have no technical content. She just wanted to broadcast everything about the lord-level scarecrow up close, for those high-level players who couldn't enter the scarecrow area in the newbie village to see, and to open their eyes. As for whether she would die or not, it was just a game, and she was not afraid at all. And she realized that her luck was really good. She had just started the broadcast and had already encountered the Lord Level Scarecrow. Wasn't the figure coming towards her with a huge black scythe the Lord Level Scarecrow? Ordinary scarecrows could not have such a cool appearance. Wow, I really saw it, Roland is amazing. Yes, this Lord Level Scarecrow is not simple just by looking at its appearance. No wonder so many newbies have been killed. Unfortunately, I can't enter the scarecrow area again. Roland, can you zoom in the camera? I want to admire the Lord's style up close. Watching the sudden popularity of the live broadcast room, Roland was overjoyed. She glanced into the distance and made up her mind. Siblings, watch closely, I'm going to link up with the scarecrow now, so everyone can hear its roar. The player in the first broadcast room was puzzled, do scarecrows roar? They don't? They do, Goddess Luo said they do, so they must, I've decided to become a fan of Goddess Luo from today onwards. If anyone dares to call Goddess Luo a decorative anchor, I'll take them on. Yeah, take them on. As Luolan approached, some viewers started to worry, Goddess Luo, you better not get too close, be careful that the monarch level scarecrow doesn't snap you. Brother, how can you say that? Even if you get snapped, Goddess Luo won't. That's right, Goddess Luo is beautiful, kind, and brave. Even a monarch level scarecrow wouldn't dare to harm Goddess Luo. Yes, I also think so. Just by looking at the scarecrow's eyes, you can tell it's captivated by Goddess Luo. Brother, even though I'm a fan of Goddess Luo, how can you tell the scarecrow's eyes when it has two black frames on its face? As the camera zoomed in, the monarch level scarecrow was indeed different from the ordinary scarecrow, not only was its figure more robust, but the black sickle in its hand also swung with great momentum. Wait, swung? In the next moment, a white light flashed through the first broadcast room, turning it into a white void. Goddess Luo, what's happening? Yeah, what's going on? After a while, Luo Lan's face reappeared in the first broadcast room. She was no longer as cheerful as before, but with a mournful face, she said, I was killed by that monarch-level scarecrow. Many people in the first broadcast room were indignant at the sight of Luo Lan's mournful face. Damn, that scarecrow went too far. If I could enter the scarecrow area, I would definitely go teach it a lesson. Goddess Luo, don't be sad, that scarecrow doesn't understand, let's not bother with it. 
Seeing the increasing popularity in the first broadcast room, Luo Lan, despite feeling uncomfortable, couldn't help but feel a little happy. She gritted her teeth, made up her mind, and said, Humph, it's just a scarecrow, it can't scare me. I'll continue and make sure to show everyone every aspect of its life in the first broadcast. Goddess Luo is mighty, she's got the scarecrow sorted out. At this moment, Zhou Chen, looking at the empty space in front of him, shook his head slowly. The player just now did indeed surprise him. She was already a level 6 player, just one level away from changing jobs, but instead of leveling up in other monster areas, she came to mess around with him. Even with just a little thought, one could tell that this might not end well. However, although the player was a bit foolish, she did provide him with 30 experience points, for which he had to thank her. After the news spread, no new players dared to enter this area. At this moment, Zhou Chen also dared not try to enter other monster survival areas. If he did, even a blind man could see that there was something wrong with this scarecrow. Perhaps at that point, the game officials wouldn't even need to consider, they would just fix this bug right away. Sigh, if only there were more fools like that player just now. Zhou Chen sighed in his heart, feeling somewhat dissatisfied. At this point, his experience points had reached 555-640, and he was not far from accumulating enough experience points to level up. When he was promoted to a monarch-level scarecrow, the prompt had mentioned that the next level up would enter a completely new stage. Zhou Chen was curious about this completely new stage and wondered if it might help him escape from his current predicament. However, he also knew that his idea was basically wishful thinking. In this situation, how could there be any fools willing to come to the scarecrow area? Then, he looked up and saw a figure once again. If viewed with the eyes of a normal man, the graceful figure that appeared in front of him was indeed the type that could easily accelerate one's heartbeat. But in the eyes of Zhou Chen, the appearance of Roland in front of him again was only valuable in providing experience points. Zhou Chen was certainly happy to see this female player again, but he couldn't help but feel a bit puzzled, not knowing what she was up to. She had already been easily killed by him once, and now she was coming back again. Could it be that this female player was a masochist? Zhou Chen suppressed his chaotic thoughts and tightened his grip on the scythe in his hand. As for Roland, who had already been associated with some strange fetishists in his mind, she couldn't help but tremble a bit at this moment. The simulation of the game was still too realistic, and looking at the terrifying lord-level scarecrow in front of her, Roland found it difficult to move her legs for a moment. In an instant, large rockets flew through the live broadcast room, and all sorts of rewards poured down as if they were free. Money emboldened people, and Roland suddenly felt her legs stop shaking and the cold sweat stop flowing. She even raised her middle finger to the lord-level scarecrow in front of her and arrogantly declared, Lousy scarecrow, if you have the guts, come and kill me. If it were any other time, Roland wouldn't have behaved like this. She actually had quite a bit of experience in how to behave like a proper lady. However, after mingling in the live broadcast circle for a long time, she gradually discovered some tricks. Sometimes, deliberately behaving a bit rough like this could bring her closer to her fans. Sure enough, after she acted like this, the live broadcast room suddenly became lively, and the gifts became even more extravagant. Ah, goddess Roland is mighty. Sister is awesome, this is how it should be, strategically despising the enemy. Some players who had been killed by Zhou Chen also entered the live broadcast room and shouted frantically, Sister is magnificent, she's venting our anger for us. Fortunately, Zhou Chen couldn't see the other party's live broadcast room at the moment, otherwise he would have thought he was the one about to be beaten up. He leisurely walked up and, upon hearing Roland's declaration, immediately launched a normal attack with the scythe. A newbie player like Roland at level 6 was not worth him using Murder of Crows. Two or three normal attacks were enough to take care of her. In the blink of an eye, the Roland in front of him turned into a white light. Watching the soul light disappear, Zhou Chen couldn't help but shake his head inwardly. It was truly a rare sight to see someone deliberately seeking death like this. Since the other party strongly demanded that he kill her, he could only reluctantly accept the experience points. Another 30 experience points were added to his account. Watching the spot where the soul light disappeared, Zhou Chen couldn't help but feel a bit excited. Would that person come back again? Little did Zhou Chen know that at this moment, Roland's live broadcast room was in an uproar. Ah, that hateful scarecrow has targeted our goddess Roland again. This is outrageous. If I hadn't just reached level 11 and couldn't enter the newbie village leveling area, I would definitely make this scarecrow regret it. It's too much, he's actually killed our goddess Roland twice in a row. Roland appeared in the live broadcast room once again. She looked at the increasingly lively live broadcast room with satisfaction. Although being killed twice by the scarecrow was a bit miserable, being able to exchange it for the popularity of the live broadcast room and gift rewards made her feel that it was all worth it. 
Brothers, let's send some gifts to goddess Roland and comfort her injured heart. The fan who said this immediately sent a large rocket, and other fans followed suit, generously donating. Seeing the internal staff starting to set the rhythm, Roland felt secretly delighted. She once again entered the scarecrow area. She's really back? Even Zhou Chen was somewhat surprised, but for the experience points that were delivered to him, how could he possibly let it go? Die. A white light flashed. Ah, she's been killed again. This heartless scarecrow, don't cry, goddess Roland, mwa mwa. She's back again? Dead. Damn it, my goddess Luo. In the live broadcast room, the goddess Luo was in tears, stirring the emotions of many fans. However, at this moment, Zhou Chen didn't care at all. His experience bar was finally full, and the long-awaited prompt sounded, successfully killed player Luolan, experience plus 30, level up plus 1, current level 10, scarecrow race advancement completed, will enter the race conversion promotion stage, open the race conversion experience bar, current experience bar full will be able to promote, current experience value 5 slash 1280. Next, it seemed like Luolan had a grudge against Zhou Chen, and came to the scarecrow area 5 or 6 times in a row. Although Zhou Chen didn't quite understand the other's intentions, he didn't hesitate to take the experience points that were handed to him. After several back-and-forth encounters, his current experience value had reached 185-1280. Zhou Chen even wanted to give the other a thumbs up. At this rate, could he rely solely on the experience points provided by Luolan to accumulate enough for the race conversion? If only it were so. Unfortunately, after five or six encounters, the guy named Luolan didn't show up again. This made him feel a little disappointed. Such a good experience farming target, and now it's gone, what a pity. If Luolan knew that the scarecrow in the heart of the monarch level player was thinking like this, she would definitely be furious. But for now, she didn't need to come to the scarecrow area anymore. Honestly, being continuously killed by the other party several times had also left a shadow in her heart. The heat in the live broadcast room had reached a new peak, and fans were asking her not to go to her death anymore. Being able to stir up the fans' feelings of pity was one of Luo Lan's secret techniques as a vase anchor with considerable popularity. As time passed, Zhou Chen spent a boring and long night in this game world. After Luo Lan left, no player dared to enter this area again, and Zhou Chen could only stand there foolishly all night. And when the sun rose in the game on the second day, Zhou Chen, who had been paying attention to the game's official forum, finally got the news he wanted to know. The forum was buzzing with discussions. The game's official announcement is out saying that the Monarch-level monsters are not a bug, but a new version of content. Yes, the full implementation of the Monarch-level monsters will be completed online in 30 minutes. Since it's the first Monarch-level monster to appear in the game, the game's official also plans to hold an event for the Scarecrow. At this moment, Zhou Chen couldn't help but feel nervous. The event that the official was going to hold was directly related to him, and it was something he really didn't want to see. But no matter how unwilling he was, he couldn't change the game official's decision. The game's first monarch level monster, the monarch level scarecrow hunt, is waiting for you. The content of the event was actually not complicated. Due to the powerful strength of the monarch level scarecrow, the game's official decided to temporarily open the permission for specific players to enter the novice village monster area. These specific players referred to the job changing players under level 15. According to the game's previous settings, in order to protect the smooth development of new players, once a player exceeded level 10, they could no longer enter the monster area of the novice village. However, the strength of this monarch level scarecrow was too powerful, and it was difficult for players under level 10 to deal with it. Players complained about this, and the game's official made some concessions. Allowing only players under level 15 to enter the scarecrow area was the biggest concession the game's official could make. If higher level players were allowed to enter, the event would be meaningless due to their powerful strength. The announcement clearly stated that in this monarch level scarecrow hunt event, Players who ultimately kill the Monarch level Scarecrow will receive a large amount of rewards, and other players will also receive corresponding benefits based on the damage they inflict on the Scarecrow. However, to maintain balance, the game officials have made a new rule. If any player above level 10 enters the Scarecrow area and dies, the experience points and equipment drop penalties will be doubled. Whether to take the risk and participate in this hunting event is entirely up to the players to decide. After reading the announcement, Zhou Chen's expression was grim, if he could show any expression at all. Without further delay, he hurried back into the game, as the hunting event mentioned in the announcement was set to begin in 30 minutes. He couldn't avoid it and could only prepare himself. However, he realized that there was almost nothing he could do to prepare. As a scarecrow monster, apart from the monarch's sickle in his hand, he had nothing else. After some thought, Zhou Chen tried to move towards a more remote location. 
He was well aware that those participating in this event must have come from the novice village, and he couldn't stay near it. By keeping a distance, it would be less likely for those who came out to search for him to easily find him. Once they inevitably created some distance, he could then take them down one by one. Although the attributes of the monarch-level scarecrow were powerful, Zhou Chen was not blindly arrogant. Facing a group of untransferred novice players, he could certainly mow them down effortlessly, but facing a group of transferred players working together, it would be a bit difficult for him. A storm was brewing. Inside and outside the game, players eager to participate in the event were rubbing their hands, waiting for the event to start in 30 minutes. As for Roland, known as the decorative anchor, she was inexplicably excited at this moment. She never expected her luck to be so good, and nothing could stop her. The situation of the monarch-level scarecrow she first broadcasted yesterday had already attracted a huge amount of attention to her livestream, and she never expected the game officials to launch such an event today. She was the only well-known anchor who could enter the area of the novice village's monsters, and such an opportunity was clearly presented before her. With a little time left, she had already entered the game and connected to her livestream. Ha, ah, my darlings, it's me, Roland, again. From the first time until now, I still remember the pain of being killed by the monarch-level scarecrow yesterday. But today, there will be countless warriors to help me seek revenge. You rotten scarecrow, just you wait. There were already quite a few people in the live stream room, and they all chimed in, Roland is so amazing, even the game officials can't stand seeing the scarecrow bully you, so they arranged an event for everyone to seek revenge for you. Hee <laughs> hee, it's possible, maybe among the fans of our goddess Roland, there are insiders from the game officials. Ha, huh, count me in. I thought as a level 14 player, I wouldn't be able to seek revenge for Roland, but unexpectedly, fate has given me this opportunity. Roland, remember to give me more screen time later. Sure, sure, this brother named Big Banana Roland, Roland will remember. Ha, huh, there are still 5 minutes left before the event starts, and I unexpectedly encountered that monarch level scarecrow again. Is it fate that we keep crossing paths? Watching the monarch level scarecrow hiding in a remote location, Roland proudly broadcasted and aimed the camera at the scarecrow. Ah, it's a pity this scarecrow can't speak, otherwise, I would really like to interview it and ask about its current state of mind. Zhou Chen, who thought he had hidden himself well, felt a surge of anger when he saw Roland appear in front of him again. You want to ask about my state of mind? Then I have only one word. Damn. The black sickle waved, and white light flashed. The live stream room was filled with a white expanse, and many fans knew that Roland, the goddess, had been killed by that monarch-level scarecrow again. It seems that the repeated broadcasts of the goddess Luo have thoroughly angered the sovereign-level scarecrow. In fact, Roland and her fans misunderstood Zhou Chen. Zhou Chen was not angry that Luo Lan came to bother him. What made him angry was that the sovereign-level scarecrow hunt was about to start, and he had just managed to hide himself. However, Luo Lan relentlessly came to broadcast and expose his location, rendering his hiding meaningless. After killing the broadcaster Luo Lan, Zhou Chen quickly changed his position. Although this new position was not as good as the previous one, he had no choice. The previous position had already been broadcasted by the other party, and although he didn't know how many people were in the other party's broadcast room, he still had to be cautious. Time passed by, and finally, it was time for an update. All players in the game received a game announcement, version 1. One update, the highest level of wild boss has been increased to a sovereign level, which is stronger than the leader level boss. Players, please be cautious in strategizing. Special event in Newbie Village on the 12th, Sovereign Level Scarecrow Hunt officially begins. From now on, players from level 10 to 15 can enter the Scarecrow Wild Area without restrictions, and the death penalty is doubled. Zhou Chen had the privilege to use the game chat channel and also received this announcement at the same time. At this moment, players started entering the Scarecrow Wild Area. The fastest to rush in were the job-changing players from level 10 to 15. They had never had the chance to enter the wild area of the newbie village before and could only learn some information about the sovereign level wild boss from forum posts. Now, with the opportunity to experience it firsthand, they naturally couldn't resist. Moreover, they were extremely confident in their own strength and were determined to obtain the rewards from the event, hoping to be the first to find the sovereign level scarecrow. On the other hand, job changing players below level 10 were already familiar with the strength of the sovereign level scarecrow and did not have enough confidence in their own abilities, so they were not willing to be cannon fodder at the forefront. Zhou Chen hid in a new location and finally saw a figure within his line of sight. This time, it was not the annoying female broadcaster. Running to his side was a thief player. Zhou Chen used his permission to view the player's information and saw everything. 
Player name. Advise you to keep a low profile. Occupation. Thief. Level. 14. Equipment. Thief's dagger. Fine. Attack plus 24. Critical hit rate plus 5%. Equipment. Thief's leather armor. Fine. Physical defense plus 8. HP plus 80. Equipment. Thief's bracelet. Fine. Strength plus 3. Agility plus 3. Zhou Chen was very clear that this thief player in front of him was completely different from the job-changing players he had encountered before. When players reached level 10, they could leave the newbie village and receive a set of fine-grade equipment from the career change instructor. When players reached level 10, they would also unlock the third equipment slot, allowing them to equip an additional bracelet in addition to their weapon and clothing. This was a significant boost to a player's strength. Furthermore, after reaching level 10, players would gain the privilege of freely allocating attribute points. During the level 10 to 20 phase, players would receive three free attribute points for each level gained, which they could allocate according to their needs. Adding strength could increase attack power, while adding agility could increase attack speed and movement speed, and so on. In short, allocating points could make players stronger. After reaching level 10, Zhou Chen also gained the corresponding privileges. After receiving the three attribute points for leveling up, he immediately allocated them to strength. One point of strength could increase attack power by three points, so by allocating these points, his attack power increased by nine points out of thin air. In addition to the automatic increase in attributes when leveling up to level 10, his attack power has now reached 69 plus 24, which is 93 points. His own leveling did not bring the upgrade of the Lord Sickle, and the Lord Sickle still adds 24 points of attack. It seems that in order to upgrade the Lord Sickle, he still needs to pick up equipment and use the extracted equipment attributes to add on. As for the familiar skill crow pecking, he naturally added the skill point obtained from reaching level 10 without hesitation. At this moment, crow pecking has been upgraded to LV5, becoming much stronger. When faced with this thief player who came knocking at his door, Zhou Chen had no intention of being polite and was already prepared with his skills. However, the next moment, this thief player disappeared in front of him. Zhou Chen naturally understood that the opponent had used the stealth skill. The problem is, is it really okay to use this kind of ambush skill in front of oneself? Does he really think of himself as a mindless monster? In fact, it's not entirely the opponent's fault. If the enemy in front of them is a player, of course, they wouldn't casually use the stealth skill in front of them. The key issue is that Zhou Chen is a scarecrow monster. Who would have thought that a scarecrow monster could also possess intelligence? The next moment, this thief player suddenly reappeared and appeared behind Zhou Chen. And at this moment, a large damage number jumped up. The moment he reappeared, the attack attached to the stealth skill had already struck Zhou Chen. Minus 197 damage was not a critical hit, but this level 14 thief player's attack power was already not low, and with the stealth skill also reaching LV5, the additional damage was quite good. Despite Zhou Chen's greatly increased defense, he still suffered such high damage, which goes to show that the output of the thief profession is indeed formidable. If it weren't for Zhou Chen's current 3,500 health points, he really wouldn't be able to handle it. This thief player's actions were extraordinary. After appearing with stealth, he swiftly executed another skill. Instantly, three damage numbers floated up. Minus 62, minus 100, minus 62. This is a new skill that a level 10 thief player can learn, called cut. This thief player's cut skill has already reached LV3, allowing him to instantly wield a short sword to cut and attack the opponent, causing 3 by 110% damage, with a 30% chance to ignore defense. Just now, when he attacked Zhou Chen, it triggered a defense ignoring attack, causing 100 points of damage. Zhou Chen's health bar decreased again, leaving only 3079 points. A level 14 thief, with such outstanding attack power. However, everything ends here. The cold-hearted Zhou Chen, when the opponent used the cut skill, also launched his crow pecking at him. The thief player who ambushed Zhou Chen was extremely shocked, never expecting that a mere wild boss monster would react so quickly. At the moment he executed the cut skill, the opponent's crow pecking had already struck him. In an instant, a large group of dark crows swooped down and pecked at him. The level 14 thief player's physical defense was not particularly high, and with equipment, it was only 31 points. With Zhou Chen's current LV5 crow pecking, each peck from the crows could cause minus 43 points of damage to him. For a moment, a large number of damage numbers floated up. 20 pecks, causing a total of 860 points of damage to the thief player. The level 14 thief player, with the additional health from his equipment, only had 560 health points, and simply couldn't withstand a crow pecking. With Zhou Chen's increased attack power, the damage from this crow pecking had also soared, something that an ordinary person couldn't handle. A flash of white light, and the first thief player who found Zhou Chen became a soul light spot. 
Successfully killed the player advise you to keep a low profile, experience plus 70, current experience, 285 1280, killed opponent, drop thief short sword, fine, priority pickup protection for 1 minute, killed opponent, drop thief's leather armor, fine, priority pickup protection for 1 minute. Jo Chen did not pay attention to the regret in the opponent's heart, just looked at the two shining spots on the ground, feeling happy in his heart. He didn't expect that just casually killing a player would make the opponent drop two pieces of equipment. It seems that this is the official setting for level 10 to 15 players entering the scarecrow area, death penalty doubled. The so-called death penalty doubled does not necessarily mean dropping two pieces of equipment, but doubling the drop rate of equipment. This advise you to keep a low profile was just unlucky, which caused the simultaneous drop of two pieces of equipment. And this death will also cause the opponent to lose a lot of experience points, and they will need to work harder to regain them by fighting monsters. Zhou Chen first picked up these two pieces of equipment. Successfully picked up Thief's Short Sword, fine, Equipment Attribute Extraction, first time obtaining, current extraction rate 50%. Successfully picked up Thief's Leather Armor, fine, Equipment Attribute Extraction, first time obtaining, current extraction rate 50%. Thief's Short Sword, fine, Attribute Extraction successful, current extraction rate 50%, Attack plus 12, Critical Strike Rate plus 2%. Thief's Leather Armor, fine, Attribute Extraction successful, Current Extraction Rate 50%, Physical Defense plus 4, Health plus 40. A black aura spread to the Lord's Sickle in his hand, and upon closer inspection, Zhou Chin found that the attributes of the Lord's Sickle had indeed changed. Lord's Sickle, Normal Physical Attack, 18 plus 18, Physical Defense, 0 plus 6, Critical Strike Rate, 2%, Healing LV1, Mana Cost 10 points, Healing Amount plus 40, Cooldown 3 seconds, Killing this thief player certainly brought in a good amount of experience points, but the biggest gain was probably the two dropped pieces of equipment. With such a significant increase in attributes all at once, Zhou Chen was very satisfied. With these attributes, he would probably have more confidence in facing the many players to come. After the Lord Sickle gained new attributes, Zhou Chen's confidence increased significantly. Since his position had been exposed, he couldn't stay there any longer. He slowly moved to other positions, observing the other players entering this area, and decisively attacking any lone players. In this way, he did encounter several lone players, and with the help of the flock of crows pecking skill and the lord's sickle, he easily killed these players. However, his luck wasn't always so good, as these players, apart from providing him with some experience points, did not drop any more equipment. As time passed, he couldn't even find any more lone players. By this time, the players who intended to participate in the Lord Level Scarecrow Massacre event had all entered the Scarecrow area. At this point, the entire Scarecrow area was filled with people, and it was no longer realistic for Zhou Chen to hide. Carelessly, he was caught by a team of players. This team of players had 7 or 8 people, all of them were level 13 job-changing players. Zhou Chen felt it was not good, but he had no way to avoid it. The team of players surrounded him. Fortunately, this team of players seemed to want to eat alone and did not share Zhou Chen's location on the chat channel. This was a stroke of luck and misfortune. For the time being, Zhou Chen only needed to deal with these 7 or 8 players, without having to face all the players participating in the event. However, even facing these 7 or 8 players was not easy. Moreover, once it cannot be resolved in a short period of time, more and more people will definitely discover this place. Both sides have similar thoughts, and in one team of players, several players move closer to Zhou Chen. Western warriors, go and resist. I have analyzed that it has a small range attack skill. The more people it attacks, the more the damage is dispersed, so it is impossible to defeat you instantly. Zhou Chen frowned tightly. These people were indeed different from those he had encountered before. Before participating in the event, they had already obtained information about their skills from forums and other places, and knew how to deal with him effectively. Shao Tao, come with me to heal in the middle, and you two can output from the back. The person on the opposite side was a physician, and his arrangement was quite reasonable. With two western warrior players and two physicians healing, Zhou Chan really didn't have the confidence to quickly deal with them. The western warriors in front of him were basically at level 13, with astonishingly high health points of over 1000, and the highest defense in the first job change. It was not easy for Zhou Chen to kill them. With a swing of the reaper's scythe, he first struck down, checking the opponent's defense. Minus 38, minus 38, these were the two warrior players who used the shield guard skill. Minus 58, minus 58, these were the two warrior players who did not use the shield guard skill and wielded large swords. However, such damage was insignificant for the health points of over a thousand for several warrior players. With two physicians healing, it would be difficult for him to make any progress with just normal attacks. At this moment, 
the Western Warriors also simultaneously attacked Zhou Chen. Minus 20 minus 20 minus 64 minus 64 the two warrior players with shields dealt 20 points of damage, while the two warrior players with swords dealt 64 points of damage. They used the heavy chop skill, which could cause 150% attack damage at level 10 of the warrior class. Both of them had reached level 3 of the heavy chop skill, which could cause 170% attack damage. The western warrior players had just lost health, but the two physicians behind them immediately restored their health bars. This couldn't go on. Zhou Chen gritted his teeth and without hesitation, immediately used the reaper's kill skill. A black mist rose from the reaper's scythe, enveloping the entire scythe and shimmering with a faint light. This meant that the reaper's kill skill had been successfully cast. At this moment, Zhou Chen's attack speed increased by 100%, and his movement speed also increased by 20%. However, Zhou Chen did not use the reaper's kill skill to deal with the western warrior players in front of him. Even with the Reaper's kill skill activated, it would not be easy to take them down quickly, because behind them were two physicians constantly healing. To deal with this team, he had to start with those two physicians. Otherwise, with those two physicians constantly healing, it would be extremely difficult for him to deal with any member of this team. Enduring the attacks of the Western Warrior players and resisting the attacks of the two ranged output players, Zhou Chen, with the added movement speed effect of Reaper's kill, rushed towards the two physicians not far away. With the increased movement speed, he had a chance to break free from the encirclement of the western warrior players and pursue the physicians. In just a moment, he had already arrived in front of the two physicians. This scarecrow is quite interesting and seems quite clever, one of the physicians said with a smile, raising his hand to cast a defensive skill on himself and his companion. This was one of the optional skills for physicians, Mist Barrier. The Mist Barrier is one of the optional skills for the physician profession, which can create a small area of mist, weaken the attack ability of enemies within it, and provide a slow recovery state for allies. It has to be said that the physician who used this skill had a clear train of thought. Seeing Zhou Chen accelerating towards them, he knew that retreating was not realistic, so it was better to use the Mist Barrier for protection and withstand the opponent's attacks. With the physician's profession's health and defense, they could withstand some damage. They only needed to hold on for a short moment, and the warrior player, Shi Ming, would be able to catch up, and then they could retreat calmly. It has to be said that the physician's plan was very successful. Zhou Chen suddenly entered the mist barrier and felt a moment of weakness in his body. His attack power of 105 points was instantly weakened by 15 points, leaving only 90 points. With this level of attack power, the Crow Peck skill would be greatly reduced in power, and it was uncertain whether it could kill the two physicians instantly. However, at this point, Zhou Chen could not afford to give up. The Dark Crows flew, and the Crow Peck skill was finally used to attack the two physicians. Minus 32-32. The attack hit the two physicians 20 times, with each person receiving 10 hits. Under the attack of Crow Peck, each physician lost 320 points of health, and their health bars dropped by almost half. As physicians, although their health was not as high as that of warrior professions, they still had 7 to 800 points of health and would not be instantly killed. Minus 81, minus 81, the 9 layers of bleeding effects caused their health bars to drop further. However, the continuous recovery effect of the mist barrier took effect, and the physician's health points recovered slightly. Plus 50, plus 50, although it was not as much as the health lost from the 9 layers of bleeding effects, it still helped to some extent. As physicians, they raised their hands again and used the level 5 healing skill, each restoring some of their health. Plus 160, plus 160, although they did not fully recover their health bars returned to a healthy state. Zhou Chen frowned, realizing the trouble this situation presented. These level 15 transfer players were even more challenging than he had imagined. But Zhou Chen had no other choice. Taking advantage of the reaping state, he raised the scythe in his hand and quickly swung it towards the two physicians. Although they had healing skills, those skills also had cooldown times. As long as his output was fast enough, their healing might not be enough. The reaping skill with 100% attack speed increase was indeed extraordinary. Zhou Chen could now swing the scythe twice in one second, while the opponent's healing skill had a 1.5 second cooldown. In other words, within the time it took for the opponents to use their healing skill once, Zhou Chen could unleash three normal attacks. Of course, this was only possible in the reaping state. Minus 50, minus 50 in one. Five seconds, Zhou Chen struck three times, dealing minus 150 damage to each of the two physicians. Combined with the bleeding effects from Crow Pack, the physicians could only barely maintain their health. Zhou Chen's attacks and the opponent's healing had entered a strange stalemate. This stalemate would be broken when the cooldown for the next Crow Pack was completed. However, Zhou Chen did not have the opportunity for that. 
The warrior player, Shi Ming, had already rushed over and surrounded Zhou Chen once again. After enduring the attacks from the small team, Zhou Chen's health had dropped to about two-thirds. If this continued, there would be a real danger. Zhou Chen's gaze fell on the two attackers in the distance. They were a mage and an archer. Previously, he aimed at the doctors, but he didn't expect the two doctors to cooperate seamlessly, which resulted in his surprise attack not achieving significant results. At this moment, the two doctors were threatened by bleeding and couldn't spare the time to heal the two long-range attackers. This was the perfect opportunity for him to take out the two fragile targets while the Reaper's scythe was still active. However, just as Zhou Chen had this idea, a sudden change occurred in the field. The chat channel suddenly became lively. Ha, huh, you guys are enjoying your own little feast here, quite interesting. Exactly, the Lord level Scarecrow should be attacked by everyone. You guys secretly attacked it, what's up with that? Hello everyone, I'm the streamer Roland, and I'm about to broadcast live the hunt of the Lord level Scarecrow. Within the field of view, a large number of players rushed over, representing various professions. In addition to the dozen or so players who had changed professions, there were also many new players who hadn't changed professions. Zhou Chen's heart sank. He hadn't expected that his encounter with this small team would attract the attention of so many players. The members of the small team were also not in a good mood. Watching the approaching army of players, their captain spoke again, ignore them, keep attacking. We can't monopolize it, increase the output, we'll still get the lion's share in the end. As most players arrived, the long-range attackers had already released their arrows and fireballs. Zhou Chen's health bar plummeted, dropping to half in an instant. Each of these players might not have caused much damage individually, but their sheer numbers quickly depleted his health bar. Health decreased to 50%, group protection activated, automatically summoning one lord-level scarecrow, eight elite scarecrows, and ten common scarecrows to join the battle. In an instant, a large group of scarecrows appeared around Zhou Chen, including a lord-level scarecrow, elite scarecrows, and even more common ones. This was the first time Zhou Chen had been forced to activate the group protection talent after becoming a lord-level scarecrow. The Lord level group protection talent far surpassed that of the leader level. The one Lord level scarecrow, eight elite scarecrows, and ten common scarecrows all spontaneously launched an attack on the enemies besieging Zhou Chen. For these dozen or so players who had changed professions, the elite and common scarecrows were no match and were easily killed with just a few blows. The summoned Lord level scarecrow, however, posed some trouble. This Lord level scarecrow was at the same level as the current Zhou Chen, level 10 with similar attributes to Zhou Chen before he ascended to Lord level, and also possessed the Flock Peck skill. Before the game updated to the Lord level version, the leader level was already considered the highest level boss among the wild monsters. Normally, it would require multiple players to cooperate to defeat a leader level scarecrow for players below level 10. Now, with the simultaneous appearance of one Lord level scarecrow, it indeed caused some trouble for these players who had changed professions. The closest to Zhou Chen was the warrior player from before. At this moment, the Lord Level Scarecrow also made a move, using Flock Peck. At the same time, Zhou Chen also used his own Flock Peck skill. In a brief moment, an endless stream of dark crows enveloped Zhou Chen. This was an unprecedented sight, with five Flock Peck attacks, totaling a hundred pecks. Even with the warrior player sharing the burden, each warrior player still endured 25 pecks. However, this warrior player had high defense, and besides Zhou Chen's Flock Peck, the flock pack from the other lord level scarecrows couldn't break through his defense, only causing a mandatory minus one damage to the warrior players. The pecking of the crows itself does not cause high initial damage, but the bleeding effect it brings is different, as it ignores defense. Just like the leader level scarecrow and Zhou Chen, they both have the pecking of the crows skill at level 5, with a 90% bleeding chance, causing 9 points of bleeding damage per stack. Each warrior player endured 25 packs, basically accumulating over 20 instances of bleeding. Minus 189, minus 198, minus 198, minus 207 every second, these warrior players would lose around 200 points of health. According to the current health of these warrior players, if not healed by a physician, the continuous bleeding effect lasting 10 seconds could kill them. Minus 38, minus 38, minus 58, minus 58 Zhou Chen is currently in the reaping state, willing the scythe of the sovereign, striking at the warrior players. Every second, Zhou Chen can strike twice, accelerating the rate at which the warrior players lose health, making it difficult for even two physicians to heal them. If time allows, Zhou Chen could slowly deal with these warrior players, but many peripheral players have already arrived, launching a dense attack on him and the leader-level scarecrow beside him. His health is rapidly decreasing. Five seconds later, his health has dropped to only 30%. 
The nearby warrior players, with the efforts of the physicians, also maintain around 30% of their health, barely avoiding death. But at this moment, the cooldown of pecking of the crows has ended. Without any hesitation, Zhou Chen once again uses pecking of the crows. With his cooperation, the leader level scarecrows also simultaneously use pecking of the crows. A large group of dark crows once again take flight. The warrior players once again endure a full 25 pecks. The previously accumulated over 20 layers of bleeding effects have not yet passed, and this time, they are stacked with over 20 more layers. Minus 396, minus 396, minus 405, minus 414. The bleeding effects from the two rounds of pecking of the crows reach a terrifying level. The warrior players, who already had little health remaining, are instantly turned into white light, successfully killed by Zhou Chen. Killing these warrior players provides Zhou Chen with 280 experience points, but he is still far from filling up the experience bar for racial transformation. At this moment, Zhou Chen's health has gradually dropped to 20%. Even facing numerous players who should not have appeared in the newbie village, his health is still not strong enough. At this moment, the game's notification sound rings out, and these warrior players have actually dropped equipment. Killing the opponent, dropping warrior's iron armor, fine, priority pickup protection for one minute. Killing the opponent, dropping warrior's iron armor, fine, priority pickup protection for one minute. Killing the opponent, dropping warrior's round shield, fine, priority pickup protection for one minute. Killing the opponent, dropping warrior's round shield, fine, priority pickup protection for one minute. Killing the opponent, dropping warrior's broadsword, fine, priority pickup protection for one minute. Killing the opponent, dropping warrior's broadsword, fine, priority pickup protection for one minute. The warrior players have dropped a total of six pieces of equipment. Zhou Chen does not think too much about it and immediately picks up the six pieces of equipment, choosing to extract the equipment attributes. Successfully picked up warrior's iron armor, fine, equipment attribute extraction, first time obtaining, current extraction rate 50%. Successfully picked up warrior's iron armor, fine, equipment attribute extraction, non-first time obtaining, current extraction rate 20%. Successful extraction of warrior round shield, fine, equipment, equipment attributes extracted, first acquisition of the equipment, current extraction rate 50%. Successful extraction of warrior round shield, fine, equipment, equipment attributes extracted, non-first acquisition of the equipment, current extraction rate 20%. Warrior iron armor, fine, attribute extraction successful, current extraction rate 50%, physical defense plus 8, health plus 80. Warrior Iron Armor, fine, attribute extraction successful, current extraction rate 20%, physical defense plus 3, health plus 32. Warrior Round Shield, fine, attribute extraction successful, current extraction rate 50%, physical defense plus 10, health plus 40. In the blink of an eye, Jochen successfully extracted the attributes of these 6 pieces of equipment, gaining a total of the following attribute enhancements, attack plus 14, physical defense plus 27, health plus 168. These attributes were added to the Sovereign Scythe, enhancing its attributes. Attribute requirements met, Sovereign Scythe, normal, quality upgraded to Sovereign Scythe, fine. A sudden prompt sound surprised Zhou Chen. He first looked at the current attributes of the Sovereign Scythe. Sovereign Scythe, fine, physical attack, 56, physical defense, 36, health plus 240, skill Reaper LV2, skill Siphon LV1. Reaper LV2, increases attack speed by 120%, increases movement speed by 30%, lasts for 30 seconds, cooldown time 2 minutes. Siphon LV1, when attacking with the Sovereign Scythe, 5% chance to siphon 30% of the attack power is health. The healing skill obtained from the Physician's skill book had disappeared, replaced by the Siphon passive skill. Of course, Zhou Chen liked this change. The practicality of the passive skill Siphon surpassed the original healing skill by far. After the advancement of the Sovereign Scythe, his overall attributes also improved significantly. At this point, the attack power of the Sovereign Scythe reached 125 points, and the physical defense reached 68 points. The maximum health value also increased to 3740 points. However, all of this could not prevent his current health from dropping. Although his defense had increased significantly, in just a few seconds, his health was finally reduced to below 20%. Health decreased to 20%, Berserk talent activated, entering Berserk state, attributes doubled, area attack, lasts for 30 seconds. In an instant, Zhou Chen's remaining health of just over 700 points doubled instantly to 1,500 points. And this was not the most important part, his other attribute values also doubled, even his movement speed and attack speed. 
After the attribute doubling, his physical attack reached 250 points, and his physical defense also reached 136 points. These level 13 advanced players generally did not have an attack power exceeding 136 points. For a moment, their attacks on Zhou Chen could only cause mandatory minus 1 damage. The downward trend of Zhou Chen's health bar suddenly stopped. At this moment, Zhou Chen finally breathed a sigh of relief. Just a moment ago, he almost thought he was about to meet his end here. The transformation of the sovereign level scarecrow in front of him was also beyond the expectations of many players. Seeing that Zhou Chen was temporarily untouchable, a player shouted, Don't be discouraged, his current state is just a last ditch effort, it won't last long. Let's continue to attack, don't let him escape the battle. When his berserk state is over, we can kill him. Suddenly, Zhou Chen noticed that the mage's fireball and wind blade spells still caused significant damage to him. The scarecrow race, as a beginner village's basic monster, was not designed with magic defense in mind. Even for Zhou Chen at the sovereign level, his magic defense was still a blank slate. The magician can cause him harm, everyone help intercept and let the magician output. A player shouted, also reminding Zhou Chen, who rushed to those magicians first. With double the movement speed, he quickly approached the magicians who were still attacking. Intercept, why aren't you intercepting? The magicians shouted, but the frontline warrior players showed little interest. Zhou Chen, having been a player himself, immediately understood the intentions of these warrior players. In their view, the current lord level scarecrow only had 20% health left, and the warrior players, as physical attack professionals, couldn't break through the defense temporarily and couldn't output damage. In this situation, the magicians could still output strong damage. If they were allowed to continue, they would probably be able to kill the scarecrow before the berserk state ended. After all the hard work the warrior players had put in to fight the monsters for most of the day, it would be too easy for someone to pluck the fruits of their labor. The warrior players showed a lack of enthusiasm, so the magician players could only face Zhou Chen in his berserk state. Zhou Chen arrived in front of a magician, raised the lord's sickle, and struck the magician twice in a short second, depleting the magician's health to the bottom in an instant, turning into a white light in the blink of an eye. Another 70 experience points were added to his account. At this time, there were still 27 seconds left of the 30-second berserk state. Killing this magician was very smooth, with no warrior players blocking in front or healers helping to restore health. All the players seemed to be standing by as if watching a show. Zhou Chen's gaze shifted and he had already set his sights on two other magicians in another direction. These two magicians stood together and attacked Zhou Chen, causing his health to drop rapidly. With double the movement speed, the magician's usual kiting technique was non-existent. Two seconds later, Zhou Chen had already arrived in front of them. He raised the huge black sickle and struck the two magicians at a frequency of twice per second. After advancing the Lord's sickle, the skill reaper had also refreshed its cooldown time, but the requirements for charging had become higher, needing to attack players 40 times to complete the charge. Therefore, for now, he couldn't use the reaper skill. However, dealing with magicians who were squishy professionals, relying solely on the normal attack twice per second was already enough. After two strikes, these two magicians, like the previous one, turned into white light and became soul points. 140 experience points were added to his account. In addition, two rays of light flashed by. Killed opponent, dropped magic robe, fine, priority pickup protection for one minute. Killed opponent, dropped magic robe, fine, priority pickup protection for one minute. Zhou Chen was very skilled at picking up the items and extracting the equipment attributes. Magic robe, fine, attribute extraction successful, current extraction ratio 50%, magic defense plus 8, mana plus 40. Magic robe, fine, attribute extraction successful, current extraction ratio 20%, magic defense plus 3, mana plus 16. The Lord Sickle now had an additional 11 points of magic defense and 56 points of mana. This was the first time Zhou Chen had obtained magic defense, and the remaining damage from the magician's attacks on him noticeably decreased. The Berserk State with doubled attributes still had 23 seconds left, and his experience points had reached 1000-1280, 280 points away from being able to undergo racial transformation. Whether he could survive depended on whether he could obtain these 280 experience points before the Berserk time ended, allowing him to complete the racial transformation. This was like a race against death. You stand by and watch like this again, and when all the magicians are dead, let's see what you have to fight with. Seeing three magicians being killed by the Lord level Scarecrow, the remaining magicians questioned the other players. Alright, let's stop scheming against each other and team up to kill the boss, and distribute the loot as needed. Okay, I agree. Let's do it. Someone spoke up and immediately gained agreement. For those magician players, this was a good thing. 
but for Zhou Chen, it was a huge problem. Once the players stopped scheming against each other and united, he would inevitably be in danger again. Berserk state, 22 seconds remaining. Regardless, there was no other way for Zhou Chen at the moment, whether the players were going to unite or not. Watching the players preparing to gather, he targeted a small group consisting of two magicians and a healer, and charged in. It was a race against time now. As long as he could gain enough experience points during the berserk time, everything would be fine. At this moment, all the scarecrows summoned by group protection had been killed, including the leader-level scarecrow. Zhou Chen had already rushed to the front of the three players. At this point, the players had reached a consensus, no longer fighting each other, no longer abandoning the magicians. The healer next to the magician raised a hand and released a mist barrier skill. But at this moment, Zhou Chen's flock pack skill cooldown had already finished. He immediately charged into the mist barrier and unleashed a flock pack on the three players. Now his attributes had doubled, and the reduced attack power of the mist barrier was not fatal to him. Minus 176, minus 176, minus 158. With Zhou Chen's current high attack of 250 points, the damage capability of flock pack was terrifying, each pack causing over 100 damage to the three players. A full flock pack amounted to 20 packs, shared by the three, each person enduring six or seven packs. Two magicians and the healer, the three of them couldn't support it, and immediately turned into soul light points. 210 experience points gained. The current experience points had reached 1210-1280, only needing to kill one more level 14 player to max out the experience points. At this moment, there were still 18 seconds left in the berserk state. Killing several magicians had greatly reduced the pressure on Zhou Chen's health. But even so, he now had only about 10% of his health left. There were just too many players who had come this time. Even though he had killed 5 magicians, there were still several magicians continuously attacking him. At this point, the players had already formed teams, and the remaining magicians had been protected by the warrior players. 5 or 6 warrior players surrounded him, attempting to intercept Zhou Chen. Zhou Chen instinctively swung the Lord Sickle at them, but the warrior player's health and defense were good, and with the help of the healer, even in the berserk state, Zhou Chen found it difficult to deal with them in a short time. After a few strikes, the health bars of several warrior players remained strong, hovering around 50%. Zhou Chen's output in the berserk state was strong, but with 8 or 9 healers adding health, it was still difficult to bring down the warrior player's health. Zhou Chen's health had dropped to below 10% and started to flicker. Many players breathed a sigh of relief, it seemed that killing this lord level scarecrow was a sure thing. But Zhou Chen's heart sank, there were still 12 seconds left in the berserk state. Flock pack had finished cooling down, but there were now two more warrior players surrounding him, bringing the total to 8. Even if the crow pecking is used, but dispersed among 8 people, each person only needs to endure 2 or 3 packs. With the blood volume defense of the warrior players, there is no pressure at all. Zhou Chun understood in his heart that it was impossible to find a breakthrough on these warrior players. And just as he was rapidly calculating in his mind, a voice caught his attention. Hello, everyone. What you see now is the players surrounding and killing the Lord Level Scarecrow. It was the female anchor Roland. She turned the camera to Zhou Chen and said, Now we can see that this Lord Level Scarecrow hunting event is coming to an end. Next, what kind of top quality equipment will the first Lord Level boss killed in the game drop? Everyone, keep your eyes wide open with Roland. In the first broadcast room, there was laughter and joy, and a fan joked, Goddess Roland, earlier that Scarecrow was chasing you to attack, be careful not to get too close, otherwise, that Scarecrow might attack you again later. Roland laughed, thank you for your concern, but now I'm just standing aside and watching, I haven't launched an attack, so I can't attract any hatred. A thief player appeared next to Roland and waved to her, saying, hey, Goddess Roland, do you remember me? Roland looked at the person in front of her, saw the name, and suddenly realized, oh, you're the big banana Roland who spoke in the first broadcast room before, you're also participating in the event? The thief player named Big Banana Roland laughed and said, didn't I say before that I wanted to avenge you, goddess Roland? Do you think I'm just bragging? I plan to deliver the final blow to that guy later, goddess Roland, remember to record my handsome moment with the camera. Ha, huh, this Big Banana Roland brother is thoughtful, definitely. Watch. I'm about to make my move. Big Banana Roland rubbed his hands, took a deep breath, and prepared to use the high burst of the thief player to deliver a killing blow. Zhou Chen's health was only 5% left, as if a few more fireballs hitting him could take him down. But at this moment, Zhou Chen's mind became unusually calm. There were still 10 seconds left in the berserk state. Enough. Reaping skill activated. In the fierce battle with many warrior players, the 40 attacks had already been charged. 
The level 2 reaping skill could increase attack speed by 120%, increase movement speed by 30%, coupled with the berserk state with doubled attributes, Zhou Chen's movement speed had reached an astonishing level. Before anyone could react, Zhou Chen had already rushed to the side of the female anchor Roland. Next to her was a level 14 thief player, who was Zhou Chen's main target. The final 70 experience points, come. The fireball spell whistled through the air, and Zhou Chen raised the Lord's scythe. Crow pecking. The level 6 Roland turned into a white light at the first peck, unable to withstand even a single peck with her poor health and defense. Why did so many people attack me? I didn't even attack anyone. In the instant she turned into a white light, Roland's mind was filled with this question. She could never understand why she had suffered this disaster, and the reason was the big banana Roland who had vowed to avenge her. Minus 172 minus 172. The remaining 19 packs were all borne by big banana Roland, as a thief, he couldn't withstand it at all, and just a little slower than Roland, he also turned into a soul light. Successfully killed player big banana Roland, experience points plus 70, the fireball whistled down, as if at the next moment, Zhou Chen would be hit and become the player's spoils of war. At this critical moment, the prompt sounded, the experience bar for racial transformation is full. Do you choose to proceed with the racial transformation immediately? Yes. Zhou Chen, without much consideration, resolutely chose to transform. As Zhou Chen uttered the word yes in his heart, he felt as if time had suddenly stopped, and he was engulfed by boundless white light, unable to see anything else. Then, when he could feel his body again, he heard a prompt, racial transformation successful. Current race is mysterious puppet spirit, not matching the level of this race, automatically raised to the lowest level of this race. Before Zhou Chen could listen to the rest of the prompts, they were overshadowed by a system-wide announcement. Congratulations to player 4 killing a sovereign level scarecrow. As the first sovereign level monster killed in the game, the kill reward is increased by 100%. Zhou Chen raised his hand in a daze, looking at his intricately crafted wooden arm, and listened to the game's system-wide announcement, unsure of how to feel for a moment. It seemed that by choosing the racial transformation in that instant, he had successfully transformed from a scarecrow into a mysterious puppet spirit and the remaining sovereign level scarecrow body had reverted to a normal sovereign level monster and was then killed by the players. He looked around and found himself in a vast forest, with other mysterious puppet spirits wandering nearby. Through the players' experience and information found on forums during his free time, Zhou Chen gained a considerable understanding of his current location. It seemed that he had arrived at the Forest of Nightmares. In the game's background story, the Forest of Nightmares was the stronghold of an evil alchemist. No one knew how long this evil alchemist had existed, only that he had been conducting evil research in the Forest of Nightmares. These mysterious puppet spirits wandering on the outskirts of the Forest of Nightmares were one of the alchemist's creations. This information flashed through Zhou Chen's mind, but he paid no further attention to it, instead beginning to sort through the pile of prompts to understand his current specific skill attributes. He first opened his panel, name, Zhou Chen, race, mysterious puppet spirit, common, level, 20, health, 4000 slash 4000, mana, 1000 slash 1000, physical attack, 200, magic attack, 200, physical defense, 150, magic defense, 100, and used attribute points, 33, when he transformed races, he was only level 10, but the mysterious puppet spirit race he transformed into had a minimum level of 20, so his level was immediately raised to 20, between levels 10 and 20, there were 3 and used attribute points for each level, which naturally carried over, allowing him to freely allocate them. This was not urgent for the time being, so Zhou Chen continued to look further. Equipment, Scythe of the Sovereign, fine, Zhou Chen breathed a sigh of relief, not expecting that the Scythe of the Sovereign could still be inherited after the racial transformation, which made him very satisfied. As he was already familiar with the Scythe of the Sovereign, he temporarily set it aside and continued to look at other information. Skills, Puppetry Disguise LV1, Disguise as a target within 50 meters, Transforming abilities based on the target, Current Transformation Ratio 50%, Skills, Puppetry Mirror LV1, Create a mirror image of oneself, with 50% of the original abilities, lasting for 60 seconds, Cooldown time 120 seconds, In fact, before the accident that led to him becoming a scarecrow, Zhou Chen had not yet come to this forest of nightmares to level up. Because he entered the game relatively late, he was only level 18 before the accident. In fact, not only him, the game itself has not been open for long. Currently, the highest level player in the whole game is only level 29. Level 30 allows for a second job change, and the experience required to level up from 29 to 30 far exceeds what was needed before. In the two weeks since the game opened, no one has been able to reach level 30. 
Therefore, Zhou Qin was curious about the skills of the puppet spirit, and he used the skill puppetry disguise as soon as he received it. Select a target within range for disguise. Zhou Qin then discovered that within his field of vision, many targets had become disguise options for him. However, since this was the outskirts of the nightmare forest, the most common targets were secret puppet spirits like himself. Disguising as the same secret puppet spirit didn't seem meaningful. Among all the available targets for disguise, he found a special place. Player Zhou Chen found, should he be disguised? What the heck, player Zhou Chen? He was indeed Zhou Chen, but hadn't he already transformed into a wild monster? Zhou Chen was shocked, but still chose to confirm the disguise without thinking. In an instant, Zhou Chen felt a strange change in his body, transforming from a secret puppet spirit into a player's appearance. Player panel found, unpredictable changes occurred in this disguise. All current player permissions are open. When disguised as Zhou Chen, the current player status can be maintained for 60 minutes, with a cooldown of 24 hours. While in the current player status, killing monsters yields a 50% profit, and the original monster's attribute panel becomes ineffective. Disguising the current player status can be cancelled, returning to the original monster's attribute panel, with no profit from killing monsters. A series of prompts left Zhou Chen somewhat dazed. In other words, he now had one hour of player time every day, and could freely switch back to monster status? Zhou Chen was pleasantly surprised. If all this was true, it would be very significant for him. He had previously been a scarecrow and knew firsthand how harsh the living conditions were as a wild monster. In his scarecrow days, he was almost constantly hunted by players, and a slight mistake could mean death and becoming experience points. Now, having the opportunity to switch to player status, even if only for an hour a day, was very useful. Just imagine, when he, as a monster, was being chased by players with no way out, suddenly switching to player status would easily allow him to escape unscathed. Lost in various thoughts, Zhou Chen suddenly heard a voice. Ha, huh, this player is standing still like a fool. Must be a disguised secret puppet spirit. Let's kill it for some experience points. Wait, I'm a human, Zhou Chen shouted in terror. He had just changed his race and hadn't allocated a bunch of attribute points and skill points, nor had he familiarized himself with the combat techniques of the current race. Fighting with a human at this time was a very unwise choice. Oh, it can talk, so it's not a monster. A figure appeared in front of Zhou Chen. Following the voice, he saw a female player leaning against a tree trunk, looking at him with a puzzled expression. This female player had a ponytail and was dressed in light and simple attire, a rare sight for the fighter profession. This profession had a high level of difficulty in operation, and neither its attack nor defense capabilities were outstanding, so there weren't many players who chose it. This female player's game name was Xia Qian. She looked at Zhou Chen and asked, What profession are you? Why can't I see it? Startled by her question, Zhou Chen realized that although he had used the puppetry disguise skill to disguise himself as Zhou Chen, the Zhou Chen himself had not undergone a job change, so when he disguised himself, he was still in the state of not having undergone a job change. Zhou Chen quickly understood the current situation. Due to special circumstances, after completing the disguise, he could freely choose any profession and allocate corresponding skill points. However, it might not be a good time at the moment. He was thinking about how to evade the situation when Xia Qian waved her hand and said, Forget it, I'm not interested anyway. She then looked at Zhou Chen and asked, Are you here to level up? If so, I'll find another leveling spot. Zhou Chen hurriedly waved his hand and said, No, I'm just passing by. I'm about to leave. You can continue leveling up. He could tell that this female player named Xia Qian was a level 26 fighter, and he hadn't sorted out any of his attributes yet, so he didn't dare to stay in front of her for too long. If he accidentally revealed his identity as a wild monster, he wouldn't even know how to write the word death. Alright, in that case, you can leave. I've claimed this monster respawn point, Xia Qian said, as she raised her fists and prepared to start fighting the monsters. However, things obviously wouldn't go so smoothly. Zhou Chen was about to leave, but a large group of players surrounded them. You're not allowed to leave. Since you're her friend, you should stay with her. Nearly 20 players in their early 20s surrounded Zhou Chen and Xia Qian. Zhou Chen felt a sense of impending doom, but on the surface, he calmly asked, What's going on, gentlemen? Who do you think you're calling gentlemen? The leader of the group glared at Zhou Chen. She was a female player who looked to be in her teens, at an age where she was carefree and unrestrained. At this point, Xia Qian, who was surrounded, gave up on fighting the monsters and looked at the female player with a cold face, saying, I've already left the guild. Why are you following me? The female player sneered coldly, of course, we're here to settle the score with you. Otherwise, do you think we're here for a farewell party? She looked at Xia Qian and said with resentment, the top fighter in the entire server, so what? 
The guild leader immediately gave you the position of vice guild leader without hesitation. I want to see how you'll still be arrogant after we strip you of all your equipment and deplete your experience bar. Zhou Chen could see that he had inadvertently become involved in someone else's grudges and enmities. He reached out to the female player and weakly asked, Um, can I interrupt for a moment? What do you want to say? The female player coldly glanced at him. Zhou Chen helplessly spread his hands and said, I just want to say, you can continue with your business, I'm just passing through. Can you let me leave first? No, who knows what your relationship is with her. Even if you have no relationship, you just happen to run into this, you can only blame your bad luck. You're just a level 20 guy, it won't take much effort to deal with you, Xia Qian, who was also surrounded, looked at Zhou Chen and said with a hint of amusement, you can leave if you can, but it probably won't be easy. They probably brought forbidden magic stones, which can intercept town teleportation and town resurrection. That's not necessarily true, Zhou Chen smiled faintly, and his figure had already become elusive, disappearing in front of everyone's eyes in an instant. In that instant, he decisively chose the thief profession and allocated skill points to sneak attack, using it to enter stealth mode. It's sneak attack, he's actually a thief, the female player couldn't help but stomp her feet. She had miscalculated, only thinking about dealing with the fighter Xia Qian, but she hadn't brought anyone who could deal with a stealthy thief. The next moment, a message appeared in the chat channel. Zhou Chen, ha, huh, you're busy, don't mind me, I'm leaving. The female player's gaze swept to the west and looked at the players around her, asking, did he really leave? The player she asked naturally nodded and replied, vice guild leader, he's definitely gone. Who dares to meddle in our guild's affairs? Then the girl player ignored everything else and looked at Xia Qian in front of her, sneering, since that's the case, let's get down to business. You're right, I brought the forbidden gem and a doctor who knows resurrection. It's impossible for you to revive in the city. Just wait for me to wipe you out. If you want to fight, then let's fight. Stop with the nonsense, Xia Qian suddenly raised her head, a fierce glint in her eyes, and charged forward like a ferocious beast. With each step, the ground beneath her feet sent rocks and mud flying, making her unstoppable. Warriors, block her. Doctors, heal and remove negative status. Archers, attack with me, the girl player shouted, waving her wand and chanting a spell, preparing to cast magic. However, Xia Qian forcefully pushed forward, dodging and weaving through the blockade of five or six warrior players, not even letting them touch her clothes. The arrows shot at her from the air all landed behind her without exception. With a few swift movements, she broke through the human wall. Stop her, don't let her escape, the girl player shouted. Escape? Who said I was going to escape? Xia Qian smirked, then suddenly leaped into the air and landed next to the girl player. She then bent her elbow and struck the girl player's neck. Critical hit. Minus 988 a terrifying damage number appeared, sending the girl player flying and her health bar flashing. With just one hit, she was almost killed. Three doctors quickly healed the girl player, who struggled to get up and hid behind several warrior players, calling out in disbelief, impossible, the fighter class doesn't have this kind of skill. Xia Qian coldly smiled, don't be surprised. Who said you have to have this kind of skill to fight? Hearing her words, the nearly 20 people present were all stunned. They found it hard to accept her argument. Not far away, Zhou Chen, who was still in stealth mode, was equally astonished. So, this Xia Qian was actually a technical player? Zhou Chen had heard of such players before, but witnessing it firsthand was a first for him. In theory, a player facing nearly 20 players of similar level should have no resistance. However, this player named Xia Qian taught them a lesson with facts. Suddenly, a thought crossed his mind. Wasn't Xia Qian's ability exactly what he needed? As a wild monster, he would always evolve into a boss sooner or later, and he would undoubtedly face situations where players would attack him. Although he could fight with the attributes of a boss-level monster, having powerful skills would be even better. He looked at Xia Qian with a meaningful gaze. Zhou Chen had been stealthily watching the show, and in this short time, Xia Qian, facing players ten times her number, was still able to take the initiative. It should have been those dozen players pressing Xia Qian, but at this moment, they were the ones being chased by her. Although they had ranged attack classes like archers and mages, Xia Qian's movements were so strange that their skills and attacks were always evaded. Several archers and mages couldn't pose any threat to Xia Qian. The warrior players themselves were not very agile, and facing Xia Qian's strange movements, they couldn't even catch up with her. If they hadn't seen other fighter players before, they would have thought that the fighter class was unbalanced. However, other fighter players didn't have Xia Qian's abilities. She was so difficult to deal with and it was all her personal ability. Stop her, stop her. The younger sister player was chased by Xia Qian, panting and calling out. However, Xia Qian leaped into the air, spinning like a windmill, and kicked the younger sister player in the pretty face. 
Critical hit. Minus 864 although the damage this time was less than the previous one, the younger sister player, who was not at full health while being chased, was still kicked into white light. Watching the younger sister player being killed and left with a soul point, Xia Qian stepped back slightly and looked calmly. Revive me, I must kill her today, the younger sister player shouted loudly in the chat channel. The physician player in the team who knew the resurrection technique quickly cast the spell on her soul point. While the physician was casting the resurrection spell, other warrior players stood in front as if facing a formidable enemy, forming a semicircle. Xia Qian shook her head and smiled bitterly, don't worry, I can't be bothered to stop you. I'm very happy if she wants to be revived, after all, my muscles and bones are not fully active yet. Soon, the younger sister player was resurrected and restored to full health under the physician's healing skill. However, at this moment, her gaze towards Xia Qian was filled with fear. From the beginning of wanting to teach the other party a lesson to the current hesitation, it was only a few brief encounters. Xia Qian looked at the younger sister player, and her expression gradually turned cold. Lonely enchantress, I've already left the guild, but you still won't let go. Do you really think I dare not teach you a lesson? Autumn Chill's face is not that big. The player named Lonely Enchantress looked resentful, I teamed up with Autumn Chill from the beginning in the newbie village, and I was involved in the establishment of the guild from start to finish. Why did you, Xia Qian, take the position of vice president that belonged to me as soon as you appeared? Xia Qian shrugged, just because I'm strong. Lonely Enchantress was momentarily speechless, she frowned and said, okay, you are indeed strong, but since you became the vice president, why are you not concerned about the guild's affairs? Do you really think Autumn Chill asked me to help build the guild when he made me the vice president? Xia Qian shook her head, you're thinking too much. When I joined the guild, I told him that I would just be a figurehead, and not to bother me with other matters. She smirked coldly, if I weren't the top fighter in the server, why would Autumn Chill want me? He just wants me to be a living billboard. Alright, today I will kill you and see if you can still be the top fighter. Lonely Enchantress waved her hand, and the dozen or so players launched another attack on Xia Qian. Just with these few mediocre players? You really have a short memory. Xia Qian shook her head slightly, clenched her fists, and pushed forward. However, as she broke through the encirclement of the warrior players and was about to strike Lonely Enchantress, there was a sudden ripple in the air, and a short sword abruptly appeared, stabbing her. Minus 568 a damage number popped up, and Xia Qian felt her strength wane, unable to move forward. She made a quick decision, pushed her feet off the ground, and flipped backward. It wasn't until she was several meters away that she focused on the figure that had just appeared in the air. Autumn Chill? Three words popped out of her mouth, and Xia Qian's brow furrowed slightly. The person who came was the guild leader, Autumn Chill, a level 28 rogue player. Xia Qian's expression suddenly became serious. If it had been just those dozen or so people, she wouldn't have paid much attention, but with Autumn Chill added, it was a different story. As the guild leader, Autumn Chill was different from those mediocre players. He was an experienced gamer with a deep understanding of the game and excellent gaming skills. If Autumn Chill hadn't weighed the pros and cons, the previous Xiao Qian wouldn't have agreed to join the guild as the vice president. Summer Qian looked at the appearance of the Autumn Cold and asked coldly, Is this your intention? Autumn Cold did not answer directly. The short sword in his hand emitted a black and faint light, and he slowly said, Summer Qian, why be stubborn and leave the guild? Come back. I'll still reserve the position of guild leader for you. Before Summer Qian could express her opinion, the lonely enchanting figure behind her had already called out, Autumn Cold, Autumn Cold waved his hand, and without room for negotiation, said, Enchanting, Summer Qian is a talent that the guild needs. I hope you can think more for the guild. The lonely enchanting figure snorted coldly, unable to do anything but sulk on the side, glaring at Summer Qian with wide eyes. However, facing the Autumn Cold, Summer Qian remained unmoved just shaking her head slowly, no need, I never look back. What a pity, sighed the autumn cold, then asked, will you join another guild? Summer Qian thought seriously and said, maybe, if I encounter a suitable one, it's not impossible. After hearing her answer, the autumn cold sighed deeply and said, then I can only say sorry. I don't want the first fighter to leave my guild and join another. Summer Qian narrowed her eyes slightly, staring at the autumn cold in front of her, I don't quite understand, am I a threat to you? Rarely patient with Summer Qian, the Autumn Cold nodded and replied, Yes, I have news. In two weeks, the game will hold the first guild battle. I don't want to encounter an opponent of your strength in a hostile position. Although I feel sorry for you, today I plan to kill you at least ten times, make your equipment explode, and clear your experience bar. Saying this calmly, the Autumn Cold disappeared again into the air, using the thief's stealth skill. As a level 28 thief player like him, he naturally mastered many thief skills, but stealth was still the signature skill of the thief profession. Let's see who kills who. 
Summer Qian's eyes flickered, and she drank another bottle of gold wound medicine, assuming a fighting stance. At this time, Zhou Chen, who had repeatedly used the stealth skill to hide, quietly approached the edge of the battlefield. Earlier, Zhou Chen had used the stealth skill to move far away and hide in the depths of the jungle. There, he had already taken the time to allocate all his remaining attribute points and skill points. Starting from level 3, players could gain one and used skill point for each level they advanced. Now at level 20, Zhou Chen had a total of 20 and used skill points. After using the puppetry disguise skill to disguise himself as a thief, the skills he now possessed were all thief profession skills, stealth, cut, shadow blade, ghost step. These were the four skills that Zhou Chen currently possessed. With 20 skill points, he had enough to level up these skills to a high level. Shadow Blade and Ghost Step were passive skills, with Shadow Blade able to increase attack speed and attack power, while Ghost Step could increase evasion rate. In addition to skill points, Zhou Chen had allocated all 33 remaining attribute points to strength. Adding 33 points to strength increased his attack power by 99 points. Unfortunately, when he used the Puppetry Disguise skill earlier, he had not allocated his skill points first, so he was only using a level 1 Puppetry Disguise, which could only replicate 50% of the attributes of a level 20 Thief player. After disguising himself, Zhou Chen's panel health and attack power were only half of a level 20 Thief player's, with a mere 650 health points and a pitiful 65 attack points. Fortunately, due to the special circumstances, after disguising himself, he still had 33 attribute points and 20 skill points to allocate. After allocating all the attribute points and factoring in the bonus from leveling up the passive skill Shadow Blade to level 5, his attack power reached 199 points. Apart from still having very little health, his attack power is not too far behind other rogue players. At this moment, he inherited the Lord Sickle from the Lord level Scarecrow. Lord Sickle, fine, physical attack, 56, physical defense, 36, magic defense, 11, health plus 240, mana, 56, skill reaper LV2, skill sickle absorption LV1. With the attributes of the Lord Sickle, his attack power even surpasses that of a normal level 20 rogue player. Although his low health made people tremble, Zhou Chen still hid on the side watching the battle, refusing to retreat. The battle in front of him was breathtaking. He saw the martial artist Xia Qian single-handedly fighting more than 10 players, not falling behind at all. With every move, she weaved through the numerous warrior players, making the fragile ranged professions scream in pain. Especially the sorceress named Lonely Enchantress, she was killed twice by her. Xia Qian seemed to have targeted her specifically. Suddenly, Autumn Frost appeared in the air, striking Xia Qian's back with a blow, followed by the skill cut. Minus 568 minus 185 minus 185 minus 185 a combination of attacks, the two skills dealt over a thousand damage in total, causing Xia Qian's health bar to drop by more than half. Fortunately, martial artists have thick health, otherwise, this attack could have been fatal. Zhou Chen, who was watching from the sidelines, felt a tightness in his chest, almost thinking that Xia Qian was done for. However, despite the terrifying damage from the ambush, Xia Qian remained calm. Like a storm, she swiftly turned around, and her arms reached out to ambush Autumn Frost. As a rogue, Autumn Frost, having succeeded in the ambush, naturally wanted to retreat. Unfortunately, Xia Qian's reaction speed far exceeded his expectations. Just as he was about to retreat, Xia Qian's hands had already grabbed his clothes. Despite Autumn Frost's attempts to break free, he couldn't move at all. Although rogue players are slippery, once caught by a martial artist, it's impossible to compete in strength. Xia Qian didn't attack Autumn Frost, just looked at his pale face, chuckled, and suddenly lifted him up. In terms of strength, martial artists are even stronger than warrior professions. At this moment, the attacks from the peripheral archers and sorcerers were imminent. Xia Qian smirked, using Autumn Frost's body to block the incoming magic and arrows. Autumn Frost grunted as the attacks hit him, and his health bar dropped by more than half. As a rogue, he naturally couldn't match the health and defense of a martial artist. The peripheral archers and sorcerers were in a panic, and Lonely Enchantress called out, Stop, stop, don't hurt the guild leader. Meanwhile, Zhou Chen, who was secretly watching the battle on the side, was astonished, is this even possible? The realism of the game had reached such a level that Xia Qian's skillful maneuver was actually approved by the game system. She used Autumn Frost as a shield, remaining unscathed under the attacks of the archers and sorcerers, and even turned the tables on them. After taking this blow, which was equivalent to being outsmarted, Autumn Frost's face became very ugly. Still suspended in midair, he shook his short sword, preparing to attack Xia Qian. Although rogues are not good at direct combat, Xia Qian's health bar was almost depleted, and the healing potion she drank needed time to take effect, making it a perfect opportunity for a relentless pursuit. 
As for himself, he still had a little less than half of his health, and in such a fierce battle, he should be able to hold on until the end. However, as his short sword extended halfway, he felt a chill behind him and could no longer move it forward. Being a rogue, he was very familiar with the cold sensation in the air. In the span of a millisecond, he had already thought to himself, it's a thief, there's a thief trying to ambush me. At this moment, his clothes were still being held by Xia Qian, making it impossible for him to turn and face the enemy. Moreover, the attacker had launched the ambush from behind, so turning around to counterattack might not be the best choice. In the blink of an eye, he made the most suitable response, he exerted force with his feet and charged forward, pulling Xia Qian along, covering a distance of over a meter. As a level 28 thief player, he was well aware that the opponent's weapon should also be a short sword like his own. His sudden charge forward of over a meter should have caused his attack to miss due to insufficient attack range. Although Autumn Frost's thoughts were reasonable, in the next moment, he felt a chill and realized he had been attacked. Minus 312, in an instant, his health bar was almost depleted, flashing empty. I clearly dodged far enough, why was he still able to attack me? Autumn Frost felt bewildered, turning his head to see a player appearing behind him, wielding not the short sword he had imagined, but a massive black scythe measuring 2-3 meters in length. What the heck, since when do thieves use such large and cumbersome weapons? Despite his doubts, Zhou Chen paid no attention to them, muttering to himself, the attack was too weak, not even stealth strike could finish it off, just one more hit. With that, he lightly swung the massive scythe in his hand, cutting across the dumbfounded Autumn Frost and turning him into a white light. As the white light flashed, Autumn Frost turned into a soul light point. At the same time, Zhou Chen received a game prompt, successfully killed player Autumn Frost, experience plus 140, current experience 140 slash 7200, killed opponent, dropped black iron short sword, rare, priority pickup protection for one minute. Zhou Chen couldn't believe that after disguising himself as a player, killing a player would also grant him experience, and at a full 100% rate. What's more, he unexpectedly obtained a piece of equipment with his impulsive attack. This luck was too good. Without further ado, he immediately picked up the dropped equipment and chose to extract its attributes. Successful attribute extraction of black iron short sword, rare, current extraction ratio 50%, physical attack plus 32, physical critical hit rate plus 5%, chance to ignore defense plus 4%. Zhou Chen was excited to find that the attributes of the equipment dropped by Autumn Frost were so good. Looking at the soul light point on the ground, he couldn't help but think, should I let him revive and kill him again? His other equipment should be good too, right? However, this thought only crossed his mind briefly before Zhou Chen quickly dismissed it. His current attributes were not at their peak, and he had only managed to kill the opponent by ambushing them while they were already injured. If Autumn Frost had been at full health, Zhou Chen didn't think he could win in his current state. He looked at Xia Qian in front of him, feeling somewhat hesitant, um, she's also injured. In front of him, although Xia Qian had taken a healing potion, her health was still recovering slowly and her current health seemed to be only 2 to 300 points. In this situation, it seemed that he could easily finish her off with the sever skill of the Lord's Scythe. Thinking about it, Zhou Chen impulsively swung the Lord's Scythe in his hand, using the thief's sever skill. At this point, he completely forgot that he had only intended to come out to save someone. As he swung the Lord's Scythe horizontally, it headed straight for Xia Qian's waist. However, Xia Qian remained calm in the face of danger, pushing with both hands and managing to suppress the side of the Lord's Scythe, redirecting the force of the swing and flying out along with it. Despite this, she still suffered a 56-point damage from the force of the Lord's Scythe. But compared to being hacked by a sickle, Jian Xiao was not worth mentioning. Zhou Chen felt that everything today was a bit beyond his expectations. He really couldn't imagine that even in a game, there could be such fine operations. Resurrect the guild leader. The people on the outside finally reacted, and many warrior players rushed up to separate the soul light spot of Chiu Sihan from Zhou Chen and surrounded the physician players, asking them to use resurrection techniques and prepare to heal Chiu Sihan. At this time, they stared at Zhou Chen and Xia Qian not far away as if facing a formidable enemy, not daring to launch an attack, only able to defend passively. Xia Qian and Zhou Chen then had time to talk. After narrowly escaping the attack of the Lord Sickle, Xia Qian looked at Zhou Chen somewhat puzzled and asked, Aren't you here to save me? She hesitated to ask the second half of the question, then why did you attack me? Looking at Xia Qian, whose health had gradually recovered to more than half, Zhou Chen felt a little embarrassed and said, Sorry, it's a habit. I just saw you were low on health and couldn't help it for a moment. What kind of nonsense explanation is this? Xia Qian stared coldly at Zhou Chen in front of her, her gaze becoming fierce, and slowly said, What about now? Of course not now, you're busy. 
After witnessing Xia Qian's actions, Zhou Qin felt immense pressure and didn't believe that he could hold up against her in his current state. He was already considering retreat. After killing Chiu Sihan once, gaining experience points and equipment, this round had already been worth it, and there was no need to continue risking a confrontation with them. Leave the equipment. At this moment, Chiu Sihan had already been resurrected and had been restored to full health by the team's physician's healing skills. The dropped black iron short sword, rare, made him very distressed. Rare level equipment was not common in the current stage of the game, and he naturally didn't intend to let Zhou Chen off. Unfortunately, at this moment, Zhou Chen happened to be a thief. He used the stealth skill and disappeared in front of everyone. Use area attack skills in that direction. Under Chiu Sihan's command, archers and mages launched their skills together. Unfortunately, after the round of skills, the area was still empty, without a trace of Zhou Chen. That Zhou Chen had actually escaped while invisible. Chiu Sihan's face turned livid, but he was helpless. The stealth skill lasted for 20 seconds and increased movement speed by 20% when used. In these 20 seconds of invisibility, if the opponent wanted to leave, they would have long gone, and he couldn't possibly catch up. He couldn't catch up to Zhou Chen, so he could only vent his anger on Xia Qian. In his view, the thief player who had ambushed him was obviously in cahoots with Xia Qian. However, Xia Qian was not afraid of him. She looked at the livid Chiu Sihan and chuckled, Your weapon has been blown up. What can you use to fight me? At this time, Zhou Chen had truly left the area and dared not stay any longer. When he had just escaped while invisible, he was hit by the opponent's mage with an area skill, losing more than 300 health points in an instant, causing his health bar to drop by half. In that situation, if he ran a little slower, he would probably be in trouble. After using several stealth skills to run far away, he finally stopped and leaned against a large tree. Although he had disguised himself as a thief using the puppet disguise skill, he did not have the healing potions that players should have in his backpack. He couldn't recover the lost half of his health, and could only rely on his health bar to recover automatically. But this was too dangerous. If he encountered a player with ill intentions like himself, who casually gave him a slash as they passed by, he wouldn't even have time to cry. So he quickly released the puppet disguise skill and returned to the status of a secret puppet spirit. Play puppet disguise can continue to disguise him for an hour, but as long as he is willing, he can remove the disguise at any time. However, after removing the disguise, he needs to wait for the cooldown to end before he can disguise himself again. It seems that he has been uncomfortable as a human for a long time. In the state of a disguised player, he feels no sense of security. Instead, he feels surprisingly relieved when he returns to the state of a secret puppet spirit. At this time, he had the opportunity to take a look at the newly enhanced attributes of the Lord Scythe. Lord Scythe, fine, physical attack, 56 plus 32, physical defense, 36, magic defense, 11, health plus 240, mana, 56, physical critical strike rate plus 5%, ignore defense chance plus 4%, skill reaper LV2, skill absorb LV1. After this enhancement, the Lord Scythe was significantly stronger than before. The rare grade equipment dropped from Chiu Sihan indeed provided extraordinary additional attributes. Zhou Chen then opened his own panel again and found that the panel had returned from the Thief Player panel to the Secret Puppet Spirit panel, and the skill points and attribute points he had added while disguised were still in idle status. In other words, he could still allocate points while in the state of a Secret Puppet Spirit. Zhou Chen didn't rush to allocate points. He first observed the Secret Puppet Spirits next to him and found that he was quite different from the others. In appearance, he and the other secret puppet spirits should have been identical, but he happened to have an extra lord scythe, which the other secret puppet spirits did not have. Zhou Chen couldn't help but smile bitterly. Holding such a cool black scythe, he seemed to be able to see the players coming at him endlessly in the future. As the saying goes, a tree that stands out in the forest will be destroyed by the wind. By behaving differently from the other secret puppet spirits, players would definitely be suspicious. Was there any way to hide his cool lord scythe? Unable to find a good solution for the time being, Zhou Chen could only put the Lord Scythe into his backpack, at least not letting the players notice his uniqueness from a distance. As a wild monster, it was indeed good to kill players to gain experience, but he was currently just an ordinary secret puppet spirit and needed to keep a low profile. Thinking back to when he was a scarecrow and was constantly hunted without a moment's rest, Zhou Chen felt a bit tired of it. Then, Zhou Chen noticed something strange. The other secret puppet spirits of the same level as himself only had 1,800 health points. Compared to his 4,000 health points, they had less than half. It seemed that their other attack and defense attributes should also be much lower than his. It appeared that although he was currently just an ordinary secret puppet spirit, 
because he had transformed from a lord-level monster, his starting point was different from that of an ordinary secret puppet spirit, and it was significantly higher. After learning this information, Zhou Chen became happy. This information gap was extremely advantageous for him. In the eyes of the players, when secret puppet spirits with only 1800 health points and matching attributes were leveling up, suddenly a Zhou Chen with attributes more than twice as strong would appear, wouldn't that be wonderful? Feeling pleased, Zhou Chen hummed a tune in his mind and allocated all 33 remaining attribute points to strength. He realized that compared to monsters, players had relatively short health bars, but they had the ability to use potions to restore health. If they were leveling up in a team, there would also be healers to restore health. Therefore, it was not wise for him, as a wild monster, to focus on defense and health to compete with them. At such times, he should increase his attack power, take advantage of the player's inattention, and deliver a fatal blow, securing the experience points. After allocating all 33 attribute points to strength, he began to allocate the skill points as well. He now has a total of 18 skill points, but only two skills, puppetry disguise and puppetry mirror image. He didn't care about many things, and first added points to these two skills. Unfortunately, although he had many skill points, these two skills could only be leveled up to LV5 and could not be further upgraded, leaving his remaining skill points useless. It seems that in order to make use of the remaining skill points, he will have to wait until his race advances and he masters new skills. But for now, leveling up these two skills to LV5 has already made him quite satisfied. Skill, Puppetry Disguise LV5, Disguise as a target within 50 squares, and convert abilities based on the target, current conversion ratio 100%. Skill, puppetry mirror image LV5, create three mirror images of oneself, each with 100% of his own abilities, lasting for 120 seconds, with a cooldown of 120 seconds. Both skills are no longer weak points, but he feels somewhat uncomfortable without the explosive skill crow peck from the scarecrow period. Without that kind of explosive skill, will his ability to kill players weaken significantly? Fortunately, the Reaper's Sickle was brought over, and it did not disappear like Crow Pack, but the downside was that the weapon skills that the Reaper's Sickle came with could not be leveled up, and Advancement had to rely on extracting equipment attributes. This made him somewhat dissatisfied. When Zhou Chen had finished adding points to all his skills and attribute points, a player happened to appear within his field of vision. Watching this player, who was only at level 20, battling a secret puppet spirit, Zhou Chen felt a sense of joy. It seems that his luck is good. Just as he was about to stop, Fate sent him someone to practice with. This was a warrior player, with good health and defense, but his attack power was a bit weak. However, with plenty of healing potions in his backpack, he could still level up slowly on his own. After all, leveling up for warrior players is not as difficult as it is for martial artists. Martial artist players often have to crush several levels of monsters comfortably due to the extremely high level of difficulty in operation, while warrior players, with simple operations and strong survival abilities, can even surpass one or two levels to level up by fighting monsters. However, this is meaningless for Zhou Chen at the moment. Regardless of the profession of the player in front of him, he has no intention of letting the other party go. The level 20 monsters have already learned to attack actively. Once they enter the attack range of the monsters, they will swarm over like sharks smelling blood, besieging the player within range. This warrior player was very cautious. He chose a secret puppet spirit that was far away from the group of secret puppet spirits, even the nearest one was next to a big tree 20 meters away. In this situation, he could completely fight the secret puppet spirit alone until the end of time, then deal with the one next to the big tree. As he was thinking about this, he suddenly looked up and found that the secret puppet spirit next to the big tree 20 meters away had disappeared. Then, he felt a pain in his back, and the game system prompted him that he was being attacked by the secret puppet spirit. He turned around and found a secret puppet spirit attacking him. Although the warrior player could not recognize the differences between each secret puppet spirit, he could guess that this must be the one that had originally been near the big tree. Minus 187 a damage number popped up, startling the warrior player. This secret puppet spirit's attack power was quite high. His physical defense had already exceeded 100 points, and he didn't expect to be hit by such high damage from a normal attack. Don't normal secret puppet spirits only have attack damage of just over 100? This secret puppet spirit is not even an elite level, so why is its attack power so much stronger than its companions? This kind of idea just quickly turned in the mind of the warrior player, and then he saw that the secret puppet demon attacking him had used the puppetry mirror image skill. A strange and brief sound rang out, and in front of him, the secret puppet demon split into three, surrounding him perfectly. The warrior player suddenly felt uneasy. He had seen the mirror image skill of the secret puppet demon before, 
but this powerful mirror image skill was something new to him. Normally, the secret puppet demon could only create a duplicate with half the attributes of the original, and its strength was not considered strong. With his warrior profession's health and defense, and a large number of healing potions in his backpack, even if the secret puppet demon created a duplicate, he could slowly wear it down. But now, the opponent had split into three duplicates. Could he still hold on? Zhou Chen used the puppetry mirror image skill to create three illusion duplicates, surrounding the warrior player. At this point, there was no need to be polite. With his main body's coordination, all three duplicates simultaneously launched an attack on the warrior player. The secret puppet demon did not have any explosive damage skills, so Zhou Chen and the three illusion duplicates could only use basic attacks. Minus 187 minus 187 minus 187 minus 187 for identical damage numbers appeared. As a level 20 warrior, his total health had already reached over 2000 points. These basic attacks only took away a small portion of the warrior player's health. But the warrior player was still shocked. The fact that the secret puppet demon could create three illusion duplicates had already made him very confused, and now the fact that the attack power of the three duplicates was the same as the original made it even harder for the warrior player to accept. He was momentarily conflicted, unsure whether to give up on this secret puppet demon. Meanwhile, the secret puppet demon he had been attacking was now left with only a small portion of its health. If he left now, it would be like abandoning his previous efforts. Although it was currently attacking him, it could only attack once every second, and it didn't have any explosive damage. He could barely keep up with healing. As a level 20 warrior, he could already use special healing potions, which could restore his health much faster than regular ones, barely maintaining his health. Some time passed, and the warrior player's health was still at about half. Under the attacks of Zhou Chen and the three illusion duplicates, even with the use of special healing potions, his health was slowly decreasing. If it weren't for his health dropping to half, the passive skill endurance of the warrior profession would not have kicked in, and he probably wouldn't have been able to maintain his current health. The so-called endurance skill was a passive skill that warriors could master after reaching level 15. When their health dropped below 50%, it could increase their defense. At this point, Zhou Chen's basic attacks could only cause minus 156 damage to him. Although combined with the attacks of the three duplicates, they still couldn't kill him for the time being. Finally, the warrior player managed to kill the original secret puppet demon. A flash of light and a piece of equipment appeared on the ground, the drop from the slain secret puppet demon. The warrior player was overjoyed and picked it up, very satisfied with his previous perseverance. If he had left just now instead of persisting in killing the secret puppet demon, he would have missed out on this piece of equipment. After picking up the equipment, the warrior player's health had already dropped by more than half. At this point, he was already prepared to retreat. The secret puppet demon in front of him was quite strange. Not only could it create three illusion clones, but each one had the same attack power as the original. Even if he could use healing potions to slowly wear down this secret puppet demon, it probably wouldn't be worth it. He had spent a whole backpack of specially made gold wound medicine, and the game coins spent were not insignificant. If he only used it to defeat a wild monster, he wouldn't even earn back the cost of the medicine. He was already quite happy to have just dropped an equipment. Although he had some doubts about whether the secret puppet demon in front of him would also drop something, the cost was too high and the risk too great, so he dismissed the idea. After drinking a bottle of specially made gold wound medicine, he turned and left. Unfortunately, it was too late to think about leaving at this point. How could Zhou Chen let him go? Suddenly, a huge black scythe appeared in his hand, which was the Sovereign Scythe taken from the game backpack. The Sovereign Scythe was already fully charged, and at this point, he didn't care about much and immediately activated the Scythe Kill skill of the Sovereign Scythe. The level 2 Scythe Kill skill could increase attack speed by 120% and movement speed by 30%. Once this skill was activated, the warrior player couldn't even run away, and he was blocked by him and his three illusion clones. Minus 244, minus 244, minus 244, critical hit. Minus 488 life drain. Plus 146, after taking out the sovereign scythe and using the scythe kill skill, the warrior player couldn't even withstand a single blow. He was killed by one of the illusion clones triggering a critical hit. And this illusion clone had quite good luck even successfully triggering the 5% chance side drain skill. However, the warrior player hadn't even attacked Zhou Chen before, and Zhou Chen's health bar was still full, so the restored plus 146 health didn't make a difference. But in any case, the successful triggering of side drain made Zhou Chen understand that this passive skill was not just for show. Killing the warrior player naturally provided him with 100 experience points, 
but now his experience bar was as long as 7,200 points, so leveling up was still a long way off. Compared to experience, there was something else that made him even happier. At the same time the warrior player returned to the city to revive, the equipment dropped when he was killed was revealed. This was the spoils of the warrior player just killing another secret puppet demon, but he hadn't even had a chance to warm it in his backpack before it fell out again for Zhou Chen. Equipment in the backpack had a much higher drop rate than equipment worn on the body. Zhou Chen couldn't be bothered with the sorrow in the warrior player's heart and happily picked up the equipment. Black Iron Broadsword, Rare, Physical Attack plus 58, Strength plus 8, Stamina plus 8, Equipment Level, 22. It was actually a rare level equipment, and it was a broadsword that was just right for the warrior profession. Zhou Chen could imagine that the warrior player who had just revived in the city must be feeling very bitter. However, whether the other party felt bitter or not was not his concern. He simply extracted the attributes of this equipment with great joy. This black iron broadsword, rare, was obtained for the first time, and the extraction rate was also 50%. Successful attribute extraction of black iron broadsword, rare, current extraction rate 50%, Physical attack plus 29, strength plus 4, stamina plus 4. Once again attached to the sovereign scythe, the attributes of the sovereign scythe were enhanced. For every point of stamina increase, life value increased by 20, defense increased by 2, and 4 points of stamina could increase Zhou Chen's life value by 80 and defense by 8. After extracting the attributes of this equipment, the scythe kill skill used by Zhou Chen still had 28 seconds of duration. Now that he didn't have any explosive damage skills, the scythe kill state was his big killer, and he naturally didn't want to waste it. Just now, solving that warrior player gave him quite a bit of confidence, and he charged forward in the right direction. Along with three phantom clones, the secret puppet demon carried a huge black scythe and dashed around the outskirts of the nightmare forest. If it weren't seen with one's own eyes, who would believe that a secret puppet demon could run so fast? No, not just one, but four. For secret puppet demons carrying huge black scythes. There were naturally many players leveling up on the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest. Zhou Chen, carrying the Scythe of the Sovereign, quickly noticed other players. It was a small group of players leveling up and grinding monsters, consisting of a warrior player, a physician, and an archer. One was a frontline tank, one was a backline damage dealer, and one was responsible for healing and support. This kind of combination was actually quite effective for leveling up, and it would be even more perfect if there was a mage player added to the mix. Zhou Chen didn't have time to think about why the other side didn't have a mage. In fact, as soon as he appeared carrying the scythe of the sovereign, the three members of this small group also noticed him. A secret puppet demon carrying a huge scythe, could it be the new creation of that evil alchemist? The casual physician player exclaimed in surprise. The archer player standing next to him shot arrows while saying, it might be a new type of monster added in the game update. Let's take care of this one in front of us and test it out. With the new type of monster, we might be able to get new equipment drops. They had this plan in mind, and Zhou Chen also had his own plan. At this moment, with 21 seconds left in the scythe kill state, Zhou Chen implemented his plan to attack anyone he saw. After numerous confrontations with players, he had already developed his own tactics. Taking advantage of the movement speed of his scythe kill state, he completely ignored the warrior player in front of him and charged towards the two players behind. The archer profession, like the mage, was fragile and easy to take down. Dealing with them was naturally very easy. Although the physician profession had some tankiness, it didn't have much attack power. Zhou Chen wasn't worried about any danger from him. In just two seconds, Zhou Chen crossed a great distance and charged in front of the physician and archer players. Without even greeting them, Zhou Chen raised the scythe of the sovereign and swung the black scythe down. With the attack range of the scythe of the sovereign and the movement speed of the scythe kill state, the two players couldn't dodge at all. The physician player immediately used a mist barrier and then held a healing spell in his hand, intending to heal the archer teammate. He was well aware that although they were both under attack, the archer profession was much more fragile than the physician profession. If he didn't heal the archer, the archer could easily fall in an instant. It must be said that he wasn't wrong in his thinking, but he guessed the beginning, yet couldn't guess the result. With the bonus from the scythe of the sovereign, Zhou Chen's attack power had reached a terrifying 428 points. Even with stronger professional equipment, the total physical defense of the archer player in front of him was still less than 100 points. When Zhou Chen's scythe of the sovereign struck, it caused a terrible amount of damage. Minus 353, minus 353, minus 353, minus 353, together with the phantom clones, a total of four strikes were made, each one solidly hitting the archer player and causing over 300 points of damage. 
This time, Zhou Chen and the three phantom clones together didn't trigger a single critical hit. However, it wasn't necessary. Even without triggering a critical hit, these four strikes caused a total of minus 1412 points of damage. This archer player was only level 21, with a total health pool of just over 1200 points. He was instantly killed by these four strikes, without even making a sound, turning into a soul light. Successfully killed player V, experience plus 105 unfortunately, no equipment dropped. Zhou Chen sighed in his heart and continued to swing his weapon towards the physician player. The reaper's sickle can cause area attacks within a range of three squares, so when these two stood together, each of Zhou Chen's swings could simultaneously attack both of them. The physician player, whether in terms of health or defense, was superior to the archer player. With the same swing, the archer player perished, while the physician player only lost half of his health. At this moment, the physician player had already cast a healing spell on himself. With a plus 687 advanced healing spell combined with magic attack, and the healing bonus from the physician profession, the player restored plus 687 health in one go. However, this was still not enough. Even with the continuous recovery effect of Mist Barrier, he could not withstand Zhou Chen's attacks for long. With another swing of the sickle, the physician player's health instantly turned red. In this situation, all Zhou Chen needed to do was swing the reaper's sickle once more, and the physician player would meet his end. The warrior player was rushing over, but judging from the distance, it was clear that he wouldn't make it in time to provide assistance. The physician player frowned, a glow appeared in his hand, and he activated the life chain that he had prepared. A shimmering chain of light spanned 7 to 8 meters of air, connecting the physician player and the warrior player. Zhou Chen, of course, could not retract his swing, and the reaper's sickle had already struck down. Unexpectedly, minus 87, minus 87, minus 87, minus 87 for low damage numbers appeared, but the physician player did not fall as expected. The simultaneous swing only caused him a little over 300 points of damage, which, given his remaining health, he could still endure. What was going on? Zhou Chen was somewhat surprised. Before he became a scarecrow, he was only at level 18, and he didn't have much understanding of the advanced skills of other professions. He didn't know the specific effects of the life chain skill used by the physician player. At this moment, the warrior player had already approached, and Zhou Chen glanced at him and noticed that his health had dropped significantly compared to before. He swung the reaper's sickle once more at the physician player, who had already recovered a considerable amount of health with his healing skill. This time, the swing did not manage to instantly defeat him as expected. Minus 87, minus 87, minus 87, minus 87 again, very low damage numbers. However, Zhou Chen, who was paying attention to the warrior player, noticed something. When he attacked the physician player, damage numbers appeared on the warrior player's side as well. Looking at the minus 203 damage number, Zhou Chen suddenly realized. It turned out that the life chain skill connected the physician player and the warrior player, transferring a portion of the damage from his attacks to the warrior player. The transferred damage was approximately 70%. With the warrior player's health bar length, this kind of damage was not too difficult for him to endure, and the physician player was thus able to avoid being instantly killed. The reaper's sickle state only had 16 seconds left, and Zhou Chen felt a sense of urgency. This seemed to be a bit troublesome. The physician's life chain was indeed a troublesome skill. Even if Zhou Chen specifically targeted the physician, a large portion of the damage would be shared with the warrior player. It was truly not easy to kill a physician with healing abilities. The increased attack speed from the Reaper's Sickle skill allowed Zhou Chen to attack twice in one second, but this rapid attack on the physician player did not yield the desired effect. The physician player probably allocated most of the points to stamina, as their health and defense are not much different from those of a warrior. Moreover, they used life chain to disperse damage, desperately used skills to heal themselves, and also took medicine to recover, managing to stabilize their health bar under Zhou Chen's continuous attacks. At this moment, Zhou Chen's reaping state only had 12 seconds left. Looking at the physician player who couldn't be dealt with for a while, Zhou Chen felt somewhat helpless. At this point, he somewhat missed his previous flock of crows pecking skill. If he had that skill, he would definitely not let this physician player survive until now with a sudden burst of output. But at this point, thinking about these things was meaningless and unrealistic. At this moment, he needed to make a decision for himself. Should he continue to confront these two guys? or should he give up and run away? Otherwise, when the reaping state disappeared later, and the movement speed decreased, it wouldn't be so easy to escape. This thought just crossed Zhou Chen's mind and was quickly dismissed. His gaze fell on the warrior player standing a few meters away, and he suddenly noticed something special. The warrior player had not approached closer. 
He naturally realized that Zhou Chen's side of the sovereign was an area of effect weapon. If he and the physician player stood together, it would be like both of them being attacked. Every time Zhou Chen swung the scythe of the sovereign, under the effect of life chain, he would lose a considerable amount of health. At this moment, the physician player could only manage to heal himself and had no time to deal with Zhou Chen. Fortunately, the warrior's health and defense were quite high, and the special healing potion he used was quite effective, allowing him to barely maintain his health. Zhou Chen noticed that every time he struck the physician player, the nearby warrior player actually lost more health. What if he turned the tables and attacked the warrior player instead? Zhou Chen was always a doer. In a moment of thought, he had already given up on the physician player in front of him and rushed towards the warrior player. With the 30% movement speed increase from the reaping skill, the warrior player couldn't escape. Zhou Chen raised the side of the sovereign in his hand, along with three phantom clones, and the western end of the side of the sovereign fell on the warrior player. Minus 72 minus 72 minus 72 minus 72 for pitiful damage numbers appeared. However, seeing these superficial damage numbers, Zhou Chen felt happy. On the other side of life chain, the physician player suddenly suffered higher damage numbers. Minus 218 minus 218 minus 218 minus 218. These were the same damage numbers, but the roles had reversed. This time, the physician player's health bar dropped by half. The physician player never expected that a mere secret puppet spirit beast could have such intelligence. Or perhaps, this was designed by the game to deliberately frustrate people? The physician player couldn't care less and hurriedly used healing skills on himself. Unfortunately, although his healing skill recovery amount was quite good, it couldn't keep up with the 8 attacks that could be launched in a second. Zhou Chen casually swung the side of the sovereign two more times, and the physician player, who had borne most of the damage on the other end of life chain, breathed his last breath and turned into a soul light. As for life chain, it naturally disappeared the moment he was killed and could no longer take effect. At this moment, Zhou Chen still had 8 seconds left in his reaping state. Because Zhou Chen had just switched attack targets, the warrior player, who was on the receiving end of a small amount of damage, had already recovered to about two-thirds of his health bar. However, for Zhou Chen at this time, he was equivalent to a lump of experience points. Without the healing skill of the physician player to restore health, relying solely on taking medicine to recover, how could the opponent possibly survive under his focused attack? Minus 290, minus 290, minus 269, minus 269, one attack. The first hit caused 1118 points of damage. When the next two attacks landed, because the warrior player's health bar had dropped to below half, it triggered the endurance passive skill, slightly increasing defense. However, this was inconsequential. The warrior player, who had only half of his health bar remaining, suddenly turned red. At this point, he only had 5 to 600 points of health left, and Zhou Chen only needed to attack once more for him to become a mere soul light like his teammate. No miracle occurred, and in the next moment, Zhou Chen's scythe of the sovereign once again struck, emptying the warrior player's health bar with the first hit and taking him down. After killing the physician player and the warrior player, Zhou Chen once again gained 210 experience points, bringing his total to 555 out of 7200 points. At least he was a little closer to leveling up. At this moment, Zhou Chen looked down and found that after the two players had respawned in the city, there were still dropped equipment on the ground. His luck was good this time, as two pieces of equipment dropped at once. According to the previous notification sound, he knew that these were two pieces of fine-grade equipment. Although they were slightly inferior compared to rare-grade equipment, he did not mind. He picked them up and chose to extract their attributes. Black Iron Broadsword, fine, attribute extraction successful, current extraction ratio 50%, Physical attack plus 18, strength plus 3. Physician soft armor, fine, attribute extraction successful, current extraction ratio 50%, physical defense plus 9, magic defense plus 9. Compared to rare grade equipment, fine grade equipment only had two attributes, and overall, it was much inferior. However, at this moment, Zhou Chen heard another notification sound, which filled him with great excitement. Attribute addition meets requirements, Scythe of the Sovereign, fine, quality upgraded to Scythe of the Sovereign, rare. After so many attribute additions, the Scythe of the Sovereign's attributes finally broke through the critical value and advanced once again. Scythe of the Sovereign, rare, physical attack, 212, physical defense, 89, magic defense, 39, health plus 560, mana, 112, physical critical hit rate plus 7%, ignore defense probability plus 6%, Skill Reaping LV3, Skill Absorption LV2. After advancing to the rare grade, the Scythe of the Sovereign's attributes had greatly improved. 
What made Zhou Chen even more excited was that the Scythe of the Sovereign came with two weapon special effect skills, each of which had also been upgraded by one level. At this point, Zhou Chen finally understood that in order to upgrade these weapon special effect skills, he had to first upgrade the quality level of the Scythe of the Sovereign. He was eager to know how much the two weapon skills would improve after the upgrade. Zhou Chen held the Scythe of the Sovereign, a finely crafted wooden hand, and slowly rubbed it, starting to examine the detailed information of the two weapon skills. Reaping LV3, complete charging after 50 attacks, when activated, can increase attack speed by 140%, increase movement speed by 40%, last for 40 seconds, cooldown time 2 minutes. Absorption LV2, when using the Scythe of the Sovereign to attack, 10% chance to absorb 40% of the damage is health. Zhou Chen nodded in satisfaction. Whether it was the reaping or absorption skill, they had become much stronger after the upgrade. The reaping skill not only increased the attack speed and movement speed bonus after activation, but also extended the duration by 10 seconds. This was a significant enhancement for Zhou Chen. However, the requirement to complete 50 attacks to charge it was somewhat inconvenient to use and required advanced preparation. The sickle absorption skill goes without saying, the chance of attacking and absorbing blood has increased from 5% on the first hit to 10%, doubling the triggering chance. With Zhou Chen's playful puppet mirror image being able to create three clones, his attacks can be considered swift, meaning he can trigger blood absorption with just two or three strikes, making it very practical. Even if he doesn't have any blood vials to consume, he still has the ability to engage in prolonged battles with players. At this moment, the sickle kill state has passed, and he is not in a hurry to find other players to level up. Instead, he raises the sovereign sickle in his hand and aims at a nearby secret puppet spirit. At this moment, he is in the state of a wild monster, and killing another wild monster like the secret puppet spirit would yield no benefits. However, he is not attacking other secret puppet spirits for the sake of benefits, but to initiate 50 attacks in order to prepare the sickle kill charge. This way, the next time he faces a player, he can activate the sickle kill skill immediately, without needing to spend time slowly charging it up. It has to be said that his idea is very good and effective. After killing several secret puppet spirits, the sickle kill skill has finally completed its charge, waiting for his next use. When he attacks the secret puppet spirits, he also notices something amusing. When he attacks these secret puppet spirits, they just stand there foolishly, not knowing how to fight back. Perhaps, in the design of these secret puppet spirits, there is no concept of attacking their own kind. Zhou Chen roams the outskirts of the nightmare forest, looking for isolated players to level up, and at this time, the game's chat channel has become lively. It is indeed a bit lonely to silently hunt down players alone, so when he has nothing to do, Zhou Chen also pays attention to the chat channel. He discovers that on this day, the chat channel is filled with endless debates related to himself. Have you heard? Something happened to that Hanchio guild. What Hanchio guild? I've never heard of it. It's the guild where the top fighter Xia Qin is. Their guild leader previously announced that in two weeks, they would aim to reach the top 8 in the first guild battle. Oh, you mean that third-rate guild? Their guild doesn't even have a level 29 player, and they dare to boast about reaching the top 8? Brother, don't underestimate them. You don't know that the fighter profession is different. Even though Xia Qian is only level 26, she is not inferior to level 29 players of other professions. The fighter profession, that's true. I have a friend who chose the fighter profession. It's so difficult to operate, and leveling up is so hard. He started the game with me, and now I'm level 28, but he's only level 21, a world of difference. In that case, with the top fighter they have, it shouldn't be unreasonable for them to compete for the top 8, right? Brother, you don't know. If the top fighter is still there, there is hope, but she has fallen out with the Hancho Guild. Fallen out? When did this happen? It happened today. Xia Qian voluntarily left the guild, and it's said that the Hancho Guild even sent people to stop her, intending to make her start from scratch. No way, such a big grudge. They used to be in the same guild, and now the Hancho Guild is so petty? Zhou Chen watches with relish, but he realizes that the direction of the chat channel has changed at some point. Members of the Hancho Guild may not be able to tolerate being discussed, and they have appeared in the chat. Autumn Chill, this is an internal matter of my Hancho Guild. I hope everyone will accumulate virtue with their words and not spread rumors. Also, that thief named Zhou Chen, I give you until the end of today to return the equipment, otherwise all members of my Hancho Guild will kill you every time we see you, until you quit the game. Other players paying attention to the chat channel brighten up, there's new gossip. However, Zhou Chen was not afraid of him. After all, he had nothing better to do, so he decided to input information in the chat channel as well. Zhou Chen, that person called Xiao Sihan, it's just a rare level black iron short sword, but you look so stingy. If you insist on showing it off, 
I can't do anything about it. Xiao Sihan didn't expect Zhou Chen to be so disrespectful, and he was so angry that his face turned red. At this time, other people in the chat channel started to join in. Ha, huh, the leader of the Hancho Guild was actually killed by someone and dropped equipment, that's amazing. Rare level equipment is good, but for the leader of the guild to be so upset over it, it's really embarrassing. Exactly, that guy Zhou Chen, impressive, are you interested in joining our guild? If you join our guild, the Hancho Guild definitely won't dare to bother you again. Zhou Chen found it amusing and replied in the chat channel, no need, what's the Hancho Guild? I've never been afraid of them. If you have the guts, come and fight me. One on one, two on one, oh. And when you come, remember to bring more equipment, I want to drop a few more. Lonely Enchantress, what's the use of talking big? If you have the guts, let's set a time and place, our Hancho Guild will definitely accompany you to the end. Zhou Chen didn't expect to provoke another member of the Hancho Guild, but what Lonely Enchantress said hit a nerve. Honestly, he was unlikely to agree to a fight with the other party. He was still just a monster, what could he use to fight someone? And he wasn't a player who could respawn indefinitely after death, but a monster who might be finished for good after dying. Taking such a risk was not worth it. Before he could figure out how to respond, another person popped up in the chat channel. Xia Qian, good, I agree. Tomorrow night at 1900 hours, at the dueling arena in the west main city of the eastern district, I'll be waiting for you, all 29 members of your Hancho guild, make sure none of them are missing. Lonely Enchantress, Xia Qian, don't think you can be arrogant just because you escaped today. If our guild wants to deal with you, it's just a matter of minutes. Xia Qian, dueling arena, dare or not. Zhou Chen, he he, this Xia Qian classmate, aren't you making things difficult? The Hancho guild only dares to besiege a whole guild. How could they dare to duel with you one on one? Xiao Si Han, all right, tomorrow night at 1900 hours. And that guy Zhou Chen, our Hancho Guild has never feared a challenge. If you're not satisfied, you're also welcome to come. I'll be waiting for you. Xia Chen, all right, Zhou Chen, thanks for helping me out. If you have time, you can come and see how I beat these disgusting people. Almost involuntarily, Zhou Chen nodded and said in the chat channel, "All right, I'll come and see tomorrow." As soon as the words left his mouth, Zhou Chen regretted it. He was still just a monster, how could he enter a player town guarded by humans? Time passed quickly, and in the blink of an eye, a day had already passed. During this day, Zhou Chen secretly lurked on the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest, seizing the opportunity to hunt down solo leveling players. After this day, he had killed quite a few players, and his experience points had reached 2585-7200. Killing so many players had also dropped several pieces of equipment for him, although they were only of, fine, quality, it was better than nothing. Adding them to the Lord's Scythe also improved its attributes. Now, compared to before, the Lord's Scythe's attributes, whether in attack power or defense, had increased slightly. For Zhou Chen, who was planning to head to the human town, any improvement was good. At this moment, he was lingering outside the west main city of the eastern district. From a distance, the grand city stood, with human guards standing on both sides of the city gate. Zhou Chen knew that the westerner was an NPC guard arranged by the game. For players at the current stage, this guard was even more terrifying than the big boss in the game. This NPC guard held a knife in each hand and a bow and arrow in each hand. One type was called the knife-wielding guard by players, and the other was called the archer guard. Such guards were set up in many places in the town. Once, a high-level warrior player, relying on their impressive health and defense, killed someone in the town and gained infamy, only to be shot from a distance by the archer guard and died within two seconds, leaving behind a pile of equipment. Since then, players have known that in the early stages of the game, they were not capable of challenging the NPC guards. Therefore, although most areas in the town did not prohibit player killing, PK, they were still considered safe zones by players. Because in this town, as long as you behaved and did not actively kill others, the NPC guards were the most loyal protectors. If you dared to kill someone in front of the guards, the NPC guards would show you what despair meant. For players with grudges, besides ambushing each other in the wild, there was also a more dignified way to settle disputes, which was to have a duel in the arena. Regardless of the player's grievances, they could come to the city's arena. As long as both sides confirmed with the NPC in the arena, they could enter and fight freely without gaining infamy or being attacked by the NPC guards. However, Zhou Chen knew clearly that he was currently a wild monster. Players would not be attacked by the NPC guards unless they killed someone in front of them or reached a certain level of infamy. But monsters were different, no matter what kind of monster, as long as they dared to approach the town, they would be killed by the guards immediately. Even though he had disguised himself as a player profession using the puppeteer's disguise skill, Zhou Chen still felt a bit worried. He stood outside the town gate, looking towards it from a distance, 
and finally made up his mind to slowly move towards the gate. Zhou Chen approached slowly, and at this distance, even if the two knife-wielding guards wanted to attack him, they couldn't reach him. Only the two archer guards could attack him at this distance. With the powerful attributes added by the scythe of the sovereign, his defense was now much stronger than that of a warrior player, and he could withstand the attacks of the archer guards for two or three seconds without much problem. At the same time, Zhou Chen had already gripped the scythe of the sovereign. As soon as the archer guard showed a hint of attacking intent, he would immediately activate the scythe kill skill and use the 40% increased movement speed to run away. It was indeed very risky, but Zhou Chen believed that he was well prepared and at least wouldn't lose his life here. Clang! Zhou Chen's foot finally stepped into the attack range of the archer guard. However, the expected attack did not come. At the city gate not far away, the two archer guards were still standing there, as if Zhou Chen didn't exist. Zhou Chen finally breathed a sigh of relief and took another step forward. Still, no attack came. The heavy burden in Zhou Chen's heart was finally lifted. It seemed that after disguising himself as a player profession using the puppeteer's disguise skill, he not only could deceive other players but also deceive the game's NPCs. He let out a breath and put away the Scythe of the Sovereign, placing it back in his backpack space. Weapons like the Scythe of the Sovereign, which were 2 to 3 meters long and looked imposing, were indeed a bit too conspicuous. As a monster living in the player's town, Zhou Chen least wanted to attract attention. When passing by the NPC guards in the west, Zhou Chen subconsciously quickened his pace. Although he had tested that these guards would not attack him, at this moment, Zhou Chen still felt like a lamb surrounded by wolves. It was getting late, and there was still over an hour before the scheduled duel with Xia Qian and the Cold Autumn Guild at 1900 hours. Zhou Chen hurriedly ran towards it. Although it was only the main city in the East District, the town was quite large. If he didn't hurry, the duel might be over before he arrived. The game chat channel also began to liven up, as yesterday's duel between the first fighter Xia Qian and the Cold Autumn Guild had already become widely known. At this time, anyone with some free time gathered at the duel arena. As a duel arena in the game, the audience seats were naturally sufficient. The game used magical technology, connecting many different viewing spaces to each duel arena. Although it appeared that there was only one arena and over 10,000 seats for the audience, in fact, it could accommodate tens of thousands of spectators. However, this time, the matter of the Cold Autumn Guild was neither big nor small. If it weren't for everyone's curiosity about the first fighter on the leaderboard, probably not even a tenth of the usual number of people would come to watch. Zhou Chen didn't really care about the crowd. His mindset was very positive at the moment, as he came to be a spectator. He had just arrived at the duel arena and was looking for a seat when his personal mail system started flashing. After becoming a monster, this was the first time Zhou Chen encountered such a thing. As a monster, no one would send him mail. He was puzzled. Even now, apart from a few words he couldn't help but say in the chat channel yesterday, he hadn't had any interaction with anyone. Who would be looking for him? With this doubt, he opened the flashing mail system. Player Xia Qian requests to add you as a friend, do you agree? Looking at the flashing player mail system, Zhou Chen hesitated for a moment, but finally clicked confirm. Successfully added player Xia Qian as a friend. Player Xia Qian sent an attachment mail, please receive. Zhou Chen was puzzled and sent three question marks to Xia Qian. Zhou Chen? Xia Qian, I sent you something, please receive it. It will help you in the upcoming duel. Zhou Chen, you're overthinking it. I don't plan to participate in the duel. Xia Qian, hurry up and receive it. Men have their pride. When the Cold Autumn Guild taunts you later, you'll still end up participating. Zhou Chen, if I say I'm not that concerned about my pride, would you believe me? Xia Qian, receive it, and then we're even. Zhou Chen shook his head helplessly. Since the other party was so insistent, he reluctantly chose to receive it. Received items from player Xia Qian, experience pearl asterisk 1, received items from player Xia Qian, shadow dagger, rare, shadow leather armor, rare, shadow bracelet, rare, shadow ring, rare. Zhou Chen was stunned, his expression was priceless. The experience pearl was one thing, but the four pieces of equipment clearly belonged to the thief class. Four, rare, level equipment, and a complete set at that. In the current stage of the game, their value was self-evident. The gift sent by Xia Qian was so valuable that it was hard to describe with just the word precious. After all, the guild leader of the Cold Autumn Guild had been so heartbroken by revealing a rare level weapon, and now he had to challenge himself in the chat channel and force him to return it. And Xia Qian casually waved her hand and sent herself a rare great equipment. Under Zhou Chen's shock, he couldn't help but send a message to Xia Qian, asking, how did you get these pieces of equipment? Xia Qian responded nonchalantly, some were dropped by monsters, and some were bought with money. Um, hearing such words, Zhou Chen felt a bit embarrassed. At that time, 
he helped kill that Autumn Frost incidentally. What he wanted was just to ambush and kill Autumn Frost, gain experience, and obtain equipment. When he saw Xia Chen with low health at the time, he even thought about taking her down as well, but Xia Chen's skills were too strong for him to handle. Thinking like this, Xia Chen sent another message saying, You better equip this set of equipment quickly. If you keep it in your backpack, it's easy to get it exploded. If you enter the duel arena, the death explosion rate will double. Zhou Chen, who had already decided not to enter the arena, couldn't help but be moved by this, the death explosion rate doubles in the duel arena? Xia Chen thought he was worried and replied, you don't have to worry too much. Even if you wear this set of equipment, you may not necessarily lose. In case you really lose, it's not a big deal. If the equipment is lost, I'll buy it back for you. Zhou Chen deliberately ignored the buy, buy, by meaning in Xia Chen's words. When he was bored, he would look at the chat channel and had a good understanding of the market price. Rare grade equipment like the shadow set was quite valuable. For a player who seriously levels up in the game from level 1 to 20, they wouldn't earn enough game currency to buy a piece of equipment. Xia Qian said it so casually, and there was only one explanation, she used real life currency to exchange for game currency to make the purchase. Even so, the required expenses would definitely not be small. In other words, this Xia Qian was quite well off in real life. Zhou Qin couldn't believe that he had only helped once on a whim, and Xia Qian, this little rich woman, looked at him differently and bought equipment to give to him. For a moment, he didn't know what to do. However, since the items had been sent to his hands, he could only accept them. Pretending to push the items away insincerely was not Zhou Chen's style, but Zhou Chen clearly had a misunderstanding. She misunderstood him as a thief player. When he ambushed Autumn Frost, he did disguise himself as a thief profession, but this time when he entered the player town, Zhou Chen used the puppetry disguise skill to disguise himself as a warrior profession. There was no other reason, just because the warrior profession's health and defense gave him a sense of security. In the town, the thief player's stealth invisibility ability had no effect on NPC guards. These NPCs seemed to have true sight, and if a thief player dared to kill in front of them, even if they escaped while invisible, they would definitely not escape the arrow shot at them. Okay, I'm ready to enter the arena, you handle it yourself. After sending this message, Xia Qian didn't speak anymore. Zhou Chen had some free time and started to deal with the things he had just received. Experience bead, a bead that can store experience, using it can immediately increase the corresponding experience value, currently storing 5000 slash 5000 experience, usage level limit 20 to 29. Zhou Chen knew that this experience bead was quite valuable. It was not easy to obtain, and after obtaining it, the stored experience value was still empty. To fill the experience bead with experience, the owner needed to carry it with them and continuously level up and kill monsters. Each time a monster was killed, the experience gained would be evenly divided into two parts, one part obtained by the player, and the other part stored in the experience bead. Leveling up and killing monsters was already not easy, and this experience bead would also take away half of the experience, so for the owner, it was basically of no benefit. In general, even if one obtains this experience bead, few people are willing to store it because it would slow down their leveling speed. Just looking at this already filled experience bead, Xia Qian's gift can be considered very valuable. With the experience bead in hand, Zhou Chen chose to use it first. Experience bead used successfully, experience points plus 5000, level up plus 1. Currently in puppet disguise state, level up, puppet disguise gains 10% attribute bonus from original body. Watching the experience bead disappear in a white light in his hand, Zhou Chen was stunned. Leveling up was of course expected, but the improvement in the puppet disguise state was unexpected. Obtaining a 10% attribute bonus from the original body, what does that mean? He quickly opened his own attribute panel and found that in addition to the normal attributes of the warrior class he was disguised as, 10% of the attributes from the attribute panel of the secret puppet spirit had been added to his current player panel. First was the health points. Originally, as a level 21 disguised as a warrior, not counting the additional from the Lord Sickle, he should have had 2200 health points. But now in his panel, his health points were 2200, plus 450, reaching 2650 points. Zhou Chen understood that at level 21, his health points in the secret puppet spirit state should be 4500 points. In other words, the health points in the secret puppet spirit state were added to the disguised state at a 10% conversion rate. The same applied to other attributes such as attack power and defense. In short, Zhou Chen in the disguised state had become much stronger. He looked towards the dual arena, a certain thought in his mind could no longer be suppressed. Since that's the case, should he also go and have some fun? With double the drop rate, maybe he could make a fortune here? Whether to participate or not, Zhou Chen hadn't decided yet, 
but the few pieces of equipment that Xia Qian had sent to him, he chose to extract the attributes first. After all, his original identity was a monster, and this time he had disguised himself as a warrior, so this set of thief equipment was simply unusable. It would temporarily serve no purpose in his backpack, so he might as well use it to strengthen the Lord's sickle. All these were, rare, level equipment with very good attributes, and they were all the first equipment that Zhou Chen had obtained, with an extraction rate of 50%. After extracting the attributes of these four pieces of equipment, the attributes of the Lord's sickle had greatly improved. However, it was still some distance away from advancing to the next quality level. After extracting and adding the attributes of these four, rare, level equipment, the current attributes of the Lord's sickle were, Lord's sickle, rare, physical attack, 288, physical defense, 126, magic defense, 65, health points plus 1020, mana points, 246, physical critical hit rate plus 8%, Ignore defense rate plus 7%, combo rate plus 3%, skill sickle kill LV3, skill sickle absorb LV2. In addition to the original attributes being improved, Zhou Chen also extracted a new attribute from these four rare equipment. That was the combo rate. Although it was only a 3% combo rate, Zhou Chen was not dissatisfied. For him, as long as the other attributes were improved, that was already enough, and this combo rate was more like a gift, better to have it than not. The so-called combo was actually the chance to instantly strike twice during a normal attack. With a 3% chance, it might not even happen after 30 consecutive strikes, so for now, it could be said to be better than nothing. However, Zhou Chen's Lord Sickle had the Sickle Kill skill, which could greatly increase the attack speed, so he could make better use of this combo rate. At this time, it was already close to 1900 hours, and the time Xia Qian had previously agreed upon with the Cold Autumn Guild was almost here. In the audience seats of the Duel Arena, those who should have been seated were already seated. Cold Autumn Guild itself is not a well-known large guild, but with the gimmick of the first fighter, it is the first convenient event since the game started, and everyone is filled with strong curiosity. Eating melons and such is one of the most beloved activities of humans. In the Duel Arena, Xia Qian immediately stood up. She stood in the Duel Arena, scanning her gaze to the west, calling out, Autumn Frost, where are you? As a dual contestant who had already reported to the NPC and entered the arena, her voice and image were simultaneously broadcast to more than a dozen audience areas, received by all the spectators. In the game chat channel, Autumn Frost finally appeared, saying, Today's match is not with you. Before the many spectators could react, he continued, Our cold autumn guild is full of talent, naturally there are people to deal with you. As he spoke, suddenly another person appeared in the dual arena. That person was also dressed lightly and simply, and was also a fighter. The fighter player looked coldly at Xia Qian in front of him and said, Today, your opponent is me. Xia Qian frowned and looked at him, asking, Who are you, and why doesn't Autumn Frost come up himself? In the chat channel, someone had already helped Xia Qian with an answer. It's Extreme Fist King, he is the second ranked fighter on the professional rankings. So it's him, his level is actually the same as Xia Qian's, but maybe his experience is a bit behind, so he can only rank behind Xia Qian. Interesting, Today's match between the first and second fighters is worth the ticket price. Although the Cold Autumn Guild is nothing special, it has connections with the first and second ranked fighters, which instantly raises its status. In a certain audience area, Lonely Enchanting looked at Autumn Frost beside her and asked with some concern, Autumn Frost, can the Extreme Fist King you brought really beat Xia Qian? Although he's good, he's only the second ranked fighter after all. Autumn Frost remained calm and smiled, shaking his head, the first and second ranked fighters are only based on the experience value difference calculated by the game system. It's hard to say who is stronger in a real fight. And it's also because he had the opportunity to duel with Xia Qian face to face that the Extreme Fist King was willing to join our guild. He looked towards the duel arena, his eyes turning cold, and said, And I know that for this battle, the Extreme Fist King has prepared a trump card, spending a lot of money to collect a complete set of, rare, equipment and even buying a few experience pearls. Since Xia Qian is skilled in the fighter profession, I invited another fighter to deal with her, so that her operational skills cannot gain an advantage. At this point, Autumn Frost's words also revealed some helplessness and regret. Characters like the Extreme Fist King only joined the Cold Autumn Guild temporarily because they wanted to duel with Xia Qian. After this matter, it's uncertain whether the guild can keep him. Similarly, in the audience seats, Zhou Chen naturally didn't know about these twists and turns. He was only focused on the duel arena. His purpose for coming this time was not just to eat melons. When he encountered Xia Qian in the Nightmare Forest, he realized that her operational skills were very amazing and could elevate the combat power of the profession itself by several levels. He was very envious of this kind of operational skill. 
Although he couldn't ask Xia Qian for guidance in person for the time being, maybe he could learn something by observing her battle process up close. Zhou Chen looked towards the duel arena, but at this moment, he saw the extreme fist king looking coldly at Xia Qian and saying, I have invited you to spar with me many times, but you have ignored me. Forced by circumstances, I can only resort to this. At this moment, Xia Qian also saw the message on the chat channel. She glanced at the extreme fist lord in front of her and suddenly realized, so you're the guy ranked first behind me. Instead of challenging me, why don't you spend more time leveling up and fighting monsters? Who has time for such boredom? The extreme fist lord's expression changed, and he sneered, I admit your skills are impressive, but from today, the title of the number one fighter no longer belongs to you. As he spoke, he took out a round bead and crushed it in his hand. Without needing to hear the exclamations on the chat channel, Zhou Chin and the audience already knew that the bead the extreme fist lord had taken out was the same as the experience bead he had just obtained from Xia Chen. And that wasn't all. After crushing one experience bead, the extreme fist lord took out three more and crushed them one by one. With each bead he crushed, his experience points increased by 50 hundred. After crushing four beads, his experience points had increased by a total of 20 thousand. Then, a light flashed on the extreme fist lord's body, and he abruptly leveled up in the duel arena, reaching level 27. As the extreme fist lord leveled up, many players on the chat channel exclaimed, it's changed, the rankings have changed. At this moment, Zhou Chen, in his current state, could also use the player ranking function. He opened it and indeed saw that the number one fighter on the rankings was no longer Xia Qian, but had become the extreme fist lord. On the chat channel, many players continued to exclaim, for experience speeds, each worth 5,000 experience points. Is the extreme fist lord crazy? There are probably only a few of these experience beads in the entire east district, maybe 20 at most. I don't know if there are any, but last week, a wealthy player threw down 30,000 yuan just to buy one of these experience beads. The thoughts of the wealthy are something we'll never understand. With all these experience beads combined, you could probably buy a car in real life. At this moment, Zhou Chen felt a bit flustered. Although he had some understanding of the game's economy, his imagination was limited by poverty, and he had no idea that a single experience bead could be worth tens of thousands of yuan in real life. In other words, he had received a reward worth tens of thousands of yuan from Xia Qian for simply helping out at the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest. Perhaps even more, if you included the rare shadow set. Zhou Chen suddenly felt a bit guilty. The value of Xia Qian's gift was too high, and he couldn't shake the feeling of unease. In the duel arena, the extreme fist lord was very pleased, looking at Xia Qian and saying, How about it? You're not the number one fighter now. Do you want to challenge me? Since the two of them were already in the duel arena, there was no escaping a battle between them. The extreme fist lord's words were unreasonable, just a way to show off his superiority. However, this way of showing off his superiority was destined to be wasted on blind eyes. Xia Qian remained completely unmoved, glanced at him, and slightly raised the corner of her mouth, saying, is that all? If there were two words that could quickly gather someone's resentment, those two words would undoubtedly be the best candidates. The extreme fist lord's face turned as red as a pig's liver, and he snorted heavily, saying, let's begin. As he spoke, he crouched down, took small steps, and like a violent storm, charged towards Xia Qian. As he closed in, he threw a punch towards her head like a fierce wind. He was already much taller than Xia Qian, and this punch aimed at her head was just right, a skill of the fighter profession, first face punch. This punch didn't require much technique, just the power and speed of the strike. Minus 565 Xia Qian's body turned, and the punch of the extreme fist lord only hit her shoulder. However, after putting on a complete set of rare equipment and being one level higher than Xia Qian, the extreme fist lord's attack power appeared very strong. Even though it only hit her shoulder, it still caused considerable damage to Xia Qian. However, after enduring his punch, Xia Qian somehow swayed her body slightly, and with a pull and a twist of her hands, she pulled the extreme fist lord's arm, causing him to stagger and almost fall. The extreme fist lord's body was thrown off balance, and he struggled to regain control of his body. However, Xia Qian did not give him a chance, she pulled his arm, flipped over his back, and struck him with an elbow to the back of his neck. Minus 468, compared to the extreme fist lord, her attributes seemed to be significantly lower, and her attack damage was not very high. This time, Xia Qian indeed used the skill of a martial artist, the elbow strike. However, her series of actions before using the elbow strike had no connection to the skills of a martial artist. Then, while the extreme fist lord was still dazed and unable to react, Xia Qian grabbed his body with both hands and kicked his heel, causing him to lose balance again. Following that, Xia Qian's body slightly lowered, and using her body as the axis, she swung the extreme fist lord around, 
and he landed on the ground with a smack. Minus 789 This was another skill of the martial artist, the back throw. The back throw skill is one of the highest damaging skills of the martial artist. However, the conditions for successfully using the back throw are quite strict. Without the preceding series of operations, it would be impossible for Xia Qian to successfully use the back throw skill in this situation. This is also the difficulty of operating as a martial artist, and players who do not have great confidence in themselves would not dare to choose the martial artist profession. With just a few moves, the extreme fist lord lost over a thousand health points, and his health bar was reduced by half. The extreme fist lord, who was thrown two to three meters away, quickly got up, assuming a defensive posture, looking somewhat bewildered. He looked at Xia Qian foolishly and said, yes, that's it. Those skills you used before clearly were not the skills of a martial artist. Did you learn some hidden profession skills? There are no hidden skills, Xia Qian said lightly, and then she rushed forward, kicked off the ground, and flew into the air. In midair, she raised her foot like a warhammer and smashed it down on the extreme fist lord. Captivated by her momentum, the extreme fist lord's reaction was slow, and he could only raise his arms to defend. He used the martial artist's defensive skill, River Block. With a muffled sound, Xia Qian kicked the extreme fist lord's arm, flipped back, and the extreme fist lord was pushed back a few steps. Minus 465, minus 235 as the passive defender, the extreme fist lord suffered minus 465 damage from the kick. However, the counterforce also caused minus 235 damage to Xia Qian. After being pushed back, Xia Qian suddenly lowered her body, supported herself with one foot, and swept the other foot towards the lower body of the extreme fist lord. In the audience, Zhou Chen was taken aback. He had heard of this move from Xia Qian before, in ancient martial arts, this move seemed to be called the sweeping leg. However, in the current game progress, the profession skills of the martial artist did not include a skill called sweeping leg. Without the support of profession skills, it would be extremely difficult to use the sweeping leg solely based on one's operational skills. Such professional techniques could not be executed just by knowing the movements, without long-term practice, it would be impossible to use them in actual combat. Did this Xia Qian also understand ancient martial arts in real life? Otherwise, it is really difficult to explain her various magical operations. In the duel arena, Xia Qian used a sweeping leg to make the extreme fist lord unsteady and fall to the ground, causing hundreds of points of damage. At this time, the extreme fist lord's health bar was only a small portion left. He was still lying on the ground, unable to get up for a while. Xia Qian only needed to land one more blow, and he would probably meet his end. However, Xia Qian did not rush to finish off his remaining health bar. Instead, she just stepped on the extreme fist lord's chest and asked, Do you give up? Under the gaze of the crowd, the extreme fist lord felt utterly humiliated. Despite his careful planning and the purchase of a complete set of, rare, level equipment, as well as the acquisition of several experience pearls at a high price, he had hoped that with these, he could pull Xia Qian down from the position of the top fighter. In terms of level alone, he did indeed achieve a reversal on the game's professional ranking list, replacing Xia Qian as the top fighter. However, with a full set of, rare, level equipment and a level surpassing Xia Qian's, he was easily defeated in just a few punches and kicks, and was even trampled on the ground. This was not just a matter of being surpassed on the ranking list, but also a great embarrassment. Despite being in such an extremely embarrassing situation, the extreme fist lord still wanted to salvage some dignity. He sneered at Xia Qian and said, So what if you can win against me once? From today on, the title of the top fighter will ultimately not belong to you. Xia Qian, with her foot on the extreme fist lord, shook her head slowly and said, You're mistaken. I don't care about the title of the top fighter, but I don't like others taking things from me. She looked at the extreme fist lord on the ground and said firmly, You see, it's mine, and you can't take it away. Then, to the shocked gaze of the extreme fist lord, she took out an experience pearl from her player's backpack and crushed it. Experience plus 5000, experience plus 5000. In the same duel arena, a light flashed on Xia Qian's body, and she immediately leveled up to level 27. Her ranking on the player leaderboard once again changed, and Xia Qian reclaimed the position of the top fighter. She looked at the somewhat dazed extreme fist lord and said, with experience pearls in hand, I also have them. It's time for you to leave. With that, she kicked the extreme fist lord in the neck. Critical hit. Minus 1056 the extreme fist lord turned into white light and left the duel arena, leaving behind two pieces of equipment shimmering with blue light. Just by looking at the blue light, everyone knew that the extreme fist lord had dropped two, rare, level equipment. This time, he had not only failed to defeat Xia Qian and snatch the top fighter ranking, but also lost two, rare, level equipment in vain. 
Meanwhile, Xia Qian's actions in the duel arena seemed effortless, but the audience in the stands was anything but calm. In the chat channel, the discussion was heated. Did I just see that right? Did Xia Qian really take out an experience pearl? Yes, you saw it right. I counted at least six experience pearls. It's terrifying. So, does that mean Xia Qian is also a big spender? I'm afraid they bought up all the experience pearls in the East District. Xia Qian couldn't be bothered with the lively discussion in the chat channel. As for the Extreme Fist Lord, who was killed by Xia Qian in the duel arena, at this moment, he didn't know where to hide and had no face to speak in the chat channel. Xia Qian stood in the duel arena, facing the audience, and said loudly, Autumn Frost and Lonely Beauty, come up here and settle the score with me. I won't bully you. Bring as many people as you want, and I'll take you all on by myself. However, Autumn Frost deliberately ignored Xia Qian's challenge. The strength of the Extreme Fist Lord was clear to him. Although the level was lower than his own, it was hard to say who would be stronger in a battle. However, the Extreme Fist Lord only managed to hold on for two or three encounters against Xia Qian. If he were to go up against Xia Qian, the result might not be much better. Xia Qian's claim that he could take on multiple members of his guild alone was ignored by Chiu Sihan. In the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest, he and a dozen or so others had surrounded Xia Qian, but she still managed to escape. Now, in the arena, only five people were allowed to battle one person at most, and even if he had a full team, the odds were not great. The most crucial point was that he couldn't afford to lose face in front of everyone. It was one thing in the wilderness where no one else could see, but it would be a different matter in the arena. If things continued this way, the reputation of his guild, Hanshio, would be ruined, making it even harder to recruit excellent players in the future. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but resent Zhou Chen even more. If it weren't for him causing trouble and ambushing him in the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest, Xia Qian would have been wiped out by his guild, and Hanshio guild wouldn't have fallen into its current predicament. So, he spoke in the chat channel, Xia Qian, let's put our business aside for now. I have a score to settle with that thief named Zhou Chen. He continued, Zhou Chen, come out. You dared to ambush me in the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest, but now you dare not show your face in the arena? Seeing Chiu Sihan's rant in the chat channel, Zhou Chen found it amusing and replied, What? Just because I looted a rare level equipment from you, you're making such a fuss? Look at that guy called Extreme Fist Lord, he lost two rare level equipment and didn't say a word. In the audience area, the Extreme Fist Lord's face changed color, and his teeth gnashed. Being defeated by Xia Qian had already been very embarrassing for him, and losing two rare level equipment made it even more painful. He didn't expect Zhou Chan to let him off and still wanted to make a move. Although Zhou Sihan of the Hancho Guild was nothing special, he was right about one thing. Zhou Chen was truly annoying. In the chat channel, Zhou Sihan continued, Zhou Chen, I won't say much more. I'll ask you one thing, dare to come to the arena? If you don't, when you see members of our Hancho guild in the future, you better steer clear. Zhou Chen replied, I'm only level 21. Are you sure you want to compare with your level 28? Or are you deliberately bullying me? Zhou Sihan said, fine, I won't bully you. Our guild doesn't have anyone as low as level 21, but we do have a level 24 player. Do you dare to spar with my level 24 brother? Zhou Chen said, sure, who's afraid of whom? In the audience area, Zhou Chen narrowed his eyes and calculated quickly in his mind. He admitted that when he saw Xia Qian kill the extreme fist lord and drop two pieces of equipment, he was tempted. After a rough calculation, with his current level 21 attributes and a 10% bonus from the secret puppet spirit, plus the extremely powerful reaper's scythe, he should have no problem facing a level 24 player. Unless it was a player like Xia Qian with extraordinary skills. However, if the Hancho Guild had such a player, they wouldn't have been defeated by Xia Qian. He gritted his teeth and decided to take the risk. However, he was still cautious and chose to hide his own panel information, making it impossible for others to see his details. In the game, players can choose whether to hide their own attribute panels. Once hidden, except for themselves, others would not be able to see their profession, level, or equipment. At this point, the Hancho Guild might still think he was a thief. Didn't Xia Qian also think so before, so she gave herself a set of rare thief professional equipment? With this in mind, Zhou Chen applied to the NPC and entered the arena. He looked at the audience and smiled triumphantly, Come on, who's not afraid of death, come up quickly, I'm in a hurry. After upgrading the puppet disguise skill, he could now disguise himself as a player for two hours a day. Although it was more generous than before, if he didn't act quickly, he might reveal his true form in the player town. At that time, he would probably be targeted by everyone, not only the players, but also the NPC guards in the town. Zhou Qin stood in the arena, looking down at the audience, not feeling very nervous. Xia Qian had already left the stage and handed over the arena to him. 
In a certain audience area, lonely enchantress said to Autumn Chill beside her, Can Xiao Wu really have confidence against Zhou Chen? Autumn Chill nodded and said, Don't worry, Zhou Chen is only level 21 and a thief. Xiao Wu is a warrior, specializing in shield defense skills and planning to become a knight in the second advancement, which can counter him. Several brothers have lent him rare level equipment this time. Even I, at level 28, would find it difficult to defeat Xiao Wu. Zhou Chen naturally didn't know about these twists and turns. He looked at the warrior player entering the arena, grinned, and took out the reaper's scythe to attack. In that instant, he activated the scythe kill skill, increasing his attack speed by 140% and his movement speed by 40%. The attack power of a level 21 warrior was already at 135 points, and with an additional 108 points from Zhou Chen's strength, his attack power reached 243 points. Adding the 10% panel bonus from his original body's secret puppet spirit, his attack power reached 268 points. With the Reaper's Scythe providing additional attack power, his physical attack power reached a terrifying 556 points, far beyond what a level 21 warrior player could achieve. However, the warrior player facing him thought he was just an ordinary thief player. Before entering the arena, the guild leader had only warned him to be careful of the strange scythe weapon in his hand. What about your stealth skill? Why aren't you invisible yet? The warrior player looked at Zhou Chen and asked, activating the shield guard skill and entering the shield counter state. Like shield guard, shield counter was also a skill of the warrior profession, favored by warriors specializing in shield skills. After activating the shield guard skill, the shield counter skill could be triggered, entering a defensive counterattack state for a certain period of time. During the shield counter defensive counterattack state, if he was attacked, he would simultaneously counterattack, returning 50% of the damage to the attacker. That's why Autumn Chill of the Cold Autumn Guild said that this warrior player Xiao Wu was the nemesis of thieves. Xiao Wu, who chose the shield route, had extremely low attack power, but because of the shield counter skill, he was invincible against the high attack, low health thief profession. Not to mention that his level was higher than his opponents, making his victory almost certain. Whether the thief player used the stealth skill to sneak attack or the cut skill to attack, he didn't need to panic at all. Because he didn't intend to evade the opponent's attacks, he planned to stand still and wait for the opponent to attack. After putting on a set of rare equipment, his health bar should be more than double that of his opponent. In this situation, if the opponent attacked him for 1000 points of health, he would also suffer 500 points of counterattack. Standing still can make the opponent's counterattack hit hard. For a thief with high attack and low defense, my main shield-based counterattack warrior is truly disgusting. Zhou Chen doesn't understand the thoughts of this warrior player. Seeing the opponent standing foolishly, he didn't bother to be polite and immediately activated the side strike skill, using the warrior's attack skill Double Heavy Slash on the opponent. Double Heavy Slash is the strongest attack skill before the second transformation of the warrior profession. Zhou Chen used it without holding back. Minus 456, minus 456, the warrior player who focuses on shield skills indeed has strong defense. Even with Zhou Chen's terrifying attack power and the level 5 double heavy slash skill, it only caused less than 1000 points of damage. Minus 228, minus 228, at the same time, the opponent's shield counter skill triggered, causing half of the counterattack damage to Zhou Chen. Including the additional effect of the Scythe of the Sovereign, Zhou Chen now has 3,670 health points, while the opponent, who chose to hide their health bar, should have slightly less. The opponent probably has just over 3,000 health points, and the double heavy slash only took away about one-third of their health bar. Comparing their health points, the opponent clearly cannot kill Zhou Chen with just the shield counter skill. However, when Zhou Chen used the double heavy slash skill, the damage numbers jumped up, and the warrior player didn't react in time. Zhou Chen, of course, didn't give him a chance to regret. He swung the scythe of the sovereign at the opponent, attacking repeatedly. Besides double heavy slash, the warrior profession temporarily has no other useful attack skills, so Zhou Chen could only use normal attacks. The warrior's base attack speed is one attack per second, but with the current 140% increased attack speed from side strike, Zhou Chen can now make two, four normal attacks per second. In just two seconds, he could almost make five normal attacks. Minus 356, minus 356, after a few attacks, the warrior player's health had dropped to just one third. He finally realized that his shield counter skill didn't cause significant damage to Zhou Chen, not even one third. You're not a thief profession, the warrior player exclaimed. Zhou Chen smirked, you've realized it too late. He continued to attack with the scythe of the sovereign, benefiting from the side strike skill, and continued to strike the opponent. Minus 356, critical hit. Minus 712 finally, 
The scythe of the sovereign successfully triggered a critical hit, taking down the warrior player. In the arena, using healing potions is prohibited, so although Zhou Chen didn't use any explosive skills, the warrior player could only watch helplessly as his health bar was slowly depleted by normal attacks. At this point, his shield counter skill had only caused Zhou Chen to lose over 1,500 health points. If Zhou Chen were indeed a thief, this 1,500 points of counterattack damage would have been enough to kill him. However, he was a warrior player with high defense and thick health. Successfully defeated and killed the opponent dislikes being hit in the arena, gaining double experience points plus 240. Killed the opponent, dropped the rare black iron shield. The warrior player left the arena with a heart full of unwillingness, turning into a white light. Meanwhile, in the spectator stands, Autumn Frost, who had been watching, had a grim expression, unable to vent his frustration. He clearly remembered that when the opponent ambushed him on the outskirts of the nightmare forest, they used the methods of the thief profession. How did they become a warrior profession in the arena? If I had known that the other party was a warrior, I definitely wouldn't have arranged it like this, letting the main shield-based player go up and die in vain. Jochen was full of joy, picked up and extracted the attributes of the black iron shield, rare, and then said to the audience below, is there anyone else from the cold autumn guild who wants to come up? Hurry up, I'll be leaving in 20 minutes. In the dueling arena, Zhou Chen was arrogant. In the audience seats below, the expression on Autumn's face turned ashen. He couldn't believe that Zhou Chen was actually a warrior. Moreover, he watched the battle between the shield-based player and the opponent the whole time, and based on the opponent's health and remaining health bar length, Zhou Chen's health was probably around 3,500 points. A level 21 warrior player, even if all the attribute points were added to stamina, couldn't possibly have such health unless all the equipment he was wearing was also focused on increasing health, rare. And that strange, huge black scythe, it looked similar to the one held by the previously famous Sovereign Level Scarecrow. Could it be that Zhou Chen obtained this equipment from the Sovereign Level Scarecrow? But players above level 15 are clearly not allowed to enter the newbie village monster area. And even if this was equipment dropped by the Sovereign Level Scarecrow, the attributes of the dropped equipment shouldn't be too extraordinary. Autumn couldn't understand the reason for this no matter how hard he tried, but looking at Zhou Chen's smug face, he still felt very uncomfortable. Just seeing the damage value of Zhou Chen's attacks and the length of his health bar, probably no one in his guild could be completely sure of defeating him. If another person went up, it would just be giving equipment to the opponent, which would be truly laughable. Watching Zhou Chen boast in the dueling arena, Lonely Beauty finally couldn't bear it and challenged Autumn, Autumn, let me go up and teach him a lesson. He's a warrior, so his magic defense must be low. I can take him down with just two or three magic skills. There were several people in the Cold Autumn Guild who also challenged Autumn. But Autumn did not agree, he shook his head solemnly and said, that Zhou Chen is not simple. Even if you go up, it's hard to say who will win. We don't need to rush this, we'll have plenty of opportunities to deal with him in the future. Zhou Chen, who had been shouting in the dueling arena for a long time, was somewhat disappointed. He had finally made up his mind to take the risk and enter the arena only to defeat one person and obtain a piece of equipment, and the Cold Autumn Guild unexpectedly remained silent, not sending anyone else up, which made him very disappointed. Forget it, since you don't have the guts, let's call it a day. My time is precious, I won't accompany you anymore. With that, he didn't care about anything else and left the dueling arena, running towards the outskirts of the town. There were still 20 minutes left, and he really couldn't delay, he had to hurry back to the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest. Otherwise, when the puppetry disguise skill reached its time limit, he would turn back into a puppetry spirit, which would be very bad. The world outside was quite different from the newbie village, full of high-level players, so he couldn't be too conspicuous. He had just run near the south gate of the town when the mail system started flashing again. Zhou Chen had to slow down, open the mail system, and saw that the message was from Xia Qian. After all, he had received so much from Xia Qian, he couldn't just turn his back on her. Xia Qian, Zhou Chen, where are you? Wait for me, I need to talk to you. In the message, Xia Qian's tone was still calm, and for a moment, Zhou Chen couldn't guess whether what she wanted to talk to him about was good or bad. He could only reply with a message, I'm near the south gate, what's up? I'll be there soon. After sending this message again, Xia Qian didn't say anything else, presumably she was on her way. Two minutes later, a figure swiftly ran over, the tied ponytail fluttering in the air. Seeing Xia Qian standing in front of him in the blink of an eye, Zhou Chen took a small step back without a trace. Although his current attributes were not bad, he didn't dare to be presumptuous in front of Xia Qian. She was the top fighter on the professional ranking list, not only much higher in level than himself, but also far superior in combat skills. 
If he accidentally revealed a flaw in front of her, it might be a problem to safely leave. You are Zhou Chen? Xia Qian came up to him, her eyes staring at Zhou Chen's face, her gaze intense. Zhou Chen felt a little flustered under her gaze, and answered, Yes, it's me. You are Xia Qian, right? What's the matter with you looking for me? Even though they had met on the outskirts of the nightmare forest, she still seemed to have no impression. Was her memory that bad? Xia Qian looked at Zhou Chen for a long time, then suddenly asked, Can you grant me permission to view your panel? Sorry, I can't. Zhou Chen was surprised and shook his head repeatedly. Joking aside, his own identity was that of a wild monster. Although he had disguised himself as a player's warrior profession and had a player's panel, for safety's sake, it was best to always keep the panel information hidden. Otherwise, if someone saw that his player panel only had a sovereign scythe equipped and nothing else, wouldn't that raise suspicions? Although others might not necessarily think in the direction of a wild monster, Zhou Chen still intended to minimize the chances of trouble. Xia Qian looked at the unyielding Zhou Chen, fell silent for a moment, nodded, and said, All right, it's your choice. If you don't want to, then forget it. She then asked, When you helped last time, you clearly used the thief's sneak attack skill, but just now in the duel arena, you used the warrior profession skill? Here it comes, finally someone noticed this issue. Zhou Chen felt nervous, but tried to remain calm and confidently presented the prepared explanation. Well, this is a secret. I'll tell you alone, and you have to keep it a secret for me. He looked mysteriously to the west and lowered his voice, actually, my profession is neither a thief nor a warrior. Xia Qian still looked at him with curiosity. Zhou Chen swallowed and continued, my profession is a very rare hidden profession called jobless. Jobless? Yes, I accidentally triggered a hidden task and changed to jobless. After changing, I don't have a fixed profession and can choose to switch to any profession according to the situation. That's amazing? Xia Qian blinked her eyes, full of longing, and asked, how do you do this jobless hidden task? Zhou Chen's heart jumped, but he remained inscrutable on the surface, shook his head, and said, as far as I know, this hidden task is unique. Once I've completed it, others can't do it. The jobless profession, I'm probably the only one in the whole game, and even if the task is still available, someone like you who has already changed professions can't take it. Xia Qian shook her head regretfully and said, that's a shame. Then she looked at Zhou Chen blankly and asked, so can you still switch to other professions now, to broaden my horizons? Zhou Chen shook his head helplessly, it's impossible. This skill also has a cooldown, and I can't switch at any time. Let's talk about it next time I have the chance. By the way, what's the matter with you looking for me? Xia Qian then revealed her true intention, are you interested in joining my guild? Guild? Zhou Chen looked at Xia Qian with some confusion, furrowing his brow slightly, didn't you just quit the guild? Yes, so I plan to create a guild myself. Zhou Chen was a bit helpless, you haven't even created a guild yet, and you're already inviting people to join? Xia Qian nodded naturally, with you and me, we can meet the requirements for creating a guild. We can easily recruit more people later. Zhou Chen waved his hand and shook his head at the same time, forget it, I don't like trouble, and I'm not interested in these guilds. Jokingly, his true identity was a wild monster. Joining a guild created by players, what's the big deal? When the guild grows, will they team up to raid this wild monster boss? Just thinking about it is terrifying. However, Xia Qian did not give up easily. She still planned to persuade Zhou Chen, don't worry, it's not troublesome. After joining the guild, you'll still have your freedom. You can do whatever you want, the guild doesn't have any mandatory requirements. Zhou Chen didn't understand why the other party insisted on him joining the guild. The other party was a top fighter, while he was just a level 21 ordinary player. There were plenty of players with higher levels than him in the game, so there was no need for him to join. With doubts in his mind, Zhou Chen asked, I'm only level 21, why do you want me to join the guild? Xia Qian tilted her head slightly and said, level doesn't matter. I just watched your battle, and you, as a jobless player, are very strong. At level 21, your HP and attack power are so high, you're not inferior to those at level 29. You are exactly the talent I need. Speak in plain language, Zhou Chen didn't believe the other party's words. His attributes were indeed strong, but he wasn't very confident about being on par with those level 29 players. After all, when players reach level 29, they can equip new gear, which will significantly enhance their attributes. If the gear they equip is not just rare level, but even higher treasure level, then their attributes will be beyond the reach of players below level 28. As a wild monster that players always have their eyes on, Zhou Chen must have a clear understanding of his own strength. He couldn't underestimate himself, but he also couldn't be arrogant. Xia Qian sighed and finally revealed her true intentions, I can't hide it from you. The guild battle in two weeks is divided into different zones. 
She looked at Zhou Chen and explained carefully, each guild can send up to 10 people to participate. If the average level of the participants is greater than or equal to 28, they can only sign up for the A-level guild battle zone. If the average level of the participants is between 25 to 27, they can sign up for the B-level guild battle zone, and those with lower levels can choose to sign up for the C-level guild battle zone. Looking at Xia Qian in front of him, Zhou Chen roughly understood her thoughts, so you found me because of my low level, wanting to use me to lower the guild's average level, to participate in the B or C level guild battle zone? Xia Qian nodded and said, yes, and not only because of your low level. There are plenty of low level players, why wouldn't I find them? It's because your strength far exceeds your level. By including you as a participant, we can lower the average level without losing a strong force. Isn't it a win-win situation? So that's it. But what does it have to do with me, Zhou Chen? Sorry, I'm still not interested. After saying this, Zhou Chen turned and left. As a wild monster, the last thing he wanted was to show himself in front of many players. His identity was special and couldn't withstand such exposure. Why don't you participate? Is it because you don't have time? Xia Qian still didn't give up, asking from behind. She could tell that Zhou Chen seemed a bit impatient and in a hurry. But the time pressed Zhou Chen was already about to leave the city gate and couldn't be bothered with her. At this time, time slowly passed, and the end of the puppetry and disguise duration was not far away. If he stayed here any longer, the consequences would be very serious. However, Xia Qian was persistent, calling out from behind, it won't take much time. The guild battle is only about an hour, and it won't delay you. Seeing that Zhou Chen still hesitated, she continued, you can ask for any reward you want. As long as you help me with this guild battle, the reward is up to you. Zhou Chen was anxious, but he couldn't bring himself to push her away. If he could win, he would be willing to try, but with Xia Qian's amazing skills, it was better to just think about it. He decided to make her back down, and boldly said, if you want me to help you with the guild battle, bring 20 pieces of rare equipment, and I'll agree to help you. After saying this, Zhou Chen finally felt relieved and pleased. He didn't believe anyone could easily produce 20 pieces of rare equipment. Even if they could, the exchange for help in a guild battle seemed too low. But to his surprise, the response came immediately, okay. Zhou Chen was momentarily uncertain, huh? Xia Qian nodded firmly, I said okay. I agree to your request. If you can help me win the guild battle, I'll give you all 20 pieces. This was unexpected. Zhou Chen had only wanted to make Xia Qian back down. He didn't expect that 20 pieces of rare equipment meant nothing to her. Poverty really limited his imagination, and he had no idea about the limits of the wealthy. At this point, Zhou Chen felt that his puppetry in disguise was reaching its limit. Facing Xia Qian's determined gaze, he gritted his teeth and knew he couldn't delay any longer. Okay, let me think about it. I have urgent matters to attend to now, I'll get back to you later, he said, and without looking back, he rushed out of the city. Since Zhou Chen had relented, Xia Qian standing by the side finally stopped blocking him and watched him leave. She turned back towards the city, murmuring to herself, alright, that's settled. With them, the guild can be pulled together. Meanwhile, Zhou Chen was already running outside the city. After leaving the town, he found that the reaper's scythe skill attached to his sovereign scythe was still available. Although he had just used it in the duel, the charge status of the sovereign scythe was still active. It seemed that the duel arena was independent of the game world, and skills used within it returned to cooldown once outside. Zhou Chen didn't dwell on this too much, as it was a good thing for him. With the acceleration effect of the reaper's scythe skill, his efficiency in rushing was greatly increased. After running for a while, Zhou Chen suddenly trembled, and a burst of smoke covered the area around him. When the smoke cleared, a puppetry in disguise spirit appeared in his place, continuing to rush with the sovereign scythe. At this point, there was still some distance to the outskirts of the nightmare forest, but he had no choice but to hurry back. After all, wasting time with Xia Qian at the city gate had cost him some time. The wooden body of the secret puppet spirit ran down the road, although it twisted and turned, its speed did not seem slower than when disguised as a player. Zhou Chen was focused on rushing, naturally unaware that someone had already seen him from a distance. A player rubbed his eyes, tapped his companion next to him, and asked, did you see a secret puppet spirit? His companion was originally walking leisurely with his head down, and laughed when he heard the question, you're lying to me again. We're still some distance from the outskirts of the nightmare forest, and this isn't the spawning area for secret puppet spirits. How could there be one here? It's true, the first player called out, look over there, it's running towards the edge of the jungle. Where? His companion looked in the direction he pointed, but couldn't see anything. You're lying to me again. I can't believe I fell for it. I'm really foolish. Just as he looked up, Zhou Chen had already rushed into the jungle with the reaper's scythe in hand. 
The player who had seen the secret puppet spirit earlier was at a loss for words and could not explain. He could only sigh helplessly. I'm really foolish. I only knew that you wouldn't believe my lies, but I never thought that you wouldn't believe the truth either. Zhou Chen was unaware that his presence had already caught the attention of others. If he had known, he might have taken care of these two players as well. After a trip to the player town, he not only leveled up, but also obtained some equipment, greatly enhancing the attributes of the Reaper's Scythe. With his confidence soaring, he didn't pay much attention to the two level 20 players. The 40% increase in movement speed from the Scythe kill skill was indeed remarkable. In no time at all, he had returned to the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest. Honestly, he had casually agreed to escape from Xia Qian, but he was still undecided about whether to join her guild and participate in the guild battle two weeks later. The temptation of 20, or rather 40, rare, pieces of equipment was still very strong, leaving Zhou Chen in a dilemma. However, there were still two weeks before the guild battle started, so he had enough time to consider and didn't need to rush. Finally back at the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest, Zhou Chen could finally relax. In this area, there were secret puppet spirit monsters spawning everywhere. As long as he didn't make any unusual moves, he would not attract attention. The game had become increasingly popular since its launch, and there were more and more players above level 20. There were also more and more players leveling up in the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest. Upon his return, Zhou Chan ran into several leveling players. With his current attributes, he didn't hesitate and immediately used the puppetry mirror image skill to create several clones and took care of these players. After gaining experience from Xia Qian and leveling up to 21, both his puppetry disguise and puppetry mirror image skills could be upgraded. He had already upgraded his puppetry mirror image skill to level 6, making it much stronger than before. Puppetry mirror image LV6 creates 6 mirror images targeting oneself, each with 100% of the original's abilities, lasting 120 seconds, with a cooldown of 120 seconds. The LV5 puppetry mirror image skill could only create 3 mirror image clones, but now it could create 6, significantly increasing its overall strength. With his current attack power, creating 6 mirror image clones, in addition to himself, meant there were 5 secret puppet spirits attacking simultaneously. Minus 521 minus 521 minus 521 minus 521 minus 521 The Reaper's Scythe was raised, and 5 attacks were unleashed, surrounding the player who was being attacked turning him into a white light with a bewildered expression on his face. This is a 2000 plus damage attack, which a level 20 player can hardly withstand. After upgrading the puppet mirror, Zhou Chen found that he didn't need any explosive output skills, as he could already achieve terrifying burst output. At the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest, Zhou Chen effortlessly hunted down these leveling players to gain experience for himself. Occasionally, he would be lucky enough to obtain some equipment drops, which he could then use for attribute extraction to enhance his puppet scythe. However, the leveling players were usually quite poor, and the dropped equipment was mostly of the E fine grade, with only a 20% extraction rate and diminishing returns after extracting the same equipment more than 10 times. Despite this, Zhou Chen felt that the attributes of his puppet scythe had improved significantly by the end of the day. However, reaching the next level was not easy at this point. The experience required for each level increased, and Zhou Chen realized that it would be difficult to level up quickly. He also noticed that his actions had attracted the attention of the leveling players. Rumors began to spread about the mysterious figure wielding a black scythe in the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest. This figure was said to be different from the ordinary monsters and could possibly evolve into an elite level monster. Seeing these discussions in the chat channel, Zhou Chen couldn't help but sigh. It seemed that his leveling efforts had not gone unnoticed. Not only in the chat channel, but also on the official game forum, there were many posts mentioning this mysterious figure. Within a short period of time, many players formed teams and came in groups to find this mysterious figure. Players always loves novelty, and this unique monster was able to attract even more interest. Despite having strong attributes, Zhou Chen didn't dare to be careless in the face of so many players and discreetly stowed away his puppet scythe in his backpack. So, many players marched around the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest in a grand manner, but still could not find the rumored secret puppet spirit. Of course, they could not have imagined that the secret puppet spirit actually had human-like thinking in a backpack space just like the players, where it could take off equipment and hide it in the backpack space. After circling several times without finding the secret puppet spirit with a sickle, these players lost interest. Except for those who had witnessed it with their own eyes or had been killed by Zhou Chen, the rest of the players no longer believed in this matter and dispersed, each busy with their own affairs. There are many leveling spots for players above level 20, and the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest is just one of them. 
The secret puppet spirit itself has the skill of mirroring and splitting, which is not the best choice for leveling and monster grinding for certain professions. They have more suitable places to go. When the majority of players left, Zhou Chen finally breathed a sigh of relief and let go of his suspended heart. After experiencing a large-scale player siege, he actually had no interest in putting himself in the same situation again. Leveling is important, but it is also essential to try to avoid being besieged by a large number of players. When the players left, Zhou Chen was ready to start leveling again, but found that his mailbox was flashing non-stop. In order to prevent players from finding him, he not only hid the Lord Sickle in his backpack, but also disguised himself as a player again after the puppetry disguise skill cooldown was completed. After disguising himself as a player, the mailbox system on the player panel kept flashing, but he was in a highly nervous state and did not notice it for a while. At this time, most of the players had left, and he finally had the leisure to open the mailbox system. Sure enough, the messages were from Xia Qian. It was normal to think about it. She was the only one in his friends list, and other players basically did not know him and would not send him messages. Xia Qian sent a lot of messages, and although Zhou Chen was helpless, he could only read them one by one. Xia Qian, Zhou Chen, you promised me that when my guild is created, you will join. Xia Qian, Zhou Chen, I have prepared the 40, rare, equipment that you promised, here are 20 pieces, consider it as a deposit, you take it first. Player Xia Qian sends an attachment email, please receive. Player Xia Qian sends an attachment email, please receive. A series of densely packed attachments were all equipment sent by Xia Qian. Zhou Chen was a little dazed. At that time, he just casually said it, and although Xia Qian also agreed readily, Zhou Chen could not imagine that she had prepared it in just one day. 20. Rare, level equipment, it was not the kind of common goods that could be bought at NPC shops. Was the power of the rich so terrifying? Looking at these 20, rare, level equipment, Zhou Chen was a bit conflicted. Should he accept them or not? If he did not accept them, the 20, rare, level equipment in front of him was really tempting. If the attributes of the 20, rare, level equipment were extracted, it would definitely elevate the attributes of his Lord Sickle, and it might even have the possibility of advancing in quality again. But if he accepted them, it meant that he had to join the other party's guild and help them in guild battles. That was no joke. With his wild monster identity, relying on the puppetry disguise skill to show his face, it might lead to a big problem. It seemed that profit was indeed accompanied by risk. After a short period of consideration, Zhou Chen ultimately chose to accept. He had figured it out. As a secret puppet spirit, he had already attracted the attention of the players today. If he wanted the players to forget all of this, he would have to give up hunting players. But this is simply impossible. If you don't hunt players, then you won't have experience points to level up, nor equipment to extract attributes, and you won't be able to improve your own strength. Although my current attributes are not bad, if I stop progressing, the overall level of players will increase someday, and then anyone passing by will be able to easily kill me. That's something Zhou Chen cannot accept. If I continue to hunt players, the large-scale player hunting events that have occurred before will happen again someday. Since it's unavoidable, I might as well take the initiative. As long as I can improve my strength quickly enough, the players won't be able to catch up with me. When my strength is enough to crush all players, what's there to fear about being surrounded and killed? Received a package from the player Xia Qian, Savage Blood Broadsword, Rare, Savage Blood Iron Armor, Rare, Shadowy Staff, Rare, with a light tap, 20 various, Rare, equipment items enter Zhou Chen's backpack with a rustling sound. Without waiting much longer, Zhou Chen immediately chose to extract the equipment attributes. After extracting the attributes of the 20 rare level equipment items, the attribute improvement obtained by the Sovereign Scythe this time was unprecedentedly high. Just as Zhou Chen had finished extracting the attributes of the 20th piece of equipment, the Sovereign Scythe, which had been emitting a blue light, suddenly burst out with a purple light. Zhou Chen, who had experienced this several times before, naturally understood that this was the additional attribute of the Sovereign Scythe finally breaking through the critical value again, and its quality was advancing once more. At this moment, he also naturally heard a prompt sound, the additional attributes have reached the requirements, the quality of the Sovereign Scythe, rare, has been upgraded to the Sovereign Scythe, treasure, and the Scythe transformation skill has been obtained. Sovereign Scythe, treasure, physical attack, 650, physical defense, 250, magic defense, 150, HP plus 2500, MP, 500, physical critical hit rate plus 12%, ignore defense probability plus 10%, Combo rate plus 6%, Skill Scythe Kill LV4, Skill Scythe Absorb LV3, Skill Scythe Transformation LV1. The Sovereign Scythe, emitting a purple light all over, reached the treasure level, and its powerful attributes made Zhou Chen excited to the point of trembling. 
At this moment, however, he was more interested in the newly appeared special skill, Scythe Transformation. What kind of skill is Scythe Transformation, exactly? With questions in mind, Zhou Chen began to carefully examine the Sovereign Scythe. Let's not talk about the just upgraded Scythe Kill and Scythe Absorb, but their effects have become stronger. This time, he was interested in the newly appeared skill Scythe Transformation. Scythe Transformation LV1 can switch and transform into any type of weapon, cooldown time 300 seconds, current transformation will convert 70% of the attributes. Zhou Chen's heart stirred, it seemed that this Scythe Transformation skill could change the appearance type of the Sovereign Scythe. Without waiting any longer, he immediately tried to activate the Scythe Transformation skill. Successfully used Scythe Transformation, please select the type of weapon to switch to. Broadsword slash shield slash short sword slash bow and arrow slash staff. He had already transformed into the thief profession with puppeteer's disguise, so he simply chose the short sword type. Weapon type switch successful. Current weapon is the sovereign scythe, short sword form. So, Zhou Chen lowered his head and saw a short sword emitting a purple light in his hand. If anyone else were to see it, they would only see a thief player standing dumbfounded, holding a weapon emitting a purple light on the outskirts of the nightmare forest. Because, just as the Sovereign Scythe had just switched to the short sword form, the game system simultaneously issued a server-wide announcement. Congratulations to the player Zhou Chen for obtaining the first, treasure, level equipment in the entire server, Sovereign Short Sword, treasure. Entire server players? Zhou Chen? The dumbfounded Zhou Chen was only lost in thought for a moment, and then immediately snapped out of it. In the chat channel, it's already a big mess. Who is this Zhou Chen, and why can he get the first, treasure, level equipment in the whole server. While others are still proud of wearing a set of, rare, level equipment, this person called Zhou Chen has already obtained, treasure, level equipment? There is no one named Zhou Chen on the ranking list of various professions. Where did he come from? Those players who have just experienced the Cold Autumn Guild battle seem to have some impression in their hearts. At this moment, countless players have sent friend requests to Zhou Chen, wanting to add him as a friend. And Zhou Chen can easily guess their purpose. It's nothing more than wanting to inquire about some information from him, asking how to obtain that, treasure, level equipment. What Zhou Chen doesn't know is that not only have the players in the chat channel gone crazy, even the game's headquarters is in chaos because of this. What's going on? Hasn't the, treasure, level equipment not been officially implemented yet? How did a player obtain it? Directorly, I don't know either. Check this player named Zhou Chen and see if there is any problem with his data. After a while, directorly, we've checked. This player's data is all normal, nothing unusual. Then where did he get the treasure level equipment? We haven't officially implemented it yet. How could he have obtained it out of thin air? All right, I'll check his equipment acquisition data again. How is it? Directorly, the system prompts that the permission is insufficient and we cannot query. If we must, we need to apply for permission from higher authorities. Forget it, we can't get too involved. Let's not check. But directorly, this. You guys figure it out find a suitable time to officially implement the treasure level equipment. Since we can't investigate further, we have to find a way to resolve the situation. Zhou Chen naturally doesn't know that his data has been checked by the game's official. He simply ignores the numerous friend requests and cancels the equipment effect of the short sword in his hand. If there really is a legitimate way to obtain treasure level equipment, he wouldn't mind sharing it. However, the one in his hand is transformed from the Reaper's Scythe which is related to his biggest secret and cannot be revealed to others. As for cancelling the equipment effect, it's a matter of keeping a low profile. Indeed, some players like to show off the dazzling effects of their equipment, which can make them look very classy and attract more attention when walking on the street. However, Zhou Chen absolutely refuses to do so. Because on the surface, his Reaper's short sword is still the only treasure level equipment in the current game. As the saying goes, a guilty conscience needs no accuser. If he were to walk around with a weapon shining with purple light, it would probably attract not only envy but also resentment. In this game, players can drop equipment by killing each other. Although the more precious the equipment, the lower the drop rate, it's impossible to eliminate the player's greed. Therefore, for safety's sake, Zhou Chen is willing to act low-key. Just as he cancelled the equipment effect, two players passed by him. These two players were originally running past in a hurry, but after running several meters ahead, they suddenly stopped. They turned around and walked back with a puzzled look on their faces, Zhou Chen, the one who just obtained the treasure level equipment? The worst part of this game is that even if you choose to hide the attribute panel and the equipment panel, your name cannot be hidden, unless by some special means. Of course, Zhou Chen currently has not mastered such means. He faced these two players helplessly inside, if I say I'm not, would you believe me? 
Two players looked at each other, unable to hide their joy in their eyes. They turned to Zhou Chen in front of them, and one of them said, Why don't you remove the hidden function of the interface? Maybe we'll believe you after seeing it? Believe you? Dream on. Zhou Chen, of course, couldn't be fooled. He looked at the two approaching players in front of him, his eyes cold, and said, Since you know I am the owner of the treasure level equipment, dare to have designs on me? With the treasure level equipment in hand, it's a matter of minutes to deal with you too. The two players laughed heartily, and one of them said, The treasure level equipment is indeed powerful. If your level were higher, we wouldn't dare take this risk, but you're only at level 22. The two players were at levels 26 and 27, one a warrior and the other a thief. Zhou Chen sighed and decided not to waste any more words with them. Such players, even his former self before advancing to the level of the Lord Sickle, would not have been so fearful. Now that he had advanced to the treasure level of the Lord Sickle, they dared to act recklessly in front of him, which was simply seeking death. Previously, he had just happened to be in a disguised state, and killing players did not yield experience points, so he had decided to avoid unnecessary trouble. Since these two were so ignorant, he had to teach them how to behave. The two players in front of him were discussing how to surround Zhou Chen, but he had already taken the initiative. He held the treasure level lord short sword in his hand and had already used the ambush skill. Every time Zhou Chen used the puppetry disguise skill to disguise himself as a player profession, he could redistribute skill points. This time, as a thief, he had already maxed out the ambush skill at LV10. The LV10 ambush skill alone added 480 points of damage, and the chance to ignore defense and trigger a critical hit had also increased to 30%. Coupled with the attributes of the treasure level Lord Short Sword, his chances of ignoring defense and landing a critical hit with a single strike had already reached nearly 40%. Zhou Chen's move was too decisive, and the two players were ultimately too slow, and he had already used the ambush skill to get close to them. Without any hesitation, he emerged from that ambush skill, and the first strike landed on the 27th level thief player. Ignore defense. Critical hit. Minus 2686 the terrifying damage number jumped up, and the 27th level thief player couldn't even react, instantly turning into a white light. The thief player's heart was in despair. Although the thief profession's health and defense were not high, at level 27 with equipment, he had just about 2,600 health points. Even if someone's attack damage was high, he should have been able to withstand two or three hits. But at this moment, Zhou Chen, disguised as a thief, had considerable attack power, plus the 10% bonus from the secret puppet spirit's original form, and the bonus from the thief's passive skill Shadow Blade. Zhou Chen's attack power was not low, and the Lord Sickle, after switching forms, could only retain 70% of its attributes, but because of its high base, it could still provide Zhou Chen with 455 points of attack power. At this moment, Zhou Chen's overall attack power had reached nearly 900 points. If that were all, 900 points of attack power would be terrifying, but with just a single ambush, it would still be difficult to instantly kill the thief player. Unfortunately, his luck was so bad. Zhou Chen's ambush strike not only triggered a critical hit, but also ignored defense, doubling the damage of the first strike, instantly killing him without any loss. After killing the thief player, Zhou Chen sighed, not entirely satisfied. In a disguised state, killing players did yield experience points, but killing someone without dropping equipment still left him feeling somewhat unsatisfied. But first, he killed the thief who could turn invisible, so overall things were developing in a positive direction. He appeared and, without any hesitation, immediately launched an attack on the remaining warrior player in front of him. He used the cut skill. Due to the limit of skill points, after maxing out the ambush skill points, Zhou Chen's cut skill could only reach level 5, and the effect did not reach its peak. Minus 864, minus 864, minus 864, it seemed that luck was not on Zhou Chen's side. His cut skill did not trigger critical hits or ignore defense for three consecutive attacks. However, his attack power was terrifying. With just one cut skill, he inflicted minus 2,592 damage on the warrior player, who had much higher health and defense than the thief. The level 26 warrior player had over 3,500 health points and was not initially worried. However, in the blink of an eye, he found that Zhou Chen effortlessly killed his companion and took away two-thirds of his health with just one skill. It was terrifying. He instantly lost the courage to face Zhou Chen and turned to run. It must be said that his decision was good, but in front of Zhou Chen, his fate was sealed from the beginning. Zhou Chen, now disguised as a thief, with the passive skill Ghost Step, had a faster movement speed than the warrior player. He didn't even need to activate the Reap skill to easily catch up to the warrior player. Normal attack. Minus 567 normal attack. 
Minus 543 however, the warrior player could heal with potions, so these two normal attacks still couldn't finish him off. Moreover, the warrior player's passive skill endurance was very practical, as his defense increased as his health decreased. Zhou Chen, who initially wanted to take the easy way out, realized that he had underestimated his opponent and decided to focus, using the ambush skill once again. The warrior player regretted seeing Zhou Chen suddenly disappear. He shouted in fear while healing with potions, brother, spare me, I was wrong. Perhaps due to spending too much time fighting monsters, Zhou Chen couldn't resist the opportunity to chat. He smirked and said, tell me, where were you wrong? The warrior player was stunned, feeling as uncomfortable as if he had eaten a dead rat. But staying alive was the most important thing. He gritted his teeth and decided to swallow his pride. So, facing the empty space in front of him, he stammered, I was wrong. I shouldn't have coveted the treasure, and I shouldn't have had ill intentions towards your equipment, brother. Zhou Chen, still in stealth, secretly chuckled and nodded at his words, well, it's good that you know. To recognize one's mistakes is the greatest virtue. Don't make the same mistake next time. As he finished speaking, he appeared from stealth and landed a hit with the ambush skill on the warrior player. Minus 986, still no critical hit, and no bypassing of defense. The warrior player, who had already healed a considerable amount with potions, narrowly escaped once again. However, Zhou Chen was not surprised. He swung the sovereign short sword in his hand and immediately used the cut skill, which had just finished cooling down. As the damage numbers floated up, a sinister smile appeared on his face, like a demon tempting the heart, murmuring, also, you were wrong to trust people too much, foolishly waiting for my skill to cool down. Minus 824 minus 798 ignore defense. Minus 1157 despite having healed a considerable amount with potions, the warrior player breathed his last, turning into a soul light. Zhou Chen had chatted with him earlier because he temporarily didn't have any explosive skills at hand and was worried that he couldn't take down the warrior player, who kept healing with potions. So, he first used words to stabilize him and secretly waited for the cut skill to cool down. Once the cut skill cooled down, the fate of the warrior player was sealed, and he had no chance of escape. Looking at the two soul lights in front of him choosing to resurrect in the city, Zhou Chen shook his head. Although he had taken care of two players, he had only gained some experience points and not even a single piece of equipment. It felt like a big loss. At the same time, his friend's mail system started flashing again. Zhou Chen, who had only one friend, knew that it must be Xia Chen looking for him again. As the main reason for the successful advancement of the Reaper of the Sovereign, Zhou Chen now valued Xia Chen. He was delighted. Could it be that Xia Qian had a change of heart and was planning to send me the remaining 20, rare, pieces of equipment? However, he was thinking too much. Opening the mail system, the information inside popped up. Xia Qian, the guild has been created, when will you join? Should I come to find you, or will you come to find me? Zhou Qin couldn't believe that Xia Qian was looking for him because of the guild. He was somewhat helpless, but he also understood that he couldn't avoid it. He had accepted the other party's 20, rare, pieces of equipment and couldn't just renege on the deal. However, the puppetry disguise had a time limit, and he didn't want to go back to the player town again, not knowing if he would have enough time to come back. In any case, he had to visit the player town less, as it was too dangerous. Last time, Xia Qian had almost dragged him into the town and almost turned him into a secret puppet spirit. He didn't want to show his face too much and replied to Xia Qian, just send the invitation, there's no need to join the guild in person. After much consideration, he finally decided to join Xia Qian's guild. Since he had taken advantage of others, he couldn't just sit back and do nothing, but he had a clear idea of how much he wanted to get involved. Xia Qian, joining the guild doesn't require you to be present, but there are a few members of the guild that I want to introduce to you. Zhou Chen, next time, I'm quite busy today. Busy Zhou Chen was actually not busy, but he was worried about the time limit of the disguise, and he showed little interest in the gathering. Okay. Xia Qian didn't force the issue and sent the invitation for joining the guild. Zhou Chen sighed softly and could only confirm it. Player Zhou Chen joins the guild Shiji Guild. Shiji Guild? What is this? Zhou Chen was a little incredulous for a moment. What kind of name is this? Could it be that besides Xia Qian's, there are also guilds named Spring, Autumn, and Winter? It had to be said that Zhou Chen's intuition was very keen. The guild chat channel suddenly became lively. Chuan Mu, Xia Qian, did you invite someone to join the guild? I didn't expect that besides us, you actually know other people. I underestimated you. Zhou Liang, indeed, I didn't expect it. Has Xia Qian suddenly become enlightened? Dong Wan, it's not a big deal, you two are making a fuss. When I speak up, whether it's 10 or 20, I'll call them all over. Xuanmu, no, our guild is a serious one, not your fishpond. Zhou Chen. 
Zhou Chen, can I quit? Xia Qian, you've agreed, help me finish the guild battle first, and if you want to quit, then quit. Zhou Chen. Chuan Mu, young man, you're quite something. By the way, what's your relationship with our Xia Qian? Zhou Liang, yes, I'm curious too. Dong Wan, what else could it be, you can guess even with your eyes closed. Zhou Chen. Xia Qian, the three of you, shut up. Zhou Chen was paid to come here. Before the guild battle, take it easy and don't waste my money. Zhou Chen, who could also see the guild chat channel, was very helpless. Big sister, is it really okay to say that? Although he had agreed to join the guild because he had his eye on the dozens of rare level equipment, saying it out loud like this would make him lose face. Xuan Mu, young man, I misjudged you. It's such a rare thing for Xia Qian to ask for your help, and you actually took money. Xiu Liang, it really hurts the heart. Winter night, so, are you and Xia Qian in a financial transaction relationship? Zhou Chen, yes, I'm coming clean. Xia Qian and I are in a legitimate financial transaction relationship. Chun Mu, sigh, how boring. Xiu Liang, a waste of time. Winter night, Xia Qian is very wealthy. When you set the price, remember to aim high and don't sell yourself short. When the guild chat channel quieted down, Zhou Chen secretly chatted with Xia Qian. Are these the three members you mentioned? Xia Qian, yes. Zhou Chen carefully chose his words and said with some difficulty, all of them are girls? Is it reliable to rely on them for guild battles? And it seems like guild battles require 10 people. Xia Qian, do you look down on girls? No, no, Zhou Chen quickly denied, and he smiled bitterly, I just feel that the three of them seem a bit unreliable. More than a bit unreliable, in Zhou Chen's view, they were completely unreliable. From their recent chat, it didn't seem like they were preparing for a guild battle at all, but rather just gossiping. Xia Qian fell silent for a while and said, what you said makes sense. They do seem difficult to trust at first glance. I'll figure something out. Then, the next moment, she was the first to speak in the guild chat channel. Xia Qian, you three, Zhou Chen doubts your abilities and says you're unreliable. Show him what you're made of. Zhou Chen? Is this a mistake? The topic he secretly chatted with her about was now being broadcasted in the guild channel? Zhou Chen suddenly felt a headache. Chun Mu, young man, I didn't expect you to be this kind of person, talking behind the sisters' backs? Where are you? Come get close to your sisters. Xiu Liang, add me to the list. Winter night, interesting, I've known so many men, and you're the first one to not take me seriously. Zhou Chen, if I say this is a misunderstanding, will anyone believe me? The atmosphere in the guild chat channel suddenly became tense. As the guild leader, Xia Qian finally spoke again. Xia Qian, alright, the three of you are making everyone think you're unreliable. I have an idea. Let's find an opportunity to raid a boss together. It will allow everyone to understand each other's abilities and serve as a rehearsal before the guild battle. How about it? Chun Mu, ugh, another activity? It's exhausting. Xiu Liang, I knew it wouldn't be good when Xia Qian spoke. Winter night, can I invite an outsider? Xia Qian completely ignored the three of them and disregarded their remarks, asking Zhou Chen, what do you think, Zhou Chen? Zhou Chen sighed inwardly, knowing that he couldn't avoid this matter. So he asked for details, which boss are we going to fight? When are we fighting? How long will it take? These were the three questions he cared about the most. Chun Mu became excited again and said, I think we can fight Xia Qian, it's none of your business. Just listen to my arrangements. Chun Mu, Xia Qian, you've changed. You weren't like this before. Xia Qian continued to ignore her and asked Zhou Chen, how about we go to the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest, where there's a leveling area for levels 15 to 20. Let's raid a boss level Crimson Rock there. Okay, Zhou Chen agreed after some contemplation. He vaguely remembered that leveling area with the Crimson Rock, which happened to be right next to the Secret Puppet Spirit Refresh area, and the outskirts of the Nightmare Forest was his main base. If he disguised himself as a player class, he could save time traveling back and forth and make the most of the two hours of his disguise time. And in case something happened, he could quickly transform back into a secret puppet spirit and blend in with the large group of secret puppet spirit monsters, making it impossible for anyone to find him. The boss level Crimson Rock sounded quite formidable, and he wasn't sure if the guild could handle it. Anyway, he had made up his mind. If he went over, he would just act like a bystander and leave if things got bad. It didn't matter anyway, Xia Qian and the others could resurrect, so there was no problem. He couldn't resurrect, so he had to be clear about that and not get too involved like them. After getting Zhou Chen's approval for the guild team to fight the boss, Xia Qian continued, why wait for the right time when we can just do it today? The other members of the guild had no objections, but Zhou Chen expressed his dissent. Zhou Chen, no, I have something to do today. How about tomorrow at this time? Chun Mu, I find you troublesome, young man. Xiu Liang, I don't mind. Dong Wan, alright, 
I'll have them go ahead and record the process of raiding the boss and send me the video. Shun Mu, ha, huh, good idea, Dong Wan, your fish pond is indeed useful. Zhou Chen, Xia Qian, it's settled then. Tomorrow at this time, meet at the main city in the eastern district. Zhou Chen, no need, you guys come, I'll wait for you on the outskirts of the nightmare forest. Uncomfortable silence. Xia Qian, okay, that's it. Chun Mu, young man, why do you have so many issues? Chun Mu, young man, just because Xia Qian doesn't argue with you doesn't mean you can treat us however you want. Chun Mu, young Xia Qian, stop calling, he's offline. Ah. Chun Mu, full of resentment, reluctantly fell silent. After a while, she suddenly remembered something and called out, is that Zhou Chen the one who got the first, treasure, level equipment as announced by the system? Xia Qian, probably, his level isn't high, but his strength is good. It's not strange for him to get, treasure, level equipment. Xiu Liang, no wonder Xia Qian paid him to come. Having the only, treasure, level equipment in the whole server, it's worth it. Dong Wan, should I try to get some information out of him? No one knows how to obtain, treasure, level equipment yet. Xia Qian, save it, think about tomorrow's matters first. At this time, Zhou Chen had already cancelled that puppet disguise and returned to the form of the puppet spirit. Since he had agreed to meet tomorrow at this time, he quickly cancelled the puppet disguise. Otherwise, if the disguise skill hadn't cooled down by tomorrow, it would be troublesome. Anyway, there were still 24 hours until the agreed time tomorrow, so he planned to work hard in the form of the puppet spirit, hunt down some more players, and try to improve his strength before raiding the boss. It was unlikely for him to level up with just over 10,000 experience points before raiding the boss, but obtaining some equipment by hunting players and further enhancing the attributes of the Lord Scythe was still achievable. As a puppet spirit, wielding a black scythe did attract attention. He had already mastered the scythe transformation skill and would naturally make good use of it. The weapons used by other puppet spirits in the outskirts of the nightmare forest were all the same, about a meter long short spear, which they used to stab at players during attacks. When the cooldown time for scythe transformation was over, Jochen didn't hesitate and immediately transformed the Lord's scythe from its short sword form into its short spear form. At this moment, Jochen, holding the short spear, finally looked the same as the other puppet spirits. Apart from his incredibly powerful attributes and skills, players couldn't tell the difference between him and other puppet spirits. Lord Scythe, Treasure, Short Spear Form, Attribute Conversion Rate 70%. This time, Zhou Chen nervously kept an eye on the system announcement channel, but found that the game system remained as calm as ever, without issuing any announcements. It seemed that after transforming into a monster form, he was no longer under the control of the player system. If the announcement comes again, then it would be impossible to clear one's name, and trouble will definitely pile up. Even just now, there are still many players persistently trying to add him as a friend. However, after he transformed into a monster, all these messages were completely blocked and no longer affected him. Strangely, when returning to monster form, apart from still being able to speak in the chat channel, most of the system functions for other players would disappear. In Xia Qian's friend system and guild member list, his information had turned gray, indicating that the player Zhou Chen had already gone offline. But if Zhou Chen was still speaking in the chat channel at this time, observant individuals would notice the problem. Zhou Chen bitterly smiled, it seemed that he would have to be more careful in the future. When not disguised as a player, it's better not to speak in the chat channel. In the past, when he was young and ignorant, he always liked to chat in the channel, fortunately without being noticed. Thinking about this, Zhou Chen couldn't help but have a thought, should he delete Xia Chen from his friend list and then leave the guild? After thinking about it, he dismissed the idea. Doing so would be too despicable. He had taken advantage of the benefits, but hadn't fulfilled his promises. Let's wait until after helping with the guild battle. After understanding this, Zhou Chen no longer wasted time. Holding the scythe that had already transformed into a short spear, he approached those players who were leveling up. Now, his attack power was incredibly strong. Even though the scythe in its transformed state only had 70% of its original attributes, his attack power still reached 832 points. He stealthily approached a leveling player from behind and first used the puppetry mirror image skill. The puppetry mirror image skill, which had reached level 6, could create a total of 4 mirror image clones. The 4 clones in his main body raised the short spear and stabbed at the player. Minus 614, minus 614, minus 614, minus 614, minus 614, 5 damage numbers appeared, causing over 3000 points of damage with the first strike. These leveling players were mostly in their 20s, and couldn't withstand such an attack. They couldn't even react and turned into a white light. In the player's system prompt, it only showed, you have been killed by the puppetry spirit. 
As for Zhou Chen, who was currently holding a short spear and looked no different from an ordinary puppetry spirit, the player who had turned into a soul light couldn't figure it out and could only choose to resurrect in the city in confusion. Unfortunately, there still wasn't any equipment dropped. Next, Zhou Chen began a large-scale hunt, and more and more players were ambushed, following the footsteps of the previous player. After transforming the site, Zhou Chen's ambush process became very smooth. In the past, anyone would have paid more attention to a puppetry spirit holding a two-meter-long black scythe, and it was almost impossible to ambush anyone. To kill a player, one often had to chase after them with a big scythe. In comparison, it was much easier to secretly collect heads now. Unconsciously, there were already 20 to 30 players killed. Zhou Chen's experience points had also increased by 2865 points, reaching 3235-12,000. However, there was still a long way to go to level up. However, these players had provided a total of 7 pieces of equipment for Zhou Chen, including 2 rare ones, which could be considered a pleasant surprise. Leveling up couldn't be rushed, so after extracting the attributes of these 7 pieces of equipment, Zhou Chen got busy again. Time passed quickly, and before he knew it, a day had already gone by. Since becoming a monster, Zhou Chen found that he no longer needed to sleep. For a full 24 hours, from day to night and back to day, he was busy outside the nightmare forest. Busy hunting players. Unfortunately, players are not as common as monsters. Finding suitable players to hunt also takes some time. After a whole day, the experience gained was not ideal. Currently, the experience points have only reached 9875-12000. There is still some distance to level 23. The equipment drop throughout the day was decent, but there were also many duplicate items. After reaching 10 items, the drop rate became 0%. The overall attributes of the Lord Sickle have been improved. The current attributes are, Lord Sickle, Treasure, Physical Attack, 696, Physical Defense, 271, Magic Defense, 160, HP plus 2880, MP, 540, Physical Critical Hit Rate plus 14%, Ignore Defense Rate plus 12%, Combo Rate plus 7%, Skill Sickle Kill LV4, Skill Sickle Absorb LV3, Skill Sickle Transform LV1. It wasn't a wasted day. At this time, the agreed time with the Shiji Guild from the previous day had arrived. Zhou Chen promptly transformed into a thief profession again. Only Xia Chen knows that he can freely change professions, and she promised to keep it a secret. When he joined the Shiji Guild, he presented himself as a thief, and now he doesn't plan to let others know more secrets. As for the Autumn Chill Guild's Cho Sehan, he may have some guesses, but he knows very little and can only suspect. Zhou Chen had just disguised himself as a thief profession, and the names of the guild members on the list lit up, immediately catching the attention of the guild members. Chun Mu immediately called out, Young man, you're quite leisurely. We've been waiting for so long, and you just casually come online? Zhou Chen ignored the unfriendly tone and said, I arrived just in time. I'm not late. Chun Mu was clearly annoyed and took a while before speaking in the guild chat channel, Young man, we're counting on you. I hope you won't let us down. Xia Qian said, It's time, let's all gather. Zhou Chen, where are you? Zhou Chen replied, I'm already at the outskirts of the nightmare forest. What about you guys? Xia Qian said, Coordinates, 3453, 8767, We've already spotted a leader level crimson rock monster. Just come over. Okay, I'm on my way. Zhou Chen replied in the chat channel and used the stealth skill to rush to the target location. The stealth skill, which he had now reached level 10, also increased his movement speed by 40%, making it very suitable for traveling. As for the Lord Sickle's Sickle Kill skill, Zhou Chen planned to keep it as a trump card and not waste it unless absolutely necessary. With the 40% movement speed bonus, Zhou Chen used the stealth skill all the way to the target location. After using the skill a few times, he arrived at the target location mentioned by Xia Qian. At this point, he had left the area where the secret puppet spirits spawned and entered the neighboring Crimson Rock Monster spawn point. However, upon seeing the scene in front of him while still in stealth, Zhou Chen furrowed his brow and did not rush to reveal himself. He asked in the guild chat channel, Why are there so many people here? Isn't it just our guild? In addition to Xia Qian and other members of the Shiji Guild, there were unexpectedly 8 or 9 male players he didn't recognize. Upon closer inspection, Zhou Chen found that they had various professions and decent levels, mostly above level 26. Encountering such a crowd, Zhou Chen was not foolish enough to rush into the middle. He was currently disguised as a player, hiding his attribute and equipment panels, but others could still see his name. Although he was reluctant, the name Zhou Chen was probably already quite famous. In the face of, treasure, level equipment, Zhou Chen was not sure if they could control their greed. In case these people attacked him from behind while he was raiding the boss with Xia Qian and the others, he would be in a very passive position. 
His question in the guild chat channel was quickly answered by Chun Mu. These are Wan Wan's fish pond. Oh no, her friends who came to cheer for Wan Wan. Ha, huh? do we need a large group of people to cheer while raiding a boss? What's going on? Did I misunderstand something? At this time, Xia Qian also spoke. Let's focus on our own raid. You don't need to pay attention to them. Wan Wan, you tell them that today is our guild's boss raid. They can watch but they can't have any other ideas. Dong Wan guaranteed. Don't worry, Xia Qian, they don't have the guts. Xia Qian then said to Zhou Chen, you can rest assured, Wan Wan has warned them, they won't have any ideas about your treasure level equipment. Okay, that's it. You guys start, I'll look for an opportunity to increase our output. Since Xia Qian said so, Zhou Chen didn't want to be too fussy. However, Zhou Chen did not completely relax his vigilance. Words spoken verbally are the least reliable. When the treasure level equipment appears, there may be people with overheated brains. In any case, be a little more careful and don't get carried away. The small monsters around the leader level crimson rock monster had already been cleared, and at this time, Xia Qian and Dong Wan went up. It was only at this time that Zhou Chen realized that Dong Wan, who had many suitors and was regarded as a goddess by many male players, was actually a warrior with thick skin. And Chun Mu, who talked the most, was a physician. It seemed that she had no opinions of her own and only knew how to agree with others. Xiao Liang, a magician. A warrior, a physician, a magician, plus Xia Qian, a powerful and skilled fighter. Although the number of people in the West Season Guild was small, the professional configuration was quite balanced. Dong Wan rushed forward, swinging her broadsword like a door panel towards the leader level Crimson Rock Monster. Dong Wan, go for it. Don't worry, I'll heal you. The group of male players over there started cheering, just as Chun Mu had said, they were really there to cheer. And one of those male players was a physician, who immediately used healing skills on Dong Wan. At this time, Dong Wan hadn't even been attacked by the leader level Crimson Rock Monster once, and her health bar was still full. Dong Wan looked coldly in their direction and said, Who asked you to heal me? This is our guild's practice. What if you affect our judgment? The physician player's face turned pale and he stammered, I'm sorry, Dong Wan, I didn't mean to, I was just afraid you would get hurt. Zhou Chen, who was still in stealth mode, couldn't help but shake his head in amazement. This was too terrifying. Just one Dong Wan had turned these fine young men into this? Zhou Chen subconsciously looked at Dong Wan and found that she was indeed quite beautiful. However, when creating characters in the game, you can adjust the appearance up and down, and a 60-point appearance can be adjusted to a 90-point appearance, so there are handsome men and beautiful women everywhere in the game. As for acting like they've never seen pork before? Regardless of Dong Wan's conversation with her suitors, at this time the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster had already been attracted and launched an attack on Dong Wan. Minus 558 after all, it wasn't a very high-level boss, and the damage from the Crimson Rock Monster's attack on Dong Wan was not particularly outrageous. But it was also related to Dong Wan's profession. She was a level 26 warrior, wearing a full set of high-quality, rare, level equipment, and her defense was excellent. Dong Wan's health dropped, and the physician player looked at her, his face turning red, but he still resisted the urge to heal her again. Previously, because he was a physician, he thought he could use this advantage to flatter someone, but unexpectedly, he ended up offending them. At this point, he certainly didn't dare to act on his own. Of course, the Western Season Guild also had physicians. Chuanmu, on the side, timely used a healing spell to replenish the blood loss of Dong Wan. And not only that, she then used a mist barrier skill to envelop the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster. Within the range of this mist barrier, the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster would be weakened, its attack power reduced, while Dong Wan and the others would be in a state of continuous blood recovery. On the side, Shouchen felt a sense of regret. Back when he was a scarecrow boss, he had also been dealt with in a similar way by the players. It's really a case of fortunes changing, as today he was standing on the player's side. However, Jochen himself had also been a leader level boss, so he knew very well that a boss at almost full health was not at its most dangerous. When its health dropped to half, or even lower, that would be a different story. And at this point, Xia Qian also launched an attack on the leader level Crimson Rock Monster in front of her. Her attack was much stronger than Dong Wan's, but her wide sword strike only caused a minus 112 damage to the leader level Crimson Rock Monster. Its attack power was indeed low. Of course, this was also because monsters like the Crimson Rock Monster were known for their high physical defense. Xia Qian then used a first face punch on the leader level Crimson Rock Monster, causing minus 445 damage. As a martial artist, she had excellent offensive and defensive abilities, despite the high difficulty in operation. At this point, the distant mage Cho Liang still hadn't made a move. 
Previously, they had watched videos of others strategizing against the leader-level Crimson Rock monster and knew very well how quickly the monster's hatred could shift. As an output player, the mage had to carefully control the damage of their attacks. They planned to wait for Xia Qian and Dong Wan to attack a bit more and output more damage before making a move, so as not to worry about the boss shifting its hatred onto them and targeting the mage first. However, Zhou Chen paid no attention to them. He knew that he only had two hours of disguise time and couldn't afford to dawdle with the boss. He had to quickly deal with this leader-level crimson rock monster. In the unseen field of vision, he used the sneak attack skill to touch the boss's back. Then, without a word, he unleashed the visible strike of sneak attack. In the situation of a rogue player, along with various bonuses, his physical attack power had now reached exactly 900 points. The physical defense of the leader-level crimson rock monster was probably around 300 points, and with the additional damage of the sneak attack skill, Zhou Chen estimated that this strike should cause over 900 points of damage. However, the development of the situation was far smoother than he had imagined. This strike turned out to be incredibly lucky. Ignore defense. Critical hit. Minus 2760 the terrifying damage numbers jumped up, and the health bar of the leader level crimson rock monster dropped by a large chunk. Even with the talent royal decree, the health of the leader level crimson rock monster was only just over 10,000 points, and Jochen's strike had instantly taken away a tenth of it. This number shocked the many players cheering on the sidelines, as well as several members of the Western Season Guild. Even Xia Qian, who usually appeared nonchalant, widened her eyes at this moment. Although the large group present may not necessarily be figures on the professional level ranking list, they could still be considered top players. They are not ignorant people and have seen some explosive injuries before. If it were just a slightly high injury value, they would be surprised but not shocked to this extent. They didn't want to be shocked like a bumpkin, but the damage dealt by Zhou Chen was too high. It wasn't just a little high, it was too high. Chuanmu, who always had a lot to say, was also stunned at this moment, murmuring, Xia Qian, it seems like your money was well spent. We might not be at a loss waiting for a while. Meanwhile, as a mage, Julian called out at this moment. Quick, retreat. You've dealt such high damage, the boss's hatred is definitely on you. You're a thief, you can't withstand the boss's attacks. As a specialized damage dealer, Julian clearly understood and paid attention to the boss's hatred value. However, Zhou Qin did not listen to her and, after appearing, once again wielded the short sword in his hand. This short sword was transformed from the Reaper's Sickle, the game's first, treasure, level equipment, with attributes far beyond what others could imagine. However, he had hidden the special effects of the equipment, causing the short sword to appear dull and unremarkable. Cut. Zhou Chen stood beside the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster and used the main attack skill of a thief player. The level 5 cutting skill was very good, capable of dealing 3 by 130% damage, and also had a 30% chance to ignore defense. Ignore defense. Minus 1170 minus 792 ignore defense. Minus 1170 with this cut skill, out of 3 attacks, 2 of them triggered the defense ignore. Today, Zhou Chen seemed to be stepping into the realm of the lucky. With just these 2 skills, a total of minus 5892 damage was dealt, instantly reducing the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster's health by half. Suddenly, the Talent Clan Guardian of the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster was triggered, summoning an elite Crimson Rock Monster and 20 ordinary ones around it. Zhou Chen, Xia Qian, and Dong Wan were suddenly surrounded by the Crimson Rock Monster group. Run, you've definitely attracted all of its hatred. Its burst skill will kill you immediately. Zhou Liang, who had never spoken so much, was extremely worried at this moment. But when she said this, it was too late. Having lost half of its health in an instant, the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster was clearly enraged. It roared and smashed its two huge rock fists down. Boom 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 it struck five times in a row, and the huge and Crimson Rock Fists seemed to be accompanied by scorching flames. This was the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster's burst skill, Lava Hammer Strike. However, strangely, this Lava Hammer Strike struck five times in a row, but didn't touch Zhou Chen at all. It was as if the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster had mistaken its target, only ignoring Zhou Chen and attacking Xia Qian and Dong Wan instead, as if it was them who had previously reduced half of its health. The situation was urgent, and the others didn't think much, but Zhou Chen was very clear about the reason. He was originally a monster, even if he disguised himself as a player profession, fundamentally he was still a monster. In the current game version, monsters were not supposed to attack each other, so even though he had reduced half of the Crimson Rock monster's health, it was as if it couldn't see him at all. However, it was enough for him to know this, there was no need to attract others' attention. 
he quickly used the stealth skill again, disappearing from everyone's sight. In this way, in the eyes of others, he had just stealthily escaped, and it wasn't that the boss intentionally didn't attack him. He did escape while stealthed, but the situation for Dong Wan and Xia Qian in the front line was not good. The leader level Crimson Rock Monster's two huge fists smashed down, hitting Dong Wan, even though she had already blocked with a round shield, she still suffered a lot of damage. Minus 558 minus 558 minus 558 minus 558 minus 558 5 consecutive attacks dealt minus 2790 damage to Dong Wan. In addition, the Magma Hammer Strike brought not only pure physical damage. On the Blood Red Magma Fist, there was also a liquid like flame flowing, splashing towards Dong Wan. Dong Wan couldn't dodge it and was splashed by the flowing flame, taking a hit of minus 430 damage. Although the attack power of these splashing flames was not particularly high, it was magical damage, and the damage caused to the warrior player could not be underestimated. Dong Wan's health suddenly bottomed out, if it weren't for the timely healing from the outer circle's Chun Mu, she would probably have fallen down at the first hit. Even as a warrior, she was so miserable, how would the martial artist Xia Qian fare? Zhou Chen originally thought that Xia Qian would not be able to escape such an attack, but he didn't expect to underestimate her. When the magma hammer strike came down in a five-hit combo, Xia Qian leaped up, her toes tapping the surface of the leader-level crimson rock monster's fist, and she ran swiftly along the monster's arm, leveraging her way over the three-meter-high crimson rock monster's head. With this move, she only suffered a slight shock damage from the magma hammer strike hitting the ground, as well as the burning damage from the flames surging on the opponent's rocky arm, totaling minus 265, minus 456 damage from the shock waves and the burning flames, adding up to just over 700 points. Although not unscathed, compared to Dong Wan, she was much better off. The onlookers couldn't help but marvel silently and quietly praised her. Xia Chen being the first martial artist in the game really showed her skills. At this time, after using the Magma Hammer Strike, the health bar of the Crimson Rock Monster, which was already below half, roared, and the rocks that made up its body suddenly turned fiery red. Immediately, an endless stream of flames gushed out from the cracks in its rocky body, pouring onto the ground. The space within a few meters instantly turned into a flaming hell. Even Dong Wan, with high defense and thick health, quickly retreated. If she were still standing in the flames at this time, she would probably be slowly burned to death. Faced with such unreasonable wide-range attacks, Xia Qian, known for her skillful maneuvers, also jumped away. Everywhere was ablaze, even the body of the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster was full of flames, leaving no room for maneuvering. In the flames, the health of the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster was rapidly recovering. This was a talent skill of the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster, Purgatory Resurgence. When its health dropped below half, it would spew out a large amount of flames from its body for defense, and rapidly recover its lost health within the encirclement of flames. Zhou Chen, who had already escaped invisibly, naturally would not foolishly rush up again. He had the identity of a wild monster, and other wild monsters would not actively attack him, but when faced with such a wide-range attack skill, it was different. If he actively approached, he would also be injured, and no one could stop it. Having watched a strategy video before, several members of the West Season Guild naturally had corresponding coordination. While Dong Wan was retreating, she had already called out, Xiao Liang, continue the attack, don't let it leave the battle. At this time, the usefulness of ranged professions could be seen. In the fiery hell, melee professions could not get close, and if they did not attack for a period of time, the leader-level crimson rock monster would leave the battle, recover to full health, and reset all states. This was naturally something that the West Season Guild could not allow. Xiao Liang's reaction was also very quick. In the instant Dong Wan retreated, he had already raised the staff in his hand, chanted a spell, and cast a spell. In the air, a crescent-shaped blade formed by wind elements slashed towards the leader-level crimson rock monster. This crescent-shaped blade was two meters long, and it was one of the optional skills for a mage, the wind blade technique. Similar to the fireball technique, this wind blade technique was also a commonly used attack magic for mages, but one belonged to the fire element, and the other belonged to the wind element. Dealing with wild monsters like the Crimson Rock Monster, using the fireball technique naturally had little effect, when the fireball hit it, it barely caused any damage. On the other hand, the wind blade technique was quite effective, with a very fast speed. As soon as Autumn raised her hand, the wind blade had already flown in front of the Crimson Rock Monster, pierced through the flame barrier, and slashed at its neck. Minus 654, a damage number popped up, and Autumn firmly held the hate of the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster not letting it leave the battle. In terms of monster output, magical attack skills have always been more powerful than physical attacks. 
After casting the wind blade technique, Autumn began preparing for the next magic skill by chanting a spell. Meanwhile, the flames around the leader level crimson rock monster quickly extinguished after burning for a few seconds, and it charged towards Autumn in the distance. At this time, Dongwon, who had recovered most of her health on the side, once again pressed forward. On the other side, Xia Qian also approached. Suddenly, a figure flashed in the field, and Zhou Chen, who had entered stealth mode, reappeared and landed a visible blow on the leader level crimson rock monster. Minus 1012 this time, his luck wasn't as good, the blow didn't trigger a critical hit or ignore defense. However, with his strong attack power and the stealth strike skill at LV10, he still easily dealt over a thousand points of damage. And of course, it didn't end there, he waved his short sword and used the cutting skill again. At this point, both Dong Wan, a warrior specializing in strength, and Xia Qian, a martial artist, had already reached the leader level Crimson Rock Monster. Dong Wan, as a warrior with high health and defense, naturally had reliable defense, not to mention her attack power. Her attacks on the leader level Crimson Rock Monster could only be described as better than nothing. Meanwhile, Xia Qian used another martial artist skill. She moved to the side of the Crimson Rock Monster, leaned forward slightly, and quickly punched forward. Minus 145, minus 145, minus 145, minus 145. In a short time, she continuously punched eight times. Although a single attack was far from the previous first strike, the frequency of attacks was fast due to the martial artist skill continuous strike. Each attack percentage was not high, but the eight attacks combined made for a decent output skill. While they were attacking, another cutting skill from Zhou Chen had already landed on the leader level Crimson Rock Monster. Minus 792 minus 792 ignore defense. Minus 1170 leader level monsters had relatively high resistance to various attack effects, so this cutting skill did not cause excessive damage. However, even so, the combined attacks of the group still caused a large amount of damage to the leader level crimson rock monster, reducing its health back to below half, despite having recovered a considerable amount of health. However, the talent skill group protection could only be used once, and this time it did not summon a new batch of follower monsters. Nevertheless, the previously summoned batch of monsters were still there, launching attacks at the few people in the encirclement. Strictly speaking, they were actually attacking Xia Qian and Dong Wan. These follower monsters, like their leader, completely ignored Zhou Chen. However, except for the moment when Zhou Chen appeared to output damage, he had been in stealth mode for a long time, and the others had not noticed this. Those elite and ordinary level minions and wild beasts, Although their attack power is not as good as the leader level, they have the advantage of quantity, besieging the two of them in the winter night, still causing them quite a bit of trouble. Xia Chen dashed left and right in the pile of wild beasts, although occasionally touched by the wild beasts, she could still handle it, and the problem was not too big. As for Dong Wan, of course, she did not have the same operation as Xia Chen, and she was too lazy to run around, so she simply put away her broadsword, raised her round shield, and focused on defense. As long as she focused on defense, Coupled with the healing from the outside physician Chun Mu, she could still hold on. As for the attack, it was naturally left to the damage dealers. At this moment, the magician Cho Liang finally cast a ranged spell that he had been preparing for a long time, a stormy whirlwind with a diameter of several meters formed, and countless storm arrows flew out from it. This was a ranged spell mastered by Cho Liang, storm feather arrows. Countless wind-based feather arrows flew out from the stormy whirlwind, shooting towards the group of minions and wild beasts. Minus 268, minus 268, minus 268. Countless damage numbers jumped up, and the ordinary level minions among this group of red rock monsters fell to the ground one after another, leaving only the elite level ones. In terms of large scale elimination of small fries, basically no profession could compare to the magician, even Zhou Chen, who now wielded a treasure level weapon, could only admit defeat. After this round of Storm Feather Arrows baptism, although the remaining elite level red rock monsters had not died, their health bars were also running low. Xia Qian, who was close by, kicked off the ground, with flying debris, her whole body had already soared into the air, and she kicked one of the elite level red rock monsters. Minus 897 Although this blow was not any skill known to martial artists, it was powerful, and it instantly killed that elite level red rock monster with just one blow. In midair, Xia Qian's body inexplicably spun again, and she kicked another red rock monster in the air. When she finally landed, both of these elite level red rock monsters had turned into experience points. Of course, the experience points were not high. After all, her level had already exceeded this leveling area by a lot. After landing, she took a deep breath and planned to deal with the remaining two red rock monsters. Dong Wan was holding off the attacks of the leader level red rock monster alone, 
and Xia Qian certainly did not allow the remaining two elite level red rock monsters to cause trouble on the side. However, just as she was about to exert herself, her vision suddenly rippled, and Zhou Chen's figure appeared in the air, using the ambush skill to attack, instantly killing the elite level red rock monster in front of her. And after appearing, he did not wait long, gently sending his short sword forward, and then took down the other red rock monster. He didn't even use any skills. Xia Qian was slightly stunned at first, then nodded at Zhou Chen and said, hurry up, it's only half health left. Zhou Chen also nodded, and his figure disappeared into the air again. He naturally understood Xia Qian's meaning. Since the leader level red rock monster had already summoned minions once, it would not summon them again. Anyway, now that the small fries were cleared, it was a good time to step up the output and push the health of the leader level red rock monster down. The next thing was simple, Dong Wan relied on her own health to defend and hold on, Xia Qian used her operating skills to avoid the attacks of the leader level red rock monster as much as possible and seize the opportunity to attack. The most comfortable was Zhou Chen, who first used the ambush skill to enter stealth, and then used the classic combo of a visible attack and the cut skill. After this set, the health bar of the leader level red rock monster was once again reduced in a short time, leaving only about 20%. And Zhou Chen, who had been a leader level wild beast himself, sensibly disappeared when the opponent's health was at 20%. He was very clear that for elite monsters like this, when their health drops to 50% or 20%, there would definitely be some extraordinary outbursts. Although he wasn't worried about being targeted by the monster, encountering its area of effect attacks was not a pleasant experience. While there was some information about regular monsters on the official game forum, the specific details of elite monsters and above were kept confidential. The official stance was to encourage players to explore and enhance the game's enjoyment. Therefore, at this moment, Zhou Chen had no expectations for what kind of skills the elite Crimson Rock Monster would unleash. On the other hand, several members of the West Season Guild had already watched strategy videos in advance. When the elite Crimson Rock Monster's health was about to drop to 20%, Chuan Mu from the outer circle called out, Shaoshan, Wan Wan, retreat, it's about to go berserk and use its ultimate move. When the medic Chuan Mu called out, Xiao Shan and Dong Wan had already reacted and started to retreat. They had previously watched the strategy video and knew very well that when the elite Crimson Rock Monster's health dropped to 20%, it would enter a berserk state and unleash a large area of effect skill called Lava Burst. However, watching a strategy video and experiencing it firsthand were different. Although Dong Wan knew what was coming, she was still a beat slow in retreating. Amidst the elite Crimson Rock Monster's roar, the ground within 7 to 8 meters of it began to turn red and burst, with endless flames and red rocks erupting. It was indeed the elite crimson rock monster's ultimate skill, Lava Burst. Shaoshan and the others leaped out of the range of Lava Burst, but Dong Wan was left behind and took the full force of the attack. This was a physical attack mixed with magical damage, causing Dong Wan's health to plummet like an avalanche. Minus 489, minus 489, minus 489. The dense red rocks pelted Dong Wan, bringing with them a flurry of damage numbers. In just a moment, Dong Wan's health had turned red, and with just a little more damage, she would be killed and turned into a soul light. Fortunately, at that moment, Shaoshan pulled her out of the attack range of Lava Burst. As her health bar blinked red, she finally escaped the attack range of Lava Burst and narrowly avoided disaster. Still shaken, she received a healing spell from the equally shaken Shuenmu, instantly restoring over 700 health points, which eased her mind a bit. However, as she tilted her head to drink a bottle of potent healing potion, she did not expect the elite crimson rock monster to charge at her like a storm. It was in a berserk state. When elite monsters enter a berserk state, their attributes double, and they switch to arranged attack mode. Having watched the strategy video, they knew that this level of elite crimson rock monster's berserk state lasted for 20 seconds. With its doubled movement speed, the elite crimson rock monster quickly reached Dong Wan. At that moment, it was impossible for her to continue retreating. With the opponent's doubled movement speed, she couldn't possibly outrun it. The elite crimson rock monster raised its rocky fists, and with a sigh of resignation, Dong Wan desperately raised her shield. At this point, with the dual recovery from Chun Mu's healing and her own potion, her health had already been restored to over 1,400 points. However, facing an elite crimson rock monster with doubled attributes, it was still far from enough. Lava Hammer Strike Minus 1372 minus 1372. The lava hammer strike hit five times, but with only 1400 health points left, Dong Wan couldn't withstand even two strikes and was instantly turned into a white light. In this battle to conquer the boss by the West Season Guild, casualties finally occurred for the first time. In fact, even in the double attribute of the berserk state of the leader level Crimson Rock Monster, 
Winter Knight in full health would not be able to withstand a lava hammer strike. In this situation, either avoid it, or as they saw in the strategy video, use lives to pile up. Winter Knight's group of pursuers did have a strategy before, but when the leader level Crimson Rock Monster entered the Berserk state, their casualties were also significant. In the end, it was by continuously sacrificing lives and the constant revival by the physician that they managed to grind the boss to death. However, on the West Season Guild side, there was only Winter Knight as a warrior. Once she fell, the remaining few would likely struggle to hold on. After Winter Knight fell, the berserk Crimson Rock Monster turned and charged towards Xia Qian in another direction. It had just used Lava Hammer Strike, and the skill was not yet on cooldown. Relying solely on its doubled attributes, it swiftly charged towards Xia Qian and struck with a punch. Xia Qian was fundamentally different from Winter Knight, her operational skills were far superior. As the opponent's Rock Fist was just about to rise, she had already jumped to the side. The Rock Fist brushed past her with a whistling sound, only grazing her slightly. Minus 658 with a quick glance, also inflicted a terrible amount of damage on Xia Qian. However, compared to a direct hit, it was much better. Seeing Xia Qian with a large portion of her health bar remaining, Chun Mu shouted loudly, Chen Shen, don't confront it head on, just stall it, I'll revive Winter Knight immediately. The physician profession, not needing to engage in combat but providing central healing, often had a comprehensive view of the overall situation and could coordinate for their teammates in battle. However, Zhou Chen, who was in that ambush stealth state, silently shook his head. Chun Mu's words were simple, but the berserk leader level Crimson Rock Monster's doubled attributes and astonishing speed made it impossible to just stall. Although Xia Qian's operational skills were impressive, facing a boss with doubled movement and attack speed, it was impossible to evade entirely. Although the berserk state of the leader level Crimson Rock Monster only lasted for 20 seconds, if left alone, it would easily wipe out the other members of the West Season Guild. Therefore, Zhou Chen made up his mind, sneaked behind the berserk boss, emerged from that ambush stealth state, and delivered a visible blow to the leader level Crimson Rock Monster. Minus 795 this time, the damage was not too high. The berserk leader level Crimson Rock Monster not only doubled its attack attributes but also its health and defense. The damage Zhou Chen dealt was not high. After receiving this blow, the leader level Crimson Rock Monster still had over 3000 health points remaining. Zhou Chen, who had appeared, temporarily did not intend to retreat, took out his short sword and used the cut skill. Zhou Chen, watch out, Chun Mu, who had intended to remind Zhou Chen, hesitated and then dismissed the thought. If no one intervened, the berserk boss would soon disengage from the battle, and their efforts would be in vain. She understood that with the boss's terrifying attributes at this moment, intervening would result in killing someone, and if not Zhou Chen, then it would be Xia Qian. Since Zhou Chen had already taken the initiative, she did not want to dampen his enthusiasm. Between Zhou Chen and Xia Qian, the choice of who the boss would kill was not even worth considering. However, the next moment, she was shocked and almost interrupted Winter Knight's resurrection spell. Ignore defense. Minus 1170 minus 492 ignore defense. Minus 1170 the damage numbers jumped up. Zhou Chen's cut skill had achieved two ignore defense hits out of three. With this skill, the boss, whose health and defense had already doubled, couldn't bear it. The first hit had already taken away over 2,000 health points, causing the entire health bar to flicker. After the shock, Mu was ecstatic. She couldn't believe how accurate Zhou Chen's attack was, and she shouted excitedly, Xiao Chou, prepare the strongest output magic, wait for Zhou Chen to kill the boss, and try to snatch a skill from it. Don't give it another chance. Under Mu's arrangement, the magician Xiu Liang silently took the command and began chanting the spell. The staff in her hand began to emit a dazzling light. She was about to use the strongest attack magic she currently possessed. However, as the most powerful attack magic she possessed, it was not easy to cast and required several seconds of chanting. But could Zhou Chen hold on for several seconds? Obviously not, if he was just an ordinary thief player. Xuan Mu had not expected him to survive. In her opinion, it was just a game, and even if he died, he could still revive. Didn't Dong Wan also lie on the ground? As long as they could successfully defeat the boss, dying a few times wouldn't matter. She certainly did not know what being killed meant for Zhou Chen. Although he had not tried it, Zhou Chen had a feeling that if he was killed, he would probably disappear completely. Everyone thought he was going to die in the boss's next counterattack. But no one had expected that the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster would not choose to attack, but instead turned and ran. This was truly unexpected. Zhou Chen could guess that as a wild monster, the leader-level Crimson Rock Monster could not attack him, and at this point, its health was extremely low, so it chose to escape, which was understandable. 
Don't let it escape, be careful, if it runs back, it will reset the battle, Chuan Mu hurriedly shouted. At this moment, Xia Qian had already stomped her feet and charged at the leader level Crimson Rock Monster like a wild bull. However, the double speed Crimson Rock Monster ran too fast, and Xia Qian's shoulder charge missed, hitting only air, causing her to stumble. At this time, the magician Xiaoyan's magic skill was still chanting and could not be released. It seemed that no one could catch up with the leader level Crimson Rock Monster, and they could only wait for it to successfully escape. At this point, Chuan Mu finally completed the resurrection in her hand, and with a faint angelic chant, Dong Wan was successfully resurrected. However, her resurrection did not change anything, and she could not catch up with the leader level Crimson Rock Monster. Almost everyone was in despair. Although the attack magic prepared by Chou Liang was powerful, it had a certain effective range. Once the leader level Crimson Rock Monster ran far away, her skill would only hit air. But Zhou Chan was different. At the moment the leader level Crimson Rock Monster turned and fled, he decisively activated the Scythe Kill skill of the Sovereign Scythe. Even though it switched to the Short Sword form, with only 70% of its attributes, the original Scythe Kill skill of the Sovereign Scythe was not weakened. The LV4 Scythe Kill skill could increase movement speed by 50% when activated. Then, he also entered the Stealth State. The LV10 Stealth skill could increase movement speed by 40%. Scythe Kill combined with Stealth, plus the movement speed bonus from the Thief's passive skill Ghost Step, increased Zhou Chen's overall movement speed by a full double. Just enough to match the doubled movement speed of the leader level Crimson Rock Monster in its enraged state. Just when everyone was anxiously staring, he suddenly appeared behind the leader level Crimson Rock Monster and lightly struck it. Ignore defense. Minus 1380 then, to everyone's shock, the leader level Crimson Rock Monster trembled and turned into a shattered red rock. At the same time, a large MVP appeared above Zhou Chen's head, bursting like fireworks. He received a prompt from the game system, killed the leader level red rock monster, highest damage output, obtained MVP. Damage output exceeds 50%, chance of dropping top tier equipment increased. Obtained red rock bracelet, treasure. There were still some other drops, but compared to the treasure level equipment, they seemed insignificant. At the same time, a message suddenly popped up on the game's announcement channel. Congratulations to player Zhou Chen for killing the leader level red rock monster and obtaining treasure level equipment red rock bracelet treasure. This kind of server-wide announcement was received by all players in the game. Those players who were just watching on the side suddenly changed their gaze. After killing a leader level boss, items wouldn't drop on the ground like when killing small monsters, but would be placed in the backpack based on each person's contribution, so what dropped after killing the boss was often unclear to others. But this time was an exception, the message was even on the game announcement, who wouldn't be clear? Who exactly was this Zhou Chen? He had already been announced to have obtained a treasure level equipment before, and now he obtained another one? Was he a lucky player or the game's favorite? Several members of the West Season Guild were also caught off guard. Xia Chen looked at the players next to her whose gazes were turning unfriendly and shouted in the guild chat channel, Zhou Chen, you should go back to the city first. The allure of a treasure level equipment to players was immeasurable. In any case, it was not wise to still be in a dangerous wilderness area at this time. Although those people next to him were Winter Knight's pursuers, under the temptation of a treasure level equipment, they might just turn over a new leaf and focus on their careers. Winter Knight also agreed, Zhou Chen, you should leave quickly. It's usually fine, but at this time, I'm afraid even I can't stop them. Hearing Xia Qian's and their words, Zhou Chen smiled bitterly in his heart. How could he not want to leave, but the damn game system wouldn't let him. Just at the next moment, the game system issued a new announcement, random event treasure hunter is activated, lasting for one hour. Player Zhou Chen is not allowed to leave the Red Rock Monster respawn area for one hour, Red Rock Bracelet, treasure, is not allowed to be traded for one hour, and the carrier will drop 100% when killed. Player Zhou Chen obtained the temporary title Treasure Hunter, if still holding the Red Rock Bracelet, Treasure, when the event ends, the title Treasure Hunter will become permanent. At this moment, Zhou Chen was extremely angry, he found that the game system seemed to be deliberately targeting him. He had killed the boss and dropped a Treasure level equipment, who had he offended to deserve this treatment. If he were an ordinary player, he would definitely go to complain to the game officials. However, the situation he was in at the moment did not allow him to make that choice. No matter how the game treated him, the only thing he could do at the moment was to get through this crisis and live well. Right now, there were only a few of Winter Knight's pursuers here, but it could be foreseen that countless players would flock here soon. In an hour's time, those players who were too far away might not make it, but nearby players would probably all come over. 
At this moment, Chun Mu suddenly spoke in the Guild Chat channel while looking at Zhou Chen, Xian Chen, should we take advantage of the situation? Chun Mu's words in the Guild channel suddenly startled the not very quick-witted Chiu Liang. She stammered, Chun Mu, this isn't good, after all, we've been working together to fight the boss. TCH. Looking at the clueless autumn chill, the spring dusk was uninspiring. Just kidding, look at his output. He could send us back to the city with one stealthy strike. How could I dare to have any ill intentions towards him? Since the game announcement was made, Zhou Chen instinctively stealthed away from the original location. He was well aware that although he was already a member of the West Season Guild, the level of trust between them was not very high. After fighting the boss together and obtaining a treasure level equipment, he couldn't guarantee that they wouldn't have any thoughts in turn against him. Although he might not be afraid of these few members of the West Season Guild, it was still better to use the stealth skill to hide, so that he could both attack and defend. At this time, he stood far away in stealth, looking at the guild channel and coldly smiled, you do have some self-awareness. On the guild chat channel, Xia Qian ignored this and asked, do you need help? After considering for a moment, Zhou Qin said, there is a favor you can do. You all go back to the city now and collect some, rare, level equipment to mail to me. Xia Qian was somewhat puzzled, but only asked, how much? Zhou Chen replied, the more, the better. At this time, Chun Mu poured cold water on the situation, wait for a large group of players to come and block you, you will be killed immediately. What's the point of putting so much equipment in your backpack, are you giving out benefits? Zhou Chen ignored her and said to Xia Qian, how about this, if I don't die, I will give you this crimson rock bracelet, treasure, as an exchange. You help me purchase 30, rare, level equipment, try not to have duplicates. Xia Qian's emotions did not fluctuate much, she just said, okay. Then she no longer cared about the matter and said to the other approaching people, let's go back to the city. Dong Wan hesitated, really not going to help him? Xia Qian looked at Dong Wan, her gaze falling on the many players on the other side who were eager to act, and said lightly, can you help? Indeed, they couldn't help. These players were Dong Wan's pursuers, and not acting now was only out of consideration for her face, but this kind of consideration wouldn't be very effective. Soon they would inevitably be unable to resist taking action. And with the strength of their guild, trying to help Zhou Qin stop the upcoming large group of players was undoubtedly a futile effort. Xia Qian said again, let's go, he's a thief with stealth skills, he might have a chance. With that, without caring about the others, Xia Qian used the town portal stone. A few seconds later, a beam of light flashed, and Xia Qian disappeared. And Dong Wan, Xiu Liang, and Chun Mu also left one after another. In the entire area, only Dong Wan's pursuers remained. At this time, someone among them finally spoke, all right, Dong Wan has left, which means she tacitly approves of us taking action. Out of consideration for being in the same guild, those few won't act, but we don't have that concern. After finding a reason, these seven or eight players began to scan the west. There was still some time before the arrival of the main force of players, and they happened to have a great opportunity and certainly couldn't let it slip by. We need to find a way to break his stealth, otherwise we won't be able to see him, how can we fight? Upon hearing this, the only physician player smirked triumphantly. He looked at the empty ground and said, I just learned the true sight skill, I can give you all the true sight status. But I've made it clear, if you get the equipment, whether you sell it or whatever, I get one third. At this time, only he possessed this ability, so naturally he set a high price. The other players naturally wouldn't argue with him on the spot, only agreeing repeatedly, hoping he would quickly give them the true sight status. The physician player laughed and said, don't worry, let me give it to myself first. During the conversation, he raised his hand and used the skill of true sight, attaching a status to himself. A faintly glowing circular eyeball floated above his head. The true sight was indeed useful, as soon as he used it, he could already see a semi-transparent figure. The figure was just one meter away from his side. True sight, I am impressed, Zhou Chen coldly smiled coming out of the stealth state and striking the player doctor. Minus 1148 over a thousand points of damage appeared, without a critical hit or triggering defense ignore, but it still took away nearly half of the player doctor's health. He only had 2780 health left. After the visible strike, Zhou Chen did not hesitate to swing his short sword again. Cut. Minus 942 minus 942 defense ignore. Minus 1170 Zhou Chen's attacks were too fast, the player doctor couldn't even use healing on himself. Three attacks, over 3,000 damage, completely emptying the player doctor's health bar, turning him into a soul light point in shock. Successfully killed player Chen Yunandu, experience plus 135, current experience 10, 200 12, 000. 
Previously, when he killed the leader-level Red Rock Monster, he also gained a considerable amount of experience based on his output contribution, but in the disguised state, he could only convert 50%, ultimately only gaining 190 points. After working so hard, the final result was not much different from killing a player in one strike. At this moment, while Zhou Chen complained about the low experience, the other players around the player doctor finally reacted and attacked Zhou Chen. However, Zhou Chen, who had taken down the player doctor by surprise, couldn't be bothered to waste time with them. He used the stealth skill again and entered the invisible state. With his current speed, he easily evaded the attacks of those players by simply stepping back. Then, Zhou Chen hid nearby, waiting for the cut skill to cool down, while carefully considering his next move. Although he felt very frustrated about the treasure hunter event, he couldn't deny that it had its benefits. Looking at the specific information of the title, Treasure Hunter, he couldn't help but feel tempted. Treasure Hunter, title, wearing this title increases all attributes by 5%, and the drop rate of, treasure, and lower level equipment by 5%. Such attributes were undeniably powerful. Zhou Chen made up his mind to turn this temporary title into a permanent one. Since the situation had already turned out like this, he couldn't escape from it and could only try to obtain as many benefits as possible. He hoped that after Xia Qian returned to the city, she would quickly send him a considerable amount of rare level equipment. That way, he could extract the attributes as much as possible, enhance the Reaper of the Sovereign, and strengthen his own power. Strengthening his power would enable him to better support himself in this treasure hunter event. He had previously tried to extract the attributes of the Red Rock Bracelet, Treasure, but unfortunately, the system prompted that this operation was prohibited during the event. Otherwise, if he had extracted it, he would have seen who else would come to snatch it. Now, let's see how much these remaining players weigh. Before the arrival of the main force of players, could he take care of these few guys? After killing the player doctor who possessed the true sight skill, Zhou Chen was actually in an invincible position at this moment. At least, for him, the remaining players were no longer a threat before the arrival of the new player doctors. If he could leave this area, Zhou Chen could now completely leave in stealth. Unfortunately, due to the treasure hunter event in the game, he was restricted to this area and could not leave for an hour. It was foreseeable that a large number of players would arrive soon, and his invisibility might not be a reliable defense. The remaining players might be contacting acquaintances at this moment, seeking a way to reveal his invisibility. From any perspective, waiting quietly was not the right thing to do at the moment. What he should do now is to bravely move forward and take out these players. Regardless of whether Xia Qian could collect enough rare level equipment in time, there was still a way to enhance his strength. That was to level up. With just one more level, his enhanced attributes would make him much more capable. Without hesitation, Zhou Chen waited a few seconds, and when the cut skill cooled down again, he reached out to touch a player. At this moment, the few players had also gathered together, protecting two fragile mage players in the middle. The four warrior players were back to back in a group, facing outward, while the two mage players stood inside the circle they formed, their eyes alertly scanning the surroundings. Although they couldn't see Zhou Chen in his invisible state, being on guard like this meant that if Zhou Chen were to attack them, he would undoubtedly face great risks. With the four warrior players surrounding him, Zhou Chen couldn't get through, and to attack the mages in the middle, he would first have to kill the outer warrior players. Otherwise, with the short attack range of his dagger, he wouldn't be able to reach the mages in the middle. When Zhou Chen showed himself to attack, the outer warrior players would be able to hold out for a while, preventing him from being instantly killed. At that moment, the two mages in the center could immediately launch an attack on Zhou Chen, and at the same time, a thief player who had also entered that ambush invisible state could take the opportunity to launch a surprise attack on Zhou Chen's back. It had to be said that these players were indeed experienced in the game and knew well how to deal with the thief profession. Zhou Chen, in his invisible state, looked at them gathered in a group and shook his head inwardly. Their actions did indeed pose some trouble for Zhou Chen, who was currently disguised as a thief. After switching the sovereign's sickle to its dagger form, the attack range also became that of a dagger, only able to attack targets at close range. If he only used the dagger to attack, he indeed had no way to bypass the outer circle of warrior players and attack the mages in the middle. But did he only have a dagger? These players were not entirely wrong in their assumptions, but their understanding of him was still far from enough. Zhou Chen's mouth curved into a slight smile, and the dagger in his hand suddenly transformed. He used the sickle transformation skill, reverting it back to its original form as the sovereign sickle. The dagger in his hand disappeared, replaced by a huge black sickle that appeared in the air once again. The sovereign sickle returned to its full strength. When in its dagger form, the sovereign sickle could only have 70% of its attribute strength, but after reverting to its original form, 
100% of its attributes were restored. At this moment, Zhou Qin looked at his own attribute panel and found that his physical attack power had already exceeded a thousand. At level 22, he had 260 points of attack, and then the 39 points of strength he had added provided him with an additional 117 points of attack. Without counting the equipment, he already had 377 points of attack. And how could such a powerful, treasure, level equipment like the Sovereign Sickle not be counted? With the Sovereign Sickle's 696 points of attack, his physical attack power reached a terrifying 1073 points. Then, the temporary treasure hunter title he was wearing increased it by 5%, bringing his attack power to 1126 points. With such formidable attack power, Zhou Chen immediately chose to take the initiative. Ignore defense. Minus 1126 ignore defense. Minus 1126 critical hit. Minus 1988. The visible strike of the ambush skill was displayed, but there were a total of 6 damage numbers that popped up. Including the two mages surrounded in the middle, along with the four warriors on the periphery, these six players formed a group and were all simultaneously attacked by Zhou Chen's visible strike. That ambush skill has a high critical hit rate and defense ignore rate, and combined with the effects of the sovereign side, each of the six damage numbers triggered significant effects. With just one attack, all six players lost health, especially the two mages in the middle, whose health bars dropped by more than half in an instant. They had thought that by forming a group, they could protect the mages in the middle, but they never expected that Zhou Chen's Sovereign Scythe, in its original form, could perform area attacks. The six players, densely packed together, were all within the attack range of the Sovereign Scythe, allowing Zhou Chen to hit six people with one skill, making it very cost-effective. However, almost instinctively, the first reaction of these players was not to use healing potions, but to launch an attack on Zhou Chen as previously agreed. Minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 2 warrior players facing Zhou Chen both use double strike, swinging their broadswords at Zhou Chen. As a classic attack skill for warriors, the two warrior players' choices were identical. However, the result almost drove them crazy. They blinked, somewhat incredulous. Among all the professions, the output ability of warrior players was not considered outstanding, but as level 27 warrior players with their equipment, their physical attack power had already reached 300 points. In a sense, such attack power was not to be underestimated. Moreover, the double strike skill also had a percentage damage bonus, which should have posed a significant threat to a thief player. But now, what was this? A mandatory minus one health deduction? Was the person in front of them really a thief, and not a shield-bearing warrior who had invested heavily in vitality? Even if it were a shield-bearing warrior specializing in vitality, shouldn't they have been able to break through the defense with their double strike? These two warrior players began to doubt their lives. At the same time, the air in front of them rippled, and a figure appeared in the air. It was the thief player who had been lying in ambush. Almost instinctively, he launched a surprise attack on Zhou Chen. The visible strike of the ambush skill hit Zhou Chen. Seeing the ambush from the thief, the two warrior players, who were already doubting their own output, breathed a sigh of relief. Their warrior output might not be strong, but the thief profession was different. The output of the thief profession was naturally much stronger than that of the warrior profession. When the thief player appeared, several warrior players widened their eyes, wanting to see how much damage his visible strike would cause to Zhou Chen. Minus 420 with one strike, a damage number popped up above Zhou Chen's head. Indeed, the thief profession was different. The attack power of this thief player was much stronger than that of the warrior players, reaching nearly 400 points, and the level 10 ambush skill itself came with an additional 480 points of damage. With such damage, hitting Zhou Chen would certainly not be like the situation with those warrior players, where even the defense couldn't be broken. Taking into account the bonuses from the Sovereign Scythe and the Treasure Hunter title, Zhou Chen's physical defense had already reached 452 points. Faced with the quite decent attack power of the ambush skill, he still did not suffer too much damage. After the minus 420 damage number popped up, the opponents saw Zhou Chen's health bar drop only slightly. If they didn't look closely, they might not even notice. Is he really a thief? Players couldn't help but wonder a damage value of 420 may not be considered high, but when it hits a rogue player, it can't be dismissed as insignificant. Zhou Chen, a rogue of this level, should have a maximum of just over 2,000 points of health. Being hit for 420 points, his health bar should have dropped significantly. However, in their eyes, Zhou Chen's health bar only dropped a little, almost as if there was no change. They naturally didn't know that Zhou Chen's current health far exceeded their imagination. As a level 22 rogue, his base health is 1,600 points, plus the additional health of the Sovereign Scythe, plus 2,880, 
his health is already at 4,480 points. And that's not all, the LV6 puppetry disguise can add 10% of the original body's attributes to his disguise. Zhou Chen's original body, the secret puppet spirit, currently has 5,000 points of health, and the additional 10% is 500 points. With the 5% bonus from the title, Treasure Hunter, his current health has reached 5,229 points. It's not much less than a level 28 warrior who specializes in stamina. In addition to the rogue sneak attack, two mages in the group are also chanting spells, apparently intending to use magic skills to attack Zhou Chen. Zhou Chen's physical defense is indeed very good, but his magic defense is lacking. He didn't just stand there waiting for the mages to finish chanting spells. After realizing that their physical attacks couldn't pose much of a threat to him, he immediately thought of retreating while invisible. With the Sovereign Scythe in hand, Zhou Chen immediately used the cut skill, which should have been used with a short sword. 1224 ignores defense. 1463 1224. Three consecutive attacks hit this group of players. The area attack of the Sovereign Scythe struck each player in front of him three times, including the rogue who had just appeared. Suddenly, several flashes of white light appeared in front of Zhou Chen. The two mages in the inner circle were still chanting magic spells, but at this point, they were the first to turn into white light. They didn't even last until the third attack. After they turned into white light, three of the warriors on the periphery also had their health bars emptied and turned into white light. As for the rogue who had just appeared next to Zhou Chen, he was still at full health, but under Zhou Chen's cut attack, he couldn't hold on and decisively turned into white light. With just one skill, seven players were reduced to one. Successfully killed player heartless battle experience plus 135. The prompt sounded in unison. The relatively lucky warrior still had a sliver of health and looked at Zhou Chen in astonishment. His mouth hung open, almost unable to close. What? What did you do? Killing six players in an instant, three of whom were heavily armored warriors, was difficult for him to accept. Looking at this player who was already shocked and somewhat numb, Zhou Chen felt a bit pleased. He smiled slightly and said, I just sent them back to the city, don't worry, I won't play favorites. With that, he lightly swung the Sovereign Scythe in his hand, delivering a normal attack. The already injured warrior didn't even grunt and immediately turned into a soul light. Another 135 experience points were added. His current experience points were 11145-12000. He was very close to leveling up, with only 855 experience points left. If he could kill a few more players who were alone, he should be able to level up successfully. Having just killed 7 players in one go, Zhou Chen now had quite a bit of confidence in his current strength. For him now, as long as it's not a player who has reached level 29 and changed to a new set of equipment, the other 3 or 5 players in front of him are already equivalent to being alone. He can easily take on the opponents by himself. At this time, the majority of players have not arrived yet. Zhou Chen took a moment to look at the mail system. However, the mail system was still quiet, with no new messages coming in. It seems that although Xia Qian has returned to the city, collecting rare level equipment may not be as simple as it seems. Or perhaps, she never intended to collect rare level equipment for herself? Although it is said that one knows others' faces but not their hearts, based on Zhou Chen's shallow understanding of Xia Qian during this period, she should not be that kind of person. Zhou Chen sighed softly and didn't dwell on it, just walked to where the few players had been killed and picked up the dropped equipment. He had just killed seven players and dropped several pieces of equipment. Normally, killing three players might not even drop one piece of equipment, but this time killing seven players dropped several pieces, which was considered very lucky. Oh, if we include the physician player who was killed at the beginning, it should be eight players killed and several pieces of equipment dropped. It's like dropping one piece of equipment for every two players killed. Thinking about it, it seems that the drop rate of equipment has indeed increased a lot. Could it be that the title treasure hunter he wears has had an effect? This title has the attribute of increasing the drop rate of equipment below the treasure level by 5%. For Zhou Chen at the moment, it seems to be quite practical. Whether it is or not, Zhou Chen couldn't tell. After all, luck is something that can't be seen or touched. He didn't dwell on it and instead chose to extract the attributes of the equipment while waiting for the arrival of the majority of players. The attributes of the Reaper's Sickle were once again improved. Watching the figures gradually appearing in the distance, Zhou Chen narrowed his eyes. Let the storm come more violently, he didn't believe that with his current strength, he couldn't overcome this obstacle. Although he had quite a bit of confidence in his current strength, Zhou Chen certainly wouldn't stand there foolishly waiting to be attacked. He still used the stealth skill to hide and wait for an opportunity. The duration of the current stealth skill is 20 seconds, while the cooldown time is only 15 seconds, which means it can be used continuously. With Zhou Chen's current mana points, 
the consumption of the stealth skill was negligible to him. With the automatic mana recovery speed, he could fully support the use of stealth. After disguising himself as a player, Zhou Chen had also thought about preparing some player recovery potions to put in his backpack to improve his endurance. However, in the end, he found that when he wanted to use the recovery potion, the game system prompted him with an unknown error, and the potion could not be used. So Zhou Chen's wish to heal by taking medicine was dashed. Perhaps, this was the pitiful fate of being a monster. Thinking about this and that, most of the players who had been summoned by the game announcement had already entered this area. Although this area was not small, with so many players running in, there was almost no quiet place left. Some players were puzzled. Didn't they say that Zhou Chen is not allowed to leave this area? Where is he? Hey, you don't know. I heard that Zhou Chen is a thief. He probably hasn't left at this time. He's just hiding on the side. It has to be said that this person was right. Ah, if he's hiding, then we'll have to wait for the physicians to use true sight. Zhou Chen was planning to move forward and launch a surprise attack, but suddenly saw a large group of people rushing over, and someone shouted loudly, the Divine War Guild's people are here. Many players exclaimed, and Zhou Chen was also startled. He also knew about the game's leaderboard and knew that the God of War Guild was one of the top three guilds in the game. It was said that the God of War Guild had very strict recruitment criteria, and every member who wanted to join had to reach the current maximum level of the game. In other words, every member of this God of War Guild was a level 29 player. Level 29 might seem only one level higher than level 28, but Zhou Chen understood that there was a big difference. Because, after reaching level 25, at level 29, players could equip a new set of gear. Moreover, the attributes of this level 29 gear were much stronger than the level 25 gear. Before players reached level 30 and completed their second job change, the level 29 gear could be considered the strongest. Of course, Zhou Chen's treasure level gear was not included. This was a difference in the quality hierarchy of equipment, and the comparability was not the same. Players at level 28 and below, with Zhou Chen's current attribute strength, might be easy to deal with, but level 29 players were different. Honestly, Zhou Chen had never truly faced a level 29 player and didn't know if he would still have an advantage when facing a level 29 player. When the members of the God of War guild arrived, their actions were beyond the expectations of many players. They didn't join the queue to search for Zhou Chen like other players did, but instead stood there, and someone immediately spoke up, today's event, our God of War guild has taken over. Other miscellaneous players, leave quickly. This statement exploded in the regional channel, and the player community in the entire Red Rock Monster area was stirred up. Many players' faces changed, and emotions surged for a moment. Some players couldn't help but mock, your God of War guild is so arrogant. We know you are one of the top three guilds, but we might think you are the invincible number one guild in the world. That's right, what's so great about your God of War guild? Are we not allowed to try our luck and get, treasure, gear? With so many of us here, are you afraid of a single God of War guild? Each of us spitting could drown your God of War guild. Heh, it's just that the other two big guilds happen to have no one nearby. Otherwise, would the God of War guild be so arrogant? Zhou Chen, who was hiding, found it quite interesting to watch the commotion. He suddenly realized that the God of War guild seemed to have angered the public. This was something he hadn't expected. However, although this kind of incident had stirred up many players' anger, Zhou Chen was pleased to see it. He had originally planned to show up and ambush a few people, but immediately suppressed that idea. At this moment, the conflict was between the God of War guild and other players, and he absolutely could not show himself. Otherwise, if he appeared first, he would immediately attract the attention of many players, and the conflict between the God of War guild and other players might be resolved. The Red Rock Monster area was not large, and having too many players did not benefit Zhou Chen. Since there was a conflict between the God of War guild and other players, it was fine for him to wait a bit. After all, the game system limited his time in this area to one hour, and some time had already passed. The more other players delayed, the more he liked it. It would be best if they argued until the hour was up, and then he could quietly disappear while invisible. Zhou Chen was very clear in his mind. Although he needed to hunt players to gain experience points, it was not necessary to do so in this situation. Being surrounded by a bunch of people and risking his life for a bit of experience, Zhou Chen preferred to choose the latter, to quietly and safely gain experience. The members of the God of War guild did not disappoint him, as they immediately caused a commotion. But seeing the man from the God of War guild sneered, and then said, if you want to say that we are the invincible number one guild in the world, it's not wrong. In the upcoming first guild battle, watch closely, our God of War guild will definitely defeat all the guilds and stand at the top position. His tone changed, and he continued, but today, the presence of our God of War guild here represents the favor of the heavens. 
Those of you who know your place, stand aside obediently. Those who don't, we will fight until you do. Perhaps the man from the God of War Guild spoke too arrogantly, as many players in the Red Rock Monster area felt offended and surrounded the members of the God of War Guild. Although the God of War Guild was powerful, there were only a few of them present, so what was there to fear? Seeing the numerous players surrounding them, the man from the God of War Guild sneered, and a palm-sized golden token appeared in his hand. Then, with a gentle shake of the token, it emitted a dazzling light and disappeared into the air. Subsequently, a large number of players were teleported to the scene, appearing beside him. A player exclaimed, it's the guild summoning token. One of these tokens can exchange for several sets of the most expensive, rare, level equipment. He's really generous. All the players, taken aback by the sudden appearance of numerous members of the God of War Guild, hesitated. However, once the arrow is drawn, it must be released. If this united front is interrupted, then the players present, although many, will become a disorganized group and will no longer be able to cooperate to launch an attack against the members of the God of War Guild. Among the numerous players, there were also those who were wise. They hid within the ranks of the players and shouted loudly, What are we afraid of? Our numbers are ten times theirs. It must be said that the person who shouted had a very clear mind. The players once again gathered their courage and continued to charge towards the members of the God of War Guild. Among them, the warrior players charged at the forefront, with other players following closely behind. As for the group of magicians, they had already begun chanting spells, preparing to unleash magic skills to indiscriminately attack the members of the God of War Guild. It must be said that facing such an attack, a normal player group would probably be powerless to fight back. However, the ones facing this attack were the God of War Guild. Most of the members of the God of War Guild just stood there with a contemptuous look on their faces, without any intention of making a move. However, within their ranks, several magician players raised their magic staffs. Looking over, Zhou Chen saw that the magic staffs of the magician players were shining brightly, and the light converged towards the center. In the center of the light, a fiery red scroll floated. In just a moment, the scroll at the center of the light burst into infinite flames, instantly turning into ashes. At the same time, a surging wave of flames rushed into the air. In the blink of an eye, the charging players had only just rushed a few meters. The surging wave of flames exploded in the air, and an endless rain of flames descended like meteors from the sky. The flame meteor shower seemed to be able to discern its targets, only striking towards the outer circle. The numerous members of the God of War Guild, who were within the inner circle, did not receive any attacks. The players, numbering more than ten times the members of the God of War Guild, were all covered by the flame meteor shower and turned into white light under its attack. It's a magic scroll, at least a lesser forbidden curse level magic scroll. Such a magic scroll may not be valued below, treasure, level equipment. They are crazy. A knowledgeable player shouted, but ultimately turned into a soul light under the attack of the flame meteor shower. The flame meteor shower covers a wide area, and even if they flee to the west, they still cannot escape. In the blink of an eye, the two to three hundred players rushing over were almost wiped out by the raging flame meteor shower. Apart from the members of the Divine War Guild, only five warrior players with decent health and magic defense were left at the scene. In the chaos, Zhou Chen, who had used the stealth skill again, had already secretly hidden near the members of the Divine War Guild. The flame meteor shower just hit him, causing him a minus 343 magic damage, which startled him. Fortunately, he was not far from the members of the Divine War Guild, and his quick reaction allowed him to rush into the area of the Divine War Guild, avoiding the subsequent attacks of the flame meteor shower. This wide-range attack magic scroll is indeed quite terrifying. In the Divine War Guild, a person laughed, to withstand a meteor fire rain, you guys are not bad, but it ends here. With a wave of his hand, several archer players quickly shot arrows, swiftly harvesting the remaining few warrior players. Although these warrior players had decent defense, they had already reached the bottom of their health after enduring the impact of the meteor fire rain and could not withstand the attacks of these archer players. Thus, all the other players in the red rock monster area were cleared out by the divine war guild. Two to three hundred players attacked more than twenty members of the divine war guild, but they were completely defeated without even touching their opponents. The Divine War Guild effortlessly dealt with enemies ten times their number. The person from the Divine War Guild coldly spoke on the game channel, I said that my Divine War Guild will take over, and it will definitely take over. If this time did not wake you up, welcome to try again. Although the equipment you dropped is poor, it can still be used to train our reserve branch. Zhou Chen, who was hiding nearby, felt troubled. The strength of the Divine War Guild was far beyond his expectations. He had easily dealt with some level 26 to 27 players before, but these organized level 29 players were completely different. 
He could tell that the attributes of these Divine War Guild players were impressive, and their two rounds of attacks just now were executed with strict discipline. Large guilds are indeed formidable. While Zhou Chen was contemplating, the person from the Divine War Guild turned to the Western Mage player who had just activated the scroll and asked, How was it? Did you happen to kill Zhou Chen? The mage frowned and shook his head slightly, there were too many kill notifications, I couldn't keep up, but it seems not. If he had been killed, especially with, treasure, level equipment, it would have been prominently announced. The inquirer nodded and said, alright, Peanut, find him. The person referred to as Peanut was a level 29 physician player. In a state of invisibility, the physician player's true sight skill could reveal invisible opponents. The physician player raised his hand and began to apply the true sight status to himself. Zhou Chen looked at the opponent's position and ultimately gave up the plan to attack him. The physician player was surrounded by more than 20 members of the Divine War Guild, and even with the attack range of the Lord Sickle, it was impossible to reach him. And these members of the Divine War Guild are all level 29, each with powerful attributes. If he were to be surrounded, it would be difficult for him to escape. At this point, it is not appropriate to think about sneaking and slowly attacking. When the physician on the opposite side just added the true sight status, Zhou Chen ignored it and stealthily attacked the nearest player. At the same time, a semi-transparent figure appeared in the eyes of the physician player. Flowing water, he's next to you, at the same time as the words were spoken, Zhou Chen appeared and launched an attack on the player named Flowing Water. This player, named Flowing Water, is a warrior. As a warrior, his health and defense are not much lower compared to the warrior profession, so the warrior is also considered a frontline profession. With his level 29 attributes, he is confident that even if the opponent has treasure level equipment, it is impossible to kill him in a short time. Therefore, when the physician player reminded him, he did not retreat, but instead used a furious fist charge to attack. He knew very well that taking an attack was nothing, as long as he could delay the opponent slightly, the guild member's support would arrive immediately. As a guild that has cooperated in strategizing against many bosses and monsters, the coordination among the members of the Divine War Guild is quite tacit. Zhou Chen does not understand the thoughts of the other party, but his own thoughts are simple, one by one, try to use all his strength to kill the opponent. Apart from this, he has no other choice. He does not know if the opponent still has magic scrolls like Meteor Shower, but he dare not gamble. All he can do is try to blend in with the Divine War Guild members and make it difficult for the opponent to use such large-scale attack magic scrolls. Ignore Defense Minus 1635 This first attack triggered the Ignore Defense effect but it was not a critical hit. Nevertheless, it still caused minus 1635 damage to the opponent. Even if the warrior profession at level 29 has put on a new set of equipment, his health is only a little over 4000 points. Zhou Chen's attack still took away nearly half of his health. The warrior player was surprised, but only drank a bottle of health potion and shouted, it hurts, get him quickly. His furious fist charge clearly missed, as Zhou Chen was not in front of him, but appeared to his left. The opponent's physician was not alone, another physician player was ready to use healing on the warrior player. However, Zhou Chen has hunted players many times and has a good sense of using thief skills. He quickly used cut after the visible attack, minimizing the pause, and immediately used the cut skill. At his level, the thief only has the cut attack skill left besides stealth. Although there are few attack skills, the thought process for using them is very clear, and there is no difficulty in choosing. Plus 1050, the opponent's physician player also had good operational awareness and managed to restore most of the warrior player's health just before Zhou Chen's attack landed. At this moment, the warrior player's health had recovered to about 3,500 points, which was quite sufficient. In their view, the warrior player should be able to withstand the opponent's attack for a while longer without any problems. Ignore defense. Minus 1501 minus 1196 critical hit. Minus 2697, however, just as they had this thought, Zhou Chen's cut skill had already landed three attacks. Zhou Chen, who was lucky, triggered a bypass defense and a critical hit, and immediately dealt explosive damage on the first hit, emptying the opponent's health bar in an instant. Watching the fighter player turn into a white light in an instant, all the members of the Divine War Guild were shocked. Gone in an instant? Although the burst of the thief profession is indeed high, but is the treasure level equipment so terrifying? This is too terrifying. Minus 354, minus 333, everything happened in just two seconds. Other players were far from being able to attack Zhou Chen. Only two archers reacted quickly and shot an arrow at Zhou Chen. Zhou Chen endured two arrow strikes from the opposing archers, but successfully entered the stealth state again. Losing the target, the two archers stopped their attacks, marveling, this guy's defense is so high. 
With our attack power, we only caused over 300 points of damage. Thieves cannot have such defense. It must be the credit of that, treasure, level equipment. Not just one, it should be two. Don't forget, there was a game system announcement earlier that he has another, treasure, level equipment. This guy is amazing. Others can't even see one, but he has two. Is he a reincarnation of the Lucky King? Jochen just stood not far away, not daring to act rashly. Previously killing the level 29 fighter provided him with 145 experience points, and now his experience points had reached 11290-12000, getting closer to leveling up. At this time, although other players still couldn't see him temporarily, the physician player with the true sight status was staring at him. Any slight movement from him would be anticipated by the opponent. What are you guys thinking? Hurry up and use true sight on us. After one person was killed, other guild members became restless. The physician player smiled and said, don't worry, I'm watching. It's too troublesome to use true sight on each one. I have a good scroll, let's use it. Anyway, our guild is not short of money. Zhou Chen frowned as the physician player took out a scroll and waved his hand, turning the scroll into ashes. A faint fire floated towards Zhou Chen, hanging above his head. The physician player said with a smile, see, this fire of the mind scroll is more useful, saving me from using true sight on each one. Zhou Chen didn't understand the other's meaning for a moment but he noticed that the other members of the Divine War Guild were turning their gaze towards him. Seeing their expressions, Zhou Chen realized, they clearly saw him, his invisibility had failed. This was big trouble. The archers of the Divine War Guild began to draw their bows and aim at Zhou Chen. The mage among them also raised his staff. A big battle seemed inevitable. At this moment, the person who had spoken earlier raised his hand and said, wait a minute. The other members of the Divine War Guild stopped in unison. Zhou Chen couldn't figure out their intentions for a moment and also stared at the person, on high alert. He could tell that this person had great prestige in the Divine War Guild, perhaps even the guild leader. The person smiled lightly, looked at Zhou Chen not far away, and said, Friend, I see that your strength is good. Why not just join our Divine War Guild? It saves us from fighting each other. Join your Divine War Guild? Zhou Chen was stunned. One second ago, it felt like a fight to the death, and the next second, he was invited to join the guild? This guy's thinking is quite unique. The person nodded and said, Yes, although your level is not up to standard, your strength is good. I can make an exception and let you join our guild. Zhou Chen laughed and looked at the person, Are you serious? Facing Zhou Chen's inquiry, the person from the Divine War Guild nodded and said, That's right. He then looked at Zhou Chen and smiled slightly, But I have a small condition, which is that you contribute the Crimson Rock Bracelet, Treasure, as the reward for our guild's internal guild battle. Zhou Chen's expression gradually turned cold and said, You want me to contribute a, treasure, level equipment? Are you out of your mind? The person nodded naturally and said, What's the problem? I think I'm already very tolerant. Anyway, you have two pieces, contribute one, and there's still one left. Otherwise, if we really fight, I can still kill you and maybe even drop two pieces. Looking at the self-satisfied opponent, Zhou Chen laughed heartily, Alright, if you have the ability, come and take it. The person from the Divine War Guild frowned slightly and said, So there's no room for negotiation? Before he could finish his sentence, Zhou Chen, who had no intention of negotiating, had already rushed forward. Although he was still in a stealth state, he was already under the effect of mind fire, and his invisibility effect had disappeared. Of course, the acceleration effect of the stealth skill and the special effect of appearing were still present. Zhou Chen quickly approached the person from the Divine War Guild, already determined to confront them head on. The person who had spoken for the Divine War Guild earlier coldly smiled, waved his hand with one hand, and many guild members behind him launched an attack. The first to attack, of course, were the archer players. Like the mages, they were long-range attack professions, but unlike mages, they did not need to chant spells, so their attack speed was very fast. In the blink of an eye, several arrows had already reached Zhou Chen. Zhou Chen's eyes were filled with the shadows of the flying arrows, and suddenly he had a strange idea. He suddenly remembered Xia Qian's operating skills from before. If it were Xia Qian facing this scene, how would she respond? He could see that although Xia Qian was the top fighter, her level was only 27, and her attribute panel had not reached the limit of the fighter profession. She could have extraordinary strength, completely not inferior to higher level players, relying entirely on her superb operating skills. Compared to Xia Qian, who had surpassed him in every aspect, could he also do the same when facing the arrow attacks? Thinking and doing, facing the flying arrows, Zhou Chen's expression tightened, and he suddenly kicked his foot, as if he had been hit by a giant stone, abruptly rushing to the right. This operation was too big, and Zhou Chen suddenly lost his footing, almost falling. Although the action was stiff and had a huge flaw, 
it had to be said that his whimsical operation actually allowed him to dodge the incoming arrows. The several arrows flew past him, although they brought a violent sound of wind, they ultimately missed, causing no harm to Zhou Chen. With such results, Zhou Chen couldn't help but feel overjoyed. On the side of the Divine War Guild, whether it was the archer players who had shot the arrows or other members, they were all somewhat stunned. Honestly, before this, they had never seen anyone who could dodge arrows with operating skills. Or rather, they had never thought that arrows could be dodged with operating skills. For almost all players in the game, they were used to constantly stacking high attribute panels, relying on stronger health and defense to withstand damage, and using higher attack to output damage. This set of skills that Zhou Chen learned from Xia Qian seemed to have opened a new world in front of them all at once. Zhou Chen's sudden idea did startle them, but it was just a small episode. At the same time, the warrior players had already gathered around, and in the rear of the team, the magic in the hands of the mage had already begun to shimmer. It seemed that in the next moment, Zhou Chen would be covered by a dense attack. At this time, Zhou Chen had already faced the frontline warrior players of the God of War Guild. The distance between everyone was only two or three meters. Regardless, Zhou Chen raised the sovereign sickle in his hand and launched a visible strike. Minus 1235, minus 1221, minus 1197, minus 1221 this time. Zhou Chen's luck was not as good as before. The visible strike hit the western player in front of him, but none of the attacks triggered any special effects. The western warrior player in front of him had over 5000 health points, and Zhou Chen's attack only caused a little over 1000 damage, which was not a significant threat to these warrior players. However, he had no other choice at this moment, and he swung the sovereign sickle, using the cut skill. Ignore defense. Minus 1501 minus 1078 minus 1078. The cut skill was decent, as one of the attacks triggered the ignore defense effect. This skill caused over 3000 damage to the western warrior player in front of him, leaving only a small portion of their health bar. Zhou Chen sighed, feeling a bit regretful. It had to be said that the combination of ambush and cut skills was his strongest burst at the moment. If these two skills combined couldn't take down the opponent, he would be in trouble. Be careful, his attack is very high, and his weapon can also perform area attacks. Try to spread out. Someone from the God of War Guild shouted, and before this, some of the attacks from the God of War Guild had already landed on Zhou Chen. Minus 264, minus 264, minus 248, minus 248, minus 352, minus 333. The attacks from the warrior players, along with the archer players, reached Zhou Chen first. Due to the ongoing attack, Zhou Chen couldn't evade these attacks at the same time. In just a moment, Zhou Chen's health bar dropped rapidly, almost half of his over 5,000 health points were gone. Zhou Chen was shocked, his face turning pale. He couldn't believe that his health had dropped so much from just one encounter. At this rate, if the opponent attacked a few more times, he would be in big trouble. The western warrior player in front of him had already been reduced to a small portion of their health bar by his attacks, but the opponent's physician player reacted very quickly and with the warrior players taking healing potions, their health bar had already recovered to about half. With the opponent's numbers and support from archers and mages, he couldn't outlast them. Perhaps, in a few more seconds, he would be defeated. But at this point, Zhou Chen had no way out. Even if he turned and ran, with fire of the soul attached to him, he couldn't escape the sight of the opposing group. Forced into this situation, Zhou Chen gritted his teeth and swung the sovereign sickle in his hand, continuing to attack the western warrior player in front of him. Combo. Ignore defense. Sickle absorption. Minus 1154 plus 577 minus 1154 plus 577. With just a normal attack, he triggered the sovereign sickles combo and ignore defense effects. In addition, the passive skill, sickle absorption, also successfully triggered. The sovereign sickle was an area attack, and this normal attack hit the western warrior player, along with the sickle absorption effect. Zhou Chen's health bar jumped, suddenly restoring to full health. No matter whether it was the few warrior players standing in front of Zhou Chen, or the archers and mages launching attacks from the rear, they were all a bit confused for a moment. They clearly remembered that just a moment ago, Zhou Chen's health bar had been reduced by half, so how did the opponent's health suddenly return to full in the blink of an eye? Even if they chugged down several bottles of special healing potions at the same time, it wouldn't be possible to recover so quickly. Moreover, Zhou Chen was clearly a thief class and couldn't use special healing potions. They were full of doubts, but at this moment, Zhou Chen was pleasantly surprised, feeling a weight lifted off his shoulders. Although the Reaper's Scythe had a passive skill called Scythe Absorption, he had hardly used it before and almost forgot about its existence. 
Because in previous battles, he rarely had his health drop so much. At this moment, the scythe absorption skill attached to the Reaper's scythe had reached LV3. When using the Reaper's scythe to attack, there was a 15% chance of absorbing 50% of the damage's health. A 15% chance couldn't be considered high, but it wasn't low either, especially in the case of the Reaper's scythe's area of effect attack. Once triggered successfully, it wasn't just a one-time recovery. While replenishing his own health, the chain attack effect triggered by the Reaper's scythe in his hand also quickly brought the few warrior players in front of him back to low health. Although the Divine War Guild had many physicians, they had just used healing arts on these few people and needed some time before they could use it again. Zhou Chen's expression was solemn as he continued to wield the Reaper's scythe in his hand. Minus 475, minus 467, minus 486, minus 475, with a single normal attack, he struck the Western Warrior player, neither triggering defense penetration nor a critical hit. The Western Warrior player had extremely high defense, and at this moment, with low health, the additional defense from the passive skill endurance was even more astonishing. Even with only a few hundred points of health left, Zhou Chen still couldn't finish them off in one go. The health bars of the Western Warrior players were flashing, as if they would turn into soul lights with just a gentle touch. They didn't want to continue the fight, so they retreated, making way for Zhou Chen. In order to cover their retreat, other members of the Divine War Guild launched attacks on Zhou Chen, trying to stop him. At this moment, the thief player from the Divine War Guild appeared in front of Zhou Chen and struck at him. In an instant, Zhou Chen's health was reduced by almost half again. The health bar that had just been filled by the scythe absorption skill immediately dropped once more. It was as if the health bar was fake. Zhou Chen was very angry and also felt a tremor. It was like an electric current running through his body. Zhou Chen was very clear that if he didn't recover his lost health for two seconds, he would be killed by the massive attacks from the Divine War Guild. At this moment, the Reaper's execution was finally fully charged. Without any hesitation, Zhou Chen immediately activated the Reaper's execution skill, taking advantage of the acceleration effect of the stealth skill, and bypassed the thief player in front of him, chasing after the Western Warrior player. He was very clear that perhaps in just one second, the healing arts of the physician players from the Divine War Guild would cool down again. By then, the few warrior players who had been painstakingly reduced to low health would probably become lively again. This was something he couldn't tolerate. With these tough warrior players around, no matter what he did, he would be restrained and couldn't unleash his full potential. With the Reaper's execution skill combined with the stealth skill, Zhou Chen's movement speed doubled. With this doubled movement speed, the players surrounding him couldn't keep up with his pace. He bypassed them and chased after the Western Warrior player. In the blink of an eye, Zhou Chen had already caught up to the back of the Western Warrior player. The two-meter-long sickle stretched out, and Zhou Chen's head swung down to chop. It has to be said that the LV4 sickle kill skill is very powerful, giving Zhou Chen a 160% attack speed bonus with the first hit. With this attack speed bonus, the sovereign sickle in Zhou Chen's hand danced quickly, completing two swings in an instant. The damage numbers jumped up, and the Western Warrior player finally couldn't escape, becoming the first soul under the sickle. After attacking twice, Zhou Chen was hit by the God of War Guild's attack again, and his health bar dropped again, leaving only one third. It seemed that with another round of attacks, he would fall. Zhou Chen quickly calculated in his mind. Killing this Western Warrior player would provide him with a total of 580 experience points. Although two pieces of equipment dropped, at this moment, he had no time to spare to pick them up while racing against death. At this moment, his experience points had reached 11870-12000. Only 130 experience points were left to level up, just needing to kill one more player. Zhou Chen knew he had no time to waste, and he once again used the stealth skill in the blink of an eye. With fire of the mind active, stealth was ineffective, but the bonus movement speed was what he urgently needed. Still in the 100% movement speed bonus state, he dashed towards the nearest player. The player stood in front of the God of War Guild, not making a move, just calmly watching the battle unfold. It was the person he had talked to before. But the person was a bit far away, and at this distance, he might not be able to get close before his health bar was depleted. At this point, Zhou Chen's health bar had dropped to one-fifth, turning red and about to start flashing. But he was still five or six meters away from the person, and it seemed impossible to reach him. Arrows formed a line in the air, shot by archer players using the rapid arrow skill. At the same time, a fireball, a wind blade, and an ice arrow flew through the air. It seemed that both archer players and mage players wanted to make the final killing blow. The two thieves who were stealthed on the side with the stealth skill were probably thinking the same thing. Both were thieves, both using the stealth skill, but because of the fire of the mind state, the opponent could see him, but he couldn't see the opponent. 
At this moment, Zhou Chen suddenly noticed that his mailbox was flashing. He sighed helplessly. This should be Xia Qian sending over equipment. Although she collected equipment fast enough, the God of War Guild was too strong, and he had been left with only a sliver of health after just a few hits. He seemed to have no time to receive these items. And it seemed better not to receive them, so that the people of the God of War Guild wouldn't benefit after he was killed. The mailbox continued to flash, and in this brief moment, Zhou Chen suddenly had an idea. Who said that a stealth thief couldn't attack? What if it was Xia Qian? How would she operate? Let's go for it. In the blink of an eye, Zhou Chen tightly gripped the sovereign sickle and suddenly swung his body as the axis. At the same time, the cut skill, which had already cooled down, was used in this unprecedented way. Zhou Chen didn't swing the sovereign sickle around his body for no reason. He recalled Xia Qian's operation skills and found that she was not limited by game skills like himself. Regardless of whether the game had such skills, as long as she needed, she could come up with all sorts of unconventional responses. Zhou Chen didn't know why he suddenly wanted to learn from her, but since he had made the decision and taken action, it was now a matter of life or death with this one strike. The side of the monarch swept past, and two figures appeared on Zhou Chen's side, one on the left and one on the right. They had used the sneak attack skill to stealthily approach him, intending to take out the two thief players with a single visible strike. However, to their dismay, Zhou Chen swung the scythe first and used the cut skill to attack them the moment they appeared. The visible strike of the sneak attack skill was abruptly interrupted. What followed was not just a simple interruption of the skill. The cut skill unleashed three attacks, and the scythe of the monarch spun around Zhou Chen, cutting three times. Ignore defense. Minus 1501 minus 1178 critical hit. Minus 2356. Both thieves endured such attacks, unable to withstand them due to their lower health and defense compared to warrior players. Two flashes of white light later, the two thief players failed in their ambush and instead handed their experience points to Zhou Chen. Successfully killed player unidentified, experience points plus 145, successfully killed player clearly, experience points plus 145, level up plus 1, current level 23, current experience points 160-16,000, level up, status recovery, skill cooldown reset, level up, clear all current negative statuses. With the sound of this notification, Zhou Chen suddenly realized that the fire of the mind on his head had disappeared. Delighted, he immediately used the sneak attack skill again and entered stealth mode in an instant. At this moment, except for the physician player who had the true sight eye attached from the beginning, everyone else returned to being unable to see him. With the acceleration effect of the scythe kill skill still active, Zhou Chen did not linger in battle and swiftly fled. He's running that way, shouted the physician player in the Divine War Guild, pointing in the direction. However, no matter how he shouted, the others still couldn't see, and Zhou Chen quickly ran out of their field of vision at double speed. Even the physician player with the true sight eye lost sight of Zhou Chen in an instant. Although the true sight eye state could see through stealth, it did not have the ability of super long-range vision. Although the Red Rock Monster area was not very large, with only about 10 people left in the Divine War Guild, it would probably not be easy to find Zhou Chen again. However, Zhou Chen was not just trying to escape, he had just leveled up, and the constant stream of system notifications and overall improvements were somewhat complicated. At this moment, the system's notifications continued to sound. Condition met, internal racial advancement, promoted to elite level secret puppet spirit, minor changes to racial appearance, obtained elite level monster specific talent, doubled life points. Obtained elite level secret puppet spirit specific skill puppetry manipulation, consuming 50 mana points, attaching to a target with less than 30% life points, and controlling the target with a 10% illusion attribute, lasting 120 seconds, skill cooldown time, 20 seconds. Note, puppetry manipulation can only be used on targets no more than 3 levels higher than oneself. The lower the target's level, the lower the remaining life points, the higher the success rate of attachment. After reaching level 23, Zhou Chen's panel attributes undoubtedly had a significant improvement. The cooldown time for puppetry disguise was originally a full 24 hours, but because of the recent level up, all skill cooldown times were reset, and his puppetry disguise skill was in a usable state. After some thought, Zhou Chen decided to exit the disguise state and return to the secret puppet spirit state. At this moment, he is no longer an ordinary puppet spirit, but an elite level puppet spirit. However, when he was an ordinary puppet spirit, his attributes were far stronger than other puppet spirits, and now as an elite level, his attributes naturally surpass those of the average elite level puppet spirit. Returning to his puppet spirit state, Zhou Chen put the Lord Sickle into his backpack and finally opened his original form attribute panel. 
Name, Zhou Chen, Race, Puppet Spirit, Elite, Level, 23, Health, 12,000 slash 12,000, Mana, 3600 slash 3600, Physical Attack, 426, Fully Allocated to Strength, Magic Attack, 240, Physical Defense, 200, Magic Defense, 150. This is without even considering the attributes of the Lord Sickle, visibly much stronger than before. After reaching level 23, Zhou Chen had exactly 21 skill points to spare, just enough to upgrade all three skills to level 7. After the skill upgrades, all three skills were strengthened to varying degrees. Among them, the enhancement of puppetry disguise was as expected. However, the enhancement of puppetry mirror was somewhat surprising, as it went from being able to create six mirrors instead of just three, and the duration also increased significantly. Of course, the greatest enhancement was undoubtedly puppetry manipulation, a skill exclusive to the advanced puppet spirit, Elite, which saw a significant improvement. The target that can be possessed increased from having less than 30% health to 60%, widening the applicable range. The attributes of the phantom body that can be attached also increased from 10% to 40%, making it significantly stronger. Watching the members of the Divine War Guild gradually searching from a distance, Zhou Chen frowned and suddenly made a decision. With only 20 minutes left before an hour had passed, Zhou Chen was well aware that if he disguised himself as a player profession, it would be difficult to make full use of the attributes of the puppet spirit itself, and it would be hard to hold out for 20 minutes against the members of the Divine War Guild. Although he had managed to find a way out before, it was extremely dangerous, and he couldn't guarantee the same luck if he tried again. Since his life was almost at stake, why should he be afraid of wolves and tigers? What if the puppet spirit appeared in the Crimson Rock Monster area? What if others found out that he and the puppet spirit were using the same giant sickle? Well, it seemed a bit dangerous, and unless absolutely necessary, Zhou Chen didn't want others to associate him with the puppet spirit and the monsters. There were still about 10 people on the other side, and it would be very dangerous for him to charge in first. Since he had finally managed to break free from their encirclement, it was better not to rush back in foolishly. There was always a solution to the problem, but before that, he needed to deal with the equipment sent by Xia Qian and maximize his own strength. At this point, he finally had time to check the mail sent by Xia Qian. Received a package from the player Xia Qian, Ironwood Hunting Bow, Rare, Crimson Rock Broadsword, Rare, Shadow Short Sword, Rare. A total of 36 pieces of, Rare, level equipment. In such a short time, I don't know how Xia Qian managed to collect them. Along with the equipment, there was also a message from Xia Qian. I've sent you the equipment, for now, this is all I can send. If you need more in the future, just ask. I only asked for 30 pieces, but Xia Qian unexpectedly sent 36 pieces, which is quite generous. It's worth noting that these are, rare, level equipment. Not to mention the expensive price, even if you have the money, it's not a simple task to purchase a complete set in such a short time. In addition, there was also a new email message, which Zhou Qian opened. Xia Qian, did you log off? What happened, were you killed? It was then that Zhou Chen remembered that he had just switched back to the status of the secret puppet spirit. In the guild member list and the friend list of the other party, his name information would become dim. Zhou Chen, who had already decided to act low-key, didn't want to reply in the status of the secret puppet spirit. At this time, he found that the guild chat channel had also become noisy. Chun Mu, Zhou Chen logged off, did he get killed and lose his equipment, feeling disheartened? Xiao Liang, maybe. Dong Wan, the Divine Battle Guild is one of the three major guilds. It's already impressive that he can support it by himself. Xia Qian, you asked him for help, you still have good judgment. Chun Mu, but if he's been killed and lost, treasure, level equipment, his strength should have been greatly reduced. Can he still help in the guild battle? She seemed to be somewhat regretful and said, Ah, Xia Qian, you are just too principled. In my opinion, we should have taken action earlier, digest internally, and not let outsiders benefit. At this time, the treasure level equipment would belong to our guild, right? Xia Qian, you can't beat him. Chun Mu, ah. Uh. Xia Qian, I'll go. Dong Wan, Xia Qian, are you crazy? That's the Divine Battle Guild. Even if you are the top fighter, you can't handle it well alone. Xia Qian, I have the Descent of the War God scroll. The other three were suddenly shocked. Isn't that the trump card you kept for the guild battle? What about the guild battle when you use it now? Xia Qian, we'll talk about that when the time comes. Zhou Chen has promised to trade the treasure level equipment to me. If they kill Zhou Chen and take it, isn't it just robbing me of my stuff? I'll take it back, it's only natural. The three were speechless. In the end, Chun Mu gritted her teeth and said, forget it, we'll go with you. Since you are our Xia Qian, we'll support you on the game's public channel. Quietly observing the guild chat channel, Zhou Chen was speechless at this moment. 
However, he knew the strength of the Divine Battle Guild. Although he didn't understand what the Descent of the War God scroll was, there was really no need to involve Xia Qian and the others. Thinking of this, he once again used the Puppeteer's Disguise skill to disguise himself as a player profession. Normally, he could only use Puppeteer's Disguise once a day, but he had just leveled up today, so the cooldown time for the skill had been refreshed, allowing him to use it again. In the guild member list, his name information instantly became bright again, indicating that he had logged on again. He first spoke in the guild chat channel, saying, I'm fine, you don't need to come. Xia Qian, you weren't killed, and your equipment wasn't lost? Zhou Chen, right. Xia Qian, I don't believe it. Zhou Chen, it's true. Xia Qian, unless you mail the equipment to me now, I absolutely won't believe it. Ugh. Zhou Chen was helpless. In theory, he had already received 36, rare, level equipment as payment from the other party. According to the previous agreement, the Crimson Rock Bracelet, Treasure, indeed belonged to Xia Qian. It was only natural for him to send it to her. The premise was that the game system allowed him to send it. But the reality now was that he couldn't do anything with the Crimson Rock Bracelet, Treasure, until the Treasure Hunter event ended. Seeing Zhou Chen unable to respond, Xia Qian nodded and said, Right, you have nothing to say. You must have been killed, and your equipment must have been looted. I'm going to retrieve my own equipment. What right do you have to stop me? Well, Zhou Chen found that he still couldn't keep up with Xia Qian's thinking. He shook his head helplessly and decided not to argue with her anymore. Anyway, she wouldn't listen to him. There were only 18 minutes left, and maybe the event would end before she arrived. Why bother worrying about it? He refocused on the 36, rare, level equipment in front of him and selected the attribute extraction for all of them. This was the second time Zhou Chen had obtained a large quantity of, rare, level equipment. The last time, after extracting the attributes, he had upgraded the Sovereign Sickle from, rare, level to, treasure, level. What about this time? Would it advance again? As it turned out, Zhou Chen had overestimated. 36, rare, level equipment was indeed good, as he had specifically instructed that there were relatively few duplicates. After extracting the attributes of the 36, rare, level equipment, the attributes of the Sovereign Sickle did improve significantly, but it was still far from advancing to a higher quality. After the attribute extraction, Zhou Chen looked at the figures gradually appearing in the distance, his gaze turning cold. He immediately used the Sickle Transformation skill, and the Sovereign Sickle in his hand was shrouded in black mist, transforming into a dark and powerful bow, along with a quiver. Congratulations to player Zhou Chen for obtaining the Treasure, Level Equipment, Sovereign Dark Bow, Treasure. In the instant the game announcement appeared, Zhou Chen was momentarily stunned. It turned out that every time the Sovereign Sickle gained a new form, there would be a game announcement, and he had actually overlooked this detail. To other players, Zhou Chen might seem like the game's favorite, but he didn't see it that way. In his view, the game system was simply out to get him, relentless. Originally, just having the Crimson Rock Bracelet, Treasure, had already made him the target of many players' attacks, and the Divine War Guild had been searching for him since then. Now, with this announcement, others probably had even more reason to kill him. As Zhou Chen had expected, at this moment, the game's chat channel was buzzing. The players who had been driven away by the Divine War Guild earlier were now returning to this area, excited once again. If it had been just one, treasure, level equipment, they might have given the Divine War Guild some face, but now there was another one. How could they let the guild take all the benefits? At this moment, the Divine War Guild's guild chat channel was also in heated debate. It's been so long, and your second team still hasn't dealt with it? That's right, those players are returning, and this Zhou Chen is no ordinary person. He actually monopolized three, treasure, level equipment. This is no longer just a matter for your second team. That's right, because your second team was nearby before, we didn't respond to the guild summon, but now it seems we shouldn't care about that anymore. If we don't act quickly, the cooked duck will fly away. The one who negotiated with Zhou Chen earlier was the captain of the second team of the God of War guild. He shook his head and said in the guild channel, this is our second team's encounter, so it should naturally be our second team's opportunity. When I joined the guild, the guild leader promised me that. He's not here today, so you don't plan to follow the rules? Oomph. You better handle things properly. If you mess up, let's see how you face the guild leader when he comes back. The other teams finally stopped interfering, and the captain of the second team then ordered the remaining dozen or so people in the team with a cold face, spread out and search carefully. The physician should give everyone the true sight eye during this time to prevent him from ambushing. On the side of the West Season Guild, Chunmu was startled and asked in the guild channel, Zhou Chen, did you get another, treasure, equipment? Tell me honestly, did you secretly use cheats? Zhou Chen smiled slightly, yes. Chunmu, 
Are there any tips for obtaining treasure level equipment? Can you share some? Zhou Chen, good luck is all you need. Xuan Mu. Zhou Chen couldn't be bothered to argue with her anymore and immediately allocated all the attribute and skill points after disguising himself as an archer. For an archer, it's not just about adding strength. As a long-range shooting profession, there is an important issue that cannot be ignored when compared to close-range professions, shooting accuracy. Zhou Chen didn't have time to think too much about it, so he simply followed the path of balance and roughly distributed the points between strength and agility. The strength affects how strong a bow Zhou Chen can pull and how long he can maintain his shooting speed. Agility affects how accurate Zhou Chen can shoot and how long he can maintain his accuracy. After obtaining 36 pieces of rare level equipment, the attributes of the Lord Sickle at this time were naturally much stronger than before. Lord Sickle, Treasure, Physical Attack, 1298, Physical Defense, 486, Magic Defense, 328, plus 4400 health, mana, 1650, physical critical strike rate plus 20%, ignore defense chance plus 17%, combo rate plus 13%, skill sickle kill LV4, skill sickle absorb LV3, skill sickle transform LV1. However, after switching to the archer form, the attributes of the lord's dark bow could only reach 70% of the lord's sickle. Zhou Chin didn't dwell on this and grasped the lord's dark bow, ignoring all distractions, and stared sharply in a certain direction. That was where the people of the God of War Guild were coming from. At this time, those people from the God of War Guild were still six or seven hundred meters away from him. With the passive skill sharp vision of the archer profession, his vision had greatly increased. Zhou Chen hid behind a small tree, took out an arrow from the quiver, and placed it on the Lord's dark bow. The bow was drawn, the arrow was in hand. Zhou Chen used a skill of the archer profession, concentrated shot. Concentrated shot LV7, consumes 50 mana, focuses on shooting, and after 1-5 seconds of concentration, shoots an arrow, dealing 150% 350% attack damage, critical strike chance plus 20-40%, the longer the concentration time, the higher the effective range, attack damage, hit rate, and critical strike rate, cooldown time 15 seconds. At this moment, the people from the God of War guild had not yet noticed him, so he naturally chose the longest concentration time, and his target was the physician player in the opponent's crowd. Although the physician player didn't have much attack power, as the team's support profession, Zhou Chen decided to take him out first. Meanwhile, the physician player in the center of the team, hundreds of meters away, suddenly felt a chill. He looked to the west, but he didn't see any hidden figures lurking. There was no one hiding on the side planning to attack him. He looked puzzled, but also didn't dare to be careless, and called out, Everyone, be careful, Zhou Chen may be hiding somewhere watching us. The archer player in the team laughed, don't worry, Peanut, our archer profession has the sharp vision passive skill, which can see every detail within a few hundred meters. I've checked, within this range, except for the bushes six or seven hundred meters away, there's nowhere for someone to hide. Another person said, anyway, we're all in true sight mode, so he can't sneak up on us. My arrows can reach up to five hundred meters, if he hasn't come close, we'll turn him into a hedgehog. These two archer players made sense, and the physician player named Peanut finally let go of his worries and said, let's pick up the pace, we've surveyed the area behind, only the 7 or 800 meters ahead are left, Zhou Chen has nowhere to hide. As soon as the physician player finished speaking, he vaguely saw a black lightning bolt coming from the corner of his eye, and then heard a game notification sound. You have been killed by the player Zhou Chen. He turned into a white light, not knowing that behind him, where the black lightning bolt had gone, there was also a person who fell to the ground almost at the same time, turning into a soul light. At this moment, the damage numbers just started to appear. Critical hit. Minus 8,204 critical hit. Minus 4,102 it's an archer's sneak attack. The members of the Divine War Guild exclaimed, as if a pot of ants had been stirred up. The members of the Divine War Guild in the distance became agitated, while Zhou Chen, six or seven hundred meters away, slowly breathed a sigh of relief. Just now, he had used the focused shot skill to launch an attack, charging for a full 5 seconds, and the attack power of the arrow reached a terrifying 350%. With the quality of the Sovereign Dark Bow on a 5 second long charge, his shooting distance far exceeded the imagination of the Divine War Guild and others. Not only did he instantly kill the physician player, the terrifying arrow's momentum was not yet exhausted, and it also caused half of the damage to the person behind him. And behind the physician, there happened to be a mage player, and half of the damage was enough to kill him as well. A double kill with one arrow, it really scared the players of the Divine War Guild. How can there be an archer's sneak attack? Who dares to oppose our Divine War Guild? Someone shouted. In the guild chat channel, the physician player who had already become a soul light said, it's Zhou Chen. 
Zhou Chen, isn't he a thief profession? How can he have archer skills? Peanut, did you make a mistake? The second team leader was stunned, seeming somewhat incredulous. I don't know, just help me revive first. Peanut didn't say much, just reminding the other physician players in the team. With three physicians in their team, as long as they watched out for each other, even if they were killed by a sneak attack, they wouldn't need to panic. However, how could Zhou Chen let them revive in peace? He had just emerged from the bushes and appeared in the sight of the Divine War Guild and others. In fact, even though the two sides had approached each other a bit, the distance between them was still over 500 meters. At this distance, not to mention the close-range professions, even archers and mages couldn't attack each other. Thief, ghost elf, archers and mages get ready. The second team leader began to arrange, saying, once in range, archers and mages launch the first attack, and the thief and stealth follows up to harvest. The two thief players responded in unison, their eyes fierce. It was they who had previously sneak attacked Zhou Chen, but they were killed by his cleave skill, losing a lot of experience points. Although they were eventually revived by the physician player, the lost experience points could not be recovered. So at this moment, they harbored extreme resentment towards Zhou Chen in the distance. The two sides began to approach each other, and it seemed they were about to enter the attack range of the archers. However, this was only the thought of the archer players in the God War Guild. Zhou Chen, holding the sovereign Dark Bao, had an attack range far beyond their imagination. While they were still thinking about continuing to approach, Zhou Chen had already drawn the sovereign Dark Bao in his hand. Barrage of arrows. Another skill of the archer was used, and a series of arrows formed a line and flew towards the God War Guild. As soon as the arrows were released, they reached their target, another player who was a physician. This was the player who was using resurrection technique. When using resurrection technique, the physician player had to concentrate for 6 seconds and could not move, otherwise the skill would be interrupted. Faced with these lightning fast arrows, not to mention that he couldn't move, even if he could, he couldn't dodge them at all. Not everyone had that kind of skill. The arrows almost simultaneously hit the physician player. Minus 1172 minus 1172 minus 1172 critical hit. Minus 2344 the attributes of the sovereign scythe were extremely strong, with a critical hit rate of 20%. When a series of arrows were shot, the possibility of triggering a critical hit was naturally very high. Without exception, the physician player instantly turned into white light. He had intended to resurrect someone, but unexpectedly, before he could successfully resurrect someone, he himself became a member in need of resurrection. Zhou Chen, who had killed the enemy and gained experience points again, seemed somewhat satisfied. This archer's skill for long-range sniping was indeed excellent. With his current skill level, Barrage of Arrows could only release a series of arrows, but it was already very powerful. After killing this physician player, Zhou Chen once again bent his bow and aimed at the last physician on the opposing side. There were three physicians in the opposing team, and he had already taken care of two of them. As long as he could take care of the last one, the opposing side would have no way to resurrect, and killing one would mean one less. After killing another person with barrage of arrows, the members of the God War Guild finally woke up as if from a dream. He really knows how to use archer skills, how is that possible? He's clearly a thief, this doesn't make sense. The captain of the second team had a grim face and said, no matter what his background is, it doesn't matter now. We have a whole team of people, do we still have to be led by the nose by him? With a cold snort, he ordered again, the mage will activate a large area magic scroll for a wide range attack, even if he's slippery, he can't escape such a wide range attack. The remaining mages in the team nodded, understanding that the captain was determined to spare no effort. At this point, cost effectiveness was no longer meaningful. If they didn't quickly take care of the guy on the other side, not only would they be ridiculed by the players in the entire game, but they might also be unable to hold their heads up within the guild. The distance of 500 meters was not too far, and Zhou Chen had already entered the attack range of the opposing archer after shooting a few arrows at the remaining physician player. Although the archer's output ability was quite high, he had just used concentrated shot and barrage of arrows, and Zhou Chen temporarily had no powerful burst skills. He shot arrows one by one at the remaining physician player, and although the attack power was good, because it was not an instantaneous burst, the physician player, relying on his own healing skills, could just about withstand it. Minus 1172 after shooting another arrow, the physician player's health dropped to over 2000 points. He cast a healing technique on himself and immediately recovered plus 1011 health points. Including the mist barrier skill he had cast on himself in advance, his recovery amount was just enough to offset Zhou Chen's normal attack damage. If Zhou Chen were to use a regular attack against him, he might never be able to kill him. 
unless the magic points of the physician player were exhausted. But the physician player not only had himself, but also teammates. After entering the attack range, three archer players simultaneously used the chain arrow skill. As for the focused shot skill, it required too much time to charge, and was not very useful unless it was a sneak attack. Minus 86, minus 86, minus 86, dash 86. However, after the three chain arrow skills were used, the shots on Zhou Chen only caused about 1000 total damage. Compared to Zhou Chen's current health bar, this damage was not much pressure at all. Damn it, his defense has increased again. I used to be able to deal him several hundred points of damage. The archer player exclaimed in disbelief, feeling that the bow and arrow in his hand suddenly didn't feel as good. The archer profession he chose, was it really that powerful physical long-range output profession? The three archer players on the opposite side each used a chain arrow skill, but only dealt about 1000 damage to Zhou Chen. The Reaper Sickle extracted 36 rare equipment, greatly enhancing its attributes, coupled with the LV7 puppetry disguise adding 20% of the original attributes. Zhou Chen's physical defense was now extremely high. With the attacks of these level 29 archer players, it was also difficult to cause him too much damage. And his health bar had also increased significantly, this over 1000 health points, when hit on him, only caused a small drop in his health bar. Finally entering the attack range, the magicians in the God of War guild queue took out a magic scroll and began to activate it. The magic scroll was flashing with dazzling light, and it might erupt at any moment. The magician profession that had not yet reached the second transformation did not have super large range magic skills, and to perform a super large range attack, it had to rely on this kind of magic scroll. The power and rarity of the magic scroll would affect the strength of the subsequent attacks. Looking at the dazzling light on the magic scroll, and seeing how difficult it was for them to activate it, Zhou Chen was surprised from a distance. This magic scroll's power must be no less than the previous meteor shower. Now that he had disguised himself as an archer profession, unlike before when he was a thief, he could stealthily avoid the attack range of the magic scroll. Zhou Chen was nervous and tried to find a way to destroy the release of this magic scroll. He drew his bow and shot an arrow with the magic scroll floating above the heads of those magicians. However, how could such a powerful magic scroll be easily destroyed by an arrow? The black arrow flew towards the magic scroll, but it was unable to advance any further, blocked by the dazzling light on the periphery of the magic scroll, and with a slight flash, the arrow instantly turned into dust. And looking at the surging light emanating from the magic scroll, in just two or three seconds, a terrifying magic attack would come. While the chain arrow skill was still cooling down, Zhou Chen's eyes flashed, and he had already made up his mind. He drew his bow again and used a scatter skill. The skill was instantly used, and Zhou Chen quickly pulled the bowstring and shot several rounds of arrows in rapid succession. Each round had 12 arrows flying out. This scatter skill shot out a total of 70 to 80 arrows. Of course, as a game, the arrows in the quiver were endless. With Zhou Chen's own operating skills, it would be impossible to shoot so many arrows in a short time. But this scatter was a skill designed by the game, unrelated to Zhou Chen's operating skills. As long as the skill was used, it could shoot out a large number of arrows in a short time. Of course, the number of arrows was astonishing, but the attack power was not commendable. Each arrow only had 20% of its own attack power. With such a percentage of attack power, after deducting the opponent's defense, the damage caused by each arrow is even less. However, Zhou Chen released the scatter skill and did not care about the attack damage. Minus 9 minus 9 minus 1 minus 8. Arrows with a 20% attack percentage, shooting at the members of the God of War guild, can only cause single digit damage. Some with higher defense, can't even break through, only causing mandatory minus 1 damage. But with this scatter skill, the number of attacks is dozens of times, and it immediately completes the charging of the Reaper's Scythe. At this moment, the Reaper's Scythe skill is once again available. Without any hesitation, Zhou Chen immediately triggered the Reaper's Scythe skill. At this time, the magicians in the opponent's camp finally completed the activation of the magic scroll, and the magic scroll burst into a violent light, turning into flying ash. Almost at the same time, Zhou Chen felt the ground under his feet tremble and begin to crack, and endless molten lava erupted. This skill looks somewhat familiar, very similar to the lava burst used by the leader level crimson rock monster fought earlier. However, the coverage of this one released from the magic scroll is even greater than that used by the leader of the crimson rock monster. With Zhou Chen at the center, within a radius of 200 meters, it became a lava hell. Minus 542 minus 542 boundless lava eruption, Zhou Chen was in the midst of it, unable to avoid it at all, and was suddenly burned by the erupting lava. At this rate, even with over 9000 points of health in his current state, he couldn't withstand much more. Not to mention, the three archer players were still standing outside the lava hell, 
shooting at him intermittently. At this moment, Zhou Chen had no time to think. Fortunately, the Reaper's sight skill had been activated and his movement speed was once again doubled, rushing frantically out of the range of the lava hell. In the God of War guild camp, the faces of the several magicians turned pale, gasping, this lava hell is no worse than the just meteor shower, even if several people join forces, the magic power is almost depleted. It took two of these magic scrolls, if we still can't take down that Zhou Chen, then this wave will be a big loss. The captain of the second team was very satisfied and said with a smile, rest assured, these two scrolls are indeed precious, but being able to exchange for not just one, treasure, level equipment, it is definitely worth it. After obtaining the equipment, not to mention two scrolls, even if there were twice as many, the guild leader would definitely not let the brothers suffer. Obtain equipment? Have you asked me? As soon as the captain of the second team finished speaking, a clear voice came from not far away. He frowned and looked up, Xia Qian, the so-called first fighter? I don't know when, not far from their side, a figure with a ponytail stood quietly. It was Xia Qian, the famous first fighter on the professional level ranking list. The captain of the second team looked coldly at Xia Qian and said coldly, Are you also interested in this, treasure, level equipment? Xia Qian stepped forward slowly and said word by word, Zhou Chen has already sold me this, treasure, level equipment, if any of you want to touch it, you'll have to ask my fist first. In the God of War guild camp, laughter rang out. Obviously, Xia Qian's words amused them. The captain of the second team narrowed his eyes and said, Anyone dares to challenge our God of War guild, now that you've become the first fighter, do you really think you're someone? But it's just that the input and output of the fighter profession are too unequal, everyone is too lazy to choose, that's why you got lucky. He stared at Xia Qin closely and said in a low voice, Keep an eye on Zhou Chen, pick up the equipment as soon as it drops. However, what answered him was a series of arrows from the west. The western arrow shot past his line of sight like black lightning, fleeting in an instant. In the next moment, a flash of white light streaked through the ranks of the Divine War Guild, instantly killing the only remaining physician player in the team. At this moment, Zhou Chen, who should have been waiting to die in the lava hell, unexpectedly still had the strength to launch an attack. The captain of the second team was momentarily puzzled. In the distance, leveraging the mobility provided by Sickle Kill, Zhou Chen, after paying the price of losing half of his health, finally escaped the coverage of the lava hell. Seeing Xia Chen enter this area and attract the attention of the Divine War Guild and others, he did not waste this opportunity and immediately used the chain arrow skill to launch an attack on the only remaining physician player. The physician player was also focused on Xia Qian, and in a moment of carelessness, fell victim to Zhou Chen. Even if he had been cautious, he probably would not have been able to avoid it. With a plus 586 chain arrow, not only did he instantly kill the physician player, but it also triggered a sickle absorption effect, restoring 586 points of health to Zhou Chen. Of course, compared to the large amount of health he had lost, this amount of recovery was still not enough. At this moment, Xia Qian looked at Zhou Chen from a distance, somewhat surprised, you're not dead? Of course not, Zhou Chen said helplessly, I didn't die just now, but you wouldn't believe me anyway. Xia Qian looked at Zhou Chen and nodded solemnly, saying, alright, then try not to die next time and take good care of my, treasure, equipment. After Zhou Chen ambushed and killed another physician companion, the captain of the second team of the Divine War Guild looked very displeased. He looked at Zhou Chen and Xia Qian in front of him and said, I'm afraid it's not up to you to decide. As he spoke, he raised his hand, holding a shiny golden token. It was the guild summoning token he had used before. When he had used it before, the other teams in the guild had given him face and did not follow. This time, he took out the guild summoning token again, realizing that with just the remaining members of his second team, they probably couldn't deal with Zhou Chen in a short time. Zhou Chen's strength far exceeded his expectations, and the treasure level equipment was just too powerful. At this point, he couldn't be bothered to think about why Zhou Chen had become an archer. What he wanted was to summon the guild's main forces to come and deal with Zhou Chen firmly. As for Xia Qian standing in front of him, he didn't even consider her a threat. A first-class fighter, what a joke. The token began to shine and was about to shatter. Once the token shattered, the members of the other teams in the Divine War Guild would respond to his summons. At that time, dozens or even hundreds of level 29 players would descend, and no matter how strong Zhou Chen was, he would definitely not be able to hold on. The token continued to shine. The captain of the second team hesitated a bit. He knew very well that once he officially summoned the members of the other teams, his actions to besiege Zhou Chen would be tantamount to a failure. The dignified captain of the second team of the Divine War Guild, leading two or three dozen members of the small teams, couldn't even take down an ordinary player. This kind of story would probably make him completely unable to hold his head up in the guild. While he was still hesitating, Xia Qin in front of him had no intention of waiting for him to make a decision. 
Xia Qian naturally recognized the guild's summoning token. She was very clear that once the other party truly summoned the main forces of the Divine War Guild, she and Zhou Chen would have absolutely no chance. The treasure level equipment would naturally have to be handed over. This was something Xia Qian absolutely could not tolerate. So, at this moment, she pushed off the ground with both feet and charged forward like a wild beast. Courting death, the captain of the second team sneered, holding the guild summoning token in one hand and raising a broadsword in the other, striking down towards Xia Qian. As the captain of the second team, he was a level 29 warrior himself. While he made his move, the magician behind him had already cast a few small spells, also aimed at Xia Qian. Although the spells cast by the magicians were wind blade technique and fireball technique, which were quick release small spells, they were still difficult for a fighter to endure. Several small spells combined with the broadsword strike of a level 29 warrior would undoubtedly make it difficult for Xia Qian, the self-proclaimed top fighter, to survive, let alone escape unscathed. However, Xia Qian, who was always adept at using operational skills, did not make any sharp moves at this time, but just charged forward in a daze. In midair, her eyes flashed, and she had already activated the scroll that had just appeared in her hand. The scroll was called Descent of the War God. Unlike the large-scale attack magic scrolls like Meteor Shower and Lava Hell, the magic sealed in the Descent of the War God scroll was a self-targeted status magic that was very easy to activate and did not require several magicians to provide magic power to activate it. When the Descent of the War God scroll was activated, it instantly turned to ashes, but a hazy golden light appeared on Xia Qian's body. As soon as the golden light rose, the several small spells had already flown to Xia Qian's side. However, like snowflakes falling into water, the small spells touched the golden light and disappeared without a sound, as if they had never existed. Whether it was the fireball technique, the wind blade technique, or others, none of them could even make a splash. This was one of the terrifying effects of the Descent of the War God scroll, Magic Immunity. In addition to Magic Immunity, the Descent of the War God scroll also had other effects. First, physical damage reduction plus 70%. Second, attribute values increased by 300%. Then, all self-skills cooldown time reduced by 70%, and unlimited magic power. This was a scroll that Xia Qian had difficulty obtaining, originally prepared for the first guild battle, but was now being used here. According to the mysterious player who sold the scroll to Xia Qian, this Descent of the War God scroll was the only one in the game. Zhou Chen originally did not know about this, but due to the talkative Chuanmu in the guild chat channel, he learned the details. According to Chuanmu, since Xia Qian used the Descent of the War God scroll to save Zhou Chen, Zhou Chen would need to repay her with his life. For example, starting with offering two or three, precious, level equipment. Xia Qian ignored Chuanmu's nonsense and, before preparing to activate the Descent of the War God scroll, she had already said to Zhou Chen in the Guild Chat channel, I can only maintain the Descent of the War God state for 180 seconds. After that, it's up to you. Zhou Chen was not surprised. If the Descent of the War God was really as powerful as they said, then it was only natural that it could only be maintained for 180 seconds. Otherwise, if such a terrifying state were to continue indefinitely, no one else would need to play. So, when he saw the golden light on Xia Qian, Zhou Chen knew that a rare opportunity had come, and he had to seize it. Everything happened in the blink of an eye. When the several small spells disappeared in front of the golden light, the broadsword of the second team captain had already fallen. However, Xia Qian did not dodge, her expression calm as water, but her body had already started spinning in the air. Incredibly, she kicked the spine of the opponent's broadsword with one foot, causing the broadsword to swing back, while her other foot kicked the other wrist of the second team captain at the same time. Minus 1578 Clang the second team captain was kicked so hard that the bones in his hand were excruciatingly painful, and the guild summoning token flew out of his hand and fell to the ground. The glaring guild summoning token dropped to the ground. At the same time as the intense pain in his wrist, the second team captain suddenly realized that he had underestimated this top fighter. After using that scroll, the attack power of this first level fighter reached a terrifying level. With his own defense, he was kicked in the wrist and suffered more than a thousand points of damage. In theory, this should not have happened. A dignified level 29 warrior player was actually kicked by a level 27 fighter and suffered over a thousand points of damage. It would be laughed at if this were to be known. Even if the opponent is the so-called first level fighter. Seeing several magic attacks falling on Xia Qian, it was completely ineffective, and the second team leader was shocked. He had not seen the War God's Descent scroll used by Xia Qian and did not know its specific effects, but seeing Xia Qian's strength to this extent, he already understood that the current situation was not good and could not hesitate any longer. He bent down, intending to pick up the guild's summoning order from the ground to summon the other small teams of the guild. 
But of course, Xia Qian would not let him succeed. He was fast, but Xia Qian was faster. Under the effects of the War God's Descent Scroll, not only did her attack, defense, and health increase by 300%, but her speed also increased threefold. In an instant, as if there were phantom flashes, Xia Qian had already arrived at the side of the order. She did not bend down to pick it up, but simply kicked it with force, sending the order flying into the range of lava hell. In just an instant, the guild summoning order fell into the range of lava hell, and it was probably completely melted. At this time, the second team leader had just arrived in front of Xia Qian. Xia Qian did not dodge, but instead lowered her body, leaned to the side, and her right shoulder had already collided with the second team leader's body. Minus 2454 this blow hit the second team leader, stronger than the previous kick to the wrist, and caused even more intense damage. With over 5000 points of health, the second team leader now only had a little over half of his health left. There were no physician players in the team, and no one could heal him. He was in the air and had already chosen to take a special healing potion. The recovery speed of the special healing potion was indeed good, but it could not keep up with Xia Qian's attack output. When the second team leader's body was hit and sent into the air, she had already pushed off the ground with both feet, leaping up and following closely like a shadow. Bang! Another punch hit the second team leader's chin, sending him flying upwards. This was one of the fighter's skills, the rising dragon fist. Minus 1895, this punch was the first proper fighter skill Xia Qian had used against the opponent, and the damage was quite impressive. The second team leader's health bar had started to flicker, and it was likely that Xia Qian's next attack would take him out. The other members of the second team launched attacks against Xia Qian, intending to surround and rescue their leader. Three archer players shot arrows at Xia Qian, and other warriors and thieves also surrounded her. Only a few magic players seemed dazed, not knowing whether they should pretend to be busy or just stand and watch. Faced with the magic immunity status, they could only express oh well, and had no way to act. Although there were many people on the side of the Divine War Guild, when facing Xia Qian, who had used the War God's Descent Scroll, they were simply not enough. Xia Qian's operating skills were already very powerful, and with her attributes increased by 300%, her movement was like a phantom. Although there were many people on the side of the Divine War Guild, they simply could not touch her. The second team leader, who had landed, frowned, and quietly retreated. Although the other members might not pose a threat to Xia Qian, they at least attracted her attention, allowing themselves to withdraw from the battle circle. The second team leader was in a bad mood. It was bad enough to be delayed by Zhou Chen, and now, with Xia Qian casually coming over, she could pose a terrifying threat to them. When did the Divine War Guild fall to the point where anyone could be beaten up? The extremely embarrassed captain of the second team took out a token from his backpack again and looked at the guild summoning order in his hand with a cold smile. Although Xia Qian was sensitive, she had already knocked her own token away to intercept him. But who said he only had that one token left? Xia Qian's current state might be powerful, but it wouldn't last long. By the time he summoned all the teams, he could surely exhaust the opponent's scroll time. Once the scroll's effect was gone, even the top fighter would be easily defeated with a snap of his fingers. He held the guild summoning order in his hand, and the token began to shine. It would only take two or three seconds to activate. When the army arrived, the so-called top fighter and Zhou Chen would no longer be a problem. Wait, Zhou Chen? The captain of the second team just realized that he had been knocked out by Xia Chen just now and had forgotten about Zhou Chen's existence. With Zhou Chen's cunning, how could he let him use the guild summoning order so easily? This thought flashed through his mind, and then he saw a black lightning reflected in his pupils and rapidly magnified. Minus 2116 a white light flashed, and the second team captain was the first to be killed, and the guild summoning order fell. He tried to use the guild summoning order twice in a row, but ultimately failed. Zhou Chen had already been watching him and took advantage of his distraction to deliver a fatal blow with his focused shot that had already cooled down. Even so, killing a severely injured captain of the second team was more than enough. How's the situation with the second team? Why haven't they brought us over yet? Yeah, if it's not working, don't force it. Don't waste this great opportunity. In the guild chat channel of the God War Guild, members of various teams were arguing. But the captain of the second team, who had already been killed and turned into a soul light, was full of bitterness and had no mood to speak. There were still over a dozen members left in the second team, but the captain knew that with these people, it was probably impossible to keep Xia Qian and Zhou Chen. In the Red Rock Monster area, Xia Qian was in the descent of the War God state, truly like a War God incarnate, unstoppable. Her operating skills were incredibly powerful, coupled with a 300% attribute panel. Her punches and kicks were incredibly powerful. Once she used a more powerful attack skill, the opposing players would be injured with a touch and killed with a hit. 
A war god like Xia Qian was already terrifying, not to mention Zhou Chen, who had transformed into an archer. At this time, he activated the sickle kill skill of the sovereign sickle, increasing his attack speed by 160%. Even with normal attacks, he could shoot two or three arrows in a second. With Xia Qian charging through the crowd, the two of them killed the dozen or so members of the God War Guild, causing a commotion. Time passed quickly, in just two minutes, there were only two people left standing in this area. Looking at the dropped equipment, Xia Qian looked at Zhou Qin who had walked up to her and said somewhat unsatisfied, there's still more than 180 seconds of descent of the war god time left, what a waste. Zhou Chen rolled his eyes. He could never keep up with Xia Qian's wild ideas. No, it should be said that no one in the Western Season Guild could keep up with her. Zhou Chen glanced at the game's system time and said, there's still more than 10 minutes until the restriction is lifted. You should go back first. Without these people from the God War Guild, even if others come in, they won't be able to do anything to me. Xia Qian glanced at Zhou Chen and said, well, you're pretty strong. You probably won't die easily. I can't waste the remaining seconds of descent of the war god. I'll go kill some monsters first before leaving. Zhou Chen walked to the west, picked up the equipment, and asked, do you want these things? The local tyrant like Xia Qian naturally despises these things. She shook her head while fighting monsters and said, you can take them all. But wait, don't you already have rare level equipment? Why bother picking up this junk? A level 29 player's rare level equipment was actually called junk? Zhou Chen shook his head and said, I have my own use for them. Besides, even a small mosquito is still meat. He had just casually said that, but unexpectedly Xia Chen took it seriously. She turned to look at Zhou Chen and said, Are you short of money? Just say so. I can either exchange your rare level equipment for money, whether in-game currency or real money. Although it's nice for someone to give money, at this moment Zhou Chen just shook his head and said with a bitter smile, no need, you better hurry and leave. Xia Qian stopped after killing a few red rock monsters, sighing with little interest, oh well, these red rock monsters are too low level, the experience gain is only a third of before, too lazy to bother. At this time, Zhou Chen had already picked up all the dropped equipment on the ground. Xia Qian glanced at the many players in the distance and asked, it seems like these guys are not giving up, do you want me to help you fend them off? Zhou Chen quickly shook his head, no need, the restriction will be lifted in 8 or 9 minutes, I can easily hide by myself, by the time they find me, I should be able to leave. Xia Qian looked deeply at Zhou Chen and finally nodded, saying, alright, you're busy, I'll go first. With that, she really didn't drag her feet and chose to return to the city. A few seconds later, the return city stone was activated, and in a flash of light, Xia Qian disappeared from Zhou Chen's sight. It was only then that Zhou Chen breathed a sigh of relief and relaxed. He was really worried that Xia Qian would be too enthusiastic and refuse to leave, which would be troublesome. Because not only was the time limit for the treasure hunter event about to end, even the time limit for his puppeteer's disguise was also almost up. If his disguise time was up and Xia Qian was still by his side, it would be a serious problem. What if she saw him transform into the secret puppet spirit? What should he do? Kill her to keep it a secret? The thing is, in this game, players can be resurrected after being killed so killing to keep a secret is completely useless. Fortunately, although Xia Qian's mind was unpredictable, at least she wasn't someone who dragged things out. At this time, seeing the large group of players slowly approaching the Red Rock Monster area, Zhou Chen chose to retreat and hide. He hid in the previous bushes and took the opportunity to extract the attributes of the equipment he had just picked up. It had to be said that although these rare level equipment was considered junk in Xia Qian's eyes, they were still the best equipment Zhou Chen had obtained so far, excluding the treasure level. All of these equipment were dropped by members of the Divine War Guild, all of which could only be worn by level 29 players, and their attributes were much stronger than the rare level equipment he had obtained before. The only downside was that there were fewer of them. More than 20 members of the Divine War Guild had only dropped 8 pieces of equipment. After extracting the attributes of these 8 pieces of equipment, the attributes of the Lord Scythe had increased again. At this point, the attributes of the Lord Scythe were, Lord Scythe, Treasure, Physical Attack, 1438, Physical Defense, 576, Magic Defense, 388, HP plus 5400, MP, 2450, Physical Critical Hit Rate plus 23%, Ignore Defense Rate plus 19%, Combo Rate plus 15%, Skill Reaper LV4, Skill Absorb LV3, Skill Transform LV1. Although the attributes had increased a lot, there was still no sign of advancement. And because he was currently in the state of the Lord's Dark Bow, he can only have 70% of the attributes temporarily, and the increase was not as significant as he had imagined. Zhou Chen's dissatisfaction, if known by other players, 
would definitely be criticized as being ignorant of the hungry. Not to mention, just this sovereign sickle alone already surpasses others' entire set of equipment in terms of attributes. However, Zhou Qin found that even when disguised as a player, there were still differences in some aspects. Besides this sovereign sickle, he still couldn't wear any other equipment. Otherwise, he would have worn the crimson rock bracelet, treasure, himself and wouldn't have needed to trade with Xia Qian. At this moment, the sickle kill skill had already passed its duration, and Zhou Chan actually didn't intend to continue confronting those players. After all, there were only a few minutes left in the event, so why not just hide on the side and safely wait out the crisis? Wasn't that better for him? There was no need to confront the players head-on, especially since the players who had just entered, although not as strong as the members of the God War Guild, had the advantage of numbers. If he were to carelessly be worn down by the ranged attacks of these players, there would truly be nowhere for him to cry. These players had been sent back to the city by the God War Guild's meteor shower before, but upon hearing the system announcement that Zhou Chen had obtained another, treasure, equipment, they couldn't resist coming back to kill him. And after these players returned, they suddenly found the situation to be very favorable. Ha, huh, the members of the God War Guild are nowhere to be seen. Did they already kill Zhou Chen and end the event? That's impossible. If they had killed Zhou Chen and taken the Yi treasure, equipment, the game system would have made an announcement. Right, there's no announcement now, and the members of the God War Guild are also missing. There's only one truth, the members of the God War Guild were all taken down by that Zhou Chen. The noisy area chat channel suddenly became quiet. The players in the Crimson Rock Monster area chat channel suddenly realized that if Zhou Chen could single-handedly take down so many members of the God War Guild, then what chance did they, who had been sent back to the city by the God War Guild with just one scroll, have against him? Um, I just want to say, do you guys think that after Zhou Chen defeated the members of the God War Guild, he was left with low health and on the brink of death? A player said. Zhou Chen, who could also see the area chat channel, felt helpless. Classmate, you're so imaginative, why not ascend to the heavens? Another player raised a question, even if he was left with low health, after so much time has passed, he should have used a potion to restore his health, right? Good, there's a clear-minded person. The previous player spoke again, what if he had just run out of health potions in his inventory? Terrifying, this guy was just randomly speculating, and yet he almost hit upon the truth. He didn't actually run out of health potions, but rather, he couldn't use health potions at all. However, even though he had lost a large portion of his health earlier, during the process of cooperating with Xia Qian to kill the members of the God War Guild, the sickle-absorbed skill of his weapon had allowed him to regain his health. Zhou Qin decided to speak in the area chat channel to dispel their impulses, stop guessing, I'm not dead, and I'm not at low health, but at full health. Ah, uh, Zhou Chen, see, the alive Zhou Chen. Brothers, he's panicking, see, he's panicking. Right, if he were at full health, he wouldn't have spoken up at all. By speaking up deliberately, it means he's not at full health. Our previous brother's guess was correct, he must be at low health and has run out of health potions, so he's trying to scare us off. Brothers, are we the kind of people who would be scared off? Impossible, don't even think about it. Brothers, charge. The treasure, equipment is right in front of us. Zhou Chen felt helpless towards these passionate players. There were probably around a few hundred of these players, and if they were to confront him face to face, even with Zhou Chen's improved attributes, he might not be able to handle it. Fortunately, the treasure hunter activity was about to end in a few minutes. Zhou Chen thought that as long as he kept a low profile, he should be able to drag it out for a few minutes without any problems. In fact, that's exactly what he did. After disguising himself as an archer and benefiting from the sharp vision bonus, his visual range far exceeded that of ordinary players. Perhaps the shadow archer profession itself also had hidden enhancements in this aspect, as his visual range even surpassed that of regular archers. So basically, before the opponents could see him, he could already detect them. With this visual range advantage, Zhou Chen managed to drag out the activity's time to the last three minutes without any trouble. None of the players even managed to come across him. At this point, he finally couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Just a little more, if he could hold on a bit longer, this damn activity would be over. However, what Zhou Chen didn't expect was that the game system once again focused on him. Treasure Hunter activity has only three minutes left. Players participating in the activity, please hurry up. In the last three minutes, the location of player Zhou Chen will be publicly displayed in real time. Zhou Chen? He emitted these three question marks not because he had a problem, but because he felt the game system had a problem. What's going on? Is the game system targeting him? Did he embarrass the game system by not being killed in the activity? If he knew who issued such an announcement, he would definitely have some words for them. In a certain location unknown to Zhou Chen, at the game's official headquarters, a technician suddenly sneezed. 
He turned back helplessly and asked his leader, Director Lee, is what we're doing really in accordance with the regulations? Director Lee snorted and said with a grim face, this Zhou Chen has repeatedly obtained treasure level equipment. I suspect he's using some illegal means. Director Lee, didn't we check and find no abnormalities? Not finding anything doesn't mean there are none. If we can't deal with him in this activity, you help me contact him. Director Lee, we don't have the authority to view players' real identities. Not in real life, you contact him in the game for me. I want to see what kind of person he is, daring to disrupt the game's balance. Director Lee, these are all unsubstantiated matters. We can't speak without evidence. We're working together. Just follow my arrangements, and you don't need to teach me about other matters. On the Red Rock Monster area, Zhou Chen naturally didn't know that this activity was deliberately set up by the official to target him. At this moment, he suddenly noticed a firework-like flame rising into the sky above his head. The sound was loud, and the light was dazzling. Then, Zhou Chen found that the colorful firework above his head remained stationary. He tried to take a few steps to the side and found that the firework also moved in sync, without missing a beat. Damn! Even Zhou Chen couldn't help but feel the urge to curse. What kind of grudge did the game officials have against him to set him up like this? However, thinking about this now was meaningless. Zhou Chen had originally planned to quietly get through the last few minutes, but the game system wouldn't let him off easy. In a location hundreds of meters in front of him, many players who were searching for him received the game system's announcement at this time and also saw the colorful firework. With this colorful firework above his head, Zhou Chen was like the most eye-catching person in this area, shining wherever he went, making it impossible for others not to notice him. He's over there, don't let him escape. Ha, the game system is so awesome, it's marking him for us. Exactly, this kind of unreasonable luck, even the game officials can't stand it, they want us to take care of him. Hurry up, there's less than three minutes left. Zhou Chen felt helpless, but he also knew that avoiding the problem was not a solution. There were many players in this area, and he couldn't avoid them all. He had considered finding a place to hide from everyone's sight, cancelling the disguise, and returning to the form of the secret puppet spirit. But the risk would be great. Firstly, if a secret puppet spirit appeared in the Crimson Rock Monster area, it would definitely attract the player's attention. If a well-meaning player reported it to the authorities, he would face an official investigation. Secondly, if he still had a colorful firework on his head after switching back to the secret puppet spirit form, it would be ridiculous. In that case, there would be no need for players to report it, and the authorities would come after him. If the authorities deleted this abnormal data, would he disappear? After weighing the pros and cons in his mind, Zhou Chen could only choose the least risky approach. It seemed that the least risky approach now was to take on these hundreds of players alone. Taking on hundreds of players alone, was that really less risky? Not at all. This risk was probably second only to committing suicide. The hundreds of players rushed towards him. Zhou Chen's vision almost went black, and he quickly ran backward. However, the players were not coming from the same direction. If he just kept running, the end result would be getting surrounded by the players. Players were rushing from all directions in the west, and at first glance, there were dozens of people in each direction. As for the closer areas, Zhou Chen couldn't know if there were any thieves hiding there, after all, he didn't have the true sight of a physician. He gritted his teeth and fiercely pulled the bowstring in his hand. He used the scatter skill and attacked the players in one direction. Zhou Chen's current scatter skill could release six rounds of a total of 72 arrows, pressing forward like a swarm of locusts in one direction. Minus 97, minus 89, minus 99, minus 112. This wave of arrows caused considerable damage. Several people in front suffered a large number of arrow attacks, and three of them immediately turned into white light. Zhou Chen was a little stunned. He finally understood that he had underestimated the many players in front of him because he had previously been hostile to the members of the Divine Battle Guild. Those members were all level 29 players, and their attributes, equipment, and skills completely overwhelmed ordinary players. Most of the players in front of him were level 26 or 27, and there were even some at level 23, with attribute panels that couldn't compare to those of the Divine Battle Guild. Using the scatter skill on the members of the Divine Battle Guild was like scratching an itch, but using it on these players could cause considerable damage. Moreover, after killing the members of the Divine Battle Guild, his Lord Scythe gained some attributes through property extraction. With just one scatter skill, he had already killed three players and left several others in front of him in a half-blood state. Current experience value 3435-16000, in addition to the players from the Divine Battle Guild he had previously killed, he gained over 3000 experience points after leveling up. However, killing enemies with the scatter skill was not his intention. 
His intention was simply to use the multiple attack times of the scatter skill to charge the Lord's Scythe. Now, the Lord's Scythe had been fully charged. The Scythe Kill skill was ready to be used. Holding the Scythe Kill skill in his hand, Zhou Chen's mood suddenly calmed down a lot. Killing three players with one scatter skill reduced the pressure on Zhou Chen, and his fear of these hundreds of players also diminished. After the scatter skill, the Lord's Scythe was fully charged, and the Scythe Kill skill was ready to be used. However, he didn't rush to use Scythe Kill and instead used a barrage of arrows. The Reaping skill can only be maintained for 50 seconds, and there are still over 2 minutes left. Zhou Chen decided to use it on his blade. Minus 1345, minus 1345, minus 1345, minus 1345. Even though the monarch's dark bow state can only possess 70% of the original state's attributes, Zhou Chen's overall physical attack power has still reached over 1500 points. These players generally have lower levels and worse equipment than the members of the God of War guild. With a chain arrow skill, he took out another player with the first shot. While gaining experience points, Zhou Chen drew his bowstring again. There were players in every direction, but he didn't bother to retreat. Instead, he stood in place and launched normal attacks one by one, killing as many as he could. Soon, 20 seconds had passed, and the majority of the players in all directions were only 200 meters away from him. In the process, Zhou Chen killed five players. However, he was also attacked by the archers among those players. Surprisingly, half of the archers' attacks on Zhou Chen couldn't even break through his defense. Minus 1 minus 1 minus 19 minus 22 dash 15. Among hundreds of players, there were probably dozens of archers. However, out of these dozens of archers, only half of them were able to inflict double digit damage on Zhou Chen. Despite dozens of archers simultaneously firing arrows, the total damage inflicted on Zhou Chen was only a few hundred points. With Zhou Chen's current nearly 10,000 health points, a few hundred points of damage were insignificant. The chain arrow cooldown was over, and he shot a line of arrows in the west. Minus 1345 reap, plus 672 minus 1345 minus 1345 minus 1345 a player turned into white light in response, triggering the reap effect, which instantly restored Zhou Chen's health bar. Zhou Chen blinked in disbelief. Were these players really so weak? It seemed like he could take them head on. However, in the next moment, Zhou Chen realized he couldn't be too arrogant. Several burst fireballs exploded on him instantly reducing a considerable amount of his health. Minus 455, minus 467, minus 387, minus 329, the burst fireball, as a magic skill surpassing the fireball spell, was basically the strongest single target attack skill for first turn mages. Zhou Chen's magic defense was much weaker than his physical defense, and this burst fireball, being a superior magic skill, inflicted a significant amount of damage on him. Fortunately, the burst fireball as a powerful skill, was not released quickly, allowing Zhou Chen to recover. With nearly 10,000 health points, he had lost about a tenth of it. Not daring to be careless, Zhou Chen instantly activated the reaping skill. At this point, he couldn't afford to hold back. Despite his high health and defense, the large number of players besieging him meant that even a small mistake could lead to disaster. The reaping skill had just been activated when Zhou Chen saw ripples in the air in front of him, and several figures appeared. They were the thief players among those players, who had quietly approached him using the stealth skill. Disguised as a thief, Zhou Chen naturally understood their intentions, but at this moment, he had no way to defend himself, and was hit by the visible attack of these few people. Minus 213, minus 146, minus 231, minus 221, not bad, the visible attack was a physical attack, and under his physical defense, the damage was not too high. However, with a tenth of his health already gone, this additional damage made Zhou Chen's already tight health bar even more precarious. If I'm not mistaken, these few thief players will definitely follow up with a cutting skill to make themselves lose more health. How can they endure such a thing? The distance is too close, and drawing a bow and arrow may not be a good choice. Zhou Chen first grabbed the Dark Sovereign bow, and forcefully swung it in a circle. Several thieves who were originally planning to continue their attack were all stunned. What kind of move was this? They dared to confirm that there was definitely no such skill in the archer profession. It's easy to see that there is no archer who uses a bow to hit people. But just because there is no such skill doesn't mean Zhou Chen can't do it. This move was inspired by Xia Qian. Don't be too limited by professional categories, just do it as you please. It has to be said that the quality of the Dark Sovereign bow is excellent. After swinging it around and hitting someone, there was no need to worry about it breaking. But the attack power is not commendable. 
minus 548 minus 536 minus 552 minus 529 with just one swing, it only caused over 500 points of damage to each of the thief players. For Zhou Chen, whose attack power has reached over 1,500 points, this kind of attack is very low. This is also a limitation of the game on the archer profession. In the game settings, if an archer player does not shoot arrows but uses the weapon to initiate a close range attack, the attack power is halved. If it weren't for Zhou Chen's high attack power, it would probably be impossible to break through the defense with only 50% of the attack power. After all, the game's requirement for archer players is to shoot arrows well. Zhou Chen also felt this. So, after several thief players were instinctively forced back a few steps by this swing, he suddenly pulled out the Dark Sovereign bow in his hand. Shu, Shu, Shu before the several thief players could react, he had already continuously pulled the bowstring and shot several arrows. Under the special effect of the reaping skill, his attack speed increased significantly, far surpassing ordinary players. Continuously and rapidly pulling the bow to shoot arrows, the thief player in front of him couldn't dodge at all, and was hit by several arrows, turning into a white light. At this time, Zhou Chen bent the bow and aimed at three other thief players in a different direction. At this point, these three thief players didn't dare to come forward to attack anymore, and once again used the ambush skill. The three of them instantly entered stealth mode and disappeared from Zhou Chen's sight. Trying to escape? Zhou Chen snorted coldly, gave up normal attacks, and, according to his memory of the approximate location, used the scatter skill that had already cooled down. In an instant, a large fan-shaped area of arrows flew out. In the open space not far in front of Zhou Chen, it seemed like there was nothing there. But Zhou Chen had disguised himself as a thief and knew that the ambush skill only allowed the user to become invisible, not to disappear into thin air. As long as the user had just used the skill and had not left the original spot, then, even if they couldn't be seen, the opponent was still there. So after each thief player used the ambush skill, they would quickly leave their original spot. If the opponent's reaction was even a bit slow, it would be impossible to guess the thief's location. But Zhou Chen was not slow. In the instant when the opponent disappeared from his sight, he had already used the scatter skill. A large number of arrows surged out, sweeping through that area like a mercury spill. Combo. Minus 98 minus 98 minus 78 critical hit. Minus 172 minus 78 critical hit. Minus 202 minus 98 ignore defense. Minus 304. A dense mass of damage numbers jumped up. Even though the enemy's figure couldn't be seen, Zhou Chen's attacks still landed solidly on them. The scatter skill released 72 arrows, most of which hit, and each person probably endured a dozen or twenty attacks. And because of the high number of attacks, many special effects such as critical hits, defense penetration, and combos were triggered. The three thief players were not at full health and their health was not extremely high. Surprisingly, they were instantly killed by Zhou Chen's scatter skill. Even though they were in stealth mode, they were turned into soul points in an instant. At this moment, Zhou Chen ignored the other players and continued to attack the magicians. In his view, no matter how many physical attack professions there were, they could not cause much damage to him due to his extremely high physical defense. On the other hand, each skill released by the magicians could cause significant damage to him and needed to be dealt with first. In the reaping state, Zhou Chen undoubtedly entered a hunting mode, increasing his attack speed by 160% and his movement speed by 50%. Other players could not catch up with him and could only be led around by him. The archers who could attack him did not cause much physical damage, while the magicians who posed a greater threat to Zhou Chen were taken down one by one. With his attack power and speed, he did not even need to use skills, a few normal attacks were enough to take down a magician player. If a critical hit was triggered, he could instantly kill them, making it impossible for them to even heal. As time passed, within the 50 seconds of reaping, he killed more than 30 magician players, while his own health remained full due to the reaping absorption effect. It seemed as if he could continue indefinitely. However, the reaping skill had a cooldown of 2 minutes. With only 1 minute and 30 seconds left until the end of the event, he could not wait for the next reaping skill to become available. He had to endure for 1 minute and 10 seconds without the help of the reaping skill. Fortunately, during the duration of the reaping skill, he had basically killed all the magician players in the player queue, so there was no one left to cause him significant explosive damage. Current experience points 8735-16000, it had to be said that, although extremely dangerous, this event was an excellent opportunity to gain experience points. In just a short time, he had gained over 5000 experience points, more than he would usually earn in a day. The condition was that he could endure the duration of the event. Without the bonus of the reaping state, Zhou Chen felt somewhat hesitant. Although he had just killed many players and obtained a lot of equipment, they were all dropped by long-range archer kills, 
and he did not dare to rush in to pick them up among the large group of players. At this moment, the situation seemed truly unfavorable, as the number of players did not seem to have decreased much. Previously, Zhou Chen had used the movement speed bonus of the reaping skill to lead these players around, but now that the reaping state had ended, he was suddenly surrounded again. There were still over 300 players surrounding Zhou Chen without the reaping skill. Zhou Chen couldn't help but smile bitterly. In this situation, he seemed to have only one choice. If he wanted to survive, he probably had to switch back to the secret puppet spirit form. Otherwise, with his current attributes as an archer, it would be difficult to hold on. However, transforming back into the secret puppet spirit in front of everyone was basically equivalent to slow suicide. Even if he escaped the current disaster, the game official's investigation would likely leave him with no place to hide. Various thoughts were swirling in Zhou Chen's mind, and for the time being, he could not make a decision, only attacking the players who were closing in on him with their bows and arrows. Another 10 seconds passed, and he killed three more players, but the majority of the players had already closed in on him, trapping him within a radius of only 5 meters. And because there is no bonus for the reaping skill, his attack speed has slowed down a lot, the frequency of normal attacks has greatly decreased, and the chance of triggering reaping absorption has naturally decreased as well. He has not been able to maintain full health, and now he has lost more than 2,000 points of health, leaving him with just over 7,000 points. At this rate, he will eventually be worn down at some point. Zhou Chen sighed and planned to switch back to the state of the secret puppet spirit. Although he would be investigated by the game officials later, it was still better than dying right away. However, before he could truly begin to switch, the situation on the field had already changed. Endless flames descended from the sky and fell onto the group of players. Zhou Chen, who was among the group of players, was also enveloped by them. Zhou Chen had seen this kind of attack before, it was a powerful magic scroll used by the members of the Divine Battle Guild, the Meteor Firestorm. Like Zhou Chen, the other players also had a deep impression of this Meteor Firestorm. They had been killed by this magic once before. In the area chat channel, the captain of the second team, Yin Lang, spoke coldly, My Divine Battle Guild said we have the whole area, what are you guys, daring to come and pick up the pieces? Previously, he had been extremely frustrated by the fact that he and Zhou Chen had cooperated to eliminate the entire second team. The sarcastic remarks in the guild channel almost made him grind his teeth to pieces. After resurrecting in the city, he completely ignored the others and quickly gathered his troops, heading back to the Crimson Rock Monster area once again. This time, he spared no effort and took out the last Meteor Firestorm magic scroll from the bottom of the box, having the mage and the team activated, and launched an attack on the large group of players sneaking into the Crimson Rock Monster area. As a magic scroll of the secondary Forbidden Curse level, the attack range of the Meteor Firestorm was extremely terrifying, covering a radius of 200 meters. Endless celestial fire rained down from the sky, like falling meteors, smashing onto the people below. Each meteor fire had the power equivalent to a fireball spell, and the falling meteor fire lasted for a full 30 seconds. Most of the players below had turned into white light within 10 seconds, with only a few with longer health bars or better luck enduring for 20 seconds. By the time the 30-second meteor firestorm was over, there were very few players left below. The last meteor fire fell and smashed onto a few survivors who had erected a semi-transparent barrier, shattering the barrier with a bang. The ones who had erected this defensive barrier were a few physician players, who had also used a magic scroll. This magic scroll was of the defensive type, and its rank naturally could not compare to the meteor firestorm scroll, but the meteor firestorm was a large-scale attack, and they were only defending a small area, so they could still hold their own. After the barrier shattered, the physician players looked somewhat dazed at someone who had intruded into their ranks. Zhou Chen? And hiding within this defensive barrier, Zhou Chen had easily avoided the meteor firestorm, looking very pleased. He looked at the few people and said with a smile, this defensive magic scroll is really useful. Thank you, brothers, for your selfless help and kindness. Looking at Zhou Chen who had appeared in their ranks, the physician players seemed very helpless. There was no need to think about being selfless and kind. Previously, their side had surrounded Zhou Chen with several hundred people, so how could they possibly be so kind as to help him defend now? It was simply impossible. This person named Zhou Chen had shamelessly sneaked into the defensive barrier while they weren't paying attention. Zhou Chen, however, was completely oblivious and looked at the members of the Divine Battle Guild several hundred meters away, asking the few people in front of him, do they hate me? The physician players did not answer, but from their disgruntled expressions, it was clear that they did not have a good impression of the members of the Divine Battle Guild. Zhou Chen then asked again, can you still defeat me now? The few people remained silent. Zhou Chen's previous performance had already been witnessed by them. Even when hundreds of people were chasing him, he managed to hold on until now, 
not to mention these few doctors who didn't have much offensive capability. Zhou Chen asked again, Can you defeat the God of War Guild? The few people remained silent. Zhou Chen then shrugged and said, The God of War Guild bullies you. Are you willing to let them easily obtain treasure, equipment? Of course, the few people were not willing. Zhou Chen solemnly said, If you are willing to heal me, I can guarantee that these arrogant guys will definitely pay a painful price. After all, they bullied you, not me, I am the one being bullied by you. With that, he ignored the few people and headed towards the side. In just a few words, the people from the God of War Guild had already approached within a range of 100 meters. The archers in their formation had already drawn their bows and launched an attack on Zhou Chen. However, the magicians, having just activated the meteor shower scroll, were temporarily unable to use magic due to being in a state of magical overload. Despite being attacked by the archers, Zhou Chen was unharmed, but his health bar dropped from over 7,000 points to just over 6,000 points. There were still 45 seconds left in the event, and Zhou Chen headed towards the boundary between the Red Rock Monster area and the Secret Puppet Spirit area. Regardless of whether the few doctor players were willing to help, he had to act in this way. If he really couldn't hold on, he would have to transform into the secret puppet spirit. The closer he got to the secret puppet spirit area, the lower the risk of transformation. As he retreated, Zhou Chen also drew his bow and shot a rapid arrow, which landed on the side of the God of War Guild. Almost at the same time, another arrow hit the doctor players. Minus 1322 sickle absorption. Plus 661 minus 1322 minus 1322 minus 1322 after extracting the attributes, the attributes of the Lord Sickle had increased significantly. Although this rapid arrow did not trigger any attack effects, it still took away an archer player. Now he was not interested in targeting the opponent's doctor players, but rather the archer players who were currently able to attack him. Otherwise, he would not be able to hold on while retreating and being consumed by the archers and the occasional triggering of the sickle absorption effect would probably not last. Moreover, the opponent's thief player had probably already come stealthily and would soon be able to reach him and launch a powerful attack. Clear out the riffraff. The God of War Guild's formation advanced, and the second team leader glanced over and frowned when he saw the few doctor players who had been with Zhou Chen earlier. Although these doctor players were not blocking his way, he still did not want anyone else standing by and watching. After hearing his command, the archer players in the formation reacted very sensitively, redirecting their arrows that were originally meant for Zhou Chen towards the few doctor players. Shoo, 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 arrows flew out, and one of the doctor players was hit and turned into a soul light on the spot. The remaining doctor players were inexplicably shocked and angry. One of the doctor players shouted in the area chat channel, Members of the God of War Guild, we give up the event, it won't delay you, why are you attacking us? However, in the face of this doctor player's questioning, the second team leader coldly smiled and said, Do we need a reason to attack you? If we must say, it's because we don't like the look of you. Since you dared to intrude and not take our god of war guilt seriously, you should have expected this outcome. Saying this, the second team leader felt greatly relieved. All the resentment and anger accumulated from being killed by Xia Qian and Zhou Chun earlier were now vented out. Let's go back to the city and not participate anymore, the doctor player shouted. No need, let's see them off, the second team leader waved his hand, and more arrows flew towards them. The attack of this archer missed a bit, only leaving a certain healer player with low health, but not able to kill instantly. The remaining healers finally understood that reasoning with the members of the God of War guild was futile. They exchanged glances and suddenly made up their minds. Each raised their hands, and a series of healing spells fell on Zhou Chen not far away. Plus 1024, plus 985, plus 1085. Several healing spells later, Zhou Chen's health bar instantly recovered and returned to full health. You are asking for death, the captain of the second team said coldly. Without needing further instructions, the archer once again drew his bow and prepared to kill these healers. However, before the archer player could shoot, a series of arrows flew in, instantly killing him. It was Zhou Chen's bursting arrow cooldown completed, and it was released again taking down another archer from the God of War Guild. At this point, there were only two archer players left in the God of War Guild's lineup. However, the healer players were still there, and it only took some time to use resurrection to bring back the killed archer players to continue the fight. But looking at Zhou Chen's determined gaze in the distance, these healer players temporarily abandoned this idea. The use of resurrection requires continuous casting for 6 seconds, and once attacked, it will be interrupted. In front of Zhou Chen, they dared not use it. For Zhou Chen's kindness, several healer players from the non-god of war guild side were very satisfied. One of them said, Hey, Zhou Chen, you are much more conscientious than the god of war guild. 
I have decided not to snatch your equipment. Although grateful for the healing, Zhou Chen couldn't help but roll his eyes at the words. This guy, as if you could really snatch it. At this time, there were only 30 seconds left in the event. With the help of several healer players, Zhou Chen suddenly realized that he might not need to return to the secret puppet spirit form and could safely pass through. The premise was that these healer players were strong enough and didn't die too quickly. Just as he had this thought, suddenly, a figure flashed in the distance, and three thieves had already appeared in the air, launching a visible attack on the healer players. After careful consideration, they gave up on ambushing Zhou Chen, who had high health and defense, and instead chose to attack the healer players who could heal Zhou Chen. It must be said that their choice was quite correct. With one slash, a certain healer player who was already low on health was instantly killed, turning into white light. 